Coldplay, the scientist. Have you seen the video of that? Great, it's just brilliant. I, I think I might have worked out. What, 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 it's, he's, he's walking backwards, it's all filmed backwards, but he's singing forward. Now, the only way I can work out they've done it, without CGI in it and cheating with the lips, is that he had to... Learn, learn it, it backwards, backwards and did it sort of like bit by bit. Did he do that? He was on Zoe's show like about a week ago. Or oh, something, so and he, he sang it backwards. So he learned phrases and they filmed that. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't learn the whole song, did he? They must have. He couldn't possibly have learned the whole song. He must have like stopped it and. <sighs> I don't know. I just it's a great video, though. They always do a good video. No, it's very good. Very good indeed. So it was, uh, yeah, The Scientist on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Jamais with me, Steve Merchant Hello. and Carl Pilkerton. I had a bit of good news this morning. Go Rick. on. Um, I was on the tube coming down, and, uh, I don't, uh, I don't want to sound arrogant, I don't want to sound pushy, but, um, I was at Green Park, and I'm fairly certain, Rick, it's not 100% corroborated, I'm fairly certain that a woman pinched my arse. So what do you think of that? Yes. Th th there's a lot of pop uh, pickpockets around Green no, Park. No, no, so no, 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 no. My wallet was still there. Really? But even if it wasn't, you know, that would have been money well spent. But, <laughs> but, 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 but the but the wallet was still there. So how? <laughs> what do you think of them apples? Eh? So what did you just pinch off? I don't. I can't confirm it at this stage. Uh, exactly what happened, but it certainly felt like a pinch. I looked round. There By was a woman. There was a woman behind me. You're right. She was fairly old. She was, I think she's probably in her mid thirties. Right. Um, kind of reddish hair. Right. Uh, I don't know if she's listening. Right. But uh, she knows where I am. And, um, so I don't know how to proceed really, Rick. I don't know if it's worth putting up some posters <laughs> around the Green Park area. Well, what you could Just do... to try and corroborate well, it. If you saw a woman pinch the lanky you... guy's arse, no, well, you, could, you could probably get in, uh, a contact with British Rail and look, go back over their CC exactly, TV CCTV thing. Exactly, CCTV cameras, yeah. And then they could probably zoom in and, you know, so sort of identifying sort of birthmarks or <laughs> exactly. she might have been holding some up. That I could hire a private eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, money well spent. <laughs> well, so, uh, so, there you go. You know, I'm just so, saying, I mean, I'm just saying maybe the, you know, maybe things are looking up. Things it's getting are getting towards Christmas. The worm has turned. Hey, I don't, I, I mean, you know, it's a little uh, sexy story to get the show <laughs> it going. Is, it is but, great uh, what sexy. What do you make of that then, Carl? Because I know you're quite damning. Um. What's your answer? Well, I mean, you're quite a, quite a tall fella. Sure. So, she must have really wanted to sort of reach up and <laughs> and have a pinch. Hmm. Do you know well, what you mean? think she, she was a dwarf? She did, she, she did it with her teeth. He didn't say she was a dwarf. No, no, but Steve's taller than, you know, his arse. Yeah, but his arse here. isn't six foot nine, is it? Well, his arse is about three foot off the floor. F four foot? What? Four foot off, off the floor. Uh, no, I don't think so. About three. She'd have to be a midget to have to reach up to pinch Steve's ass. He is very tall, but yeah. I don't know what your point is there, Carl. You're just you're just trying to you're, you know you're just. Uh, no, I, I know. think maybe he's just a little bit jealous. Just a little bit uh, of jealousy. Well, do you know what happened to me on the way in? Go on. A homeless person called me a dickhead. <laughs> How did he know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know him? Is right. that why? He's a local. He's like the local big, no, well. big issue fella. Oh yeah. yeah. And he know he knows me. He sees me walking up and down the oh, street. Oh, that's how he knew you. Right. So um, so I normally have a have a bit of a chat with him and that. And I walk past him, and um, <laughs> we're, we're, you know I can I can be a little bit cheeky with him because I've been cheeky with him in the past with stuff. Um, he pinched his eyes. No, no, <laughs> just you know saying stuff like God, you're always there. I mean, you got home to go to and. Uh <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah, no, just he, breaking the ice. Just breaking the ice. Go no, on. He knows, and he'd laughed at that right yeah, last time, yeah, so I thought yeah. I can be a bit cheeky, right? So he goes, uh, he goes, do you, want a, do you want a big issue? I said, no. Nah. He said, come on, I've got loads of them, right? So I, I sort of said, oh, w when I was a kid, and I used to do a free paper around the free papers one. I said, just put them in the bin and go home. <laughs> right? And he went, yeah, but how am I going to get any money doing that, you dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> you see. <Yeah. laughs> I can see his point. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. is homeless and having to sell newspapers to get 50 pure a quid or whatever. Yeah, uh, and, and sometimes I treat him, right? And today I didn't have any money. I had a takeaway last night and I normally give them a quid and I felt bad not being able to do that because I didn't have any money on me last right, night. Right. I couldn't look him in the eye. Did you night. explain this to the homeless person, the traumas of the takeaway <laughs> without the tip? <laughs> Did you explain that, you know, y you've had it hard as well. Yeah. I mean, look, you don't I know had what food delivered to my warm flat. Yeah. It was Yeah, you don't know what that's like. You don't know what the trouble is because you can't have food delivered to your flat because you haven't got one. So please don't look at me like that. You should have said. But most people ignore him. At least I gave him a bit of acknowledgement and sort yeah, of- Yeah, took, took the mick. 
Yeah. I didn't think I was, I just was being yeah. friendly. Yeah. No, I know. You gotta be careful with the homeless, cause I, this is, I, this is true, and this is, I, you know when the clocks went, was it, the clocks went back recently? Yeah. So you got an extra hour in bed? Yeah. And, um, I was at cash point with a friend of mine, and there was a homeless person sat by the cash point, <laughs> and, um, was, you know, we would get some money out, and she said, spare some change. And my friend's, oh, he's a bit awkward, he's just trying to make conversation with her, he went, oh, clocks go back. Extra hour in bed. Oh no. I gave her two quid. I felt so bad. <laughs> oh, he didn't God. do it intentionally. He didn't no, realize no. what he said. I just know, making just conversation. Bumbling. It's uh, tricky making conversation with the homeless because there's so many areas you can't, you've got to avoid. You know, know. what was on the telly. Yeah. You know. Although I get recognised by homeless people and they are, are they, I don't know where- Well, you've got to remember that's very much your demographic, Chris. <laughs> yeah. You know, pe Dixon's people window. who watch TV through the window in Dixon's. Yeah, in Dixon's. Yeah, there was a- <laughs> Ricky Gervais is on. Yeah. Well, the they, they, on. they can smell the alcohol on you, they <laughs> think you're one of them. <laughs> oh, I've had to cut down on that. I've all been really good with this training thing. The boxing. Uh, oh, oh, play a record and I'll tell you about that. I had my first week of training. I'm- I'm in trouble. I'm struggling. What do you want to play? Oh, we've got a bit of, uh, have we? Stone Roses, classic. Feeder, come back around. XFM 104.9. Ricky DeVay, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. All right? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I, st I had my first week of training for this, um, charity boxing. Um, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm fighting Grant Bovey, uh, Anthony Turner's husband. Um, it's, it sounds arbitrary, but it's actually because he's, uh, at 41 and about my weight, a bit taller, I think. But, uh, and we've never done it before, but, um, no, it'd be, it'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Battling someone for charity. <laughs> yes. Um, no, but, um, it, 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 it's, and I can't believe my luck, because I've, you know, I've been a fight fan for, like, 30 years, and, um, and they took me shopping, they bought me all the gear, and, uh, the training's great. It's really hard, I mean, it's, uh, I imagine it'd be really hard, and it's probably slightly harder than I imagined. And the only bit I like, so the, 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 I, I, I don't like all the exercise and all the stuff you've got to do. I like the bits that look a bit like something I've seen in a Rocky film. Right, sure, You know, we sure. did that thing with the, uh, the string along the ring and I have to pop up and punch and that. Right. That was great. Right, nice. Uh, skipping's not bad, I'm trying to get good at that. I like that ball that you go... Yeah, yeah. Are you any good at that? Is uh, a... I'm getting, getting good at it. Uh -huh. quite, see, well, what's that teaching you, that particular thing? It's just uh, the rhythm, is it? Uh, it's, it's rhythm and, of course, your arms are up for that long, so it... It, you've got to keep your guard up all the time. Yeah. So that teaches you to keep and your you arms were, up. And you were, up at six this morning, you broke some raw eggs into a cup and then you <laughs> ran up the steps of the town hall, didn't you? I know. Well, with those of people following me, and I shouted, BOVY! <laughs> exactly. At the top. No, I'm not going mad, I'm not going mad, just, sure. just, 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 you know, once every, you know, every other day. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm struggling now, I've, 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 I've I woke up today and I, it was like I'd been hit by a car. Yeah. Just everything aches, so the muscles you haven't used. But, um, anyway, I had a meeting, uh, the first time with the, with the people, the program makers, because they're following me for a month and everything, and Grant as well. Um, and they said, oh, um, uh, you'll need a sort of nickname, just for a laugh. And I went, oh, what's Grant using? And they said, oh, I think it's going to use gorgeous Grant Bovey or Grant. I went, oh, I don't know, um, oh, gosh, so I, better, I better go against that. Um, what about, um, Ricky Gippo Gervais? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and that, that, yeah. So uh, anyway, I had a freaking with Frank Maloney meeting the next day, and, uh, it's sort of, uh, you know, you've got a to do this nickname, and the bloke said, oh, I checked out that name, you can't call yourself Jip. I went, well, of course I can't, <laughs> I was joking. He went, well, I said, well, it's racist, I was joking, I was making a joke about me, but, and then he went, oh, I don't know. And then, uh, I went down to get the, um, buy all the gear from this shop. They'd have the dressing game made? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was picking all the stuff, I was going, oh look, that's like Naz War. Oh look, that's like Ali War in the... And I'm going, I'll have that, I'll have that, picking all the gear and everything. And, um, there was a couple of boxers down there, sort of like looking at me, thinking, who's that fat bloke taking yeah. that boxing at 40? And, uh, I said who I was, not it? And the uh, bloke went, oh yeah, how are you doing? I went, oh yeah, I said, how long have you been in the game? He said, I've been boxing 20 years. So how many fights you had? He said, about 40. And I, I said, oh yeah, help me, I've got to think of a nickname. And I thought, I said, uh, I thought, uh, Ricky Balboa Gervais. He went, right. I went, or Ricky Marciano Gervais. He looked at me and went, what about Ricky Martin? <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, dear. Absolutely justified. Yeah, I, I, I'm not respected yet in the boxing world. <laughs> no, sure. But, I mean, it's only a matter of time. Once well, they see I you think fight, once they go... see you fight, Rick. <laughs> Everything's gonna change. So, uh, that have you actually, have you actually punched anyone yet? Have you actually? Not any, no, no, I've punched, punched I've punched pads and I've punched the, uh, the bag and I've sort of sparred and that. I know, you only get a chance to well, punch Well, someone. as I suspected, um, my, my punching power's alright, but my fitness is, I mean, it felt like I was smoking. Yeah. You know, but there's, you know, bits of lung that haven't been, had oxygen in them for 20 years. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. And also because, it's not only it's being filmed, but there's the other fighters there that are ridiculous. They're like machines, mm, right? Mm. And it's that thing, I go, I can go, 
right, I can, I can come out on top, but dying now of a heart attack, but never give up. Or yeah. I can sit down and go, I'm sorry, I'm, I yeah. feel ill. And I chose that one, and of course they take the mitt. Well, of course. But absolutely. I mean, you know, soon. Uh, you know, as I said, I haven't got the respect yet of the boxing <laughs> fraternity, <laughs> but and how long have you got them before? Four uh, weeks. Okay. So, yeah. and, and do they think that they can turn you around health-wise in that time? Uh, no. Or no, you're going to be coming out on Zimmer. No, they're going to, they're going to, you know, they're, they're going to teach me the ba basics and see how it goes. You know, right. but I mean, I'm, you know, and I'm each still... round is four seconds. Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, two four second <laughs> yeah, rounds with, with a yeah. two hour break in between <laughs> each one. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down um, meal. So, uh, give them the number. I want, I want serious suggestions of my fighting name. Nothing insulting. So what we can actually use. Well, let's give out the, the email. BBC. That's always the easiest. Yeah, Ricky exactly. Yeah. Bays, uh, XFM co uk. What's the number, Carl? Um, oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. And it doesn't have to be in the middle. It could be at the beginning, like. <laughs> the rage. Okay. Ricky, yeah, yeah, Ricky yeah. the rage. Ricky the hits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Ricky the man. Rest player yeah. record. <laughs> what would happen? Right, here's, here's another question. This is one that I chuck out to kids as well. We were talking about education, teaching kids stuff. Sure. What would happen? Right. Uh, we ruin this world. Right. Goes wrong and that. Right. They shut it down. They go. We're moving. We go to another planet. It's as simple as that yeah. in his world. It's as simple as that. We can't go to uh, Mars because it's full of stuff that used to be in Dixon's. It's like a tip. Yeah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> so we can't go there. We go somewhere else. Something that I've always wondered about: if we do that, do we start New Year's or do we carry on? What do you know? What I mean, do we say, "Oh, it's still 2006," or do we go, oh, "It's world, it's world new, whatever, yeah. new world"? That is definitely the first priority. You it's know. year one, right? We've sorted that out. Right now, well, it depends, doesn't it? Once because right. a year might not be the same on this planet. We'd sort that out, right? We'd sort out what, what year it is and that. Well, no, no, um, no, no, what I'm saying is, we, we'd have to start again anyway, because the planet might not take one year as we know it to to go around the sun. It might not take a day to turn. A day is, is a day, because that's how long it takes for Yeah, but we'd have to carry on, as we know, because we don't want to start doing longer days and that, otherwise it'll just kick off and say, this is rubbish, this new world, what are you doing? No! I'm we doing a 28 hour day! We wouldn't have a choice! A day is how long it takes no. the planet to, but to, a day to is, turn, a day and a year is how long it takes that planet to go around no, but, the sun But once. a day is man-made, really. There's places in the world where they're working in the dark, isn't they, in Iceland and that. But they don't go, well, it's dark all the time, so I'll stay in bed. Well, no, but there's still a day. It's still 24 hours in a day in Iceland. Yeah, but that's, we only work by that clock because that's what people use at the moment when they go, what time is it? You go, oh, it's 20 past No, no, no. We use that, that, because that's how long it takes the planet we're on to, to, yeah, to I, I've turn. never worried about it like that. I've just always Well, no, I'm telling you, well, that's because you weren't asked to get involved when they came up with the idea. I'm telling you, that's what a day is. It's yeah. how long it takes your planet to, to, yeah. what would you mean? The way that, what? No, I'm, I'm just saying that's fine and everything, but if when I was born people said, there's 26 hours in a day, I'd go, fair enough. I'm not going to argue. I'm well, not yeah, gonna, we could have made that how long an hour is. Yeah, we could have made hours shorter and get 26. Well, in. they're saying they're going to do that. Because, well, no, because, they're not. No, they are because no, there's so not. many people in the world. Yeah. This is what I was talking about before. They've got to create more jobs. The only way to have more jobs, keep shops open, take on more people. Everyone's happy. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> right. Say if there's 28 hours in a day. Yeah, it'd still be 24 hours long as we used to know it. No, you'd have you'd have like oh, what time is it? Oh, it's it's like 20 past. Uh, uh, 25 or whatever. <laughs> well, you're, you're not making any sense at all. No, I'm just saying. The Earth would still take 24 hours as we know it now. It, forget it. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I want. Uh, there's more interesting territory here. Don't forget, our sleep patterns have evolved on a day. The reason we sort of like go to sleep at night and have about eight to ten hours sleep is because that's our evolution. No, but that's only. Yeah, that's just because what that's what we've got used to, isn't it? Yeah. You look at a sloth. That's asleep all the time. It's doing yeah, what it wants. Yeah, but it evolved differently, didn't it? Right, you can't get away. <laughs> You're not getting away with this anymore. If you want to live now, join in with us. Well, it's that time again. Uh, it's the feature that the world is saying could rival Monkey News one day. Ready? Oh, what's he written today? Well, Carl's diary. You didn't yeah. explain what it was. Sunday, got up. Sunny day, so I went for a walk in the park. There was a bloke walking down the street who was whistling uh, some kind of annoying tune. He seemed quite happy with himself. Do people only whistle when they're happy? I don't whistle very much. It's a good point. Uh, I'm whistling is so inane to me. But yeah, but it'd be... It's sort of like going, I'm, I'm, I'm content, I'm... Uh, it, it really is that thing that if they go, uh, you go, Well, um, Mr. Mellows, I'm afraid uh, I've got some bad news. Not only has your wife died, but you've lost the house. Thanks, Doctor. 
one happen. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't matter, whistle it, when yeah. you're sad. The other place you hear, of course, is uh, changing rooms, and that's men going. <laughs> I'm whistling, so I'm not looking at your cock. <laughs> How could I be? I'm concentrating. I'm whistling. <laughs> The lake was frozen over where I was walking. The ducks looked worried. <laughs> they were sat on the edge of the lake waiting for it to melt. Where are they, Carl? Yeah, we were just sat there looking, sort of going, oh, what's going on? <laughs> I don't know. I, how, how long is a duck's memory? Because I wondered whether they're going, this doesn't seem right, but I don't know why. I asked Suzanne why ducks don't use their wings much. They seem to walk and swim more and don't bother using their wings. Suzanne said she had to call her mum and dad, so I never got an answer. <laughs> The old excuse! <laughs> yeah. Suzanne, oh, I can't talk now, Carl. Um, Could I've... I phone my mum? <laughs> there was a marathon-type run going on in the park. It reminded me of the time when we were moving flat. It was the day of the London Marathon. Me and Suzanne were walking down the middle of the road, taking some stuff to our new flat. I was carrying a lamp and a kitchen bin. People were clapping me, thinking I was doing some kind of fun run. Uh, <laughs> on the same route because I, well, it was when we lived on the Docklands oh uh, brilliant there was, there was no other route the flat was just about 100 oh. yards down the road they're going look at the bloke with the bald wig <laughs> he's yeah. carrying a lamp and a bin took a bag of old clothes to Oxfam it was just old t-shirts and a couple of jumpers with holes in it I don't think anyone will buy them but the Oxfam is closer to the flat than the wheelie bin is <laughs> <laughs> on the tube on the way back home saw an advert for a book about a woman who works in a funeral home she went into work one day uh, she goes to work on a body she takes the sheet off of one of the bodies and it looks exactly like her this is called a doppelganger the what's thing, a doppelganger to you it's the thing i read about them ages ago where um someone was uh walking down the street yeah and he sees someone who looked a bit like him and no this was weirder than that go um, on um he, he remembers like going down that street as a kid on his bike whistling yeah. And then he sort of is walking down the street, going to get some milk or whatever from the shop. Little bike comes whizzing past. He hears the whistling. He goes, "That's weird." Looks at it. It was him when he was a kid. <laughs> so Don't it's like a time. Talk shit. What do you mean? It was him as a kid. This this is like a different form of doppelganger. It's just. Um, well, it's impossible. It's rubbish. Some sort of time thing, isn't it? No, no, it's not. That's impossible. So there's some kind of time thing, Rick. No, no, no. Yeah, it's something you read thing. again on the internet, or it was a short story, or something someone told you. Hmm. On my walk back from the tube, I saw a jogger who was pushing a pram at the same time. The kid looked terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Got my science book out. It said that the static you get on the telly when a channel isn't tuned in properly is radiation that is still knocking about from when the Big Bang happened. I thought about the Big Bang and wondered if it was really a Big Bang or did it just sound louder as there was no other noise to drown it out. <laughs> Good point, though, isn't it? Carl's diary, Rick, never ceases to amaze. Oh, well, it's that time now. Yeah? It's the big one. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! <laughs> right, it was this, uh... Monkey? This fella, right, who, uh, he had a problem with his eyes. Right? Yeah. So, uh, he goes to the doctors, and he goes, uh, oh, I've got a problem with my eyes. And he goes, yeah, they're bad them, right? <laughs> he goes, uh... It was in America, you know, like, how you have to pay for, for medical stuff and all that. Mm. And the doctor said, oh, if, if, if I fix them, it's going to be, like, ten grand, right? Mm. He's like, but I haven't got the money, doctor. He goes, well, I can't help you then. You know, there's a lot of people with bad eyes like them. Can't do anything for you. Mm. So he goes, oh, it's getting worse. I can't do anything. Oh. So anyway, so he goes home. Is that the price of human eyes, is it? So he goes home, he's looking in the paper, right? And he, he sort of sees in the adverts at the back. And uh, there's a little advert there saying, cheap doctors, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, no, no. So he's thinking, oh, maybe that's maybe that's what I uh, maybe that's what I need, right? So he calls him up. Woman's there. She's like, wait, what can I do? He goes, I've got bad eyes, and that. She says, oh, come in tomorrow, we'll sort them out. She's like, brilliant. I'll see you then. Right? So he goes down there, and uh, he says, right, you know, I, c I can hardly see. My eyes have got in really bad state, and what have you. Right. I need to have them sorted out. I don't know what you do, whatever you do. Right. I need now, doing. His eyes are so bad. Can he see the doctors? He can 
Um, not really. Can't sort really of squinting, squinting and that, but you know. So, uh, so he's like, uh, "Do I need to see the doctor to you know have a word and tell him what problems?" She's like, "No, nah, don't don't worry about that. Don't worry just, about it. Uh, no, I'd, I'd I'd be comfortable if it's a just a just you know just let me inject you and uh, we'll knock mm. you out and we'll we'll get on with it. <laughs> no, it's we'll like, get well, doctor it's, in. Can I just tell you something about um, chimps as well, just before you continue? You know they don't have opposable thumbs. Now, why are opposable thumbs useful? Really? Well, to, to grip something, to do anything like you know even simple uh, stuff like writing, so let alone surgery. So without an but opposable just check now. So, if I was a doctor and I was doing any form of difficult surgery, would I need opposable thumbs? You'd need opposable thumbs to be a and doctor. And without a you couldn't do anything. You but, couldn't. Thanks it, for clearing that because up. Because um, uh, the, the opposable thumb allowed something in our evolution called the precision grip. Right. So, without that, you couldn't do anything. I'm just glad they've got that cleared up. Thanks. So anyway, so he's had the injection. He's nodding off and what have you. Right? His eyes are sort of closing and that. He hears the door open. He, he sort of just sees this little fella come in and he's like, "Hello, doctor." And he's trying to like make a chat with it. Sure. But like, he, he's just nodding it. off. Uh, no, just oh, he's he never called a doctor. He, he these, these people have done seven years medical Deeply training. Respected people. How could you start call it it? So anyway, he thought, oh, it's weird he didn't answer, but you know, doctors can be quite moody, you know, they're highly intelligent, they don't need Especially idle. little airy ones. Well, just idle chit-chat, there's no room for that, do you know no, what I mean? Yeah, just, it's just, it's just, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, if I, if I'm going in to have my eyes done, I want a little bit of idle chimp-chat. So anyway, time passes, right, yeah. uh, he sort of wakes up and, uh, he opens his eyes, right, and, uh, it's brilliant, he can't believe it. Oh, he's a perfect. He's had, he's had, he's had the op. He, he can't believe the sight. He's like nurse, right? And the nurse comes in because I can't believe it. This is brilliant. I've never had this such good sight. Do you know what I mean? Even when I was a baby, yeah. And my eyes were new. Yeah. I didn't see this good. Great. So she's like, well, you know, that's. that's you realise the nurse is a panda. That's that's what we do, right? So uh, he said, right. So can I just see the doctor and just say thanks and that? She's like, well, to be honest, you know, he's he's specialising what he does. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of what work. a load of bollocks this is getting. <laughs> Please, is, where did you get this from? No, come on, let's hear the end of the news. There's a wow. lot of there's a lot of like operations he's got to do. Yeah. Um, so you know, leave him to it. He's just having a kip. You know, I'll, I'll let him know that you were grateful. Yeah. Uh, you know, pays the check. Off you go. Go and enjoy looking at stuff. Yeah. So uh, he says. Uh, he said, No, I just just what's, what's wrong with that? I just want to see that. Just no, start, that's no, fine. leave it. Just leave. Yeah, exactly. Like, leave it. And he's like, it's he's like, yeah, but I can't. You know, I, I want to thank him. So he's done such a good thing for me. So they're getting into a bit of an argument and what have you, and the voices are raising, right? Mm. Uh, door gonna, opens. They're going to wake the doctor up. Well, mm. that's what they did, they woke it up, right? They so, will get uh, it! So the door opens, right? <laughs> Little monkey comes out. Oh. And, and he's like, what's, what's, what's going on here? It's hospital, why is the, why is the, uh, a monkey knocking about? Yeah. So the woman, woman said, well, what, what do you mean? He, he's the doctor. <laughs> right? So, sh so he's like, you are having a laugh, aren't you? She goes, look, don't complain, you, your eyes are sorted, yeah. you know? The doctor's done it, what, what, what's the problem? He said, well, if I'd have known that, I wouldn't have come here. She said, well, what do you mean you didn't know that? She said, the advert in the paper you read, it's uh, like, chimp doctors. That is the biggest load of shit I've ever heard. That really is the worst. It's what, and he, so he, because his eyes were so bad, he thought it said cheap doctors? He saw the advert and, and it said, it said chimp doctors, but because his eyes were bad, he just saw it. What journal is this in? It was, it was years ago, because it sort of says how the monkey sort of carried on working for a few years. Uh, he couldn't do anything about it, he had to, to play it. golf. It's absolute bollocks. It's there's no to... way, there's the worst, uh, I mean, it's not even worth talking about. So. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's the most ridiculous monkey news you've ever heard, and that's saying something. Chimp, chimp doctors. Cheap. Can, it's an easy mistake. On this album as well, is The Killing of George. You know, Georgie part one and two, remember? About the gay bloke, George Boy was gay, I guess. His favourite song, right. Carl's favourite song, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, I was going, oh yeah, I remember that, yeah. I said about, um, and I said, uh, did not intend to take his life, he just pushed it when he, he gets mugged and killed. Do you know what he said? I was sitting outside, I was singing, I'm taking a bit. Yeah. He went, well, I said, as I said, they go out too late. <laughs> <laughs> they go out too yeah. late? He meant gay people go out too late. He went, no, they do. I went, what do you mean? He said, well, they're always out, they go out or when people are coming home. He said, if he'd have been in bed by ten, he'd still be alive today. <laughs> That's a sober lesson, And he went, God. there's one that works here and he's shattered every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you're gay and you're listening, just be in bed earlier. Go yeah. out when sensible people go out. Yeah. You're right, we're not on the continent, Carl, if, if, you, if you're gay and you're not in bed by ten, go home. Yeah. I don't get it. First cut is the deepest, Rod Stewart. Song. Air, don't be lying. XFM, mm -hmm. 104.9, 5 to 2. Absolutely. Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve, Steve Merchant. Merchant. Smirch. Smirch. The Smirch. The Smirch. And the K-Man. K-P, Carl Pilkerton, the K-Man. Pressing the buttons. Yeah. See that in Heat this week? What was it? About the campaign to stop Carl going back to Manchester. You know because he's a miserable sort of northerner who goes, London's crap and I want to go back up north. Yeah. 
and I, I, I only need 40 quid a week to live up there like King and all that sort of <laughs> yes. rubbish. Right, well, uh, um, uh, Boyd from Heat, um, look, well, we met him at the, um, that award ceremony. Oh, yeah. And, uh, we were saying about, oh, yeah, he really enjoys Carl. He's getting a lot of, a lot oh, of people, people like, people like Carl. And I was going, oh, yeah, but he's thinking of leaving. He's going, oh, so let's start a campaign. And he did, and he r put it in there. So the campaign, so write in if you oh. like Carl. If, if, if you think he's really annoying, then we'll stop talking to him. Yeah. But, I mean, I like him. I love him. Yeah. Have you ever read the, uh, White Man, the White Van Man column in The Sun, Carl? I've seen it. Have you yeah. familiar with this? This is where every day in The Sun they interview a guy who drives a, a van, a white van, just, you know, in order to get the kind of voice of the man on the street in the paper. Mm -hmm. And he has to answer, uh, or just give his opinions, really, on, uh, events that have made the news each week. Just thought we could maybe throw some of these at you, Carl. Go on. Because we know you, to see what your, your views are. Yeah. So, um, just the first thing that comes into your mind, the sort of, your initial reaction to it's each of these. Uh, things, but you don't need to know about them, it's just your philosophy on it, yeah, so. Yeah, just your views. You know, yeah. I have um, had a few days off this week, remember, so I don't know what's going on in the world. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 I mean, you stayed in London though, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you didn't bury yourself, <laughs> yeah. did you? I know, obviously the news, but I didn't. Okay. Right. Um, so, what are your view, what was your view on Will Young beating Gareth Gates in the final of Pop Idol? Don't like him. No. You know what I was thinking about when I was watching it all the way through? Yeah. How he looks like he's got a wire coat anger in his gob. That sort of... <laughs> right. Okay, this radio, Carl. Radio. Great it's face. It's a funny face you're pulling, doesn't yeah, you? Yeah, and, you know, but, you know, a radio. And it's, that's, that's a problem for you, is it? And, uh, and just the way he's from a really rich family. I opened mm -hmm. up the paper on the, on the Monday or something, and it had like, oh, he went to a posh school and he's got loads of money already. Yeah. It's just a bit... Key. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. what's the second right. question? Um... There have been huge rises in street crime, especially muggings and carjackings. What's your view there? More youth clubs are needed, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> you think more youth clubs? <laughs> I like that. No, I can't. No, I like that because it's so 1950s. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like you want to bobby on the beat that'll clip yeah. you around the ear. So once they come Is out of it? national service... <laughs> yeah! No, I love that. And, it, and if you find someone smoking a wood bomb, you make them smoke 50. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, this is great. That is great. Did, did, you, did you used to go to, uh, youth clubs? Yeah. And they, they kept you out of trouble? Uh, you used to get into a fight afterwards when sure. you came out. But for the sort of hour and a half you were there. You had a bit of pool and some boxing and yeah. a bit of pop. Yeah. <laughs> so I, more, more youth clubs, that's good. I love him. Um, I love him. If you're at home, t just make notes, because this is brilliant stuff. Honestly, you won't hear more honest, from the heart exactly stuff opinions. than this. This is great. Go on. This is not pre-planned. These are your direct responses now. Oh, I, pr I promise you, Carl did not know what we were going to do. He never knows what we're going to do, and he always answers honestly. That is the beauty of Carl. What is it's your not view? an act. What is your view, Carl, on New York's former mayor becoming Sir Rudy Giuliani? Sir Rudy Giuliani. Is he happy with it? <laughs> <laughs> he appears to be pleased with it. Let it go ahead. Fair enough. <laughs> <then. laughs> Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, he's genius. Okay, um... Is he happy with it? He's like your nan! Yeah, yeah. Is what do you make of, uh, Michael Greco's character Beppe being axed from EastEnders? Uh... Problem for you? The whole soap thing, what's it's back in Coronation Street, isn't she? Uh, what's her name? Who? Beth? Lynn's. She but, yeah. thought she'd go off and be a bigger star. Yeah. All went wrong. And now she's coming back. Yeah, yeah. always happens. Then. Beppy will be back. Yeah, no one really cares. Sure, sure. Yeah, what was the, the van reply? That was the guy. The white <laughs> van man says, uh, obviously they feel the character has run his course, but yeah. I think he's a pretty good actor, and I can't understand why. So, I mean, obviously there's a, a white van man there mm. who's also got an opinion on script the, development. The through line, yeah, 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 yeah like the narrative yeah, yeah, through line of soap opera. The, the, the twelve week narrative, the, the arc really showed it's itself just, up. There's two two last ones. I want your oh. opinion on here. Um, what do you make of a cat that's been cloned in a secret two point five million research project? To find out what? If what, they can claim cats, yeah. Have they had to hurt it? Sorry? Have they had to sort of hurt it to do that? Have they had to hurt it? Yeah, or is it just scraping its tongue for some stuff? I no, think the cat's fine. The point is that they're cloning a, a, another creature which is potentially very dangerous. Have you seen that film where they bring Hitler back? <laughs> <laughs> that cat. What if that cat turned out to be a world dictator? Exactly. What do you reckon of no. cloning generally, Carl? You concerned about it? I well, think they're cloning for organs, you know, they, they just grow them for the, you know, do you know what cloning means? <laughs> yeah, it's when you, like, make something else that's the same, isn't it? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's not gonna do any harm. Okay. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> that's great! And finally... Let's on the World Council! Yeah, yeah. Finally, uh, what do you make of some city workers who were caught bonking in the glass lifts of the Lloyds building? What do I make of it? Yeah. Is that a problem for you? Do you think that's unprofessional? Was it the lunch break or...? I think it was lunch break. <laughs> yeah. It was their own... Alright. It's their own time, <laughs> I think, fair enough. <laughs> it only takes 45 seconds to go from the bottom to the top, is that a problem? They moved quickly. They acted, you know, on instinct. Do you think fair enough? If, they, if that's their natural instincts and they're both consenting, you think fine? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much, Carl. Thanks right. very much, Carl. Well, we'll have uh, more of uh, Carl's uh, world-weary opinions next time uh, on the show. Lisa, I want to play a track that I love. I, 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 I can't wait for this track. It's, it's by a great band. Just going to do it before Steve does this. Uh, coming up, we're going to give away a great game. I've, um, well, I'm sort of clearing out my flat with Tony, and we've got you know a lot of junk there. And uh, we're going to give away a great game coming up. You've seen it, Steve. You're excited. I'm looking forward to that. It's, it's a board, board game. game it's it? a board game that we're all going to sign. It's going to be signed by Jerv Smirch. KP the K-Man. So you could win that. The classic album Copper Blue by Sugar, listening to it again recently, reminded how good it was. Yeah. This is the track Hoover Down. Play it. White Stripes, fell in love with a girl on XFM 104.9, it's ten past two. Right, okay, that's the first hour out of the way. Next hour, Steve, I've got a game to give away. As I say, I'm sort of cleaning out my flat a little bit and uh, we were going to throw away stuff and I went, I went to say, oh, whoa, 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 don't throw that away. Yeah. I can give that away on the show because XFM don't give us anything to give away. No. Does anyone care what happens weekends? No. There's people coming here going, oh, he hasn't turned up, fiddling with stuff, fire alarms going off, the library, but we were looking for a track we played a couple of weeks ago on the same album, and it's gone. Yeah, it's been pinched since we last played it. This is a, I can't believe it, they're moving, it. that's a, like a tip out there, and I have to... Yeah. <laughs> no, it is a disgrace, Carl. It is. It is absolutely, it's disgusting. How many of the DJs on this station have won multiple awards like Ricky Gervais? Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd how many, many of them are double award are. winning? To have someone of my calibre. I hurt my ankle, didn't I? Moving a chair. I had to even move my own chair in here. And I hit my ankle. That would teach me not to wear socks. Yeah. The socks would have just taken out the stain. I think, I think just walking around barefoot generally is a bad <laughs> You know, there's the needles, Rick, there's all sorts of I know, of all that, well, Posh does it in her video, she walks around barefoot. Oh, you love My it. heart's got a mind of its own. Ricky absolutely loves the current Victoria Beckham Yeah, da -da 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 -da. I like the sentiment, my heart's got a mind of its own, so like, doesn't matter what I'm thinking in my head, my heart says something else. Of course, what we did for the last week was change the lyric. Just walk around you know, for ages. Does anyone else do that? Just going, things like, um, things like, <laughs> my wife's got a car car of her own. Uh, it's just things like that and uh, my, Seriously, hours of amusement. Yeah, <laughs> just changing it. Uh, 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 my, my knob's got, got some balls of its own. own. We've done that for a week. Meant to be working. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, you were going to give away this game, Rick. Yeah, it's called Donuts, and it's a game for four players, or two to four players. Have you players. ever played it yourself? Um, I watched. We sort of got it for a party, and I watched some people. Um, Can I try and sell it to punters who may- Yeah, go on. Play the part of a crazy donut-loving elephant in this hilarious game of fun and fast action. Yeah. You put on a little elephant thing and you have to pull up the get up the donuts. Brilliant. Can you be the first elephant to get all your donuts on your trunk? Be, f uh, be the first one- uh, sorry, the first one is- Sorry, this isn't a sex game, by the way. There's no euphemisms there. Some of this is a bit slightly damaged, the packaging, that's why I couldn't read that. You're joking. Thing. Yeah. But don't worry, because you're not asking much for this, are you? <laughs> 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 we'll start at five pounds. Bear in uh, mind it'll be signed by Double Award yeah, Ricky Ricky. No, of course it's free. I don't know, Carl, what, what was your favourite nursery rhyme when you were growing up? Uh, didn't ever really do that much reading as a kid. Are you joking? You surprised me. Are you um, joking? Uh, <laughs> one's... What's the one with, um, loads of people in a bed? What's that one? Oh, there was one in the bed and the little one said roll over. Yeah. yeah. No, th cause that's not really even got a story to it, is it? That's but just... hold on though, I'll stop you there, it doesn't even say people. It says there was ten in the bed and the little one, little what? It, they <laughs> could be anything. I don't know what they are. Roll over, and they all rolled over and one fell out. There was nine in the bed and the little one said, roll over. Now where is the little one in the I bed? I don't know, but I, 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 worse than that, what has he got over the other nine? That he can demand they roll out the bed. And why is no one getting back in? Yeah, they they're just, just lying on the floor. We're here now. Yeah. I don't know. Is how, he... how does that end as well? Well, where's, where's that going? It goes on, there was one in the bed, and the little one said, again, he just says, presumably he's telling himself roll over. Yeah. There was one in the bed and there was a roll over. So, they, so he rolled over, and one fell out, that's him. That's him. There was none in the bed, and the little one said roll over. So now he's calling the shots, presumably laying yeah, on the pile there. of others. They're just still rolling around. I don't know, I don't know, Carl. We've got to look into this. If anyone knows why Dumpty was an egg, if, if Hubbard <laughs> that eventually found a dog a bone, <laughs> And what was the little one doing? What was the little- <laughs> what did the little one think he was doing, for God's sake? When yeah. I saw my dad last year, uh, he was telling me about one, about a fella who's got some clothes you can see through. What's that one? You don't the mean the emperor's new clothes. clothes? Yeah, what's- what's that one about? Well, that's a genuinely good little parable, that. Yeah, because it's- it's- it's now used for, um, people who are scared to sort of slag something off because it's- it's sort of like really cool and that, and they don't want to be the one that 
that shouts it, and then one person goes, hold on, very, I've very seen briefly, through this. Carl, very, very briefly, right. uh, the king wants some new clothes, right, he's the king, he goes, who's gonna make me some new clothes? Various people come to me, he says, I don't know that, I don't know that, it's not interesting enough. One guy, who's just a bit of a con artist, he comes mm -hmm. along, he goes, I've made you this magic suit, look, and it's nothing. He goes, put it on, the king puts on nothing, cause there is nothing, but thinks there's something, cause, you know, he wants to buy into it and everything. And he goes, it's the finest stitching, he goes, look at it, can you see it? Uh, 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 no, uh, they ask that only a genius can see how good this suit is. And the king goes, yeah, yeah, it's brilliant, it's brilliant, yeah. It's great. And he goes out and just, is it a woman or a little kid? Well, everyone's goes, applauding, they're going, you look great, even though his tackle's hanging out, he's, you know, he's, he's nothing. Even though he's got a king size, sort of like, bit of meat and two veg, yeah. wobbling, dragging down the street. <laughs> exactly. And so then one little boy goes, he's not wearing anything. The king is in the all together, the all together. Know that one? So, well, did anyone else buy one? Oh, was, oh. Okay, play record. Play record, Carl. Play record. Carl, just play a song. Jesus. Travis. Right into reach you on XFM 104.9, alright? Couple of emails here trying to respond to our uh, requests for um, nursery rhyme related information. Oh, go on. Nikki Williams says that she was at infant school and she had a nursery rhyme book and the book in the book, and this may, again may just be the illustrations, but apparently the ten in the bed in there were small baby monkeys, which you'll be loving, Carl. But uh, again, I, I suspect that might just be the illustration. Yeah. The, the, I uh, remember I had a book of nursery rhymes when I was little and uh, my, my brother, um, it was older than me, and I was about five, so he was about sixteen. I remember him and his mate just absolutely cracking up because it said, um, up Jack Trot and home, uh, up Jack got and home did Trot as fast as he could caper. He went to bed and bandaged his knob, N-O-B, with vinegar and brown paper. I've since found out the knob is like the old English for head, but I didn't know why they were laughing. Of course. They were just cracking yeah, up. This, yeah, this yeah. was, whenever one of my mates' brothers came around, he, he got, said, where's your nursery rhyme book? And he'd read it to him. Yeah. And it was just the funniest thing in the world. The, uh, the brown paper and vinegar was a popular method, because didn't Jack and Jill use that? They used something similar. No, that was Jack and Jill. That was Jack and Jill. Yeah, that's it? Jack when he broke his crown, yeah. which obviously, oh, that means his head as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's fractured his skull. On a sort of like an outcrop of rock. Yeah. And then, uh. Is that still used the brown paper and vinegar? I, d I don't think it is. I don't know, maybe Manchester they're still <laughs> using that, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, Tracy and John Burton say that they, uh, reckon Humpty Dumpty was actually a cannon that used to sit on the walls of the castle, uh, in Colchester where they that, lived. That, that makes sense. Yeah. That would make sense. on the wall. Sense. Oh, I had a great fall. He's one of them couldn't put hands together again. So, it, he had a Oh, they broke the cannon or it meant it exploded. Maybe the cannon fell apart. Because people used to get blown up by cannons just doing it wrong, didn't they? Sure. Which is a hoist by your own petard. Right. Where that comes from. Right, right, Coming right. back and blowing up in your face. So that makes slightly more sense because you would want to send for the King's Men then. Yeah, and the horses. I think the horses uh, just came along anyway. Well, that, well, that, it, no, that was, that was quicker. <laughs> sure. Well, the quick King's Men, it took them about three minutes with the horses there in about a minute. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but I mean, if it blew up, there's nothing I could do. Yeah. So we got to the bottom of that. See, the educational, Carl. See, this is real education. Hmm. You know what I mean? It's got a bit heavy though, doesn't it? What, what, Humpty Dumpty? Yeah, it has got a little bit heavy. Let's try and, let's dumb it down a little bit. What do you want to do? Mary, Mary, quite contrary? We're doing Rockbusters in a bit. Hang on a minute. What? Before you even get to Rockbusters. Oh, man alive, there are loads more verses to Old Mother Hubbard. Are there? I'm gonna digest these while we play the ads and I'll see if there's any salient information I can give you afterwards. Brilliant. Delays. A long time coming on XFM 104.9. With Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkerton for the last time. XFM 104.9. Sad. Um, we've established that Hubbard went to the cupboard, Rick. Yeah. Get the dog a bone, the cupboard was empty. Yeah. As we all know. And so the dog, the dog didn't have any. End of story, so the dog didn't have any. Well, no, 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 no. Oh, wait. Go on, what, uh, what, it turns what, what, out what? there's a, what appears to be something like 15 other verses. Not really. Unbelievable. Well, I'm not gonna go through all of them, Rick. Right. Um, any, 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 um, basically, any information? Well, basically, I can tell you straight away that the dog, the dog, uh, initially had none. Yeah. She went to the baker's to buy him some bread. When she came back, the poor dog was dead. Right, you're pretty upset about that. Yeah. She went to the joiners to buy him a coffin. When she came back, the poor dog was laughing. I don't know what he's up to. Right. She took a clean dish to get him some tripe, yeah. but when he came back, when she came back, he was smoking a pipe. I mean... I got so the dog was winding her up then at the beginning, being dead. I mean, he's pushing his luck. But, especially if she's already depressed. But, do you know, if I was that dog, right, and I live with old Mother Hubbard, Right, all that faffing around. I'm going. I know there's no bones in the cupboard. <laughs> exactly. Right. What do you mean you're going to get me some bread? I'm a dog. Yeah. I don't, I'm not interested in bread. Get get me some hamburgers. Yeah. So I, I, I'd start. I think I'd start winding her up. She went to the hour house to get him some beer. When she came back, the dog sat in a chair. 
See, I just said <laughs> the dog had turned queer. <laughs> yeah. Make it Ryan believe and also it? get a little, you know, he's smoke. Uh, 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 he's smoking a pipe, he's having a laugh. I'm beginning to wonder he's if- He's bent. I'm, he's bent. I'm beginning to wonder if this <laughs> is based on fact though, in any way, because she went to the grocers to buy him some fruit, when she came back he was playing the flute. He's gay. <laughs> no, he's it's, it is the flute, it's not, uh, now this, I didn't even know there was a goat involved. She oh, went to, no. She went to the tailors to buy him a coat. When she came back, he was riding the goat. Yeah, there you go. Dirty <laughs> little, oh, what? She went He's, to the hat, well, she went to the hatters to buy him a hat. When she came back, he was feeding the cat. <laughs> I mean- I can't believe it. So I, I'm, I'm thinking the pipe's a crack pipe. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. You, I think the gay thing's beginning to stand up. Go on. She oh. went to the barbers to buy him a, <laughs> to buy him a wig. When she came back- He was having a frig? <laughs> He was dancing a jig. <laughs> <laughs> he's dancing a jig. You're dancing a jig. Oh, um, he's dancing a jig, smoking a pipe, shagging a go. This is a this is a bit of left field one though. She went to the cobblers to buy some shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they need shoes? I bet they're, I bet they're high heels. Wait but, a second though. But, she went to the cobblers to buy him some shoes. When she came back, you're never gonna believe this. But, he was reading the news. <laughs> <laughs> she was reading the news! Um, Brilliant! She went to the seamstress to buy him some linen, again, don't know why. When she came back, the dog was a spinning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she went to the hosiers to buy him some hose. When she came back, he was dressing his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Why did she want to but this is it? this is the big payoff that we've been building to. Right. The dame made a curtsy, the dog made a bow, the dame said your servant, the dog said bow wow. Right. I mean Okay. I you know <laughs> Um I'm gonna probably do a few more verses okay. during the next <laughs> during song. The course of the show. Yeah. Listen, um, before we move on, I should just say that we've had various people saying what was in the bed and what was the final line of the bed yeah. thing. Why do they care? Uh, it's extraordinary, isn't it? We've talked about politics in the past, yeah. great music, we've played great songs. Yeah, we've got monkey news coming up talking about politics. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Danny's said that apparently it ends with one in the bed, little one said good night. Because he was all he, happy, he had the bed to himself, and there's, Ava, nine of his, there's nine of his mates piled on the floor. Rick, but Ava counters that by saying, actually, one of the better little ones said, come back, because he felt lonely. So, we never gonna get I don't know, this. I don't know, Rick. This is the same as the Kennedy thing. <laughs> it's there's it's the, run there's run. loads of different opinions. Conspiracy we theories. I know, we, we don't know what's going on. But Jimmy Webb be going on. I, 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 I. So, he's, you so you're, 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 these are these Beatles, they're scrolling around, right, you're sort of like watching them. And there's, and then you realise that you want to mate with this female beetle. What do you do? What's your first move? Yeah, but I don't know what beetles do, do I? So I don't know how, how what you do. I don't know if you go up and go, all right, what do they do? How do they get on? Whoa. It's a different world. I, I don't know yet, do I? Because I haven't done it. Would you feel bad, because having your own mind in this beetle, right? Would you feel bad shagging a beetle? Would you feel that that was, that was a bit sick because you've got a human mind? Well, no, you just close your eyes and that, won't you? Think of something else. So, get round it that way. There's no point getting down about it, because I'm stuck now as a beetle. So you've <laughs> got to get on with it. <laughs> but if you're a slug, you said you'd throw yourself in the salt pot. What would you do if you were a beetle if you got depressed? And you see all the other humans. No, you see your mates, right, they got, they're got listening to the iPod. What would you do? Well, no, that's what I'm saying, though. Beetles are different, because they do tend to hang about with each other. A slug's always on its own. It's a lonely insect, isn't it? <laughs> It's not an insect. Alright, what is it? A mollusk. Right, they're lonely. I've never seen a load of snails all together or slugs wandering about. Those beetles <laughs> seem to knock about in crowds. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. oh god! Okay, right, another one. So they're a sociable creatures and it wouldn't bother you that, you're, that you've got the mind of Carl Pilkington in there? Because you uh, can't communicate with these people because they don't speak English. They don't. They don't have any communication with you. Yeah, but if it's happened to me, there'll be another one in there. Okay then. Right. Okay. Um, what would you do, right? <laughs> That's the most disgusting thing. What could it be? Um, right, what What would you do, right? If you were suddenly a fly, right, and you were knocking around with the flies, right, and you had to land on some uh, excrement? Yeah. What would you do? Yeah, but I don't have to. What do you mean? You're a fly. You're yeah, loving but I wouldn't, it. No, I wouldn't be loving it, no, would I? <laughs> Why? Because I'm me in that fly's head. <laughs> so I'd, I'd just, I don't think other flies would be going, come on, join in. I'd just be like, no, I'll, I'll wait here. Uh, wait, wait, watch and that. Because they don't, I don't see why they have to do that. What would you do, right, if you had to go back and you were in a, um, you were, had to go and put your mind in like the, um, an unhatched uh, egg? 
of something. Like maybe one of those, e like uh, that a wasp was injected with a spider. So you know you're in an egg, right, which is really uncomfortable, in a spider. How would you feel about that, Carl? You're a baby wasp in the abdomen of a spider. And I know everything that I know now. I'm, I'm sat in there. Yeah. And now I'm now I'm in a spider as a ba as an unborn wasp. What the fuck am I doing here? What's going on? I don't know what I do there. Uh, probably try and sleep. <laughs> There's nothing else to do though, is there? I just pray to God it never happens. I don't believe it. He's written it down. The Well, that's the jingle that signals it's time for more extracts from Carl's diary, and uh, we'll lunge straight into it. Wandered down Carnaby Street. There was a happy homeless fella. I gave him one pound fifty. I thought of a tongue twister after giving him the money. It goes, "If you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat?" It's good, that. Eh? All Say right. It fast. If you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? Yeah, good, isn't it? Good, that. Yeah. You've got too much time on your hands, Carl. <laughs> Learn some famous quotes to see if they are as good as my sayings. Number one, treat every day as if it's your last. Very famous saying. Now, is that something you do, Carl? Um, but you know, my me, me problem with that one is that if it was your last, you wouldn't want to be doing much. That's, that's the only problem I've got with that. I wouldn't want to, you know, go to a fairground or whatever because you're going to ask me last day, what am I going to do? And I think you'd spend so much time worrying about what you're going to do that you'd end up staying in. I think you're right. Um, you've taken some of the poetry out of it. I think it means live life to the fullest, right? I like the fact that you were musing on the idea that if it was your last day, you'd go to the fair. He's <laughs> 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 getting such a 19th century way of spending your final day. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the thing is, the, the other thing is that um, the only thing that people get depressed about in terms of sort of like, um, you know, life and death is uh, not the knowledge that they're going to die, but more the knowledge that they know they're going to die when they're dying. If someone told you um, no one ever knows when they're going to die, no one ever gets an illness, no one ever gets hit by a truck, everyone passes away peacefully in their sleep, dreaming they're riding a big marshmallow, right? Then you wouldn't care about anything. It wouldn't matter, when, it wouldn't matter if you died tomorrow or in 30 years' time. You'd just live life to the full. You'd, come, you'd, you'd have it every day would be great. You'd go out, you'd come back, you'd fall asleep. That would be amazing. There'd be no stress. There'd be no. There'd be no angsty. Oh, we're all going to die. Stress because it wouldn't matter. Because it would just be your life. Wouldn't it be amazing if someone guaranteed you, Carl, you're going to die in your sleep? I'm not going to tell you when. Yeah, but you'd... some people do, don't they? Well, exactly. Yeah, but we never know that. we're going to because we we stress. What if we get a dreadful illness? What if we, you know? I but know. but we're almost not letting people die naturally anymore, are we? Because we're always bodging stuff up. What do you mean? Well, someone who might naturally die in the sleep aren't allowed to naturally die in the sleep because they wake them up with those electric things and get them going again and pop in a new lung or whatever whilst they're at it. That's what I'm saying. They don't just... You never hear it anymore, do you? Frank peacefully died in his sleep. No, he died on the operating table whilst we were putting in a new lung. They never... They don't die naturally anymore. <laughs> Frank died... Peacefully with 40,000 volts going through them and a couple of people going, Clear! <laughs> Clear! <laughs> Rushing about today. Got to get a lot done as I'm flying to Malaga tomorrow to see my mum and dad. Don't like flying. I'd be happy if they give you a parachute instead of a life jacket. They say Da Vinci invented the parachute as well as the helicopter. He never got round to making them though because he only drew them on some paper. Got up at 5am as I had to get to Heathrow to get on the plane to see mum and dad in Malaga. Went out for a drink with a cousin who lives in Spain. Ain't seen her for 27 years. Oh, that must have been tricky, making conversation. I didn't really bother. Because <laughs> where do you start? I might no, as well so go up to anyone in the street and start having a chat. <laughs> yeah, you have to go further back than, uh, did you want Chantal to win Big Brother? <laughs> yeah. Me dad and me talked about history. I said we shouldn't go on about things that happened ages ago because I bet something similar has happened more recently. Brilliant. <laughs> Read about an island in the Indian Ocean where there are tribesmen still living like they're cavemen. A helicopter tried to land and the tribesmen chucked spears at them. This is what I meant about not having to talk about things that happened ages ago. We have got new cavemen now, so why do we talk about the old ones? People could have lived before, but computers and all that blew up and books got burnt, so all they had left was what these tribesmen have got left. 
ramblings <laughs> and of, that's a the ramblings man. of a maniac. That I mean, that's it. just a few hours before you go crazy with a gun in there. No, but what what I mean there is, right? Mm. Say if all this has happened before, mm. something happens. Again, right? lot of your information from the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> World ends, mm. right? We come back again somehow. Yeah. <laughs> it's the detail you leave yeah. out that makes yeah. you intriguing. Just like the watch that you can wear that uh, tells you when you're going to die. How does it work? Pop it on your wrist. That's yeah. all the detail you need. So the world happened. No. We came back. We. Um, yeah. Have you seen the pictures? <laughs> <laughs> Forget it then if you don't get it. It's interesting that you had all those profound thoughts about this this period in the past <laughs> when they all lived, but you still you still found it uh, appropriate to include at the end of that. It says the tribesmen wave their knobs about when they've had enough of having visitors. That's what's what it said in the paper. That's what happens. They're quite happy. What paper is this that you're reading? It was, it was, in, it was in, like, a paper a couple of days ago. It said, um, they don't mind having visitors if they're bringing them coconuts and stuff that they can eat. Once they've got everything they need, they start waving the tackle about, and that means, like, right, leave now. Which you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, at a dinner party. Uh, my grandfather used to do that. <laughs> oh, did you see that fucking news? <laughs> uh, that jingle is getting more annoyed by the week. Well, this is the final monkey news, right? I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore, right? Because we've we've covered it all. All the monkey news has been covered. It has, it has. We've done, we've done loads of them. I think all the news that needs to be sort of known has been told, right? Um, that is the end of the news. Jesus Christ! <laughs> what? Get on with it. Right? Do you know? Um, we uh, chatted about the monkey that went into space and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm. This was the one that was fed by bananas that came out of a little shoot on the spacecraft. Yeah, it went it went up there, he came back, he could never get that the high, high exactly, again. Yeah. You know mm. what I mean? He tried other things, I think he tried to get a band together and that. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. So anyway, there was, there was loads of monkeys that were signed up to this NASA program. And it was 1961 when this little monkey called Ham, that was his name, as well as him, there was one called Enos. So anyway, what I've found out about it since then, um, Am went up there, did the left-right business with the bananas. Enos, um, they didn't put as much work into the trip when, when he went up there. And something went wrong with the machinery. And do you know how you get a banana for the left button and all that? Mm. It's official it, now. <laughs> yeah. There's two buttons in this spaceship. Banana dispenser and everything else. The right <laughs> button is everything else. But, but it worked the other way. The machinery went weird. Oh no, really? So, so it meant that the right button would give him a banana. Right. The left button did everything else. Oh no. How does so that, so how what did so uh, uh, This is the problem with, with electronics, isn't it? Well no, I don't think that is. Apparently this is the problem. But the good thing, I mean honestly, look it up if you want, this is all online by the so way. So what happened mm. when it all went haywire? What, what occurred? Well, Luckily, Carl, Carl, this is online and it's bollocks. Luckily, um, Enos, because he'd, he'd, he'd done a few trips. <laughs> right, he's so he experienced. was like, well I know this isn't right. <laughs> As much as I love bananas, <laughs> this isn't right. <laughs> so, I was thinking, of course it was. So anyway, so he came back, they, they were all like over the moon with him. He you said, know, I can't work with these conditions. Good mission and everything, well done on working it out. He sorted all that out. Um, it moved on a few years. Armstrong's gone up there, Buzz and that other fella. They've been up there, the, the monkeys aren't needed anymore. Mm. But they were like, we've got all these monkeys who have done NASA training. Mm. <laughs> what are we going to do with them all? Mm. <laughs> and they had mm. to raise... 14 million pounds mm -hmm. to make him like a, a like an old sort of chimp tome for retired <laughs> astronauts. Chimp retired NASA trained monkeys. Chimpanauts. Chimpanauts. Something they've got in there is like a little museum, right, of all the missions and that that they've been on. So they can sort of, even though they're not going to be going into space again, they can almost relive it and reminisce mm -hmm. of the times that they've had. And They're reminiscing with each other, are they? Just, just sort of going, oh, like remember that time when it all went wrong, the button became the left when it should have yeah. been the right and all the rest of yeah. it. Yeah. They just, you know, sort all of old times, talking yeah. about old times and what have you, like old people like to do. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, and yeah, that's it, so if you want... Perhaps we should retire Monkey News to that same place. That's what I mean, so, you know, I hope you've enjoyed the Monkey News and that. That was the, the last one. Look after the monkeys. Uh, do your bit. Because they've done their bit. Uh, that's it, yeah. But just because I'm not giving the news, Look it up. Do you know what I mean? It's all out there. Don't be ignorant. <laughs> Wise words. And the reasons, if I could. Well, ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage Pop Will Eat Itself? <laughs>
<laughs> Carl, have you got like a sound effect or something of like <laughs> getting out of the cheering. We're gonna test. Cheering. We'll seek it out with. Have you got something there? Have a look on there. I'll just I'm just looking in the NME. Uh, for the kind of forthcoming gigs of the smaller known bands, and uh, it might be a useful place to uh, just begin the. Uh, Ladies test. and gentlemen, peoples around the world, will you please welcome to the stage Chumba Awamba? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a sound effect? We got one. <laughs> nice, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage the Parkinsons? <laughs> <laughs> playing in Leicester this week, uh, so uh, I look forward to it. That's them. a good plug, isn't it? Uh, let me see who else. If, if anyone wants to pop down to Leicester to see the Parkinson's, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Cycle Fly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, uh, there's, a, there's a genuine one here. This is someone. It's Simon's uh, emailed, and he says, uh, "Will you just test this name for us, okay, Carl? If you can, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, Coach." <laughs> <laughs> not utterly convinced. No. It's not too bad. It's not too I'm bad. worried about the sound effect. We, st we start to sound like Chris Moyles or something. When well, he, well he's a top broadcaster. Everyone loves him. Losing weight as well. He is hilarious. <laughs> funny, funny man. <laughs> just, there's one more coming here. I'll just check this one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome, this is Chris Knotsford. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, meanwhile back in communist Russia. <laughs> is that a band? I assume so. I assume it's his band. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. Well, how does he listen to us in, uh, hold on man, this is only local radio, how does he listen to us in Oxford? Well, if only there was some kind of digital format that he could listen via the web net. What is well, it? What is the, uh, what is it? What? <laughs> Where does he listen in Oxford? He can listen on Sky Digital. Go on. Channel 864. Lovely. 864. Yeah. And, um, on the, on the web. Yeah. Okay, what would that the web address be? xfm.co.uk. Sure. Click on the audio. Yep. And, uh, you get, you get xfm ten seconds behind it okay. actually happened. Perfect. Uh, just, just out uh, of interest, what's the point of saying that they, if they can't sort of get us in London to listen to that because <laughs> they won't be, and they're, they're either, they're already, they're either in London, so they won't go through this nonsense, or they're in Leicester, and they can't hear a saying Sky Digital. Yeah, we haven't thought that through at all. Because you might work in London for a bit and then have a Go back and spread the word. And like, leave. Yeah. Go back and spread the word of disciples. Move back to Leicester. Yeah. Tell your mates. Yeah, 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 yeah. Soon, any number of combinations. Soon XFM is the most listened to radio station in Britain. Yeah. Mm. Mm. What we need is uh, people on Radio 2 to give it a plug every day. <laughs> That'd be ideal. Yeah, yeah. or Radio 1. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any of the big rivals. Virgin. Yeah. Well, we've often plugged Virgin, it's a good station. 105.8 Virgin Radio London. It's a great station, really good station. Part 1 or 6.2. <laughs> Lovely. You're listening to Magic 105.4. <laughs> Are you getting, you're getting quite a lot of voiceover work now, aren't you? I am, uh, yeah. That's not... I've stopped all that though. Have you? Yeah. Oh right, okay. Yeah. No, it's alright. It's good. Well, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm alright now, I've got yeah. a bit of money. Classic 60s bands, I've just suddenly... Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, The Scaffold! Oh, The Scaffold. You remember The Scaffold, Carl? You picked yeah. the, the lead singer looks a bit like him. <clears throat> but you know whose brother that is in The Scaffold, don't you? Mike McGear. Do you know whose brother that is? What? Do you remember The, the scaffold? scaffold? They did, uh, yeah, we'll the scaffold. drink a drink a drink a little bit of pink a pink a pink a pink a The road human river. Yeah, thank you very much for the entry, yeah. I am. Do you know whose brother that is? Whose brother? The lead singer? No, the Mike McGear in it. The sort of one of the main men in it. He's one of the songwriters in uh, the, no, the Scaffold. Don't. Paul McCartney. He's Is he? Him. Yeah. I didn't realise that. Huh? Yeah, that's Paul McCartney's brother. Think, think, think of that when they go in for Christmas. <laughs> so I think Lily the Pink was what, about 1970? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was number one, wasn't it? Christmas yeah, number one? Yeah, big number one, yeah. I might know if it was Christmas number one. Two Little Boys was 1969, last night. No, it definitely was number one. Yeah, scaffold, but I don't know if it was the scaffold, scaffold one. It was, it yeah. was, it was, because yeah. I remember it was, I did it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So they go home at Christmas and <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. McCartney goes, All right, boys, how are, how are you, Paul? How are you doing? I'm just starting a new band called Wings. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, this is Linda. All right, don't be, sit down. Mike, what are you doing? Just had number one. Brilliant, round of applause. How many number ones do you have, Paul? Uh, 19. Still. We know what we like, don't we? We are drinking, 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 The human race. Paul goes, wow, if you want to. The long and winding. Boring. Oh, we'll oh. drink a drink a wow. drink a drink. Linda, do you want to be in uh, the scaffold? We're probably going to go on tour and stuff. I know you love it. Well, oh, I quite like it. Yeah, no, we'll oh, drink a oh, drink a oh, drink a oh, drink a oh, drink. Oh, 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 oh. well, you're not going to be in wings if you're going to play with him. Well, I got to, you know, make a tricky decision. I mean, that's no, a great song. I'm always loving it. It's Christmas number one. What are you doing eating his bacon? Well, I love it. You don't eat bacon. Yeah, but I love the music. He's, I mean, what? he's a great Stop guy. Stop it. What are you doing? Well, I just, you know, I love the music. We'll drink a drink a drink. No. No, you don't. Yesterday. 
All my troubles seem so... Oh, sure. Thank you very much for the... <laughs> Game three, iron. <laughs> oh, that. imagine that, because imagine they're doing going, well, you've had 90 number ones. I mean, you know, it can be very tight. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah. stay like this with the yeah. scaffold, yeah. I'm going to rule the 70s. <laughs> yeah. If things that carry on going like they're going now, <laughs> the scaffold... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> will you please welcome... Welcome to the stage. Beck. Oh, nice one. Dandy Warhols. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Dandy Warhol. There you are, it's, not, it's never going to That sounds like levellers crossed with w wonder stuff. <laughs> Rubbish, isn't it, really? I mean, well, you know, it's fine, it's chirpy. It's a nice it's, song, but it's, it's, you know, it's not... It's that thing of it's just not essential. You I can't just love don't it. really need it in your life. You, if, it never, if it never occurred, you wouldn't mind. Yeah. You know? Do you know what Carl just said? Go on. Were you listening? Not really. He looked out the window, and he looked at me, and he was looking at me, and I looked over at him, and he looked, I said, see, now's the... T that's... That would be good to die now. No, like, what? He went, that weather, that would be good to die. And I said, of what? He went, old age. Yeah. What's going on up there? He's a philosopher, Rick. He is, He's on it? a different no, plane to us. I say like that, the other week, I came in when it was really miserable, and I said to you, God, can you imagine dying today? Yeah. Because Whereas it's today it's you feel it would be a much better day to die because it's bright. Yeah, the curtains open, sun sure. shining. It's like... I mean, you'd still be a bit angsty about the dying thing, wouldn't you? I mean, I don't suppose that would be alleviated. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> hopefully we'll still be broadcasting, you know, when one of us reaches that happy moment and we can, um, uh, we can check. Yeah. It's quite a lot of emails, Rick, coming in about, uh, band names. I think a lot of people are going wrong for a simple reason. They think it's funny to have an ironic band name. Yeah. They think it's a bit comical. And I yeah. just don't think there's any great bands that have had a comical name that have made it into what stadium filling. What was that band, Where's Me Jumper? What were they called? I don't know what they were called. I mean, the obvious example of one that, that was never going to make it, Spl internationally. Splodgeness abounds? <laughs> Splodgeness abounds? No. I like Spl them, though. Splodgeness abounds? Splodgeness abounds, they were great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Carter the Unstoppable Sex Machine! <laughs> USM. These are some of the ones we've had emailed in. These are bands, obviously, that haven't ma made it so far, and I don't think they will. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, The Lazy Birds. Nope. No. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, The Paper Clips. That's not a real band, That's what is it? someone said in. I don't know, yeah, but no band name is weirder than the others, and also you grow into it. I mean, the, st the Stones and the Beatles are iconic because they are iconic bands. What do you think you'll grow into? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shuttle Rock. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Treehouse Casino. I don't think they're gonna... <laughs> That's just made up! Well, possibly. Well, they all are, but they obviously. All are. But my point is, people say there's yeah. no logic to band names, but if you think of a band name like the Smiths, Great. that's genius. It, is, it yeah. sums up everything that band is about, yeah. you know, the kind of, they're, they're capturing that mediocre world of grim up northness, you know. My favorite, Sonic Youth. Sonic Youth is genius. Nirvana. These are, these are incredible name, band names, so yeah. there is some logic to it. Yeah. I genuinely it's believe it. It's not just arbitrary words. What about the madness? Cure. The Mad Cure. Madness sounds rubbish, well, but they're good, aren't they? Yeah, but again, they're, they're never gonna be... They were never going to be world beaters. But they were a comical band, essentially. Yeah, they, they were, were a knees up party band. Yeah. Madness is fine for that. But they had some great songs as well, and it, uh, but it did, then it then it sort of turned it all because then. I mean, Rick, I don't know how many members. Not home today is a great song. I'm this serious. Is, this is from an email. I don't know how many members of the band there are in Chimney Factory. <laughs> <laughs> but which? If there's five people, who decided? Have they all agreed? Yeah, that's a great. That's the best name. Do you know what I decided? Dell. Right. Well, he started the band and they yeah. rehearsed around his house, so Dale went, look, it's called Chimney Factory because yeah. my granny's doing it. They go, alright Dale, but it's not, I've got some other, but no, yeah. it's called Chimney Factory. I've got, I own the van and the amps. There's paper clips gone, there's a band in Leicester <laughs> called Paper Clips. We can't, you know, we just argue over yeah. that forever. Yeah. And it's just, all I'm saying is think before you name your band, alright? Because it's never going to happen if you've got a comical band name. There was a feminist band called Clitoris All Sorts, <laughs> which right. is quite good, isn't yeah, it? You laugh and then you just think, oh. Yeah. You know, I'm never gonna have that on my t-shirt. <laughs> Imagine that. Clitoris all sorts. <laughs> it's that time of the day now, talking of that. Yep. Um, Song for the Lovers. Sure, it's beautiful. Now, Steve, uh, I mean, I will play great old tunes to the cows come in. We got, yes. we got to give them a little bit of Dandy Warhols and Air and Athlete, I know that, and they're mm. great, they're good, right? But, um, I wanted to play a Cat Stevens song, but I thought I'd better not, because I've, you know, Play that a little bit, and we quite like resurrecting old reputations, don't we? People like Alton John who are, had bad faces, or David Bowie. And, people whose you know, names now are l largely laughed at in yeah. uh, the, the serious yeah. rock or people circles. That people might not have considered. I thought Cassie was like, oh no, Rod Stewart. I thought was he Rod Stewart? Many people now are thinking of the leopard hot pants yeah. and the ludicrous yeah, hair. Yeah, sexy and all those sort of awful stadium sort of disco things. But he wrote beautiful tracks from Maggie May through. And I thought, hold on, two birds with one stone. What about a Rod Stewart song? 
Written by Cat Stevens. Wow. Is there such a thing? The first cut is the deepest. Let's hear it really. Mm -hmm. Now, how did that start? People were going, you've got to give 110 percent. Yeah. I just, it's just my heart sinks and I go, oh, oh, mm. percent. Oh, I say, um, you've got to give 110 percent. I go, I can't. I, I, I'll give, I'll tell you what, I probably won't even give 100 because you never know, but I'll give as close to 100 as I can stand. Yeah. And that's, that's all I'm, I'm saying, it's like a, a drill sergeant. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'll tell you what, I'm going to give nearly 100. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's more than, more than most I think you'll find. <laughs> Maybe if you appear on Celebrity Fact Club. Well, I don't think I need to, do I? Well. Carl, do you think I need to go on that? Hmm. When you had your nipple out. It was a bit- it was pointing yeah. downwards, was it? A little bit. Even, can I though, just, even yeah. though it was erect, it was pointing toward uh, my knees. Can I just, um, point out that we've had more requests for Carl to kiss your nipple than we have answers to Rockbusters? <laughs> Ain't gonna happen. Well, <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> show, Carl. You can't get the punters what they want. Uh, in the webcam, and just a little uh, peck, a little peck oh, yeah. on the nip. A little, little Carl, pet. that is just out of order. The show oh, must go on. You've got to give people what they want. I'm not doing it. Why? Why not? Why not? What's just wrong with lips it? Lips on nipple. What's what? up with lips on nipple? You hear about stuff like this, and then, like, I might enjoy it, and the next thing it's like, Suzanne, can you leave? Because, do you know what I mean? I like fellas. <laughs> 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 that happens, that that happens. sounds like an episode of Kilroy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, am I oh, you this? Pilkington, are you thinking oh, I'm thinking exactly the same as you're thinking. I was reading the papers today. The show's been aired. It's axed. But they're keeping the show on at the same time. It's gonna have a different name, different host. Hello. Pilkington. Come on. Hello, welcome to Pilkington. Oh, Carl, would- what would you do? If we give you a subject, will you just run through what you might say about it or what questions you asked? What sort of stuff? Okay, sort of like, um, okay, um, Steve, Steve's, um, uh, 15, I'm 15 and my dad wants to have a sex change. So I'll, I'll play the dad, right? Um, uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm Jeff. Um, I'm Jeff from Luton. I'm, uh, a 54 year old plumber. And, uh, I've decided, and this is my, uh, this is my son, um, Paul. Uh, Paul. <laughs> Paul, you sure want to be Paul? Yeah, I've got to be Paul. Okay. Yeah. Um, so ask me some questions. So what, what, what's, what's going on? Um, well, I just, I, I'm not happy with this body. Um, I've always felt that I was a woman trapped in a man's body. Have you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and, uh, Very I just, I just, I just, I think I'd be happier, um, as a woman. And, you know, it's, it's for him to accept it, really, because I'd have accepted anything that he wanted to do or, you know, and it doesn't change well, anything. No, I know, but I mean, it won't change anything. I, you know, I still love you and I'll still be your father. Um, I can't believe I agreed to come on national TV. I'm gonna get taken <laughs> <laughs> out of me at school. Uh, really? Man alive. Well, you know, with that, you gotta go through lots of stuff. But I mean, don't don't think of me any different. What does Mum think of all this? Well, Mum Mum doesn't. She doesn't want it really. But I mean, she. I'm not. I'm 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 not gonna throw away the knob and bollocks. So I'm gonna keep that for her in case she ever wants to use that. But I just I just don't want them attached to me. I'm gonna have them off. I'm gonna have some lovely pair of tits put on, and a, a nice little minge down there. But it doesn't. But I'm not bent. Mm -hmm. I still fancy. I still fancy my wife and that. And you know. Okay. Well, thanks for coming in today. <laughs> That's what? your audition for Pilkington. Well, <laughs> what what can I say? I'm not a doctor, right? But what would you want? Well, come on, ask me questions. But what? I'm not going to say with my dad because he wants to become a woman. But we're saying something like, well, dear, yeah, but you I mean you've had a son and he's going through an awful. Should, should you think of him? Shouldn't you put his feelings? Should you think of your son before you go doing that? Yeah, but if I'm not happy with who I am, how can I live a lie? I I, I I'd go through my whole life living a lie just, just because he might go through a little bit of embarrassment. You know, he's old enough. Um, to realise now that, uh, you know, I love him and, uh, I just, I just need to, I just, I just need to have some tits and a minge on me. Well, thanks for coming in. Oh, Christ it's almighty! Well, what, 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 is okay, he, uh, is he a woman trapped in a man's body? No, they want to oh. talk about you. They yeah. have to go there. Yeah, so it's right. disappointing. Possibly my favourite song of all time, after the Gold Rush by Neil Young, and that's for, um, Carl's lookalike, Boyd. Um, who's, uh, actually on Justin Lee Collins' show after us. About five. He's not it? really a lookalike. Oh, he is. Yeah. He's got a bald head. <laughs> <laughs> like Gandhi. <laughs> 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 Gandhi. 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 Ah, uh, he's, well, he's in the toga he does. A little bit. I don't think Andy wore a toga. <laughs> <laughs> no. So what are you, uh... What, what? did he do? 
Oh, dear. We just sat around, to be honest, Carl. Didn't want to get involved. Didn't do much. <laughs> just said, let's not, don't have a go, just be careful. Yeah. Don't go mental, don't start fighting, let's all calm down a little bit. He's the one in the pub that goes, okay, stop this, stop mucking around. Um, we were educating Ricky earlier, Carl, I wonder if we should resume that, as the clock is ticking away. Alright, uh, you've got two bits of info that you could be, uh, leaving the building with today, right? You've got, <laughs> where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, I have that one. <laughs> um, they've brought out this drug or, uh, sort of tablet or something. Yeah, you've got to do it then, yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, researched. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah. which means, like, an eight-year-old woman can have a kid, what do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. What are you no, talking about? You can inject a woman with something, eight-year-old, and it means, you know, she's she's got more time on her hands now and that. It's better to have a kid. She can have a kid later on in life. <laughs> this is real life. Where there's, where there's a real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Right, well, let's just move on from that, because he's clearly drivel. No, no it's, it's not. The, I think it's a bad idea. Of course it's a bad idea. Mm. If it, even if it, I'll give you, I'll even give you that it's true and possible and might no, even- it's, it is true and possible. Okay, it's, been well, it's not even recent, it's like a few, few weeks old. But. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's terrible. No, you shouldn't do it, yeah. Alright, what's the final educating, Ricky? So far, I'm not impressed. Get her a cat. Yeah, get her a little pick Don't get to, her, don't let, let her have a, a child. Yeah, but it's meant to get you thinking, like, like you're saying, well, she shouldn't have a kid. Or... Well, the time is five, she'll try and pick her up and her arms will break. Whose arms? Yeah, on, what's the next one? <laughs> Would she get a breastfeed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she'd be able to do it standing up while he was on the floor. Talking to nipples. <laughs> Come on! There's a lovely juicy pair over there. Okay, I think this is the last show. People should actually phone in and speak to Carl and try and convince no, him. That. Yeah, what's the number, Steve? Uh, oh, I forget that. We've got time. Yeah, yeah, it's answered. We'll, we'll do it during leave the record. It, leave it, leave phone it. in if you want to speak to Carl if you don't number. Call no, in, try and convince Carl with his little nipple. Don't worry. Yeah. Right, what we're doing? Are we, uh, what's the last educating, Ricky? Come on. Um, hook, line, and good thinkers. Brilliant. Okay, yeah, go on. Sounds good. Go on. What is it? Um. <sighs> They've uh, found a lot of fish with two heads. <laughs> what do you think of that? Well, <laughs> don't know. What, what do you mean they found a lot of fish with two heads? Who has? They've been messing about, basically, these scientists and stuff, yeah. and they've said, look at this we can do. Mm. And they're making loads of fish <laughs> with two heads. They actually, they can do it now, and they're saying, that's good, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? <sighs> Alright, fair record then. Yeah, but what do you think? I think if they can do that to fish, they should try and do it to you, and then at least you'll have two brains to work with. Yeah. And we won't argue. I'd love you arguing with yourself. And you end up just, you're walking on the street and you're just head butting each other. Just cracking, cracking Imagine heads the in the middle. squeezing fun you'd have really. I wouldn't know what to do. I'd bang them together. It'd be like one of those Kanakas <laughs> you used to have at the playground on the string. I'd just whack them together. I hit your head on the window, didn't I, to see what the noise meant today, didn't I? Yeah. Just if I had two heads, right? <laughs> <laughs> would I be able to sort of do shifts. Do you know what I mean? Say, say if, say if this is a start or something, they're trying it out with fish and that with two heads. You'd be two different people. You don't, you can't think like you're one. It doesn't make sense. That you'd, if you had two heads, you'd have two brains, you'd have, you yeah, know. Well, that's alright. We'll say if we did the same job, well, we'd, we'd be doing the same job. Yeah, you could. So you could say, right, you work through the night. You'd both, you'd, 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 you'd both, you'd take it in turns to do your job badly and moan about it. Yes, it'd be fine. He's giving it some serious thought. I know, yeah. And so is his other head. <laughs> yeah. But also, they're saying there's like a fish shortage. And yeah. I was wondering whether they're doing like, they're trying to make that better. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, well, as, like as, as, the, as the head is the bit you throw away, it'd be perfect. No, <laughs> but when they do a head count like they do. That's what they do, they do like- They, they, what, they count fish, they get a fish, go, okay, just end the line, one, two, I think you'll find we're one, sir. Don't, don't answer back! Rick, um, I should just point out that I feel- <laughs> Don't answer that! Come on, I think Carl, um, has offered nothing now. I think those educating Rickies were appalling. And the only fish. thing, the only thing that would redeem the show is if he kissed the nipples. Because the nipples! Oh, nipples. Phone in if you want to speak to Carl. Do you have a call in to try and persuade Carl while this record is up? Well, that's the phone. Do you know, the other week when, uh, I came up with, like, a different idea of how we can sort of make the world run and that, 
Can we what? just have a quick recap of that? Because I seem to remember it was a load of old arts. It was, it was ridiculous. It was, um, he was saying that the, 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 the world is overpopulated, so the system would be where people were living too long and stuff. So what happens is people live till 78. I don't know how you can enforce that, right? Yeah. But when they die, they've got a little baby in their stomach, <laughs> right. like a pip in an apple, <laughs> yeah. that then carries on when they oh, die. Right. It, it wasn't a theory. It wasn't an idea. Yeah. It was the ramblings of a you, mental you, you case. You're saying it's stupid, but someone's emailed in and said, oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Just say. If, if, if that's a no, right? I've been thinking about... It is about, a no. What about if we do it the other way, right? Ah, oh, go on. Somehow, I don't know how A yet. kid has an old lady? <laughs> <laughs> is that what it's going to be, isn't it? A child no. give birth to an old man. No. Hey. What I'm saying is, right... Go on. Work the other way round. Come on, then. So, if, if somehow we can inject something... <laughs> In, in like, a, a body that's just died, right? Listen to this! Imagine Shh. this, but with a, imagine this is notes. So when, they ha when he hands it into the Nobel people, yeah. and they go, if there's a way that we can inject something, and they go, well, what? Well, I don't know the chemical formula, but something. Something HO2. Right. So, anyway, so you inject it mm. in the temple. Um, <laughs> He's narrowed it down to the temple. So, what happens? She sort of wakes up, Amazing. right? And she works the other way. So, like, she might be 77, yep. and then she'll have a birthday, she's 76, and she's working that way, right. if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. Are you, are you with me? <laughs> no, keep it. Because, because the thing is, you've got... <laughs> I have no I'm idea. really scared. Yeah. I'm really scared. This is the maddest thing you've ever said. <laughs> yeah. This is madder than the old lady with the pit uh, like an apple in her belly. It sort of did work. This is No, it didn't work. It worked in your head. It's like a dream that you wake up and go, oh, I've got a great theory. This, it's is like... what, this is it. Let me just tell you the, the on, ending, because the ending works out a bit better. Go on. What I'm saying is, when you die, mm. at the age of... 78. Nine months. What? At the age of nine months, because that's when you come out. What do you mean when you die at the age of You're not scared of dying because you're now a baby, so you don't know what's going on anyway. So there's no. Fear. So you've missed out a bit here. So this woman, what, literally gets younger and younger? I think yeah. when she's in her 20s, she's in her old age, Rick. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because that's the, that's the fun part of your life, isn't it? When you're 20 and you've got all your energy and that. So before you die, you're actually having a good life rather than it being the other way around. But does she do different stuff th 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 than she did on the way up? Cos she's already lived 78 years, hasn't she? Don't forget. She was a baby once, and she grew to her ears, then someone, then one st someone stuck a needle in her head and said, right, back you go. No, we'll forget all that bit. All I'll forget all that bit. How do we forget that bit? What I'm saying So is, she died and she doesn't remember all her, all her, this is a new life, is it? Let she, me just leave you with this. Right, you're talking shit, explain yourself. But aren't the family getting younger as well? What's happened to the family? Forget I mean, I it then, we'll leave it as it is. No, we'll leave it as it is, shall we? <laughs> shall we, can we all agree on that, guys, now? Should we, should we agree to leave it as it is, is that alright? Cos I don't want to hear any more from the diaries of Charles Manson. No, it's, it is, I mean, you're a fucking maniac. A friend of mine got a gift, um, or rather gave it as a gift. I don't know if you've been familiar with these. It's a charity organisation, and you go on their website, or you, you know, phone them up, and you can give someone else the gift of, say, a goat. And it's a sort of goodwill thing, you know what I mean? So you buy, you buy an African family uh, a goat, that will help uh, them for years. And it's, to it's come. like you're saying, well, I would have bought you a present. Yeah. But, but I've that, used that money wisely. Yeah, so it's almost like they've given exactly. the present. They've given the, 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 the goat. Yeah, it's a beautiful idea. But I, as soon as he told me about it, I thought to myself straight away, knowing Carl's views on charity and giving, yeah. what, I wondered what his views would be. Well, are, they, are they happy with the present over there? Like the people who are getting it? You, you're an idiot. What, you think an African family uh, wakes up and there's a little goat with a ribbon tied around it and they go, oh, look what Santa brought us. Look, and that mince pie's gone on that glass of milk. You're such an idiot. No, no, no but what I'm saying is, does, does that... Fa does that family want a goat? Yes. But, well, but why? It's when not that they want a goat, it's that they need a goat. Do you think... What right, do you think it. this organisation <laughs> is? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, they're they're giving gonna, goats to They're going to say, oh, I wanted Nintendo. <laughs> what, are you, what are you thinking? Well, what I'm saying is, right, let me put myself in, in their shoes. Well, this will be a first. Any, but, but say, say, <laughs> say I'm, I'm, I'm one of them, right, over there. Right, I'm sat there, it's Christmas Day, right. I open it up, open the present, little goat there, right. <laughs> Now, if I was one of them, I'd be going, not another mouth to feed. <laughs> At the end of the day, there isn't enough food to go around for themselves, never mind a goat.
<laughs> Don't they say like having a having a dog and that is quite expensive? They, sometimes they say, you know, what with all the injections you've got to give it. <laughs> well, I'm assuming it's all of a board. The goat's had its injections. That's what some of the money goes towards. It's just a way of redirecting cash. But, but the thing is, why do they want that goat? What's the main reason? <laughs> to, what? Who? What's the main? What does a goat give you? Milk. milk. Right. Now, wouldn't it be easy to, to just send them a bottle of milk? <laughs> without all the hassle and the headaches that come with it. That's all I'm saying. And the other thing is, think about the goat. That was happy over here. Suddenly, it's on barren land. No grass. <laughs> I'm gonna burst! <laughs> what do you mean? You didn't send a goat from here. I'm saying, who's happy at the end of this, right? <gasps> You've got a fella who hasn't got a present over here because the mate bought him a goat, right? <laughs> So, 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 yeah, let's do this, let's do this properly. So there's a tick. He's not happy, right? <laughs> then, you've got the person who's opened it, who, like you said, wanted something else, right? It's a goat. They go, who's gonna look after this, right? So tick, they're not happy. And then you've got the goat going, what am I doing here? Definitely love this, surely. Have you started seeing this now? Virgin, I started plugging Virgin Galactic. I think it's something like mm. 200,000 quid, mm. and they, you'll get a chance to go in a space shuttle into mm. space. Carl, thoughts? Go into space. Wouldn't it be a fascinating experience to go into space and look back at the Earth? I mean, what, at what point are you all meant to be happy? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're floating about up there, because you, you don't get out, do you? Uh, what, you mean to do some duty-free shopping? I'm just talking, you don't go floating about, do you? You stay in your seat. Mm. Well, they They're probably not... let you move around on the shuttle. Yeah, I know, but I'm talking about getting out. For me, when you what, go you on holiday... you want to get out into space? Yes, but that's what I'm saying. When you go on holiday, the flight bit isn't the best bit of the holiday, is it? That's the bit you've got to do. <laughs> so what I'm saying is you've got to stay on this and then you go back home. <laughs> so you don't take luggage, right? <laughs> I don't see the point. Right, so you're there, you're sat in your own clothes for the whole time, same clothes the whole time. But I don't understand what 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 is the point. I think it's the view. I think it's two things. I think it's the view mm. and being able to be part of an exclusive club. I went into space. Uh, it's it's all that thing about man conquering nature, and and you're one of that elite few that have managed to pop up, see the world from a distance that no one else can see it from, and then pop down. All that way just for the view. Yeah. Is it worth it? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of other places I haven't seen anyway. Right, before I think about that. I think if you've done everywhere, I haven't been to Scotland yet. Right? <laughs> right, yeah. I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? So just have a look in your back garden before you go looking in someone else's. In space. Yeah. Yeah. What would make it a, a trip worthwhile for you? I mean, if you did go into space, if we gave it to you free of charge, we said, Carl, go up I know space. the answer. I know the answer to this, Steve. He's thinking, I'd like to meet some aliens that can talk <laughs> like I do, yeah. and I can understand them, and they can tell me something. Like, like what? Oh, uh, they met God, he was all right. That, that's the sort of thing, that's what he's going to say. He'd like them to look like monkeys in spacesuits. Yeah. That would be his ideal thing. He'd like to go to the planet of the he apes. He would love to go to that. That. Look, he's nodding. He's yeah. nodding. Thoughts, Carl? Well, yeah, that, that'd be brilliant. What would be brilliant? Seeing a little alien and that, having a chat with him, finding out what's been going on. <laughs> Going on. No, no. But, oh. but don't you think that, like, I mean, <laughs> if you bought me that as a present, right, yeah. either of you, yeah. I wouldn't be that happy. For me, that's a little bit like... Well, this, that's annoying, because we've got you a trip to space and together. a goat. Yeah. yeah we... <laughs> Do you know how, like, I'm, I'm sort of, I am interested in sort of going on another planet? Right. Go, you are on another planet, mate. No, no, but do you know what I mean? It'd be, it would be quite sort of interesting. How do you think you'd get there? Well, yeah, you'd go on a rocket and stuff, but what I'm saying is, at least you know when you get there, you're getting out, you're having a bit of a wander. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wouldn't be happy in just the journey bit of it, that's that's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's great, isn't it? But, but the thing is, right, I was because I was looking into it a bit, because I, I was reading about the, the Virgin uh, yeah. thing, right? And I was reading something that in, uh, in 1971, right, three of them went up there, there was one bloke in the rocket, right, the other two wandered off, had a, had a walk about, seeing what rocks they can find. Right? And that bloke who was in the rocket, right, he was the loneliest man ever in the world. <laughs> I don't know what to do. What that was. I don't know what to do. I don't know if that's some sort of profound poetry or I don't know. I, <laughs> I, do, you know, do, you know, do you know what I think he's trying to say? 
he's trying to say he was, by definition, uh, a human furthest away from all other human contact. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I said. Yeah, okay. No, you know, you said loneliest. Loneliest evokes an emotion. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like he started crying and writing poetry and listening to uh, Morrissey records. But what I was thinking is, do you think when he got up in the morning, he still bothered to put his clothes on? <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing that came into your mind. No, when just you because I always, there. you know, at the end of the day, even if, like, my girlfriend Suzanne's out at work and that, I'm not happy walking about with everything out, because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just mean, you know, you never know yeah. if someone's going to turn up... No, I don't like what I don't like. No, I, I, I always pop some pants on or a towel, well, even if I'm alone. Not always. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've knocked on your door when you've... When you've been stood there with no, no he's yeah, taking his trousers off. No, I did it especially oh, knowing right, knowing right. that you were there. I've done it especially to annoy you. Oh, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Do you think he? Do you think he was walking about the rocket with his tackle out? Or what, did he go? Back? Well, you know, no one's watching here. Do you, know do you reckon I mean? it floats up or down? Well, um, if you uh, are the man who was up in a space rocket and was for a short period the loneliest man in the world, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you did with your time, um, how lonely you felt. And also, <laughs> did, you, did you float around um, with your cock and balls out? And the amazing Carl Pilkington. Right, prizes. Yes, them. Rockbusters. Yeah, it's uh, one of the big exciting quiz shows, and this may be one of your last chances to play. There's rumours that it's going to get ditched, Rick. Rumours <laughs> <laughs> uh, that Carl Wilkinson, the creator and mastermind behind it, has always grown tired of it. <laughs> so from the way you heard them earlier on, the very best of the Stone Roses from that we played. Sure, uh, sure. I want to be adored. That's one of the prizes. That's a nice little uh, Christmas compilation. Second hand now, then, really, isn't it? Second hand. Yeah. yeah. Fifty years of the greatest hit singles. I'll tell you, there's some great stuff on here. Oh, Opens God. Rick with uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. One of the, not, one of the big, biggest uh, number ones of all time. If you've not heard that. In Enough already. You're followed then by uh, John Lennon's Imagine, Candle in the Wind, Elton John. You've got uh, all, all on sorts one of CD, Stephen. Well, it's, I think these are some of the greatest things, rock they, minds. They've chosen some of the best songs by some of the best artists. Go on. Uh, Paul McCartney's Mull of Kintyre. <laughs> 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 That's on there. Uh, we've got. Uh, let me see. Culture that is pretty impressive though, because they are real big classic number ones, as opposed to you know the the, the the song by the artist they didn't really care about. You see those things on uh, this is not available in the shops, and it's you know the second second best song artists have done. It seems odd that we're giving it away on XFM because it includes uh, Robbie Williams' Angels, yeah. uh, Atomic Kittens' Hole Again, Spice sure. Girls' Wannabe, Connie Minogue's uh, Can't Get Out of the Head, and I think it closes, well it almost closes with Steps' Tragedy. That's the penultimate track. It ends though. Uh, any ideas? Yes. Big, big hit single. But Do they know it's Christmas Band-Aid? Perfect for your uh, Christmas sure, party. Sure, sure, that. sure. Uh, we've sure. also got the uh, Groove Armada current album, is that yeah, from there? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And signed by the man himself, the Big Beach Boutique uh, DVD, Fat Boy Slim's uh, concert on that Brighton Beach. And uh, there's all kinds of treats on there. Uh, and includes a, um, an audio commentary <laughs> by, Nor by Norman Cook. I don't know how that works. Three hours of him going, this is where the needle almost jumps. Yeah, Watch exactly. this. I did a little bit of scratching. I'm not very good at scratching, but just looking uh, forward to that. I'm putting a, putting a different track. You'll see me there. Yeah. There's the crowd loving it. Excuse me. I'm just waiting to this is where I, I put, I go from, uh, I go from Conga Squad to Basement Jacks. Yeah. Look forward to that. Oh, that's one of my own. I'll pop on what you see there. I've got, I've got Praise You Ready. I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to, that. that was slightly dusty. I've just had to wipe that down with a damp rag. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> look forward to that. Plus, uh, I suppose this is good if you're a fan. This is uh, a box set of the first series of Linda Green. I think a new series starts this week or has already started. I'll yeah. tell you what I found when I was clearing up, Rick, because I know there's not a big movie this week. We normally give away a big movie. Oh. I was moving house this week and I yeah. Find a video that you're more than welcome to if you're a fan. Um, um, no, it stars Kurt Russell. Executive decision. <laughs> I've got that to give away if you're interested. Uh, Executive decision with Steven Seagal in a uh, cameo as well. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I, think it's, I think it's on TV this week, Rick. So if you miss it this coming <laughs> Friday, five? you don't tape it this Friday. Well, here it is on video. Bring videos. it in because I think Carl's excited about that. I think Carl would like to win that, There's wouldn't he? Great prizes well, there. How about if you come up with an extra Rockbusters today? For the for the, like the bonus prize. I don't think I'm the man for the job, Carl. I think it has to come from your unique yeah. take on the world. Carl, you don't. I don't think you've quite worked out why you're funny <laughs> and why things you do are good. Go on then. Right, you ready then? So, uh, just in case uh, you haven't heard it before, I give you some initials of a band or an artist. We're not doing rockbusters now, are we? Yeah, I thought. Well, we've just oh, no, we can keep that going. Then we. Got, well, I, I love educating Ricky. That's my favourite thing now. Well, what, what do you want to do, Steve? I oh, mean, it's, it's just, just, it's just, it's just, it's it's just like you've, it, it's, it's sort of bigged up the prize. And so this be... is only by email. Give the email address out now for people to write it down now, Carl. 
Right, it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Only entries on email. Yeah. You're gonna get three clues, you've gotta get them all right. And you win all the You stuff. win all those prizes, you said. Okay, Carl, go on then. Right, and just a quick example, uh, the th one of the first ones we did, it was like AK and the clue was Exploding Pet. Yeah. And it was Atomic, atomic Kitten, kitten and, right? Yeah. So you understand how it works now. These right. are your clues. The first one, <laughs> um, that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> so that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and the initials there are DW. Do you okay. like some of the questions for 15 to 1? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So that army has got, got some a similar well phrasing. Trench, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second one. Um, what were the initials there, Carl? My person. D D W. D W. Yeah. Right. Uh, the second one. The top of them curtains are all wrecked. All the materials all worn. <laughs> He acts it out though. We've got to get him on telly. We have got to get him on telly because his little face and his so that's, his gestures. And that's the second one. The initials being H V. Okay. The top of those curtains are wrecked. All the materials are all worn out. Right. H V. <laughs> and the final one. Um, here's the final clue. Um, I was in Texas the other week. Right. I tripped and landed on my knees in a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's the initials? W H for that one. So I was in Texas, I tripped up, landed on my knees in a puddle. So that's W H. Incredible. <laughs> He's got it! Is it right. great? It's fantastic! It's okay, right. time to join the record. Time to join the record. Rory, you're playing for uh, these okay. uh, compilation albums. We've got the Fat Boy Slim DVD, Linda Green oh. on VHS. And of course, uh, <laughs> Executive Decision starring Kurt Russell as well. Oh, God! So, Come Steve, on. do you want to pick a winner? Uh, I've got oh. a winner when you give us the answers. Okay, so the first clue was, uh, that army has got some well nice trenches. Yeah. That was DW. Who's that? Dandy Warhols. <laughs> That's brilliant! <laughs> That's brilliant! <laughs> All right. good, yeah. Uh, the second okay. one. The top of them curtains are wrecked, all yeah. the material is worn. Yeah. HV. That's, yeah. uh, Holly Valance. Oh, he got a phone call for a woman saying, I haven't heard it, and she went, she was, he was talking to her off air, and she went, uh, what is it? Uh, so and so, so, them's curtains went, alright. Oh, he said, you know the thing around the top of the um, curtain is a palmet, not a valance? And he went, cut her off. Yeah, but <laughs> my aunt is always making valances on everything. I'll tell you about that next week. Right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Right. Right. Is this the one that farted for five minutes? Yeah, yeah, the very same. <laughs> yeah. Right? So we'll talk about that. Uh, I was in Texas, I tripped up, I landed on my knees in a puddle, WH. Yeah. Uh, wet near Houston. Right? Wet knee Houston. Yeah. So You're a maniac. Bob Dylan. Just like a woman on XFM 104.9. Couple more names, uh, boxing nicknames for you, Rick. Go I think on. this is uh, from Josh. Uh, Ricky Blue Eyes, I quite like. Uh, and uh, he's also put Toad Rage. <laughs> which, uh, which I quite like. Uh, I'll tell you, our number one fan has emailed again. I'm pleased to uh, announce uh, Richard Anderson, Dicky Anderson. He was in touch Anders last week. Back. Anders is back. He loves this show. He's such a fan of the show. And this week he's emailed in. What actually is the point of your show? Is it to confuse, irritate, depress, or what? All of those things, Dicky. Thanks for uh, noticing. Oh, he loves this show. <laughs> he's such a fan. He's such a fan. He's because last week you remember, Carl, He emailed in to say that he'd rather spend his time counting his feet than listen to this show. Presumably he's done that. Yeah. And he's just like, well, how many feet? Yeah. 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 No, but he's, he loves this he's show. Good, yeah, so, uh, thanks, uh, RA. Thanks for listening. See you later. Missy Elliott. Work it on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Educating Ricky? Yeah. Should I do a bit of that? Well, they, they, the, the clues are coming in f uh, furious. The yeah. answers, I should yeah. say. Yeah. 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 So go on and, oh, this is what Yeah, I Rockbusters is well underway, Carl, don't worry, you've done yeah. your work there. Okay. Right, come on. Um, right, educating Ricky. This is my favourite bit now. Uh, You're just gonna tease us, aren't you, with three, uh, headlines if you- And I'll choose one and then we've got the other two as well. Yeah, that's go the way on. it works and at the end of it you learn some stuff. Like I say, I'm struggling a bit with, <laughs> with, with knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at last he confesses. <laughs> yeah. Um, go on. So the three headlines for you to pick from, we've got, um, first one, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> 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 oh, I got a, I got a feeling there's some vegetables involved. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, go on. Maybe. Second one, um, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Okay. All right. All right. And, uh, <laughs> third one, um, <laughs> I'll bake on in the morning, if you're sick of having me a... 
Oh, that one. I'll bake on in the morning if you're sick of having me. Right, here. I'm having that one. That's brilliant. Right, well, it's a saying. <laughs> Do you know, um, cold shoulder? Giving someone the cold shoulder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, if you have someone round at your house and, um, you know, you, you try to get rid of them and they're hanging around and stuff and you're like, oh, I wish, I wish they'd go, I'm tired and that. Well, years ago, um... When? Literally years ago. Well, ages ago. Sort of, uh, Old times. I think it said medieval times. Yonks ago then. Yonks ago. Yeah. <laughs> medieval, yeah. We, we, we're going back quite a bit on this Well, one. you know when you find out these books? Well, they just popped down when it was. Just make a note. I don't think it says all the time, it just sort of says, you know, it, a few years back. Yeah. No, no, it doesn't. Well, Never. Uh, all right, I'll make an effort next week. Okay. Right? So, oh, it's annoying that because my girlfriend said to me, just make a note at the time and he'll stop having a go at you. Yeah. Yeah? And I kind of thought, oh, it, it's all right. Didn't, didn't listen. <laughs> I don't think it matters anyway in this one. We're looking at the saying, right? So yeah. it's giving someone a cold shoulder, shoulder, right? <laughs> and what it is, right, ages ago, uh, there wasn't <laughs> enough houses for people. Right. Because there wasn't much money being made. You know, there weren't big businesses, people weren't earning good money like they are now. So, there wasn't as many houses, right? right. So, what you what you ended up getting is like, uh, you know, the rich people having a nice place to live. Oh. And the poor people were like wandering about, you know, looking for places to live and that. And what they ended up doing is, they had like, uh, people would go around to the mate's house and say, look, I haven't got anywhere to live, it's a bit cold, can you let me stay, right? So, they'd go, uh, oh, alright, then you can stay a couple of days. But they ended up staying for like weeks. Yeah. Right? So, to sort of get rid of them, what they'd end up doing, they'd be making the dinner and they'd, uh, be making a lovely dinner like a uh, bit of meat, nice warm meat and a uh, nice veg, yeah. gravy and This stuff. happened every time, did it? <laughs> it <works. laughs> this is where the saying came this from. Is this is what happened, Rick. This, this is what happened. happened every time. It was in that vague book. <laughs> 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 the book of vague sayings and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, uh, so yeah, so they'd be making a nice meal, but what they did, they looked after all the family, and yeah. the person who won't go home, mm. they just give them some like, sort of a cut off of cold meat. Right. So they'd say, you're giving them the cold shoulder. Oh. Uh, meaning. Right. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's rubbish. Um, okay, uh, absolute. <laughs> Carl, no, why no, no. does that necessarily work? Yeah, yeah. Why do why, why they always, in every situation when you want to get with a lodger, oh, still feed him every day, but make the meat lukewarm. <laughs> so he They always you... leave then. Yeah. Oh, this food's lukewarm. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna become homeless and again, they go, wandering the streets. Are you giving me the cold shoulder? Yes. <laughs> Do you want me to leave? Yes, just say leaving. No, I like I like to do it cryptically. <laughs> that way, in years to come, yeah. someone will have a little saying about it. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that was our bacon in the morning. Uh, yeah. If you've had enough of meat, we'll leave that. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll... <laughs> Oh my god, in the morning! Oh my god, in the morning if you've had enough of me! So, so oh. we'll come back. What are the others? Just tease us again with the others, we'll you've come got, back to these. You've got, he's a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. Nice, looking forward okay. to that. Phones are still going mad. Answer one. Just put with someone out. Kings of Leon, California waiting. He was rude. He's so rude to people. They phone up and they say, oh, kiss his nipple. And he goes, yeah, all right. And he, he hangs up on them. Well, answer the phone. To say to Come on there. Answer the phone and be nice to whoever it is. Be nice to them at least. people on the air. Hello? Carl. Yeah, speak to Carl. What? Why don't you speak about that human monkey that was on the other day? Uh, old news, man. How long have you been listening? <laughs> Can we forget the monkeys? What do you think of his nipples? All right, then. Just kiss, kiss his nipple then for... I'm not going to kiss his nipple. Quid. I'd do it 500 quid easy. Would you? Yeah. Well, why? What, what, why do you want me to do it anyway? What are you getting out of that? Oh, come on, mate. 500 quid. It's worth it. Yeah, but... Um, He's got the money. If you'll probably get more out of him if you want. It's not about <laughs> the money, really. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you think of Suzanne. Suzanne, you'd come on 500 quid and go, there you go. Just got kissed his nipple. 250 quid each. She gives me more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not, oh, it's not happening. Right, it's not happening. Did you, just, like, did you just cut him off then? Well, there's another fella there. Who's that? Who's that? Uh, my name's Linda. Alright. Alright, Linda, you alright? What would make your day, Linda? Um, if Carl actually like, gave it a lick, not just a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> If you're on XFM 104.9, pictures of you, and it's Ricky Gervais, Steve Murchin, and Carl Burlington hosting the final show. Exciting. Which means the last film quiz. Carl yeah. puts himself in a film. Claire's on next week, by the way. And then, uh, Adam and Joe. Yeah. Then Adam and Joe. Brilliant. Adam and Joe coming back. So excellent. Brilliant. They're excellent. Right. Matt Lucas said he'd do a show. Give him a call and maybe him and Dave Williams. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Might Big do things that. Are. Might do that. Yeah. yeah. Very good, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be alright, yeah. Right, uh, the film thing. Uh, just when we get, like, a film, and, uh, I'm in it, right? Uh, so I'm doing, uh, we talked, you know, a bit about gay fellas and that today. Yeah. So we're doing, um, When Harry Met Barry. Okay. <laughs> Alright? Yeah. Uh, and listen to this, and then there'll be a question at the end and you can win some more stuff. We've got DVDs and that. Some more right. Some more good CDs and DVDs and yeah. that. Yeah. Alright, let's hear it. So, uh, When Harry Met Barry, alright? Mm. About 18 hours to come before we hit New York. Brought a few books just to kill a bit of time on the journey. When I buy a new book, I always read the last page first. That way, in case I die before I finish, I know how it ends. I read a book like that once. <laughs> Not on purpose, though. It's just that all the chapters have been put in the wrong order, so it's a bit annoying. Got to chapter one before I realised. Are you finished now? Yeah, I bought another copy of it and read it in Lanzarote. It was alright. Good read. Listen, um, we're only staying in New York for a couple of days, aren't we? Because the place does me head in a bit. Oh, really? Yeah, it just stinks, doesn't it? It's a really dirty city. It's noisy. It's funny, the people who live there call it the city that never sleeps. I'm not surprised with all the noise. I couldn't agree more. Listen, I, I know you're gay in that, right? What, what is the attraction? with New York for you, like, what? Because it is like the, the gay capital, isn't it? They, they all love it. Even that Rod Stewart song, you know, that Killing of Georgie, that was set in New York, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah, well, that song was about a gay fellow, wasn't it, who moved to New York and ended up getting beaten up. Not a great advert for the place. You keep going there. Weird. Actually, I know why you like it. It's, cause it's, it's because it's a city that never sleeps, isn't it? You look like going out late, you sort of run your life at a different timetable to everyone else. Are you finished now? Uh, I'm not being funny, I'm just saying. I just, I just don't think you should live your life like that. Why not? No, it's not getting angry. I'm oh, just... I think I'm entitled to throw a little anger your way. Especially when I'm being told how to live my life. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It is your life. And that's what I'm saying. Don't be dragging me into it. What? Well, you know I'm not gay, so why did you buy me a butt plug for my birthday? <laughs> I'm not going to use it. What do you want me to do about it? I take it back, okay? I take it back. Right. Want to spend the night in a motel? No. Why not? Because you're all gay and I'm straight, that's why. Why aren't you seeing anyone? Well, you, I'm seeing Suzanne again. We only split up for a few weeks when she had that funny haircut that made her look like David Last Lady. It's grown again now. She looked weird, didn't she? Well, but forget that. Anyway, don't want to share a bed with you again. Not after last time. Oh, jeez, what are we supposed to do? Well, this isn't normal, mate. Pull over. All right, all right. Forget don't you... I don't want to talk about How it. How is that pull over. Just pull over here. Fine, but let's... There's nothing, eh? Yeah? Get a B&B. And by that, I mean bed and breakfast. <laughs> Bum bollocks, as you call it. Right? Yeah, one Not interested. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear! Excellent. Oh, little Carl Pilkington. When Harry met Barry, uh, it's a classic uh, film. Let's do what. Um, <laughs> what song was I talking about? That you know. Uh, yeah, we know. Uh, what song? Stuff. Yeah, we got song. Yeah, okay. Artists will do. Oh, the song title. Oh, yeah, know. yeah, okay. Email uh, only ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. We can squeeze in a tune, and then I hope. Oh, monkey news. Monkey news. Oh. oh, what tune have we got? How long is it? Three minutes. It's a nice one, man. Brilliant, brilliant. Bit of Amy Man. Fantastic. Right. Red Vines, Amy Man. We've been playing uh, some of our favourite tunes, and uh, after Monkey News, Jess and Collins, we're going to leave you with one of our mutual favourite tracks of all time. We won't say what it is yet. We won't say what it is yet. It's, it's, uh, it's a little surprise. Then Jess and Collins is in with little boys here and Carl's twin brother. Uh, the answer to Carl's quiz question. Carl, what was the question? It was, what was the song that I was talking about in that, uh... Harry Met Barry. Yeah. With Billy Crystal, uh, The King of Georgie. Yeah, was, Rod, was Stewart, the song Rod Stewart, song. And, uh, Stephen Farron from Essex wins another, um... DVDs and stuff. Right. All right, well, this is the final one. Um, play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee, that monkey news, ya! Yeah. Right, well, uh, this monkey news story, right, it's about, uh, this fella. A couple of fellas in Texas. Yeah. Uh, sort of running a, uh... Running a farm. Yeah. Right. Just because they, they definitely fell as well. Out of order. Can we just. Okay, they are human beings. These two are human beings. The, 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 the running, running this farm and that. And, uh, 
anyway, so they're outside getting the cattle. And they, he turns around, right? He says, that cow's... A couple, a couple of monkeys walking about, so he knows what's going on, right? Yeah. So anyway, so, it's in Texas, they don't know what to do with the monkeys, there isn't a zoo, it's fairly barren there, isn't it, you know what I mean, not much going about. Yeah. So the other fellow who runs the farm with him said, look, we need a bit of an hand, right? So, uh, he said, let's teach them some stuff, and the monkeys were happy with that, because they were lost anyway, right? So they had- uh, <laughs> They had to do. They were bumming around, they were looking for work. They'd hide a motor home. They'd fly yeah. out of their way. Maybe it's like the Hulk, they're like the Bruce Banner <laughs> wandering <laughs> around, going, I need some- need some work. You won't get angry, will you? So no. anyway, right, so they taught them- they taught these monkeys how to ride a horse, right? So they- <laughs> they both got a- Sorry, you, you're sure Charlton Heston's not gonna pop up? Are you sure you weren't horse. watching a video last night and thought it was a documentary? <laughs> They've both got a horse each, right? They've been given like a little lasso and all that. Oh, business. oh yeah. don't talk right. shit, Carl. So, anyway, it's going well, and it carried on for about two years. This, right? It's it like good. you know, r rounding up the cattle over yeah, there and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the two fellows are chatting, going, "It's worked out well, hasn't it?" All right. Well, if there's a hostile takeover and they sort of like buy up fifty-one percent of the shares, so or they said, for this to continue, the monkeys are getting old a bit now. We need a oh, we need monkeys. a little woman, woman monkey in here to sort of get some kids going yes, for like the future farm yeah. people. Farm planning, right? yeah. So they get a little woman monkey. They decided to only to hire monkeys <laughs> why not? Why not? It's working. Why mess with someone when it's not broke, right? <laughs> so they get they get the little woman monkey in. Uh, they have kids and all that business, right? Mm. But the problem was, right, when they first got the woman monkey in, it was like, well, which one's gonna have the woman? Right. right? So they started sort of fighting a bit and what have you. Yeah. Well, because they'd seen the owners of the farm, they'd like Don't guns tell me the baby monkeys didn't want to go into the family business, weren't enough to be a lawyer. <laughs> they had a bit of a shoot off. <laughs> Shut up! They got two monkeys, right? And don't stop! Oh, because they'd seen the owners, they'd seen the owners with guns and what have you. Yeah, 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 no, no, that sounds fun. So they had a, bit of, had a bit of a shoot off. Yeah. That's how, that, that's how they sorted it out. And who won? I think it was George. The one called George. Right. So they had, I think they had 17 kids. The farm's still running. So, that's, that's like the, the last little monkey news, uh, good little Rick, happy end to that one. if you were to rub your nipple against his lips while I held him down? Right, come off it now. Come on. No, I'm not doing it. Bruce Bridgestein, Thunder Road, last track on next FM's Ricky You can check this all out on the webcam. I've got my fingers. Get his arm out of the way, get the arm out of the way. This one's scum. This is I met up with my mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> no! No! What do you mean? Well, oh! he, had his, he had his left hand on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> isn't it? Now what? then, would you walk, w how would you walk, would you be walking backwards, Carl, so that you could walk, so you're basically walking forwards? I or, reckon I'd walk would... sideways so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! He solved it again! He's thought it through! Oh. Got home and read the magazine. There was a story about a baby that was born that looked like a frog. <laughs> what magazine's this? Um, uh, that made the news, that, that was in oh. a proper newspaper in the end. It didn't really have a neck or top half of its head. It would look alright if it always wore a scarf and a hat. <laughs> the world would be a more interesting place if there were loads of different types of humans like there are creatures. Then some people would be good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders, cockroach people, dustbin men. <laughs> good idea, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I Cockroach mean... men, spider men, what are you talking about? Look at some insects, right? Yeah. They don't have machinery. Yet they're getting by, aren't they? They, they, they have their lives like we do. They get up, they wander about, they collect food, they tidy up, they fix stuff, they make their own house. We can't do any of that. So what I'm saying is, why aren't we using them? Why are these cockroaches with all these powers and stuff powers. going about? It's all these powers. But how could we use them? How could we harness them? I just them? told you, dustbin men. Or, or whatever that's No, what you, you mean. said that if they were also men, if they were cockroach men, we where's, the, where's the- You've left a big bit out, but when that one inch cockroach becomes a six foot bloke w wearing a, a jacket- It's just that we always use insects for like a bit of fun. You, you see flea circuses and all that, which is all very well, but I don't think it's getting the most out of them. Woke up at 9.55am. Soon as I woke up, I looked at Suzanne and she looked at me. I said, did I tell you about the immune system? <laughs> 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 
Suzanne started laughing. I said, it's amazing. She said, not now. <laughs> oh, God. It's so I was thinking He's that. Springing into action. He zips up his eyes are like... <laughs> Did I tell you about the immune system? Oh, shut up. Oh, I'll put the kettle on. Oh, God. Oh, fucking hell. Carl, let's give him a list. Top five something. What, what are you interested in? Are you interested in new sport... TV, cars, movies, style. I mean, I'm, in, I'm into weird stuff, but it seems a bit tight to stick them in a list. What, like what? Well, like, fr you know, sort of freaky people and that. I've got that, <laughs> I've got that freak book. But I don't know if they'd be happy if I called one of them and said, good news, <laughs> you're at number one, because you've got four legs or whatever. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> OK, then, this is the Carl Pilkington Top 5 Freaks in at number five. Um. Probably, uh, something not too good at number five, but it's still interesting. Lighthouse Man. Who's that? What's Lighthouse Light Man? What's Lighthouse Man? It's a fellow with a hole in his head. <laughs> and he, uh, <laughs> what he does, rather than moan about it, sticks a candle in it. Shut up. What are you talking about? Sticks a candle in it. What are you it. talking about? Where is the I hole? bet he didn't call himself Lighthouse Man, did he? Well, I don't know. It's just what, what he, 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 he got nicknamed. Because he had this hole. Doctors were like, there's nothing we can do. Can't fill it. Thought, what can I do with it? And it was of the days when there was no electric in that. You had to walk about with a candle. Right. Just thought, hang on a minute. Okay, I'm like, I can have both got a candle holder here. Yeah. Stuck a candle in it. And he just got nicknamed the Lighthouse Man. So again, not I mean, it's not that amazing, but I like the way he, he was sort of energy efficient. Um, so was it in his forehead? No, on the very top of his head. That's perfect. You don't want it in the forehead, Steve. You'd have to walk back with your ridiculous. neck ridiculous. So he was like a kind of human jack o' lantern. Yeah. He's a lighthouse man. What did you see? What, Sorry, what, what, what yeah, better I description do you need than the lighthouse man? So, yeah, he's probably at number five. Wow, that's at number five, Steve. Number four. What about Pig Face Woman of Manchester Square? <laughs> <laughs> Again, you're getting what it says in the tin there, aren't you? Right. And it's just this woman who had a face like a pig. <clears throat> and uh, the rumour was yeah. that it wasn't a woman. <laughs> Someone said it was a pet bear and they'd shaved it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. Oh, was this, this someone, was this someone you saw? Or no, no, you just this, is, this is going back. This is, this, years is, this is years and years ago. Yeah. Uh, when there was loads of, like, weird-looking people. I mean, the fact that it's pig-faced woman of Manchester Square <laughs> yeah. says that there might have been one in... <laughs> Piccadilly Circus. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So there was a lot more of them knocking about back then. Let's assume that um, it was a woman, and the first one, you know, the lighthouse fellow, he's a, he's a human. Do you think people would object because of their disfigurement, deformity, um... A little bit like being called freaks, do you think? Well, it, it gave them a purpose back then. See, if you were a freak years ago, it was work for you. You'd have these circus things. Mm. Now, if you've got a funny head, you're on the dole. Uh, number three? What about Elephant Man? Right. Stick him at number three. He's, oh, he's, he's number three. He's, not, he's surely the most famous freak ever to have lived, isn't he? He's the one who got me into it. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, sure, he's sort uh, of entry-level freak. Yeah. Uh, a gateway freak. Everyone, everyone is aware of him. Mm. If the Elephant Man still existed, right, and you got the opportunity to meet him, and you walked in, a couple of questions. One, what would your first reaction be? And two, what would you say to him? What would your first question be? I would react. Well, I've, I've sort of seen him enough now that it wouldn't shock me. Mm -hmm. So, I don't even think I'd flinch. Okay. Uh, I mean, like I said, when I first saw you, that, <laughs> that was, that was a, a bit weird. Mm. But now, look, I can look at you, I don't double take mm. or anything. Uh, what would I say to him, though? What, what, uh... I'd probably say, where do you get that hat to fit you? <laughs> <laughs> he always had that on. Where do you get that from? <laughs> oh. That sort of flat cap that he's got. Yeah. yeah that <sighs> one, didn't he? So, yeah, I'd have him. So he's at number three. Right. Uh... Elephant Man, number three. I can't wait well, for two yeah. and one. Right, OK, number two. Well, I know two. what my number one is. It's just number two now. I don't know his name, but there's a fella knocking about... Well, I don't think he's around anymore. But he had, like, a normal body looking at him. You'd go, what's up with him? He's not a freak. Takes his undies off. Got two knobs. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. OK. Oh, wait, there's no way to start. Do I you think he, he uses them alternately? Like, I have a way out of this one, I have a way out of that one. Or does he just, like, spread the load so he's weeing out of both? I don't think he knows. What I do you mean he's not know? like a lucky dip. When he goes to a urinal, yeah. he sort of he can have a little bet with himself. He's just like, I don't know what's going to happen here. So he directly holds them holds both them out, definitely. So he takes his trousers down because I mean, you know, he, yeah, he uh, can't use a Y front, right? Be, uh... Need more like a W front. Yeah. So um, he he pops his 
pecs down there. I don't think it's that much of a problem. It's not like, uh... Well! <laughs> I don't know. I'd prefer that than Elephant Man's head. Well, of course you would. Well, that's what I'm saying. What if you had Elephant Man's knob? Yeah, but he didn't work like that, did it? That's the thing. They said he had the body of an elephant. Well, that's the only thing that wasn't of an elephant standard. <laughs> His knob was normal. Whereas with this fella, it's the other way around. Everything normal. Took the pants off. Oh, well, what's going on here? <laughs> But why would you ever take his pants off? No, well, I wouldn't. I'm just saying if- But why- I don't know- I don't know why you'd be in a situation with this man with two knobs standing there with his pants on and you go pop your pants off. You're not a doctor. No, I say if I'm waiting in a- in a cubicle. Yeah. And he's there. For what? Sure, you're I'm waiting, waiting in a cubicle. Have, I'm, waiting have, I'm waiting to have a wee at a cubicle. He's oh, taking two urinals up and going, right. hang on, you don't need them both, do you? He goes, well, actually. Oh, and then have you- a look at this. Right. He's got two knobs. See, I, I didn't see him at two urinals. I saw him at one, maybe them pointing inwards. If you had that, and you, and the, say the first time that you met Suzanne, would you mention that straight up? Would you say, right, before this goes any further, I've got something to show you. Unless, sir, exact, tell me exactly what you would say. Uh, You had normal head then, didn't you? I had, I had the same head, yeah. Yeah, but it had, like, hair in, coming out of it, didn't it? And sort yeah, of like... yeah, but she also had a, a smaller arse back then as well, so <laughs> I think we've both been dumb. Anyway, we need to get to number one. Yeah, number one. Okay, it is. It's, uh, it's Pillow Man. Oh, yeah. Pillow Man. Okay, now explain for those that don't know who he was. He's, uh, he's a fella with, uh, no arms and legs. Mm -hmm. Just a head and a little body. Nicknamed Pillow Man. Well, why is he your favourite? Just because he's amazing. Just the way, uh, he just got on with his life. He used to light a cig. Just using his, like, his lips and his, his tongue and that. Oh, I've and seen not, this. Not it's fully a... lit. It'd buy like roll your own. Yeah, it's uh, it's in the film Freaks, isn't it? Yeah. And he, he, he rolls had a shave it. as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Where did he do you think shave? He, he used to do it? He used to get it in his mouth, and I don't know. Jesus, it's amazing. Did he have? Did he have a knob? I think he did because he had some kids. What? Yeah, he had kids. He was an all right looking fella. He wasn't. He wasn't odd looking. He, you say he, no, he looked like Samuel L. Jackson. Imagine him with no arms and legs. Right, that's odd though, isn't it? Really? Um, it's weird, but you've got to give it to him, you know, I mean, he's, he's there rolling his own, he's pretty cool looking. I just want to say to people, it's no, you say it looks cool to, you know, with no arms and no legs to smoke, but don't forget that smoking can stunt your growth. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, remember, he was on, like, this, this circus freak show thing with, yeah. like, a bearded woman. Yeah. Right? Um, which isn't really a freak, is it? She's gonna have a shave. Have a shave, you're not a freak anymore. <laughs> yeah. A bearded woman. Compared to a fellow who's got no arms and legs, a bearded woman, you don't get out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there was, there was like a fellow with, with uh, no bottom half to his body, uh, called Johnny Eck, was his name. <laughs> uh, <sighs> so, you know, when you're knocking about with that crowd, <laughs> you're gonna get, get a bit. <laughs> you're gonna get a bit. So, yeah, he had kids and they were all normal kids. They had all the legs. Did his and wife had arms and legs? Never saw his wife. Never saw his wife. I think he's. He was probably ashamed of her. She was a bit of a freak. For someone like him, you'd think he'd just give up, wouldn't you? You'd think, forget it. What sort of life is it? Yeah. I'm like a, a Mexican jumping bean. <laughs> it's not like worth him. living. But he just got on with it. He, I mean, to have a shave, I, I don't even bother having a shave sometimes. No, no. Nor did the bearded lady. Lazy fucking bitch. So that's why I've put him at my number one position. Uh, it's just amazing, isn't it, the human, you know, how, how, you know, whatever you dealt, some people just get on with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the pillow man, or draft excluder, as I prefer to call him. <laughs> there you go! Oh! Now, me and Steve are a couple of big shots, we do this for a laugh, but this is Carl Pilkerton's only source of income, this is what you do now, isn't it? This is me full-time job, yeah. What do you think of that? Is it this the... me. Why? This isn't what I ever wanted. <laughs> Because I haven't got a purpose, have I? I'm sat here talking about the pillow, man. <laughs> if it weren't for him, I'd have nothing to say. It just depresses me that I just wish I had a job where I felt like I was needed. <laughs> and I don't feel needed. It's not a proper job. We need you. We no, need you. We but, need you for but, money for old route. Yeah. I know, but this isn't... I, I, I wanted something that, you know, when you get... When you die and that, it's, you know, you get up to the gates or whatever and they say, what have you done? And then I'm looking worried thinking, is the pillow man about? <laughs> 
Yeah, Big Flavor Glass. Day, yeah, Ice Cube. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it talks to me about my life. <laughs> yeah. <in the project. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. A couple of emails are already coming in. Russia, they're flooding in, Rick, yeah. inevitably, uh, as boxing name suggestions for you. This is one from Matt, I think. Uh, he's given a couple, actually. Ricky the Pudding Gervais. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ricky Big Mac Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, the, there's a theme here, Ricky Pasty, please. <laughs> <laughs> the Pasty. I quite like the Pasty. That's it comes great, the Pasty. <laughs> as, as Carl said, he says, the thing is, if you have a really good nickname, it's embarrassing when you lose. Whereas if you just call yourself yourself, it's not so embarrassing when you lose. Carl, this is doing so good to <laughs> my ego. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If you have, like, Killer Gervais. Yeah, and then you end up, like, vomiting. Yeah. Uh, choking on your own vomit upside down, Sorry. hanging out the ring. What happens if you win? Do you have to... Whereas the there goes the pasty being stretched off <laughs> in the first two minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's not such a problem. <laughs> there he is being lightly basted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and chuck down a mine. <laughs> what do you mean, what do I have to do? Say if you, say if you beat Grant, say. Yeah. Say if that, if that happened. Yeah. yeah right. Um, <laughs> you, what, what happens next? What do you mean, what happens next? What? Do you think, oh, this is a, a contention fight for no, the no, big no. one. But do they, <laughs> they, 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 yeah. Well, th then we make Ricky too. <laughs> 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 no, but you know, <laughs> do you know if they're planning on making more money? Because it's for comic relief, isn't it? So what happens on the night? No, it's, it's, go, no, it's for a charity of our Comic choice. relief would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. whatever, right. Yeah, it was last time. I think it was last time. It's sport was... relief, it's not sport It was last time, oh, right. yeah, but this is, I think this is a program where the- and, and how do we, sorry, how does this, how do you make money for charity from this? Do we, do we pay to, to sort of, for how many punches to the head you're gonna take? Or no, no, I just How think long you're gonna last? I assume the BBC donate money or someone, a sponsor or whatever, so I don't know, just right. donate, right. Cause it's actually a program, this is more about a program with a, I think, I see, a, I a charity angle. So, uh, yeah. So as if, if you get, like, killed, there's more money than food to go around. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, no, I mean, the thing is, what's the next step? Because if they go like, right, yeah, well done, you've won, thank you very much. Well, Carl, what do you expect? That, that, that it's winner stays on? <laughs> yeah. Like, in a yeah. fair, where I go out there and I'd let people punch me in the- Right, on Manning. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then my twin gets up. Yeah. What, what do, what, it's just a, it's a program. He's it's not like, gonna turn it's, pro. It's like faking it. Yeah, but what's the point if he's not gonna go anywhere? Well, look- a what, a sorry, him fighting Grant Bovey in a ring is not entertainment enough. <laughs> yeah, what's the matter with you, Carl? Grant's gonna get his face pummeled in, that's gonna be no, hilarious. But, right, when I did boxing at the youth club. Once, right. when he did boxing, he fought once, he fought a little weak kid, cause it was his first day, battered him, next week it was someone else's turn and he got bad and he left. <laughs> yeah, I said, right, I've had enough. But there was, there was, <laughs> yeah. there, there was a ladder there that I had to work. Right, and I decided after the sort of the, the first step, I thought it's not for me this. Mm. Yeah. But if you win, it's all kind of like right. Well, yeah, the world's your oyster. But it's a program. It's just a one-off program, isn't it? It's it's like it is like you got to treat it like faking it. Yeah, but faking it, right? That little gay fella who ended up being a doorman, he's actually doing that as a proper job now or something. He loved it so much. <laughs> Do you seriously think I have any intentions of getting into the fight game and leaving <laughs> entertainment behind? Well, what's the point then? <laughs> what do, What do you mean? What's the point in What's What's the point in watching television? It's entertainment or educational. I, I watch it to sort of soak in. Well, this is educational. I'm learning a lot. I'm actually learning a lot, and it's, I can't believe my luck. I've got professionals telling me, you know, hopefully how to lose weight and punch hard. That's just fun. It's like, like having golf lessons. Right. But say, I mean, here's an example. Go it's on. A, it's a nice way to plug it. We've got rock busters coming up in about ten minutes or something, right? <laughs> Now- Look forward to that. <laughs> people, yeah. people email in, and they don't just do it for fun, they do it because they know they've got some good prizes lined up. Right. So they're doing it because it gets them something. Yeah, my, my prize is that I've learned something in life. I've gone through an experience, and hopefully I'll come out in some way better if I don't get mashed. That's it. That's uh, the prize. That's why we do anything, isn't it? I think this is this is an example of you, Carly. So you give up too easily. Yeah, you, know, and you, you suck up the box and you gave that up straight away. You think there's no point in anything? I did, I did Crusaders for a- I think I, I lasted that out for about four weeks. What's that? Crusaders? Well, he was my mate, right? He, uh, <laughs> he, was, he, he was religious. Uh huh. And I, I'm not, really. Um, but. No, I mean, you believe in ghosts, though, and shadows pushing people off bikes, but go on. But it's the same time. I think I told you once before that I went to the church with this lad because right. I swore and he said he was going to tell me dad. Yeah. That was <laughs> effing and jeffing. So he said, if you come. <laughs> 
<laughs> is that how they get people to church nowadays? I, I, I love that. What kid? That yeah, he hasn't got got uh, got the idea of the protection game. No, there's <laughs> nothing in it for him. Either you turn to religion or I tell your father. <laughs> right. So uh, so I went to church with him and that, and then the next week he said, "I know that was rubbish and you didn't enjoy it. It's when I got kicked out for messing with the tennis ball in the pews." Right. I don't think we've heard that, but I don't think we could possibly <laughs> go into that now. Summed it up. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Well, no. No, we, come on. That's we'll it. come back that's, to that. That's, 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 you okay. had a tennis ball once in pubes. <laughs> no, in the pubes. pubes. In the pubes, pubes right. Yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> I, I went there and I said, I don't think much of this church thing. It's a bit boring. Um, <laughs> Sorry. And so you went to church and you ended up in the Crusades. <laughs> No, the, the it's called, it's the, called crusade? the Crusaders. What it is, it's meant to be the fun part of religion for kids. Uh -huh. right? right. And my mate said, oh, you want to come along? It's, uh, you know, you go on a Friday night yeah. and, uh, do it on a Sunday as well. Right. right. So I went on the Friday night, it was brilliant. He had Sabutio. <laughs> uh, table tennis in this dead big old house. And what do they do right. at the end? Say, I hope you enjoy yourself. Remember, God <laughs> gave you yeah. all this. Yeah. Well, it's sort of, you know, enjoy the simple things in life. You don't need computer games. You can play, uh, table tennis and, mm -hmm. and talk with your friends. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's all right. I it's think you'd right. be happy in a Young Offenders Institute. <laughs> <laughs> You get to clean the uh, toilets there as well. don't forget, Carl, I think God invented Nintendo too. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, so that was all right. I loved it on the Friday. Yeah. I mean, mate, so if you go for four weeks, four, like, weeks in a row without missing a day, yeah. uh, you get a free badge. You know, and like, salvation. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't like <laughs> yeah. all this sort of being stuck in stuff. Do you know what right. I mean? That's yeah. Yeah, I get tied down. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, every day. Yeah. Right. So, um, anyway, so, so you've got to come again on Sunday, so I thought, well, we'll have another game of table tennis, it'll be all right. Yeah. So anyway, I go on the Sunday. Who so was oh. this? Who was this servant of God? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I go on the Sunday. It's like a totally different club. There's no table tennis. <laughs> That's how they trick you. No sabutio. Yeah. They start handing out Bibles. Oh. And it's I like a timeshare like, thing. Hang on a minute, right? <laughs> <laughs> they trick you. So, so I didn't go again on Sundays. I just go on the Friday. Just go on the Friday. Brilliant. <laughs> and brilliant. Yeah. I'm amazed no one else saw through that. <laughs> 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 well, the thing is, there used to be loads there on the Friday, so they, they won't even notice if yeah. I'm not, like, yeah, do you sure. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That I'm not showing up on a Sunday. <laughs> so anyway, uh, carried on. It was just brilliant. this kid in the vicar. Oh, I love that. You, you got one over on the church. So yeah. I, I was loving it, right? Playing table tennis and that. Yeah, and then, no uh, on a Sunday, phew, they found out where I live, and the head fella started coming round, knocking on the door. God! <laughs> the, the He's everywhere, Rick. <laughs> Why did he knock? The fella For likeness. <laughs> the fella who, like, ran the club, he started coming around and knocking on the door. And I saw him coming up the path and I said to my mum, oh, it's the fella from the Crusaders. Yeah. She didn't even know what I was- No. In. She, she, she was thought like, you were nicking hookups about? and stealing cars. She yeah, didn't yeah. have a clue what I was talking <laughs> about. You've yeah. been going to church. You've been going to church. I don't you believe you it. Little bleeder. That's not how we brought you up. <laughs> so, uh, I said, look, just tell him I'm, I'm not in. Tell him I'm not in. And she had to keep doing this and they were coming round every Sunday to try and make me, like, Go, yeah. go on a Sunday, it was yeah. really important that I went and that yeah. I was abusing the system and all this. Anyway, I didn't go, um, and then- Why didn't they just tell you on the next time we turned up on a Friday? <laughs> yeah. No, well, I, I d because there were so many people there on a Friday, you just get mixed in in the crowd. Yeah. Right. Right. It was jammed, it was well popular on a Friday. Yeah, yeah. Right? But anyway, on one of the Sundays, um, it was, it was quiet for a bit, and, um, they stopped coming round. So I thought, right, I can go out again, right, on a Sunday, because he used to avoid hanging around the house. In what sort yeah. of reign of terror <laughs> is, is, is this? incredible. Right. Yeah. So, so I thought, right. <laughs> like the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, great, they forgot about me. Yeah. Uh, everything, I can carry on in sort of normal life now. Yeah. And I was playing out in the avenue, fella comes round. Oh. And he goes, there you are, you, oh, you, you know, you're always busy on a Sunday. Uh, you enjoy Fridays and that, don't you? I was like, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, come on, you've got to come with me. And I couldn't get out of it. No. So, I mean, uh, it's like, what could I say? Charlie says. Right? Yeah. So, um, anyway, he nearly killed me in a car crash. <laughs> So that was the excuse I used next time. He had a Mini, right? And right. he was driving us there, and he hit the curb, nearly sort of turned over the Mini. God. Right? There was like three of us in the back. So, I said- Is that a record? So, next time, was he, it came, a joke? Next time he came round to pick us up, I said, look, really enjoyed it and that. I said, but ever since that journey, I really, you know, I don't, I don't want to get in the car with you again, because he scared me a bit. I right. said, all right then, I didn't have to go again. That's all right, isn't it? That's extraordinary. Yeah. He almost killed you in a car crash. That's terrible. Right? Thank, thank God no one was hurt. Mm. Yeah. I remember that, that- Your life moves in incredible ways. Yeah. Rather like God. Yeah. So, uh, 
Well, they're, prob they're probably round there now, aren't they? Going, is he coming tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> what we got? Well, we'll oh, we talk about the prizes next. Well, let's talk about the prizes. We've got the, yeah, we've got the big game, Rock Busters, it's coming your way soon, Rick. I know you're excited about that. And like, is there more educating Ricky this week? Have you got that planned? There is. We are struggling on that feature a bit now, because I feel like we, we've covered a lot of topics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, I know about hairy Chinese kids. Yeah. And deaf people that hit their head and can hear again. <laughs> so I don't think there's a lot more to learn in life. Right, what's this? Go on. Well, tell them. Go on, just go on, just get on with it, because I just can't believe what you just said. What, what, what are we doing? Are we, uh, the final one? Yeah. Right, the last one. Like it's- No, there. no, no. Say, say the record. Say yeah. the record you played. Hey, go on. This is, uh, Free Association. Yeah, brilliant. Of right. Shadow Wooden Art. Yeah, and what did you just say to me just before this was ending? He just looked- he just looked over at me and went, are there any animals without a brain? No, hang on a minute. No, 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 right, right. And I went, yeah, there's animals that are, he went, oh, I was gonna talk about this, but it's sad. There's a lad born without a brain, and he laughs a lot, and his hearing and his sight's okay. I'll go, well, that's impossible. You, you if, if he was without a brain, all that is impossible. When he went, well, it was in the <laughs> magazine. <laughs> no, it was in a book that somebody sent. Right. And I didn't want to bring it up, because it is a bit sad, really. Now, this, you know, young lad, it is a picture of him sat there with his mum, and, uh, what, uh, uh, Carl! Well, Carl! I forget it. it c it's impossible. Well, there must have been more to the story, He Carl. can't not have a brain. Hearing and sight is a concept within the brain. It's that's all it is, right? Yeah. The ears are yeah. just receptacles. I They're know. just, yeah. So. But, but that's why it was in this book. It was a book of mysteries. Carl, you know, if you. If you, if you <laughs> Carl, if you're <laughs> reading a book and you see a photo and you guess at what you think the story might be, that doesn't make it true. That no, doesn't make I, it true. I looked at it because I thought he looks like an happy lad. Sure. And, and I read about it and I thought. That's weird. Like you've said, the fact that he hasn't got a brain but he can see and he can hear. No! Impossible! Well, uh, impossible. <laughs> okay. Go well, on. I, I, don't, I don't know who to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, we haven't done it for a while. White Van Man. I thought yeah, there's some back, interesting questions back. raised today and yeah. I think it might be nice to well, just put them uh, I think we set Carl up again in the last hour as a person that people want to know yeah, they his know opinions on the world. Yeah. yeah, well, uh, yeah. if you're not familiar with it, uh, on Saturdays the Sun newspaper um, asks a typical white van driver questions, uh, his opinions on the week's news mm. and uh, we thought we'd throw these in the direction of Carl. Um, yeah. Good. And then what do you make, uh, what do you make of, uh, this teenage thug, Carl, Mickey Carroll, who spent four months in jail and he's won 9.7 million on the uh, lottery? Is that justice? When you think of all the good people that are going hungry? And there's a lad there and he's won Did he buy the ticket before 7. he went in? Uh, no, I think he bought it once he'd come out. So he's, he's done his time. He's done his time. Fair enough then, he's, he's been punished. Yeah. Right? He's bought a ticket. He's had a lot of bad luck. Mm-hmm. Now he's having a bit of good luck. Good right. Next one. Are Next you one. concerned that now he's got all that money he could turn into like a sort of mastermind villain? You know, like a James Bond style villain? He's Ooh. got a criminal streak, we know that. Is that a concern for you? Well, well we imagine don't. that he could build we, some kind of underwater fortress. We don't, with, with, with my lawyer's hat on, we don't know that. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd have to prove that he didn't have a criminal streak. <laughs> I say, have you been in jail for four months? Yeah. You know, sometimes but people are bad because they haven't got any money, so he might be just an angel of gold now. Or yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One in five children aged between 11 and 16 go on booze binge sessions at least once a week. That's terrifying news, isn't it? Kids, they, they know, they know too much now. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can spare. To you, yeah. You can spare. Yeah. Yeah, no, right? yeah. Listen to this one, right? Go on. Me, me dad had me, uh, niece in the car, right, running at a school one day. And, uh, she was in the back of the car with a mate and they were chatting away about stuff like kids do. Um, and they got onto the topic of one of the mates who said, uh, I mean, you've got to remember, the niece, this point was probably about five or six, something mm. like that, right? Mm. In the back of the car talking about my little pony, whatever it is they play with. Uh, subject changed. Um, oh, that Lisa in, uh, in our class, she's a lesbian, isn't she? Right. <laughs> that was the to that's what they were talking about. Yeah. Chatting away about it. <laughs> Just openly talking about yeah. lesbianism. And probably, you know, <laughs> this is the topic that they're talking about in the pub when they're having fun. <laughs> Out drinking. Yeah. Yeah, but they might have thought a lesbian was a, a, a you know, a, a funny word or something. You don't just know the, the ins and outs of it, do they? It's, it's weird though, isn't it? Because when I was when I was younger at school, you didn't like. I mean, you swore a little bit, but it wasn't like major swear words. And you sort of did a little bit of nicking, but nothing like to get up to now. I mean, if my my um, girlfriend when she was about seven or eight, just walking to school with her mum, and she called her a C U N. You are joking? No, she said, "Oh, you," because she thought it was a big. She said she thought it was a big furry animal. 
she thought so she was being nice. And I was like, where'd you do that? Where'd you do that? Like, just heard it at school. So they might, you know, they might not know what it means. Well, I tell you, you know, um, I have to, I'm gonna have to use kind of euphemisms here to tell this story, but when I was at school, I learned, you know, the stronger version, it's not the same word, but it's very similar with one letter change. I'm gonna use twit. Yeah. You know the word I'm thinking of. Yeah. But I, I'm gonna use the word twit to replace it, right? And I said, I went round. You think that's what? Yeah. Alright. That's, that's what I'm thinking of. And, um, so can I say it? Am I allowed to say it? No, it's, it's, not, it's weird it. though, because no, hang on, some people are from Cornwall use that like saying twit. So, if people well, listen in Cornwall, you know, I think a twit is a pregnant goldfish. Oh. Well, uh, I I learned the uh, I learned the stronger version of twit. Yeah. Um, twat. <laughs> 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 For those that aren't sure, <laughs> um, I I learned this in school when I was like ten or whatever, and I didn't know what it meant. I thought it was just a stronger version of twit. Yeah. I thought it was just if you were really annoyed with someone because they were yeah. a real twit. Because uh, I is worse than I. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Apparently. So you know, <laughs> Carl would be a twit. And, yeah. um, and so I started using this at home because I didn't realise what it meant. I started using this at home. Oh, you twit, you're a twit. And said it to my dad, you're a twit. You know, I'm yeah. not saying twit. Yeah. And my dad didn't know what it meant either. <laughs> That's great! Like, I believe. So he started using it as well, right? So uh, then we'd be driving in the car, he'd be saying to my mum, you stupid do it. Yeah. And he'd say to my mum, you, are you a joke? Pull over and pull over, you're gonna bum at you. He was saying this. Then I learned at school from Mark Johnson what it really meant. Yeah. Stopped using it, obviously finding out it was quite an offensive word. Yeah. Couldn't, I didn't want to bring it up to my dad. I didn't want to sit my dad down and say, dad, you know that word we've been saying? Yeah. You know what it means? So now, to this day, I never brought it out with him. So we'll be driving. Driving, you know, he'll be I'll go in for Christmas, we'll be driving around, he'll be calling my mum that word. <laughs> Left, right and centre. I think she knows. I think she's just embarrassed. Or she's just upset and she knows what it means. She goes, why does he keep calling me this terrible word? <laughs> but he's the only one, I think, in our family who doesn't know what it means. No one's oh. got the guts to say. I don't know whether I should tell him oh, this Christmas. Oh, what a twat. I know. <laughs> <laughs> good to hear that again. Always good to hear that. Swade. Animal nitrate. Carl was all flustered because there was a, a, a record set up and he's getting all tizzy. He's been more worried about his competitions than sorting out putting records on ready. Uh, what? I'm after sort of Steve's song for a love. Well, I'll tell you what, you, uh, why didn't you carry on with your uh, educating Ricky section? I'll have a look on the, uh, on the scene. We'll keep right. it going, Steve. Yeah, Cover you can go on. Clip. Go on then, right, okay. We've all had, right. uh, we've had a, a few emails. Uh, anyone got it right, Carl? Anyone um, got it right? Yeah, educating Ricky, that's the final one. We've got to get that out of the way. We've got to get Rockbuster as well, we though. We can do that at the end. We can wait. Go on then. But we've only got five minutes left. Come on, just do educating Ricky. Right. Oh, God. The uh, the last one that we haven't done right. is um he's a bit of a nuisance. Go on then. Um again, not not really not really that interesting. Thanks. Um No, like again I, t I spoke to you in the week and I had much better things like when I tell you about Brian Blessed climbing Everest and for some reason it made him uh it uh, played havoc with his belly and what? He followed through and he had to clean up. He shat himself. Yeah, using um using ice and stuff. Why do you tell why are you telling me that Brian Blessed what, what in what way is telling me that Brian Blessed shit himself once in any way educational? Because I was saying how he he, he was climbing Everest, right? Right. I give it to him, he's an actor and that, but he, he gave that a go. Yeah. Right. It played What's the know, point of that, you'd say, wouldn't you? You'd say, God, he's he's you know, He's oh, good. so he's all right. Uh, me, me doing a boxing match for no reason is rubbish, but him climbing Everest and shitting himself yeah, is, is commendable. Right, and he's only gonna, like, go and do it again. He's gonna climb it again. Yeah, but he might not shit himself this time. Yeah, what's the point in going? Nothing's changed up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, it has. They've probably, uh, they've uh, probably cleared right. it up by now. Right, but, uh, <laughs> it, it slip on it. I can't even go telling you this one, cause- Come on! Just be honest, do it! Or do it now! Steve, how are we doing? Look, no, no, never mind that. Look, just tell me what that means. Uh, oh, he's a nuisance. Oh, this is so annoying, Carl. I'm gonna go mental. Right, talk. Right, right listen, I'm just putting right. this in here, right? Right, nuisance is a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. the old fella who used to hang people. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to be able to tell somebody's weight just by looking at them. Right? Um, that's a bit of a bonus fact. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. The, 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 thing, the thing that I wanted to tell you yeah. is, um, money for old rope, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't, even, I can't even be bothered. Yes, you're gonna tell me now. Come on, Carl. No, I mean it. Basically, money for old rope yeah. came from the t right. What was all that about? He can tell someone's way. <laughs> Wasn't that for? Fight. And blind blessed shitting himself. What are you? What? No, don't you. No, tell me. 
that now. You nearly made me swear then. Just, I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed now. Done with this back, Carl. Oh, I'm gonna go mental. <laughs> Come on, Carl. Time's running out. None of people years ago, when people used to be hung, right? Right. If you didn't like the person who's been hung, you'd go, God, I really don't like him. And, to, and so you never forget the time. Because if they're being hung, we take that as red. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so they never forget afterwards to get the hangman to get the rope and to cut it up into little pieces and he'd sell them. He'd sell the little pieces of rope to people. And See, that, you know, so the, Carl, that's the most interesting thing, if it's true, that you've come up with. Right. Okay. And so what's, what's, you, so they, they sell the rope? They sell the rope and it's money for old rope. Money for old rope. Meaning, like, you know, God, it's easy to make money, that, that, that all they have to do is cut it up and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm cynical. <laughs> Why do you need a holiday to you you, you potter around you, you, your big your big day last week was going to the cobblers. So why do you need a break so much this oh, week? It's, it's just that, you know, it's it's good for your brain and that, isn't it? It's, it's it opens well, it up a bit. You are not evidence for that. Where did you go? Grand Canary. For a week? Yeah. Just sitting around? Um, well it, there isn't much else to do at Grand Canary. I mean I, I don't wanna go slagging a place off because every time I seem to talk about somewhere, I get into trouble for it. Right. But it's just a, like a big rock. It's Brilliant. just vol volcanic, isn't it? It's and you must have looked like a, a little barnacle on that. Have you been there before? Um, been been near it before to another rock, which was just. But well, what the you made your fingers burn? Why did you go back? Because you think, well, they can't have loads of these islands that are the same, like just a big rock with hotels on. They can't get away with it. So you <laughs> and think, they well, obviously the next are one, getting away with it. But why, why do you keep going to these places that are rocks? Why don't you investigate first? Ask your travel agent, is this a giant rock? Because, because that's what you do, innit? You go and find out yourself. I mean, <laughs> when, when Armstrong went to the moon, what was he expecting up there? That's a fact, that's a big rock. And he still went all that way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so, know what so, that point was. No, so what, so what I'm saying is though- What do you make of this place? You enjoy it, Grand Canaria? It was I just a big rock, but did you-, you I bet you... the moon was better. Really? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? It was just, uh, well, um, it was big hotel, like big massive places where there's loads of people and you know, you go for your dinner. That describes a hotel. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Me. You've nailed that. But I've been to a few, that sounds like it. No, but <laughs> I thought, so there is stuff going on that I can chat about. Start a diary. Sure. You started a diary? Yeah. And what are you gonna do? You, did you, did you keep it up every day? Yeah, just, uh. Oh, can I read it, please? Well, a diary's meant to be sort can, of. Uh, please, can I read some out on this podcast? I. Carl. Some of it, though, is only relevant to me. It's sort of oh, running. this is. Please give me it. Oh my God. I mean, this isn't. I'm just. Look how big it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh one of those desk diaries. It's huge. It's about a foot long, and it's. Ma oh, that is amazing. Imagine if Anne Frank's had been like that. As she got out. <laughs> boom, right. Uh, everyone would have heard it clank down on the desk. Yeah, but my writing's quite big, isn't it? Oh look! Give us oh, that. Do you give know, us that. Do you know about joined up writing? Have you this heard about is that? No Amazing. Point. Sometimes you can't read it, can you? So it's right, best to okay. look oh, at. Oh look! Oh look! Oh my God! It starts on the first day. This is this is wonderful. Going on holiday to Grand Canaria today. Woke up to the news that Tony Banks had died. There was a piece of on the news about how everyone was shocked. Got me thinking about an invention that was really good. Right, a, a watch. That counted down your life. If it says you've got three days left, <laughs> go to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Told Suzanne about invention. She said she wouldn't buy one, but she said that about the iPod. How uh, and how would this device work? This watch. I mean, how would you uh, how would you know when you were about to die? Have you, is that a concern? Again, not for you to worry about. Presumably the boffins. And no, all I was thinking is that Tony Banks fella. You know, he died, and everyone was shocked about it. But if you had like a little watch on, but how did? Well, you can't just say, "Wouldn't it be good?" How how would this work? Yeah, um, I imagine you in the patent office going, "Got an idea?" They go, "Oh, certainly, yeah, Mr. Bogan. What's your idea? Watch the counting down your life. Oh, how does that work? What? Just just, well, it, just pop it on your wrist. No, no, no. No, what do you mean? Just pop it on your wrist. How does it work? Just pop it on your wrist. Brilliant. You're an idiot. Well, it's interesting that he goes on. The flight to Grand Canary was a bit bumpy. I thought about the clock that counts down your life again, and I wondered if it would know if you were going to die in a disaster. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> he's querying his own, his own delight. He's wondering yeah. if he would know. He's invented this. He's and invented, <laughs> now he's having <laughs> shot. This is a brilliant that. diary. This might be the best diary ever written. Oh. While sat listening to the kinks on my iPod, I wondered if everybody thinks in their accent. I know I do. 
What's what's this? What are you talking about? Just just that, uh, you know, when I when I've been sat there lying on the lounger, right? And I was thinking about stuff. How do you know you think in your accent? Tell me a typical thought. Because because what I mean is, say say if I was like, if I saw something, right? Do you know how I say like, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? That, <laughs> no, but that was I being don't have said. to. But in I, when you think, I don't think the sentence is like I'm saying it. It's just a thought. The thought appears. It's conceptual and it's already there. It's not like um, I go Rick, just uh, looking at a fellow over there, were you? Yeah, I was yeah. Um, I was thinking it was a bit weird. Oh, so was I. I don't, I don't think out whole sentences. Whereas you have, Carl, Carl, li Carl, stop listening to the kinks for a minute. Look over there. More, more cross-eyed people. <laughs> no, well that's, yeah, that's Is that how your of, mind works? In a way, yeah. And Brilliant. That's when it, because, because <laughs> I thought... <laughs> <explains> a lot. <laughs> it's great that he has to uh, think about whole sentences. Cos I thought, that's weird, isn't it? Like, I didn't think, that's weird, isn't it? And I no. thought, I actually think in my accent. And then I thought... Does Stephen Hawking, does he, when he's doing his maths and that, mm. is he, I don't know where he's from, so I don't know what his accent would be like. I think he's from, uh, Kent or Cambridge or Oxford right. or something. Right, so... So you think he might think in his, in, in his... In his voice, in that, yeah. in that voice box computerized thing. voice. Just wondered. Had lunch inside today due to shite weather. Sat next to an old fella. Old men's ears and noses carry on growing as they get older. Suzanne noticed his fingers were fat too. Maybe they continue to grow. Suzanne didn't laugh when I said her arse had the same problem. <laughs> Day three, Cloudy. Did you have a nickname? Um, not not really. I mean, there was a lot of people on the estate that I grew up on. You know, nicknames are, are big things on estates and that. Yeah. Um, a lot of my dad's mates. Right. What what their nicknames did was tell you about them. Do you know how I said about the elephant man's a good name? Yeah. Because, like, you know what you're going to get. If someone said, Elephant Man's popping around in a bit, it wouldn't <laughs> be a shock when he walked in. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, so it, was, it worked in that sort of, uh, sort of thing. You know, so there was, uh, there was John the Screw, right? John the Screw? Yeah. Whether he had sex or not, or he worked in a prison? No, he had a DIY shop. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you had him, right? right? There was, uh, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. Yeah. Which is, oh, yeah. I assume right. it's because he was at the same IQ as you. Yeah. Or, or, or he was in a coma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. There was, there was, uh, there was my uncle, Tattoo Stan. Oh, right. right. Yeah. He had, he had, like, loads of tattoos that he'd just done himself. Oh, my right. God. The, the problem <laughs> was, because he did his tattoos himself, <laughs> the ones on his left arm were really good. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was right-handed. On his right arm, rubbish. Right? <laughs> um, so, so there was him. <laughs> ah, great. And there was, um, Jimmy the Hat. Jimmy who, the Hat? Yeah. Did and he that, always wear a hat? No, he didn't. That, that's, that was the point there. That he, he never wore a hat. That's amazing. Brilliant. How can you pick up on someone never wearing a hat? How would you ever notice? I'll tell you what, I've noticed something about Jimmy. What? Go on. He doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> why, why was he not called Jimmy the Parrot? Because he, he never carries a parrot. <laughs> no, well, that's just the way, I mean, that's how they work, isn't it? I mean, it, it that, that here comes Jimmy Three Legs. Why'd you call him that? He hasn't got three legs. I didn't really have one apart from, um, like, I had a CB. You know, like when you'd go on a CB radio and have a chat to people. Oh, this was a craze in the, uh, was it late 70s, early 80s? Early 80s. And, uh, it was just short band radio, wasn't it? Everyone had these little handsets and they'd speak to each other in the sort of local area. Yeah, it was mainly, I think it started off with like Lorry drivers, isn't it? Yeah, truckers, yeah, because there was that, that thing from like about 1970, Convoy. Was, Convoy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I had one of them and the handle, I had, I had two handle different Handle is your nickname, your yeah, name. Yeah, there's loads of code, code stuff. Yeah. Um, I had, I had a couple, I had, um, there was Pilky O one, because right. like I say, there's a lot of Pilkingtons and that. In Manchester, so if someone wants Pilky O2, it's open. Do you know what I mean? They can have it. And then, um. <laughs> that, is, that is people scrambling for, oh, I, want yeah. Pil <laughs> I want a Pilky O1. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because I did boxing and that. Well, you did it once. <laughs> yeah. I'd, uh, I'd Boxer Boy. Because I thought that that's quite a good image as well. That's kind of like people going, oh, I don't mess with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If he asks what your handle is, tell him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's Boxer Boy and that. Yeah. So. Just had them two, and I used to just go on there and pointless. What is the point of this? Well, you just you just meet people, don't you? And you don't meet people. You say, "What's your handle?" You go, "Box boy." What's yours? Uh, uh, rubber duck. All right, cheers. No, it's but ridiculous. then but then you'll say like, then you go, "Oh, uh, what's your twenty? What's that mean? That's where are you? 
Well, won't you say where are you? Because just in case there's someone who's listening in who, who you know, you hear about this all the time, don't you? People listening, jotting stuff down. Oh, right. So, just in case someone in the world doesn't know what handle means, they're, they're out of the loop. They're yeah. out of the loop. It's hardly the, it's not a difficult code to crack, is it, yeah. if you're trying to track someone? It's hardly the head of the mafia talking to each other because the FBI are on the wire. It's ridiculous. Like, I go, oh, you keep saying that, what's your handle? And they come back with something else. Like, I can't work out what's going on. No, it's like, it's like anything, isn't it? That's what codes, that's what, you know, that's what codes are all about, isn't it? You, Set them up and that. Go on and tell me, tell me the code then. Reveal it long last to the world what yeah. these codes are. Right, so yeah. what's your 20? Where oh, are you? This is better than the Enigma. Yeah. Right, now here we go. Right. How many candles are you burning? Uh, does that mean how big is your car or something like that? Horsepower or something? See? No, that's, that's oh, how old Oh, what are you? time is it? No, how old are you? What, how old are you? Okay. Right. right. Uh, how many candles are you burning, of course? Yeah. So what's the, what's the answer come back? You go, uh... I'm 15. 14. Brilliant. That code, <laughs> that code, it, there's no one gonna work that out. I wish you'd have kept a diary of this, cos this has been fascinating. <laughs> now and again, someone will come in and go, uh, side on, right? What's that mean? And that means, like, there's someone sat there listening into this Ooh. chat and going, this sounds interesting. Yeah, no, it does Unlikely. <laughs> yeah. And they, they want to join in, so they sort of go, side on, you go, side on, bring it in, right? And they go, alright. <laughs> How many candles are you burning? <laughs> yeah. What's your that, 20? That's the code again. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. What's your 20? How many <laughs> yeah. candles are you burning? Oh. And, I mean, it seems to me that what you should have done is make made a note the first time so that when you then speak to them again, you don't need to ask them those questions. <laughs> Can I just confirm that you're burning 15? Athlete in Westside on XFM 104.9, sunny day, 19, uh... 2007. <laughs> it's going so well, wasn't it? Yeah. Going so well, Ricky then, Gervais. Once again, the English language <laughs> tripped you up. <laughs> the, the mouth with the tongue lips. <laughs> exactly. With all over the brain and talk. <laughs> the brain and talk through the throat. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, language is his tool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, look, I think we should do some introductions because I think it seems to me every week we kind of everyone knows who you are because you're you know the face of the moment, but uh, they forget who you know me and the K Man are. Well, with me, Steve Merchant. Hi, and the K Man, who's our producer and friend. And uh, can I just say that I really look forward to this show. Oh. Like, it, you know, I, I, I get like, oh great, we're gonna do a show, and we're gonna play some tracks we like and have a laugh. But now it's I, I'm looking forward to meeting Carl. Of course, honestly, I come in and I see his face and I go, all right. And I'm, you know, I just, just great, like a, just a little friend. Do you mm. know what I mean? Mm. You know when a kid comes around to play with him and you go, oh, and they come out to play and it's like the little friends. It's like that with Carl. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you don't see him in the week, you see, we deliberately stay away from him in the week so that he'll, you know, he'll be yeah. fresh to us. Yeah. It was, go on. You start off friendly, like you did today. <laughs> and as soon as Steve turns up, you start getting nasty and saying things about my little bald head. No, I said, I, look, okay, right, listen, let me explain. Carl was making the tea, and you know those bins that sort of like a round sort of metal Mickey type bin that you can take off the thing? I went, oh, that would make a good little helmet. It would make it look like metal Mickey because it's the same shape as his head. Sure. Right? And I put it on, and so far, so good, Rick. No problem there. That's just two mates having a laugh. <laughs> right. You're putting a bin on another man's head. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So I put it on, and the swing bit, through gravity and the angle, swung and hit him in the nose. Sure. Right? He went, ow! And I went, I said something like, it's all right. Yeah, of course, because <laughs> you were being amused. <laughs> yeah, I said, it's all right, don't worry. Yeah. And he went, no, I've just washed my hair. Yeah. That annoyed me. That did annoy you, sure. Because just because there was lots of, like, shit and coffee and, and horrible... Uh, gunk. In his hair or? No, in the, <laughs> in the inside of the bin. Sure. But what annoyed me was, he's hardly got any hair. At this point, he looks so, like Moby. Yeah, so I said, I, I, I took the bin off, yeah. and it, I was having a laugh, and it, I thought, you, you, you ruined my like burn is what Do you know what I mean? I, I said, what's your hair? I said, we could do that now in 30 seconds. Yes. And he looked at me like I was in the wrong. I know. So Rick, that, that annoys me about I know. Him. That doesn't yeah. annoy me about him. Um, but otherwise, he's like, he's like childlike. Yeah, you know, in so it's many great. He does understand that he's hurting your emotions and your yeah. feelings. Yeah, but but also, right, we were playing football. So I can't play football, right? And so we were playing. Was football. that just in the office or? Yeah, just in the yeah, office yeah. before you came, right? And then um, we were sort of kicking it back and forth, and I started kicking it a bit hard. And uh, but he was quite good. I, I said, I said, this is great, right? And uh, we finished anyway because we thought we'd break some. And um, I went, I bet you were quite good at football, weren't you? And I actually thought, I thought he looked like quite a natural, you know, I thought he'd be good, he's from the north, and I thought he, that's all he'd have. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. And he went, I said, uh, I suppose you were quite good at football, and he turned the quickest flash, I went, I've scored once. <laughs> right? He said, and that's because I was being chased by a bee. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I went, oh. save it. Yeah. He went, no, I said, please, please save it, because I want to tell Steve that. No, you can continue now. Please tell us the rest of the story. You've scored a goal once well, you because stopped. you're being chased by a bee. Yeah, you've done it now, really. It was on the, uh... There must be more the, to that story, <laughs> came in. I was in the school team. I wasn't that good as a kid at football, to right. be honest. Um, <laughs> mainly down to, I think it's because of my dad. My dad wasn't into football. Right. I think that's the way it works, and if your dad's into it, mm. then you could be a footballer when you're older. Sure, yeah. Because you're into it. And, um, so I was in the school team because I got on with the other lads. Uh -huh. and they, let, they let me in the team. Probably got, yeah. Sure. And, um... Yeah, I was stood there doing nothing because I didn't really know what to do. I, didn't, I never knew which way I was meant to be shooting. Yep. Yeah. I uh, got all that messed up. Yeah, I just stood there, right, and uh, with my hands behind my back, <laughs> and uh, something landed on me, on like this part of my thumb. You, got, you can't just point, it's radio. It's this bit here. Right, yeah. Uh, the, the, fleshy bit, the fleshy yeah. bit of the thumb, thumb here. Yeah. And I thought, oh, what's that? <laughs> and I looked down and it was a bee. It was a bee on me. So I start running, yeah. try to get away from it. And bees, actually, something interesting about bees, more chance of getting stung by a bee in windy weather than any other sort of weather. That's incredible. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I'm running away. And he said there was no more. Extraordinary. I've already learned many, many things. <laughs> You're being chased by the bees. So I'm, I'm running. It's on your thumb. Is it still on your thumb now? It's sort of gripping onto me like a stag clever, beetle. Clever. <laughs> I know he's a oh, oh, a bee. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm running, and I, I, I'm running towards like the goal. Yeah. Oh god! And the ball comes to me. Yes. Wallop, get it in. Brilliant. What happened to the bee? Did it sting you? They died, don't they? <laughs> I mean, ultimately it died, sure, but did at that particular moment. Oh, it sting you. This was probably about twenty years ago, so I imagine. No, no, no. Once the bee stings you. So did it sting? It. Yeah, but did it sting you? Though. Yeah. <laughs> right. That was the question. When did it sting you? When I was playing football. No. <laughs> No. Carl, do you want me asking? You say you're on the school football team. Was there just <laughs> eleven boys at your school? Listen, listen, Carl. Oh, what I mean is, at what point in this story did the bee sting you? Uh, straight away After or half time? <laughs> <laughs> Play a record time. <laughs> oh, it's the best. <laughs> Depeche Mode. I feel love on XFM one hundred four point nine. It's about 17 minutes past one on this just... Saturday. Go on. We'll never interrupt me when it's going that well. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what I was thinking of. That was about, that was my record. That was about four or five sentences. <laughs> true, true. They had what I semantic was syntax, there was, there was capital letters, full stops, yeah. grammar, You everything. didn't even get the time out, did you? What Why? time was it? Quick, what time was it? I interrupted you. Sorry, I should have asked. I was so eager. One. XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Smirch. Merch. Smirch. And the K-Man. The K-Man. We're all giving ourselves nicknames now. Yeah. Can I just clear something up? Just, this is only a very, very personal thing. Um, lots of people who listen to the show that I've spoken to, friends of friends and stuff, they think that I'm the guy that plays Gareth in The Office, because my voice is obviously very similar. It couldn't be further than the truth. It's, it's, I'm so, that's so not the case. If anyone's listening, they it think be it's me. Than the truth. It I don't be like want to take credit playing. for Mackenzie's performance. That's a guy called Mackenzie yeah. Crook. He's a brilliant actor. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's seen his performance. It's not me. Admittedly, he has loosely based his accent for the character on my accent, because obviously it's a comical accent. We all admit that. Yeah. We'll agree with that. But that's it. that's where the similarity ends. Yeah. Oh, Ken's is a good looking fellow, isn't he? He's a good looking lad. I mean, that's not a... That's not you're not going to me. I know because no. you're saying I'm a good looking guy as well. You're just you're... saying we're two differently good looking guys. Yeah. Carl, it's all people are all different looks. I mean, you could say Brad Pitt's good looking, and then you could say George Clooney's good looking, and they're both great looking blokes, so they don't look alike. Exactly. So for me to say, um, Steve and Mackenzie aren't alike, Mackenzie's a good looking fella. Exactly. You know, if you did a Venn diagram there, they weren't mutually exclusive. There would be a crossover of good lookingness. Yeah, and I'm in that pool with Brad Pitt and George Clooney. Wow. Well, it's quite a big pool, Rick, and I'm in there, certainly with them. Yeah, not. Yeah. I mean, I'm in one of those Venn diagram circles. You are, yeah. You're over this one. Well, you're in there. That's, I noticed that's a separate one floating off from all the others. Yeah, lizards and parrots. Ah, right. Okay, right. so. It's good to be included in something, though. It's good to be part of a gang, Carl. That's very important. <laughs> yeah. Right, if that's cleared up. Depeche Mode there, and I feel loved. Who would have thought Depeche Mode would have been that huge? I think I think I was seeing those little lads from Basildon with little mm. plinky plonky set. I thought that'd be over. They'd be like Visage or something. Mm. That'd be it. You know, they're stadium rock fillers. They're yeah. huge. They conquered America. He went through some hard times. He came out the other end. Well done. But see, I think this very, what you just said there is a very good example of why they are and, what, and why certain other bands aren't. Because if you think about it, for me, you see, whenever I think of a band name, if I see a new band's coming along or whatever, I always use a very simple test, which is, can you imagine that you're the announcer at a huge event, maybe it's like broadcasting around the world like Live Aid or Nelson something. Nelson Mandela Or concert. it's a Nelson Mandela Freedom concert. Yeah. And you can imagine something. He's there. Like, he's there. 
And Nelson's there. Yeah, with the there. Spice Girls. Oh, they're all there, there. But you can imagine someone saying, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Depeche Mode. Yeah. Like, go, go, go. Ladies and gentlemen, Stones. The Ho! Exactly. But you can imagine someone saying, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Visage. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome our headline act? Welcome, Idlewild! <laughs> exactly. It ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Ned's Atomic Dustbin! <laughs> It doesn't, do you know what I mean? You just know the it. The levelers! Some fans aren't gonna make it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mega City 4! <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's so just it's a simple test. We'd like you to do that at If home. you're thinking of, if you're thinking of, uh, starting a band, or you've just named your band, you're yeah. just beginning, just tell, phone in, tell us, or email in, tell us what your yeah. band name is, and we, and we will use that simple and test. And we will do the test. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage... The Frank and Walters! <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Eat World. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Cooper Temple Claws. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen for those lads. <laughs> it's a good It's one. a simple test, anyway. But uh, hundred reasons, please welcome to the stage. Hundred reasons. Hundred reasons, I think would work quite well. <laughs> We're just going to give the email address: Ricky Gervais at xfm co uk. Nirvana, yeah. in their version of the man who sold the world to David Bowie tune. Yeah. Good. Good tune. Good tune. Taken good tune. from that uh, new Nirvana compilation. I like that version, I like the David Bowie version. You can't decide, can you, Rick? You're torn. In fact, I like the Lulu version as well. Is there a Lulu version? Maybe we should play that one, wow. Rick. Yeah. Was this recorded, what, in the 70s? I think she recorded it about the same time right. as David Bowie. I, I, don't, I don't know if he released it as a single. I think it was just on, yeah, so, uh, off the album. Interesting. Carl, Carl, Carl is... Studying. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the ne educating well, wiki? I don't know, uh... See, like I say, I was lo looking around and there's stuff that is interesting. Right? I was looking on the web... But there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about, uh... Um, what's the point? About a lad who, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that, you know. Where did you read that? That was on the internet. Oh, no. well, yeah. Um, You're always unspec unspecific when you mention it. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in why to see if I'd confuse the computer. <laughs> <laughs> And then, Go! You are... No, I did, I did, no I, honestly. I did a search, put in why, and I ca he came <laughs> up with funny things that, like, why d is this person doing that, why is that... And it had a picture of this eight-year-old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> mm. Mm. You sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> Uh, what, you, I put in why? Just to confuse <laughs> the computer. Like, we were going, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, look, uh, yeah. Uh, Last week, uh, I was walking, um, uh, home with him, and I went, uh, I got, he was saying something stupid, and I went, I've got a competition for next week. Let's do a phone in, and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool. Yeah. Right? And he went, no. No. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing because they say there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> <laughs> we do that, don't we? No, that's, that? no, Who's no, no that? but it, it's rubbish and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius and, yeah. you know, it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius <laughs> and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what would you do there, though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up? What would you do? That lad loves his mum's... His mum's milk. What are you ta what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm just a title <laughs> for the the story. No, 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 no. It's what? just it's just what would you do? Right. What I do you mean? What would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area. Right. <laughs> what area? In in America, I think it was. Oh, America, a problem. Are they? George Bush is worried about this kid well, who's no, breastfeeding right, at eight. Imagine it like this. Right. Right. No, yeah. so Carl, what are you asking me? About this spurious story you saw on the internet. I saw it on the internet. There's yeah. an eight-year-old lad, he likes his mum's milk, yeah. and he's saying, is this right? Should it No, it's not. On? But what, 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 what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility, is <laughs> it? Yeah. yeah. No, but, but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right, you know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry. Right? Yeah. So, oh God. what should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what, so what do you do? I don't know the laws. 
No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws. I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say? If you went up to him and said, "Look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this." Look, I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean? What would I do? <laughs> what, what are you asking me? <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. What are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and well, the I'm public? I'm just saying. Say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right. The kid's hungry. Eight years old. He's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mum, I'm getting a bit peckish. And he goes, All right, son. She whops one out. <laughs> um, and he starts having his having his milk, right? <laughs> you, live, you live next door, you're putting your washing out and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it because it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, because he likes it. And i go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> <laughs> and you think that would sort that out? No, because uh, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah. yeah. No one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's right. nest, right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. It's <laughs> like, you don't see. It got me thinking about things you don't see. And you don't see. <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never... <laughs> Oh, so what? Uh, <laughs> not... you, know, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve, is he's right. You don't see it all. No, I know that's a but, terrible but, thing. So what they have got, right, they've made old man toffees, haven't they? They've come up with burgers. <laughs> Is that a song? Oh, oh God! You don't see it. <laughs> no, no, listen, no. So they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> Look at him. You think he's giving a lecture no, at Oxford? It's, it's not going anywhere. No, go know? on. Sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying. Right. You grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. And now he doesn't look right, so he's having. <laughs> Right. I don't think Werther's originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've mm. noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's original. No, I so think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and gets, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. <laughs> and a damn curly whirly granddad, you old fool. <laughs> <laughs> Electric six, danger, high voltage on XFM, 104.9. Sums up the show. Danger, high voltage. <laughs> and Ricky Giovanni's with me, Steve Merchant, and the amazing Carl Pilkington. So, other things you don't see, Carl? Got any other ones? Or, you've obviously been thinking about this. Um, what confuses you? When you look out your window, what confuses you with the world? What, what do you walk around going, oh, that's a bit weird? I remember. Um, when you were in, uh, Edinburgh, you were confused because you saw someone putting a parking ticket on some rubbish, <laughs> which confused yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. That, that was weird. Yeah. Um, the world's a crazy place, isn't sure. it? I mean, whatever you look at, you can... <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like what? Like what? Well, anything. I mean, you could look out of the window there and you'll see something and you go, why are they, why are they doing that? Yeah. What are they doing that for? Yeah. Um, I'll tell you this, uh, this, maybe we should bring back White Van Carl. There's some interesting questions this week, Rick. Yeah. We could, we could pull that out of the bag if you want to. Shall we do that? Just, to uh, get, uh, Carl's take on, uh, the world's... Let's do it. Let's do it. I'll tell you what, we'll do that in a second. Let's have another Educating Ricky because well, I think you got sidetracked with your, your, your talk of... Well, just the other thing on things you don't see. Look at the way when I went to school, there was two kids with them big heads. <laughs> now, you don't never see them. <laughs> sure. Yeah, but yeah. no one else saw them anyway, Carl. It's only you that saw two of them, not related, and wouldn't hang around with each other because you think they thought it would be too obvious. Uh, <laughs> webbed, webbed fingers and big heads. That's amazing. And there was a kid with a pigeon chest. So. Oh yeah, and the and the the lady with a head like a bag of spuds. Oh, Let's okay. not go through these again. It just that. raises too many questions that can't be answered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right then. So, um, we've got, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. Yeah, go okay. on. Is that the one you want? Let's yeah. go for it. Right, um, I think this was like round the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> bluffing. Um, and. It's bluffing. But it's, it's Who was a, the king then? Mm. Don't know. Go on. But it's, uh, it's about the word bon bonfire, right? Bonfire. Bonfire. Yeah. Do you know where it comes from? No, go on. No. 
Right, what happened is it's got nothing to do with Guy Fawkes and that, which is what I thought when I saw it. It's got nothing to do with that. But ages ago, at 1700s, yeah. right, um, the, um, didn't have enough houses, like I mentioned. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, if that happens, you get people living on the streets, uh -huh. you get so. diseases, people aren't cleaning properly, mm. so you get more deaths. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So, think about it, you've got all these dead bodies lying around. Uh, they're running out of space, because there's, like, I don't know, I don't know why they're running out of space. But, <laughs> okay. They haven't, they haven't got much, I don't know why, but really. <laughs> I was gonna say, they should've just buried them, but... <laughs> Yeah, there's probably more land back then than now. <laughs> he doesn't need anyone else in the room. <laughs> to have, to have a conversation with himself. Yeah, yeah. We could leave and we'd come back and you go and sort it. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, for some reason. They, um, they presumably, if, it, if it's going to be they burnt them, it's presumably to do to. to that it also kills the parasite or, or whatever's carrying the parasite on them as opposed to burying them and not killing the disease. Well, yeah. So that's what that, there you go, you've worked it out. They, they piled them up <laughs> and they turned it into a celebration because there was a lot of fed up people at that time. <laughs> Is it going to be the word bon, meaning good? No, 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 I'll oh, tell you in a minute. Go on. So you've got all these people who are like going around and like, oh, you know, so and so died the other day. And, you know, nearly every week someone they knew was dying. Yeah. So you can imagine like just constant like being depressed. Mm. So, and they've got all these bodies lying everywhere. It's like, oh, God, what are we going <laughs> to do? So they said, we're all too fed up at the moment. <laughs> said let's let's make this a better world. This was 1701 by the time they got <laughs> yeah, together. Yeah. So they said, uh, what we need to do is uh, have a big party. Mm. So mm. they said, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. See what you're thinking. So um, they go right. Well, we'll put all the bodies yeah. in a big pile, mm -hmm. and they're all diseased and that. So yeah. they set f they set fire to the bodies, mm -hmm. yeah. and they, and they said let's uh, have this as a celebration to remember them mm -hmm. by. And you know, uh, we'll we'll have a drink and that, and have a chat. We'll have this big fire going, and it came from bone fire. Ah, right. So bone it was fire. it was it was all the bones. Bomb fire is is bone fire. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. So that's that's how it came about. Yeah, in the 1700s. Yeah, that was. No, probably. So, I, I reckon it was 1600. Probably I, earlier. I reckon probably. it was the plague. Mm, mm, I reckon mm. it came from. But uh, interesting stuff. Interesting yeah, stuff. So that, that's, yeah. uh, Did you celebrate Bonfire Night? Is that a big celebration for you? <laughs> Do you like the fireworks? I sick of fireworks. I just think it's the, they're rubbish. Is yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not impressed. I've never been impressed by fireworks. No. Even as a kid, you know, you have to go to like sort of community kind of get gatherings with a bonfire and fireworks, and yeah. some local vicar or whatever would come out. And but I also think the adults think the kids love it, yeah. and, 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 and if they just got together and said, "Should we go this year?" They'd all go, "No." Yeah, not absolutely. Let's not go this yeah. year. It, what would be better is if the vicar had wheeled out like a massive rocket, yeah. climbed in, yeah. gone last one to the moon as a bender, <laughs> and then fired himself <laughs> off. And that, I'd pay to see. That's a fire display I'd like to see. As it is, it's just oh, rubbish. Oh dear. Yeah. Is that That's your feeling, Cole? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm not keen. No. Sorry, what, what, what clue was that? Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Genius. Let's play the record. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, what sound or noise do you hate? Um, as me or as a, as a worm? I don't know what you mean. What do you mean? Why would, I, why would we be asking a worm? I've never heard an actor say that to James Lipton. When he says, um, what noise do you hate? What, as me or a worm? No, wow. but all I'm saying is because of my last question, that's what I was saying. A bird noise is relaxing to me. Right. Well, it's not anymore because I think of all the deaths and stuff that, that go around that. <laughs> so now you hate the sound of birds. <laughs> I'm just saying it's changed my view on it. It's, so like, it's like anything, isn't it? Every every noise can mean a disaster. Can it? Why would the sound of laughter, people laughing, why would that suddenly cause? Why would that also signify disaster? If you wake up in the night by the sound of, like, a baby laughing. No, if I, had a if I had a baby, right, yeah. and Suzanne was out, she'd work nights or something, <laughs> yeah. and I'd nodded off, I'd put the baby to sleep, Yeah. and then it's three in the morning and I'm woken up by the sound of a baby laughing, that would terrify me. <laughs> I, just, I just think the baby's sitting up in a chair like Chucky, going, <laughs> well, look, the... <laughs> <laughs> I think the baby's reading his diary, <laughs> thinking, oh Christ, this is my father. <laughs> I just hope I'm adopted. <laughs> oh God, a baby laughing! So I went went and had it and stuff, but you had to, 
before you sort of said, right, I want this doctor, they give you loads of forms to fill out, right? And um, one of the things they did was, uh, if you die, <laughs> what do you want to give away? Right, like a donor. Mm. And what have you, and I thought, I, I was, I really thought about it for a 40 minutes or so, I didn't just rush into it, I was sat there thinking, you know, if I'm dead, does it matter and stuff. But I was really concerned when it said about the eyes. <laughs> Right. Right. Why? What do you mean? What? Because can they have your eyes after you die? It was, it was, I think it was fourth on the list. Why do you care about uh, uh, giving your eyes away just, when you're just, dead? Just because of that thing of, you know, we don't know for sure yet. I know that you poo poo it, but the afterlife thing. So why in an afterlife do, do you, would you want your eyes more than your liver and your kidneys and your lungs and your heart? Because ghosts don't eat, do they? So you don't need all your liver and your kidneys and stuff, because they're only there to sort your food out. But your eyes, if you're a ghost, I don't want to be a blind ghost. <laughs> because you're around forever then, aren't you? Once you're a ghost, that's it. So the idea of being blind when you're alive, you go, well, all right, then maybe in the afterlife I might be treated to a pair of eyes. But the fact of wandering about, dead for years, bumping into stuff. <laughs> So, oh, that's an amazing image! So I didn't tick that box. <laughs> but, but, but why, I don't understand, in your theory of the afterlife, why is it that you, you ghost, you, this ghostly Carl, why can he survive without a heart, but he can't survive without eyes? What, why, do you see what I mean? Surely if you're this ghostly apparition, you can just see everything and you can do everything. You don't need no, because, the, the body no, because, because you're a ghost. Think, yeah, I know, but I think when you're a ghost, Say like how they've seen ghosts in, um... Right, could I just say now for any listeners, um, this is not the thoughts and beliefs of the management. There is no such thing as ghosts. I do not believe in ghosts. I do not believe in ESP or any mumbo-jumbo. Carry on, Carl. So when there's a ghost, yeah. When, when, you know, when they see ghosts in, like, old castles and stuff. Mm. Yeah. They've had their head cut off because they've been up to no good, like, years ago. But they're carrying it around normally under their arm. That's what I'm saying. It hasn't reattached itself. So if you tap the eyes out... But Carl, how is this ghostly creature able to function? It's, it doesn't have its head on anyway. It's carrying it under its arm. So the suspicion is it doesn't need its head. No, it, it does. It just happens it, to be carrying it around because it, no, it you know, wants to keep it with it. The ghost it? is always in the last condition that it was in when it was in... Oh, what, who makes it, these rules? The way you are in your last bit of life is how you are as a ghost forever. Even in the fashion. Like I say, the ghosts that you see never wear modern clothes, so they, it's always the Victorian stuff. <laughs> Now, Go. if they could change it, they would, but they can't because they stuck with it. So that's why did you see cavemen eyes. ghosts? When did ghosts start? They didn't kick in till about 1830, did they? What if you die when you're having a rectal examination? Are you always bent forward with the trousers around your ankles and someone's finger up your ass? But why would you die when you're having that done? That's why I'm not having it done. If that's you no, 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 no. But you, it, it might have both been suddenly um, killed in a in a terrible yeah. disaster. Yeah. A meteorite hit you. That's when you get the moaning ghosts, isn't it? That's the other ones who aren't happy. So you're going round, bent forward, going, you've got oh. a doctor's finger up your ass, yeah. and what are you doing? You're sort of going, oh. And that's when you have to get the vicar round. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> they, they have to put you to, to rest and what have you, don't they? And what does a vicar do when he's going, are you go so I, so I get the vicar round, it's years later, it's a hundred years later, you're, 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 you're around this doctor's surgery and there's people coming, and the doctor there, the new doctor there, and it's, it's 2073, and they, they go, Vicar, vicar. They go, vicar. There's a, there's a, a strange ghostly apparition. It's, it looks like an old doctor, right? And he's got his fingers up. This sort of like little. It's like a chimpanzee, but with a shaved head. No, no. But the doctor wouldn't be. Are you saying the doctor dies as yeah, well? They you both, yeah, you both yeah. Die. You die. You die at the same time with his finger up your ass. And so you're forever, you're forever having a little rectal examination with your little trousers around your ankles. Well, that's when it'd be best not to have your eyes. <laughs> Thirteen. He's a teenager then, aren't you? Life got tough. Yeah. How did it get tough? Just straight away when I was 13, my mum was like, you know, oh, it's your 13th birthday, you're a teenager now. Right. And she gave us a quid to go and get a cake to celebrate it. <laughs> Went to the supermarket, got a cake, and I just thought, I don't like the look of this. Don't like the look of the way the future is here. <laughs> <laughs> On his 13th birthday! <laughs> well, you were buying a cake, what, what did what you see at the supermarket? Just, it was kind of like, I don't know, I suddenly felt grown up. I didn't like it. But I think you were always about 58, really, with your outlook. Well, yeah, my mum always said I was old. She said I was an old baby. She said I could frown before I could walk. <laughs> so they always had a bit of a worry look on my face. <laughs> Didn't say much, just always listened. My eyes moved about more than I did. Just sat there looking around. 
looking stressed. Uh, <laughs> the eyes moved about more than I did. <laughs> oh dear, couldn't walk. Well, I can't walk, but I'll try and get a bit of movement in my face. Oh, it's yeah. a workout, a baby workout. Oh, babies, well, if you can't walk, what about your face? Let your face do the walking. It sounds like uh, that horror film. It sounds like Pilkington's baby. <laughs> yeah. Just you lying there in your cot. I didn't like all the stuff that's set up for you. Like, me, me mum tried to send me to, um, like, a nursery. I said, no, I'm not having this. <laughs> Just like that. I said, I said when, I'm older, this. when I'm older and I've got to go, I'll go, but let's leave out this bit. And she said, all right. <laughs> I never that he could reason with her. I know if he's like, he's three years old with a pipe. She's going, you're going to know, she goes, I, I think not, Mum. <laughs> I mean, kids don't play out, do they? Kids, you know, parents are scared to let the kids play out, and that's why the streets are dangerous now. Because no one's playing out on the streets. Whereas when I was a kid, everyone was out on the streets, the streets were safer. Because there was more people knocking about. Right. Let the kids play out. It must be like a constant, like a Larry painting, his front garden, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just loads of people just walking around. There was never around. any problems. I was sort of taken away by some fella. <laughs> who, uh, what? I what? Whoa, 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 no, whoa. no, I was in, I was playing about in the garden. Yeah. But my dad's mate, Tony. Yeah. He did tiling with him. He drove past. And he saw me looking a bit fed up, so he just leant over, picked me up, took me to the pub. Now the thing is, he wasn't panicked. People weren't going, oh God, where's Carl gone? He's out. Just, just. How old were you? He's down in the pub. <laughs> yeah, he's, four, he's four years old. Yeah. <laughs> that... well, he's only having a. He's down in the pub with Tony, probably playing darts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was about three or four. Sorry, so some bloke drives by who happens to be a friend of your dad's, thinks that baby looks grumpy. Yeah. I'm taking him down but to the that's, pub. that's what it Tony, was like. you bringing a baby to the pub? Uh, yeah, I might do, yeah, we'll bring in ours. <laughs> Alright, see you later, mate. Well, that's what I'm saying, whereas now they go, the baby's gone, there's a big full-on panic going yeah, on. Yeah, but I think it says more about your parents they didn't do that. They looked out of the van car <laughs> and you were gone. Some bloke's driving off in a van, and they're just going, yeah. oh, help. Oh. They rode down the pub. Uh, Doesn't Princess Diana look lovely? <laughs> This is absurd. So what happened when you got in the pub? I just was there for a bit, and then uh, the for, for a bit, just had a game of pool. Then my dad came in. It was like, oh, there you are. Mm. Oh, there you are! I love that. Oh, where's my baby? Going to I'm just gonna have a quick pint now. Oh, there you are. <laughs> All right, mate. So, uh, yeah, I think things were better back then. I met up with my mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> He had, his, he had his left hand on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Now then, would you walk, how would you walk? Would you be walking backwards, Carl, so that you could walk, so you're basically walking forwards? I reckon or, I'd walk sideways so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like... <laughs> home and read the magazine. There was a story about a baby that was born that looked like a frog. <laughs> what magazine's this? Uh, that made the news, that. that was in oh. a proper newspaper in the end. It didn't really have a neck or top half of its head. It would look alright if it always wore a scarf and a hat. <laughs> the world would be a more interesting place if there were loads of different types of humans like there are creatures. Then some people would be good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders, cockroach people, dustbin men. <laughs> good idea, isn't it? Fortune Faded by uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9 with Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkerton for the last time. Yes, we've said that before, of course. So yeah. get your hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had some highs, there's some lows, some laughs, some yeah, tears. Carl, you're concentrating. Lots of tears, mainly from the audiences. Yeah. Now, uh, before we get into that, before we get into talking about maybe some of the hijinks we've had, looking back, looking forward as well. Yeah. Uh, I came in, Carl was sitting at the desk, he went, alright, I went, alright, he went, see that Alan Clark Diaries? I went, no, I didn't, he went, uh, no, 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 a lot of people talking about it, he went, I've never kept a diary, <laughs> keeping a diary will always get you into trouble, <laughs> and I said, like Anne Frank, what did you say, Carl? The woman in the cupboard? That's what he said. The woman in the cupboard? And I went, save it. Save it. You nev never speak to Carl off air. Save it all for him when we're on the wireless. He went, but what does she do? What does she do except be in a cupboard? What does <laughs> she have to write about? And I said, well, her thoughts. Do you know, do you know Anne Frank? That's all, all I know about Anne is. There's no point pretending it. Anne! That I know <laughs> stuff. Yeah. 
Right, um. Well, did, did, tell us everything you know about Anne Frank. Uh, she was in a cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what else? If she didn't do that, I wouldn't know about her, seriously. <laughs> That's all I know about her. <laughs> yeah. So what did she do? But what do you think you know we, kn we know about, we know about her cupboard because of her book. Don't we? But hang on, what, what, in the bigger scheme of things, why was she in a cupboard? I, I, I don't know. Right. I honestly don't know. You don't know anything else about Anne Frank beyond the fact that, to quote you, she was in a cupboard. Well, what's she done then? You tell me. Why should I know more about Firstly, her? Firstly, I don't think she was in a cupboard. <laughs> she wasn't in a cupboard. She was in an attic. All right. Yeah. So yeah. what was she doing? She was hiding from the Tidy Nazis. <laughs> she was hiding from the Nazis. Well, isn't that the first place to look? Sort of <laughs> <laughs> work, work from the top down. <laughs> Oh, they weren't specifically looking for Anne Frank. <laughs> they weren't going, where is she? Where is Frank? If she gets that book out, we are <laughs> in the deep shit. We've got to stop the book. <laughs> they were just looking generally. Uh, she well, was, I think she was, what, she, she was 13, 14, she was yes. hiding, she was Jewish and she was hiding, just in Amsterdam, didn't she? Yeah, as much of her family were having to hide, being yeah. helped by, you know, friends, yeah. non-Jewish. In, in a cupboard. In a, I mean, a cupboard, cupboards, you know. And how long, you know, how long did she... Sort of hide up there for. Until so she was caught. Long enough to write a book. So she even got caught after all that. What do you mean, so she even got caught? We're talking about one of the great, you know, humanist tragedies of our times, and you're going, she couldn't even stay hidden. What do you mean, did she get caught? No, I'm just saying, uh, like, you know, it's not a great tip then, is it? Do you know what I mean? She didn't do it well. She didn't hide until I escaped it. She her diary's not a manual on how to hide from people. <laughs> it's not how to win <laughs> I, I don't know seat. anything about her. And we might be going down the, 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 some ground that's a bit dodgy. I don't know enough about it. Maybe it's best just leaving it. All I was saying is yeah. diaries, you know, what, what do you do them for? Have you kept them, Steve? Never kept a diary, no. Right. I can understand your fear that it might get discovered. Someone might read it, find out all about your inner secrets. Of course, the good thing about you is you tell everyone what you think about them. Yeah. Yeah, but no. yeah, there's, there's, no one's gonna find a diary and go, oh god, I can't believe it. Carl doesn't like my haircut. Yeah, yeah. Carl think, Carl thinks I look like Dave Hill from Slade. Yeah, I told you that, didn't I? Yeah, I told you that. Do you think they'll last though, diaries and that? <laughs> no, because they were a bit of a time killer, weren't they? It was something to do at the end of the day, whereas now there's iPods and that. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's fantastic! The iPod, I mean. the iPod of Anne Frank. Yeah. yeah the I mean. new from Sony. That'd yeah. be great, wouldn't it? All the greatest hits. <laughs> Who could forget? <laughs> oh. Well, dear. I didn't believe that then. I didn't know it was that? that deep. I thought it was just like a, you know. You thought it was like, didn't you? Adrian Mole type did, thing. Did, did, <laughs> <laughs> well, what are we doing? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thorns. From my favourite album of last year, that. And, uh, I can't remember. We'll be doing a bit of that, playing some of our favourite songs. We've, uh, got a couple of requests. Oh, in fact, yeah. yeah, got a One of the celebrity requests, Matt Lucas from, oh, yeah. uh, Little Britain, is yeah. listening in. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, is it your last show? I said, yeah. And I said, do you want me to play a record? And he said, what's your favourite group? Guess Matt Lucas's favourite group. Now, remember, him and David are the new darlings of comedy. Yeah. They're cool, they're trendy, everyone lo loves Little Britain, they're comedy geniuses, they're only gonna get bigger. What's his favourite group of all time? Um, oh, that is tricky. Uh, level 42. Uh, no. Carl, have a guess. Well, there's gotta be something weird in it if you're saying this. Well. So, uh, how old, how old's the band? Uh, they're probably about as old as him. Oh, no, no. oh, Carl, have a guess. Abba. No, it's, uh, why'd you say Abba? They're good, aren't they? Um, <laughs> no, it's The Proclaimers. <laughs> the Proclaimers? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. And I know he's listening, but, you know. I mean, there's nothing wrong with The Proclaimers, I just can't imagine anyone getting that excited about them. I bet that's why he likes you, because you, you hang out with him, don't you? I do hang out with him. He thinks he's, like, yeah. it's like, it's like the closest thing he yeah. can, he, he knows one of The Proclaimers. Wait till he meets my twin brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's gonna have a field day, he isn't he? It. Yeah. So I, I was on this, and I said, I, I, I can't play the Proclaimers, but we're playing another. Where, the, what, what, where did they come? Because I don't really remember the Proclaimers particularly from when I was young. Well, let me yeah. give you a little blast. I give a little, a little wee, <laughs> but in two-part harmony. <laughs> of course. That was the, that was the but main thing. They were thing. very popular for a while, weren't they? I think they had, um, sort of three big hits in yeah. sort of like 1980, when was it? Yeah. Oh, I forget. 
Uh, I is. Scottish. Uh, they did sing in Scottish accents, which I thought was quite refreshing. They didn't yeah. do the fake, uh, American thing. No, that, that was, that was good. Yeah. But again, I just can't imagine sort of being I, in that- when, when would I be in the mood to put on a procla Proclaimers record? Well, you've run out of Cranky stuff, I suppose. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. If, if you've played all your Crankies records, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, and you the know, Muppets album. Yeah, yeah. Pop on the Proclaimers. Sure. Now, we were talking before the break about, um, Anne Frank in her cupboard. Yes. Yes. Now- I'm still a little bit concerned that Carl's not quite got his head around Anne Frank's diary. Yeah. It's not like a children's book, it's not like The Lion, Anne Frank and the Wardrobe. <laughs> no, She's not, doesn't no. go into a fantasy land when she goes into the attic. I'm just glad that old Mother Hubbard <laughs> didn't help the Nazis. <laughs> sure. Because that's the first place she's yeah, in the yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it? The Nazis go, we've, uh, we've, we've got old Mother but she thinks she knows where she is. Yeah. She's gone straight there. I think with Hubbard it's like, <laughs> if I just briefly mention Hubbard. <laughs> um, <laughs> now Hubbard goes to the cupboard to get, I can't remember exactly. Her poor to, dog a bone. She goes to get a dog, the dog a, a bone. bone. But when she got there, the cupboard was the bare. Cupboard was bare the poor and dog so the poor dog had is there, is there more to that than I, because that's all I remember. Is there, is there further verses? Does she finally get a bone? Does she go on an adventure? Oh what, you mean the second verse is, then she looked in the <laughs> fridge and realised that's where she kept the bone, yeah. and so the dog was laughing. <laughs> exactly. No, there isn't another verse. Not, that's all of it. I it? think so. I wonder where's the cupboard to get a bottle alone. When she got there, the cupboard was bare, and so the poor dog had none. none. No, I think that's the end of it. I think it's immoral. <laughs> I think it's immoral that, um, What? What's the moral? Well, well, uh, if you go- if you got a dog, keep some bones in the cupboard. <laughs> yeah. Right. Cause I always- even as a kid I remember thinking that it's quite a tragic sort of picture they paint. I imagine maybe she's it's lost- It's short, her... isn't it? It, it is short. It's, it's over, isn't it? It's- 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 uh, that's amazing. But she- I always wondered whether perhaps she's had a nervous breakdown. Maybe her husband's died recently. She's just not got any food she in. She doesn't know- she's just She doesn't really know what's going on. The dog's, na you know, yapping away. Eventually she kind of wakes out of this kind of depressed stupor. She goes to the cupboard. There's nothing there. It's just a really depressing, morbid- so tell I don't know if maybe it's originated from something in history. I know that Jack and Julie went up the hill and they fell down again. That's later. a story about illicit lovers. That's apparently based on that. And obviously, Ring a Ring of Roses. It plague. Dates back to plague times. So yeah. I don't know about Hubbard. Um, Humpty what? Dumpty. Not so <laughs> sure about this. Well, I, I. This is something I remember as a kid thinking. What? At what point was it decided <laughs> that Humpty Dumpty was a giant Eggman? I don't know! Because there's it's nothing not in the actual in the rhyme. rhyme. There's no actually, it's not Humpty Dumpty, it's not, the Eggman at all. all. I don't know. My, my concern is more if, I mean his parents were a little bit cruel because if you are <laughs> Called the Dumpty. Dumpties yeah. of say Surrey, <laughs> yeah. don't call your firstborn Humpty. Yeah. Because straight away it's going to be embarrassing for him yeah. at school, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know what it, I'm just saying, well I'm trying to go all the things, I'm trying to go all the is that it as well? That's all of it. Oh, and God. And also, I don't mean to be pedantic, because I, I know it's a, a children's Is, is it like an Edward Lear thing, or? That's before could, that, is it? But it, I don't mean to be pedantic again, but if you're gonna- if you've got a giant egg man and he's fallen into bits, yeah. you know, all the king's men, fine, they're there, they can piece that together yeah. again. Don't send horses in. No, cause they- That's just a whole eggy horsey mess. Not dexterous enough, <laughs> exactly. they're, 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 they're gonna make it worse. They're just gonna be standing on it. They are gonna make it worse. It's not they're grounded. They're just standing <laughs> on it, get the horse out of the way. No, he's definitely not. But again, maybe I'm sure some of the, you know, the mental people- It was probably- it was- if it was- is it pre Lewis Carroll or if it's Lewis Carroll, it just came with the illustration. I guess that so. some he gave it to someone to illustrate. Go illustrate. I'm just He goes, we've made him an egg. Yeah, a sort of egg with eyes and a face. Yeah. I mean, I suppose because the moral of that is, if if you're fragile, if you're an, if egg, you're an enormous egg, don't Dumpty, on a wall. I get down from the wall. I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Because I'll tell you what, there'll be no medical... way to happen. Yeah. And uh, um, Carl went. We got a question. I went. No, he said, uh, well, something about the elephant man. <laughs> something went, about the elephant. Yeah. Man. And I went. Uh, yeah. You know what, John Merrick, he went, yeah. He went, yeah, something about that. Awful, wasn't it? I went, you know why Michael Jackson actually bid for the skeleton of that? And, uh, he went, what, would the skeleton be affected? I went, without well, it grows, it, that's what happens, it's nice. And he went, you don't see any of that about these days, do you? <laughs> <laughs> any great, I just said, save it. Although, of course, you have to put on these masks when you play Donutters, so yeah. in a strange way, that looks kind of Merrick-esque. Yeah. Uh, and, um, the game book, I should just tell people listening, is, is Elephantastic. It is, it is! <laughs> it says that on the box. It so is Elephantastic, right. it is Elephantastic. I mean, you yourself, can I say a question, actually? This Go is on. a possible question. Okay. Should we um, sign it first? We should sign it, but, uh, yeah. based on the Elephant Man question, obviously, mm. um, we all know who directed the Elephant Man film. Sure, don't sure. We? Mm. So, yeah. Parker, no. David Lynch. Lynch, of course, yeah. But, uh, do you know who one of the, um, the people that got that film made was? He's a very famous comedian. It was his production company that got it up, up and rolling. He may be an executive producer, I think he was even the producer of it. And, no. uh, he's an American, famous American comic actor. You wouldn't imagine this was the same guy 
who is also producing a very serious sober film like The Elephant Man, alright? We want to know who was that man. It's a bit hard for that. Well, yeah, but I mean, that'll sort of, that'll separate the that, what are you, I don't oh. know, have you seen anything else that's Elephantastic? Not even Wellafant was Elephantastic, he was Wellafantastic. Rick, have you, have you got any more ta uh, memorabilia that you want to, uh, give <laughs> yeah, to people maybe yeah, in the middle of weeks? Because yeah. I have to say, I've got the loads- The counter won't take it away. I've got loads of junk in my house. I've got an old fridge freezer in the front garden. Anyone's welcome to come and pick that up any time, I'll sign it for them. But what about children climbing in it? That's not one of those with the handles, is it? There's several children trapped in there. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's a sobering lesson. You know what, the what, 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 pick it up. Um, it's a problem though, isn't it? Because you can't just- Smash it up, you're right now. I don't know what you meant to do. Well, listen, right, when I was growing up, I remember the council, um, used to charge five pounds or something to take away, like, cookers and fridges, so my dad used to bury them. Mm. Down the bottom of my garden, I don't know, th th there's, there's a cooker, there's a fridge, fr there's a freezer of some sort, there's a dog and a couple of cats, they were dead. I'm not saying fair. my, I mean, my father's quite a mean man, as you know that, uh, yeah. that but he, uh, my dad used to uh, do that with dead relatives. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. those funeral parties very, take the piss. Very expensive. So a, a, a funeral can be, you know, up to 40 quid. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Whereas so a shovel, a shovel borrowed yeah. off the bloke next door, yeah, yeah, that's a and, massive savings. And not given back, to be honest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, he's going to go soon. <laughs> what's, what's, what's he going to say? Okay, to win uh, Donutters, signed by Mr. Ricky Gervais and two other blokes you've never heard of. Is that fantastic? <laughs> yeah. And the question is, what was the famous name, the name of the famous comedian, uh, American Give out the number, give out the number. That produced, uh, and had heavy production involvement in the film The Elephant Man. The email address Address is ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Carl, what's the, uh, phone number? Oh, eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Right, next up, we've had a lot of requests. Carl's popularity is growing. They want to hear his, um, his super mega mix, uh, the Britney Spears thing. Big it up. Big it up. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, tell no, us what it is. It. All right, it's, um, Mark being Blade, the vocals of the unknown of the Britney Spears. Hit me baby one more time. Let's hear it. It's highly illegal. <laughs> go on then. Back announce it, Carl. It's yours. Go on. That's, uh, Mark being Blade there. With a bootleg. And what's it called? You called it something, haven't you? You cleverly called it something. What did you call it? Um. <laughs> Nick this record one more time. Good. You Very are. good. Carl Perkin Pilkinson there breaking all kinds of copyright rules. Now, coming up, we're going to be talking a little bit of Feng Shui. The art of moving things around so it's better. The ancient oriental art of rearranging your living room. Yeah, the, or <laughs> <laughs> the ancient art of don't sit near a window. <laughs> exactly. Because you won't get any money for it. <laughs> and we've got, we've got a book. Well, it's, we've uh, been exploring Feng Shui for our yeah, amusement. Yeah, and uh, we're going to be reading some uh, great things. This is just uh, good, it's good solid Feng Shui advice for us. I mean, what do you need to know? I mean, just keep those questions coming to life. If you've got any question for Carl, don't forget, that's an ongoing thing. Anything in the world, any question, personal problems, philosophies on like, it can be out of the, just ask Carl, if you want, you know, just ask Carl, okay? Alright, Carl, you're up for that, aren't you? Yeah, that's And fine. you give your honest opinion, won't you, always? Yeah. Yeah. Should we give away, uh, donuts? Oh, we, it's this, what, it's been won, who's won it, Carl? Scott, um, Hammond. Scott well, well, well done. Well done, Scott. He'll be loving that, he's, he's probably gonna have a party, especially to play donuts. We've had uh, a number of right answers, but I'm afraid Scott's the winner. And the question, of course, was uh, which famous American comedian was heavily involved in the production of the film The Elephant Man? It was, of course, Mel Brooks. Surprising. And uh, he's got a company called Brooks Film. Our maybe. first, uh, first person that called in, I think he was a bit confused. He said, is it testicle, testicles? Yeah. Yeah. When what? The usually went, testicles. Yeah. What was that illness years ago? <laughs> right. There was, um, a couple of lads at our school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> had really big heads. Right. <laughs> And webbed fingers. <laughs> and webbed fingers? And... Sorry, wait, 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 was that? Hold on, did you find him in a pond? Did they used to be little tadpoles? No, sorry, Carl, you're not confusing your past with an old episode no, of Doctor no. Who, are you? <laughs> 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 what were they called, these two? Oh, no, I can't, I didn't mix with them. Right, uh, right. It was just like... Of course it, not. Th there was a... Nobody thought anything of it at school, because no, like, sure. he used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it's the North. <laughs> there, there goes the creature from the Black Lagoon again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he's is. Late. brilliant at trigonometry. He's late for double maths. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I didn't think anything what of it. What is it called? What is the disease called where two fellas, are they- Not even related. Rubbish. Not related. This, were you near a, a nuclear power station when you were growing up? Yeah. You weren't really? Yeah. So this has got well, a bit I don't heavy. Think that's it. Hey, talking of uh, enormous heads. Yeah. You were the uh, the pop idol final, weren't you, Rick? You went yeah. in there just because you obviously Rick's a huge fan of pop idol. He wanted to be there. He wanted yeah. to give his support. Quite seriously, there was no irony there. We were, yeah, we were he genuinely is a fan of it. And um, he was. Uh, you, you you sort of had photos taken with various people. Yeah, of course. You were a bit drunk and you wanted to have a yeah. memento of it. It's obviously yeah. a picture of you with uh, Fat Man Rick Waller. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. But the best one is a picture of Ricky and his girlfriend with Dr. Fox, yeah. whose head <laughs> is twice is the size of, of any other head. It's quite remarkable. He's I don't know how they make it. He's a lovely bloke. It was really nice to meet him and everything. But in the and he's, he's got he looks like an immaculate tan. And he's always happy. And he's you know he's. It looks really on the picture. It looks like someone you might see in a carnival who's built a huge papier mâché head. <laughs> and he's yeah. more like Frank Sidebottom. He's just sort of walking down the road. It's just incredible. Dr. Fox didn't used to go to your school, did he? He used to hang around with a the mate. They were great swimmers. <laughs> uh, brilliant swimmers. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Have we got another song lined up? Yeah, what yeah. are we gonna play? Bit of Faramonch. Bit of who? Faramonch. Let's hear it. <laughs> Faramonch. Got ya. XFM 104.9. Well, as we promised from Feng Shui, um, what do you wanna know? Ratio of windows. It's, it's a little one of those little books that you see at the sort of like the front desk of like Waterstones or mm. Dylan's or one of it. And it's just, uh, it's a little guide. It's, um, uh, should I say what it is? I'm allowed, yeah, I'm allowed, aren't I? Well. Lillian Two's little book of, um, Feng Shui, and, uh, obviously you can't go into it in depth, but it's some little, you know. Just some little sort of nuggets, I suppose. Yeah, ratio of windows. The ratio of windows to doors in your rooms should not exceed three to one. Too many windows calls all your luck to seep away. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> uh, it is also better not to have windows on the wall opposite the door. Is that the case in your place, uh, Carl? Because you may need, may, you may need to brick that up when you get back later. <laughs> I always remember, um, I used to work nights. Yeah. Right. And it was when my brother just sort of got kicked out of the army. Yeah. I mean, mum and dad went away on holiday, so he was staying with us. <laughs> He's got to write a book, this bloke. Yeah. Um, You've got to write a book, Carl. Go on. I came back. Yeah. And there was women everywhere. There was women in every bed in the house. I thought, where am I going to sleep? Had he set up a brothel? What? So, <laughs> no, it's just a bit of a, bit of a one. That's so, impressive, though, a girl in every single bed. I, I mean. So he was mad. So, um, I slept on the sofa downstairs. Mm. And I didn't sleep that well. Yeah. But I slept on it before when it was facing a different way. Sure. And I had a good sleep. <laughs> so for you, that's so, proved the worth of Feng Shui. Yeah, I think there's something in it. <laughs> do you I, honestly think there's something in it, though? Yeah, I do, yeah. Okay, we'll just read a few of the others, Rick. Okay, okay well, yeah. listen, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, I think, I think most people know this one. Uh, display the three-legged frog for luck. Um, look for a three-legged frog. You can buy one from any Chinese supermarket. <laughs> Uh, and place it in the vicinity of your front door, facing inwards as if it has just come into the house. Don't place the frog facing the door! <laughs> Please! Oh, come on, people! What Think you... before you place your frog. I mean, this, this really is... I mean, but, but... What's the last page? Because that will be the most important one, won't Do you reckon? Yeah. The last one, I... I, I... Uh, the wealth vase. Make a wealth vase and keep it hidden in your cupboard. It can be made of gold, crystal, or glass. If, uh, can I just say something? If you've got a vase made of gold, you're probably all right for money anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. sure, sure. But this yeah. is the wealth vase. How do you make the wealth vase? Fill it with semi-precious stones and with soil taken from a rich man's garden. So just find the soil of a rich man. <laughs> Take some soil from the- <laughs> This is like bury a piece of steak and the water will go. Yes. I, I, I have a uh, tooth of frog. This is- It's the one where with the gods. Can you find that one? Oh, where's that one? Yeah. Do you, do you, what do you, what do you make of Feng Shui, Carl? I is it something you believe in? Uh, well, like I said, I didn't sleep well on the sofa when it's it- For you, that's proof, proof positive. So, yeah, you've got to get it right, haven't you? Right, it, this is, uh, extracts from Carl's diary. Did podcast and went for an Italian with Ricky and Steve. Italian place is good. We've been there a few times. I always have the same thing, spaghetti. Can't remember what everyone else had. Last time we went there, Steve had little octopuses with pasta. You could see that they were octopuses, they hadn't been cut up or anything. My rule is that I only eat stuff that looks nice when it's alive. <laughs> <laughs> a cow, a chicken, some fish. An octopus is an odd looking thing alive. Even worse when it's dead and limp. It looks like it just shouldn't have been sat in the spaghetti. Yeah, I agree! I agree with that! <laughs> Ricky drew another picture of my head. We've given a few of them away as prizes, but he draws so many of them that they won't be worth as much anymore. <laughs> Everyone will eventually have one. Like those pictures of a boy crying that caused houses to burn down in the 1980s. What does that mean? What are you talking about? It's just some kid. Uh, my auntie Nora had one, and it was just like a kid with like a blue jumper on and he's, it's like a painting, not a photo. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And he's just crying. Like a chocolate box, it's really awful sort of sugary. And what happened is it, they found out that a load of houses were being set on fire or burst into flames, whatever. And the weird thing was, 
Oh, it's bollocks. Every house that burnt down had that photo. Yeah, because every house had that picture of in the <laughs> fucking 70s and 80s. <laughs> Idiot. It's like, we're linking it to sinks. Every house that's ever burnt down had a sink. <laughs> You're talking shit again. Carry on. This is from Anne-Marie. She says that she loves the podcast. She listens with her seven months old baby. Um, that cannot be a good idea. And she says this to you, Carl. If you had children, what is the most important lesson you'd want to teach them? Uh, I mean, in a way, if you sort of look after a kid too much, it doesn't learn that much. But if you let it learn by its mistakes, it'll probably grow up all right. But there are it's some like, mistakes you can't afford it to make to learn from. Yeah. Driving a car ro the wrong way down a motorway. Um, test testing if the fire really is hot. No, but say like the time... Does, does broken glass really taste horrible? These are lessons you don't want it to learn from mistakes. Yeah, you can tell them that. But, yeah, but what I mean, mean is, but what I mean is, there's, there's certain things that I, I just think that there was a kid who grew up in our in our avenue, right, on the estate, who, when it was born, right, we kind of thought it's got no chance, this kid, because because its man was was a bit of a rumman, um, you know, rumman. Where, where's that? No, just just like you know, she liked going out and having a fag and like having a drink, and she's never at home. It's the one who had the the horse in the house. Sure. Right? Which I don't want to go over. Sure. It's old news. It's yeah. out there, isn't it? If you want to find out about the horse in the house. <laughs> but uh, she had a kid, and everyone was pretty surprised when they saw it because it was a good-looking kid. Mm. Which was a surprise because, like, you know, the man wasn't that good-looking. The dad was a bit rough. But mm. it, it came out, and she was showing it around around the avenue, going, "Look at this, I've had." And <laughs> she was she was chuffed with it because it's probably like. One of the newest things she's ever had because everything else was always sort of second down second and what have yeah. you. But suddenly she's got this brand new little baby, right? Anyway, as it grew up, right, those looks went. <laughs> right. And I'm not talking getting old, I'm talking by the age of about three. <laughs> <laughs> it looks it looks rough already, right? And all that that just happened because that's that's the life it was in, right? Yeah. So like it, it used to, it had like a patchy head, um, it's a it, it what? It had a patchy head. A patchy head. It's just sort of uh, sort it of. Wasn't just it, it, it wasn't a North American Indian. What do you mean? A uh, patchy head. Just just his hair was patchy. He used to chase sort of cars and stuff. <laughs> it's God. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what's the, what do you mean? It just that's what he did for his. The, sorry. The, did she let it get raised by wolves? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but all I'm saying is that at the end of the day, <clears throat> what is it that makes a person? Do you know what I mean? Now, I don't know what state he's in now, but maybe he learned all his mistakes by the age of four. I'm guessing he's not chasing cars now, but at least he's done it. I'm guessing he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? At least he can go, yeah, I've been there, done that, and you don't go back to it, and you can get away with doing dafter things when you're a kid, can't you? I nearly killed a man once, right? <laughs> okay, right. Did well, you? that time when I was in, in <laughs> Wales, and I was having a walk with my dad on the cliffs and that, yeah. and I just picked up a big rock, right? Chucked it off the edge, and as I chucked it off the edge, I noticed the fellow was walking down below. Jeez. And I missed his head by like inches. Now, I've never chucked a rock off a bridge or like off a cliff or anything. And right? it only took one man to almost lose his life for you to learn that lesson. Yeah, but that's how you learn your lessons. Yeah. Isn't it? See, a lot of people would have said that maybe your dad should have said, Hey, Carl, what are you doing? No, but he didn't know I was doing it. I didn't say I'm going to chuck this off there. I just picked it up and chucked it. And like, as I let go of it, I noticed a fellow was down there. You live and you learn. That's a little <laughs> mantra. Right? right. You okay. live and you learn. So the woman who's had the kid, sort of look after it, feed it, <laughs> make sure it's got shoes and that, <laughs> but let it go on about. <laughs> That's great. There's the advice for you, Emery. I love that. Good luck. Just let your seven-month-old baby roam about. It was just all sort of Chinese proverbs and that. One of my favourite on the same subject is. Um, a camel is a horse designed by committee. What do you mean? Well, it, I mean it's having a go at the camel, and it shouldn't. But, but it's just you know, it's just it's just a metaphor. And if you wanted to design a horse and you had that vision, but you let you let twelve people in a room have their say, it wouldn't come out as you wanted it to do, and it wouldn't be as good. A vision is more perfect than committee, because everyone having their say it becomes anodyne it becomes compromised whereas the best things you can do is have an idea and have a vision and auteur that rick can i just say now i can tell from his look that he's thinking which committee designed the camel <laughs> well i'd just say i'd say who why would you request the ump bit
because that's just going to get in the way, isn't it? This is, it? I mean, I've always, I've always said that about a lot of animals. It's like we, we've doubled up on a lot of them. We've chatted about elephants and mammoths, one or the other. <laughs> And that's the same with a, with a camel. I'd have that up there as what what they're doing. They were good years ago in the Jesus times and that. Don't need them now. You know what I mean? We've moved on. <laughs> well, not people who use camels to cross deserts. What other? I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw some animals at you, and you tell how, how, how you'd have improved them if you'd have been designing them. Okay? Mm -hmm. The octopus. So I, I can now go back. I can look at them and go, what are they doing? And wh wh where have they gone wrong? What's up with you? Wh wh how could you improve it? Like, the camel, you'd go lose the app. I'd probably... I'd probably give it a bit more of a body. <laughs> Cut down on the arms. Um... And, and give it some bones. Cos I don't understand all this. It getting in a jar is, is good. When does it want to get in a jar? It says... Well, it only wants to get in a jar according to your stories. No, but there's something that says it can get in a jar because it hasn't got any bones, but you... I don't know why it'd want to do that in the first place. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I can't even begin to answer that. Once again, you've, you've said, you've claimed that you've read that they like to get in jars. I mean, how do they know that octopus like to get in jars? Oh, God, I love it. You can improve on an octopus. Millions and millions of years of evolution making it perfect for its surroundings. Okay, another animal for you then, Carl. Um, uh, giraffe? Um, what, what are they adding to, to the world? What are they doing? Well, it's not about what they add to the world, no, but is I thought, it? No, but... I thought that's what everything's about. It's about things are here for a reason. A lot the, the, of... the reason they're here is because they didn't die. That's it. No, but there seem to be a lot of animals that are like... Do you think there's a lot of cheating? Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm just lots saying of doubling there just seems up. to be a lot of doubling up. Yeah. So and you want you want you you do, you get it down to like eight animals that represented all of them. So um, okay. Who would get in your in your team? You can choose no, eight well, this animals. Is, this is what I'm saying. If I was Noah, mm. I would have gone like, hang on a minute. With, I've just seen something that looks a bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> Let it drown and have a clear out. <laughs> right. But he didn't. He was messing about saving everything. He was instructed by God to save everything, yeah. compared to him. Yeah, but if he's been given that job, for me, he's sort of manager of that job. So you, be, so you believe with Noah as well? You well, believe you believe Noah happened as well, and he built a boat big enough to to catch two of every species? You actually believe that as fact, dear? Well, it's it's out there in book form. Brilliant. Uh, right. We haven't answered the question that we started with. How did you meet Suzanne? Does that work? Thanks. Respect, guys. Cheers very much. Out of here. Mm. Yeah, guys, just Max in there. Lovely. Good to hear from him. Good to hear from the boys. <laughs> well, probably, I'll probably be heading over to LA NYPD and <laughs> just, uh, just you know, chilling with them. Sometimes. I'd love them to meet you. You don't really laugh. They, I'd I, love them to meet you. We would hang out. I know all the the jokes. It's that like thing they do on um, MTV or H. We're like being dilated peoples, and yeah. they come and they make us three look yeah, like, like a rap people. group. Wouldn't that be great? Listen, I told you before, I've always remembered the words of, um, of Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah. Bitch is a bitch and a hoe is a hoe, but if a man be acting like a bitch, he's a bitch-ass homie. Yeah, All right? those, sure. those are the words from sure. the street. I would, uh, it's, it'd be like you, you two had won a competition or something, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like that. I just don't think you can, uh, you can believe it that I'd just be hanging out, you know, with, sort of like in the crib. People of courage, and you get a chance to meet your <laughs> favourite. It'd, it'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Listen, we were talking earlier about, uh, the fact that, um, Bruce Lee, and it's a well-known fact. Yeah. He faked his own death so he could continue his, um, undercover police work, as it, opposed to being... Because no one would, yeah, he doesn't no look point to anyone else. I was talking to someone as well recently who, um, utterly convinced, and you get this quite a lot, don't you, especially Americans, that, uh, Elvis Presley's still alive. Yeah. And I think, wasn't there some statistic, like, more people believed Elvis was alive than thought, than believed evolution? Was that right? Yes. Like that? No, 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 no. Um... No, it's something worse than that. It's... It could be something... It was something like that. It's something like, I don't know, it's something like 42% of Americans yeah. believe that Elvis Presley has faked his own death and is still yeah. alive, right? Yeah. And there's this whole book that's been written about it, because, um, Carl, you might be interested in this. I know you're always fascinated by things that have been written down and therefore a gospel. Yeah. And, um... And that you don't have to revise yourself. You just learn off <laughs> Ian Wright. Yeah. Yeah. But apparently, um, the reason that Elvis is still alive, um, is that there's a number of, uh, sort of, pieces of evidence. One is that no, none of his family could agree which colour pyjamas he was wearing when he died. That's yeah. evidence, apparently. Apparently, um, you know he was an honorary member of the FBI. Well, apparently his signature appears on FBI documents well into the 80s, long after he should have died. Um, apparently no one can agree. There were sums of money a lot that of, only... Yeah, a lot of fat people in dungarees have seen him. Yeah. 
there's a number of there's sums of money which apparently only he could have given authority to have transferred to other bank accounts they've moved. Yeah. So this is all evidence that Elvis is still alive. Mm. And um, a lot of people, I was to this guy, and he was saying, yeah, well, of course, the thing is, he, he, the pressures of fame were too much for him. That he faked his own death so that he, he no longer had to be this, this huge icon, you know, he could live an ordinary life. And my query has always been this, if Elvis faked his own death, do you think he, the, the method he'd have chosen is to have shat himself to death whilst on the toilet? Yeah. Yeah, but because he picked that, nobody will doubt it. <laughs> right. So Elvis went to the FBI. Yeah. What do you make yeah. of it? Well, exactly. So, the, what we're saying, Carl, is that there was lots of methods open to him, you know what I mean? It's all like, uh, he didn't go to his, his, his secret reason and go, oh, I'm afraid I want to, I want to fake my own death. You know what I mean? And they yeah. go, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, and what, what, what methods have you got? I like to be found, shit myself down the toilet. You like to do what? I want to be a big, fat, mother, on yeah. the toilet, just shit myself to death. I'm right, I just, my ankles. You know, the, the Elvis is a good idea. I'm just wondering if there's maybe something a little bit more glamorous. For your favourite, I mean, you could take a bullet for the president. Huh. What, and shit all over him? Just shit no, 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 no crap at all. I mean, you no, you just, you just take a bullet for him, or you could... There has to be shit involved. Why has there got to be... There has to be shit involved. Why has there got to be crap involved? I want it this way. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah, it's probably... <laughs> Carl, head in hand, look. Yeah. He's worried about the things we say. Yeah. Jeez. We haven't offended 1.2 billion people. Yeah. A, a fifth of the planet. <laughs> so, Carl, what do you make of it, then? Do you, are you what convinced... What you say? Elvis is alive? Um, is am I getting mixed up with someone else? Because <laughs> like, all Elvis, no, no, all no. Elvises look alike. Because that, you know, that is true. A lot of Elvises do look alike. That's safe. On his gravestone, yeah. didn't they get his name wrong, or is that his brother? Who's his brother? Um, <laughs> Aaron. No, that's his middle name. Yeah. You're not an Elvis um kind of expert, are you? Hold on, was Elvis was that, wasn't Elvis a, one of a twin that yeah, died? Yeah, that died. And I'm sure they got his name wrong on a grave or something. Oh, I don't know. But that's, so that's, consequently, that's proof he's still alive. No, uh, the thing with the uh, still alive thing, um, like I say, he picked that awkward death because nobody would be saying, hang on a minute, going around upsetting the family, wanting to talk about it because they'd be embarrassed to be saying, you know, we, it was found sort of yeah. in a pile of mess. Weighing 25 stone. Yeah. yeah. So... Because you notice he also expanded to a huge size as well, so he was just a huge fat blob of a man. He also did that to, to add, you know, extra... To the glamour. I don't quite understand all this, these people who fake the deaths, because... Well, how, a lot of them don't. Work? A lot of them don't, Carl. This is what, this is what, in a roundabout way, we're saying. We're saying that a lot of people that say people fake that they well, didn't, who, who like else, Bruce Lee and uh, James Dean and Elvis Presley, we're saying they didn't no, fake their he, deaths. No, he did die, didn't he? His head, his head come off, didn't he? <laughs> God. Who's this? James Dean? <laughs> His head came off. <laughs> there is a light that never goes out. The Smiths, XFM 104.9. Nearly through. Absolutely. Two hours of chat, great music. Bloody good music. Carl. Of course. Speaking yeah, fun. before he <laughs> thinks. thinks. By the way, you know when he was going about Mowgli? You know he was going to talk about Mowgli and you said, oh, what are the gremlins called? Yeah. Were you thinking of... Oh, Mugwai. Mugwai. Yeah, but they to were still, fair, they were, they they were, were called gremlins. gremlins. Yeah. yeah. He was, but, yeah. But I know what you're thinking. I know, to be fair. But my girlfriend won't be listening now, so... <laughs> she'll still think I'm... a bit daft. She ne how could, why, why would she ever think that? How long have you been going out with her? About eight years. Well then, wh why would she ever think you're daft? That's the only stupid thing you've ever said, the, the Mugwai thing. Why would she ever think she's going out with a... To be honest... Mm. A retard. I I think um I think it's a very beautiful relationship you must have you know because it's odd like I mean she's a professional journalist or whatever yeah you know and she works for is it uh, Radio Five or something BBC Sport BBC Sport TV. and so you're a man who never even uh, got her English examples. quite good her, is her, is English quite good her really good yeah so and did she do her exams yeah she's quite bright sure so what do you bring to the relationship. <laughs> I, th I think, uh, take the pressure off her. <laughs> take the pressure off her uh, to do what? You know, like, when she's had a stressful day and she comes home and talks to me, I think. Yeah. You would relax me, and that's the truth. I, 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 honestly, but, you know, Carl, you can just, he can just go, wow, it's all right. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't get stressed. He sits in his little booth now, he doesn't talk to anyone, his little sound booth, all the week. And you just, you just, 
You and your own little world, aren't you? Well, it's interesting because I wonder sometimes what your aspirations are. I was thinking this. I was watching uh, a repeat of Family Fortunes on uh, Challenge TV oh, last I night, and it was sort of mid eighties one. And I don't know if it's still the case, but it was the aspirations of the contestants. Yeah. So kind of, it was like, and what's your hobby? Well, you know, um, I like to go out when it's nice weather and oh. stay in. Well, when if it's you, not, if you win two thousand pounds, you'd probably be going out when it's nice, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, well, and I, you know, I, I sometimes like to watch TV. You know, and I was thinking, wow, yeah. man, you've really got some incredible but what, dreams. What, 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 what it's I, just like that. I'm, you're just waiting to die, aren't what, you? That's what all I feel sorry for. Right, two things. Like, um, you know, in like stars in their eyes, and you get a little fellow, and he and he's gutting fish in a some sort of factory in Bolton, and he comes on, and he does, uh, you know, something like Bobby Darren. Okay, and he's a, and and Matthew Kelly comes out after as well. I don't think you'll be going back to the fish factory. You will. <laughs> you will be going back. You will. Straight back. Yeah. Mate. Yeah. Let's yeah. think of don't all the stars in their eyes, Kelly. Because that's a nasty thing to do. I'm Maybe. trying to think. Um, trying to think of all the uh, stars in their eyes contestants that have gone on to great things. What happened to that little feather? Looked like the, the little Alsatian puppy that did Christopher. He looks a bit like Christopher. He looked like he, li he had problems. Well, I yeah. Now what was it? Is Ian Moore? His name was. Now he now. He, he was. Uh, well, I, it's interesting. My friend bought me as an ironic gift for my birthday. He bought me the uh, live video of Ian Moore. <laughs> um, you'll be pleased to know that Navy Red was on there, among a <laughs> number of other hits. Um, but it was, it was really, it was cool. It had a picture of Ian on the front. It said, Ian Moore, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was like, too big for him as well. Of course. It was ludicrous, but I don't know if that meant Ian Moore, naturally, like we all know who this guy is, it's Ian Moore, yeah. or was it Ian Moore, he's no longer being Christa Burr, he's just naturally. What does he sound like when he wasn't being Christa Burr? Christa Burr. Did he <laughs> really? Because he met him, didn't he? He met. Yeah. Well, Chris, I think Chris Miller couldn't wait to get back on the telly. Well, the thing is, I think I think Ian Moore is actually earning more than Chris <laughs> Burr now. I think <laughs> they could have got Chris Burr on there. Yeah, you, as can, a you can get Chris Burr for a thousand pounds, but Ian Moore's been up for twelve hundred <laughs> now, just a PA to a you know a dat. <laughs> but he does lane him. He does all the hits. He does. Don't pay the ferryman. Yeah. Don't even set a price. <laughs> does all those. Interestingly, I saw him interview once, and uh, Lady in Red's not his favourite song. You're joking. It's bizarre, isn't it? But he was only going to play that if, um, uh, it was the, f uh, fat, uh, ginger, like, Sarah Ferguson. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was only if she was wearing some red. He was only going to play that when? It, yeah, well, it, it was a live thing, and he was only going to play that if she was wearing red or something. Right. Didn't her freckles count? That's beautiful. No, so, it, she had, luckily she had a red, that must have clashed with her a bit. Yeah. A red scarf on, on her face. And the highlights in your hair that catch the light. Yeah. Such a beautiful lyric. Never seen a look as lovely as it? Uh, the thing is, right, he, he misses a rhyme there. He goes, uh, I'm going to ask you to, uh, dance, looking for a little romance. Oh, now he could have yeah. said dance, <laughs> couldn't yeah. he? I, uh, I've met a man once in a, in a bar, I was talking to him for some reason, I, I was annoyed by him, I was wound up by him, and, um, I said that I'd written Lady in Red, and uh, I never got any money for it, because I found that he was like a music lawyer. And he went, well, give me a call, I'll investigate that. <laughs> and he was actually going to do it for me. I, was I love the idea of that. <laughs> Why did you say that? Really bored, and I didn't like him much, and I was just, and I thought that was, um... Why did you choose strange. Lady in Red, though? Because I think I was singing it with a friend of mine, and sure. he came over and went, oh, good voice. And I went, yeah, I wrote this. What pub is this? <laughs> it, was just, it was North. Is it? Yeah. Never seen looking as lovely as you did tonight. So, Let's um, see. anyway, those, that's enough of my Christopher anecdotes. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, very much the end of the show. Uh, and it is, it's been a great, it's been a great show. Hang on, have I got time for a song for the lovers, or have I missed that? No. If, if you give it me Chris now. Ralph. Yeah, what are you gonna play? What are you gonna play? What, are you gonna play a song now and then we've got time for it afterwards? No, you'll have to give it me. Yeah. Right oh, now. I better dig it out. Well, can, what, can you keep what, it yeah, what, what have you chosen? I'll, I'll keep it going. Well, um, a friend of mine who keeps making me little compilations is stuck on an old Tom Waits track, which is, uh, from his first album, one that I've not listened to for a Brilliant. We listen to it, it's absolutely dynamite. Brilliant, brilliant. Can anyone hear me? Yeah. Yeah. He's just getting out of his bag now because we were we weren't prepared for this. We we sort of ran out of time. We're having such a great time with the philosophy of Carl. What do you, what do you fancy doing anyway for, with your future? Me? You know, I'm just gonna, just going to tell you now. You know we're still on air, don't you? <laughs> Before it gets too casual, you know we are still broadcasting yeah, yeah. to the capital. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you fancy doing with your future? <laughs> well, once I've made all that money from uh, suing Christa Burr, <laughs> um, yeah. no, I, you know, my future. I'm living my future. I know I wanted to have some good mates like yourself and Ricky. Yeah. You know, Carla wanted to be on the radio. We're going to play great songs. We're like the Three Musketeers. Me, you, and see. We're, it's like we're like the original Rat Pack. We're, we're like Ocean's Eleven. I'm Sinatra. Yeah. Um. You're you, you're Sammy Davis Jr. And you're what's his name? D Martin, aren't you? Yeah, or Joey Lawrence. What's his name? Joey Lawrence, not Joey Lawrence. Joey Bishop. Joey Deacon. Joey Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> My dad said the ending on the old one's better than the new one. <laughs>
We should definitely get your dad in, man. That would be just dynamite. When people get tired of you, we've got, we've got the whole Pilkington family to <laughs> yeah, The whole gene pool. Have you seen it? No. Carl, have we got time for this now, really, what, mate? What? <laughs> to be fair. Okay, it's track number one. Now, interesting thing about shopping. Tom Waits is that, um, this is his, from his first album, and he doesn't sound like that kind of gruff, you know, lived-in guy that he wants to be. He's actually smoked. Like something of a crooner. Yeah. But this is a track called Old 55, which bizarrely, I think, might have been covered by the, um, the Eagles. But anyway, so I think it's a really lovely track, really beautiful track. I'll see you next week. And we'll see you next time. Say goodbye, Carl. See ya. Say sorry. For what? For if you offended anyone. I didn't. <laughs> so if I say sorry, that's saying I'm guilty. <laughs> We're no, number one Chinaman. We, uh, do you know what, we're gonna be honest here, we, we know so little about China. <laughs> it's true. We know so little about China, <laughs> yeah. it's embarrassing. If you've got any interesting facts about China, then uh, email yeah. in ricky, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Also, I imagine, the email address to use if you're gonna take part in this week's Rockbusters. I did read an interesting fact, um, I'm researching, I'm doing a show called Politics and I was researching, yeah. and there's a thing about, um, uh, what, sweatshops. Online? Yeah, no, no, no. Sweatshops, um, uh, l like, uh, Nike, uh, there's these facts, right? And, um, uh, th these, these people get, like, you know, a few cents an hour, and the CEO, I forget his name, um, to, to, for a, a Chinese woman to earn his 5.2 billion, she'd have to work, um, eight hours a day, seven days a week, for 10,000 years. <laughs> But Steve, they don't. They don't. They don't. They they obviously don't want to. Exactly. They I don't want to. They don't want to. Lazy, lazy, Rick. <laughs> Ian Jury and the Blockheads, hit me with your rhythm stick. Rick, are you likely to be going to uh, Cumbria on your um, stand-up tour? Uh, almost certainly not. Why? Well, it's just because you might want to visit the Cumberland Pencil Museum. <laughs> Um, that's the journey through the history of pencil making. I do like pencils. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'll just use one then. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Do you have yeah. any idea how that was made? Uh, no, was it? Let me email them. <laughs> um, now, Chinese people. Oh, incidentally, it's the premiere of, uh, China. The premiere. Uh, premiere. Right. right. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. Yeah. But, uh, last, when you were away, um, Carl, we worked out if, um, um, if it's one in ten people are sort of like gay in some way, uh, with a billion Chinese people, there's a hundred thousand little, uh, um, little gay lesbian Chinese fellas of some sort. What do you think of that? What do you mean? Well, if, I think so, so it's some sort of form of, uh, um, gayosity, whatever it's called, uh, is sort of like one in ten, right? One in ten people are gay, apparently. That's... Right. That does seem a bit higher, doesn't it? I thought it was. I thought it was lower than that. What? You mean more than that? Yeah. But maybe I don't think so. I, and I think that's of any sort of nature, or anything. But what time did they do the survey on the streets as well? Because <laughs> you know they go out late. So if if they're doing the survey sort of around lunchtime, forget it. They're not going to get any. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know what I mean, they're all asleep. But if they're out say one in the morning, well, it's going to be higher, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know Carl's favourite song, "The Killing of Georgie." Mm. A little fellow and a little gay fellow goes out and, uh, he gets, um, beaten up and that. Carl went, yeah, but would it have happened if he'd have been going out at a decent time? True. But clearly in the lyric, it says, Georgie left the theatre before the final curtain fell. Yeah. Now, theatre's finished about half ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, even to give him half hour, I reckon it was only about eleven o'clock. So, you're talking rubbish there. Are you sure that wasn't his curtains in his flat and his clothes in them before he goes out? No, he was at the theatre. But I'll tell you what, I just realised something. Maybe where most people were going home after theatre, he was just going out. Exactly. That theatre to him is like a matinee. <laughs> exactly. Isn't it? Yeah. He's off out clubbing, isn't he? <laughs> he's off down, he's gonna get some ammo, he's yeah. gonna get a couple of butt plugs, yeah. and he's gonna, he's not even gonna start dancing till yeah. midnight, is he? Have, have any of us ever met any gay people? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I mean, our view of them <laughs> is, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, email in if you've met a gay person. Yeah, yeah, Tell us yeah. where we, uh, where we're going wrong. Yeah. Have you ever met a gay person? I mean, the way we talk about it is, it's like, yeah. have we ever met Chinese people? Uh. I've seen them. I've seen them out there wandering the streets, but I don't think I've ever had a now, conversation. Now, here's the irony. I definitely know and have met more little gay fellas than little Chinese fellas. Yeah. Have you ever had any little Chinese friends? There was a- no, there was a girl at school who was Chinese, but she was kind of inscrutable. I couldn't really- <laughs> couldn't get close to her, she was sort of mysterious. Right. Rockbusters? Yeah, brilliant. <laughs>
Right then, this is where I, uh, give you a little cryptic clue. And some initials and it sort of makes up a band or an artist mm. and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Sort of being the operative phrase, Yeah. Uh, Let's say we read this clue. Yeah. This is gonna sound like Oscar Wilde. <laughs> clue <laughs> number one. Three different clues. Clue Oscar Wilde was trying these, apparently. Was uh, it? Yeah, it was legal then. Right. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Sorry? Right? Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Are we back on the gay thing or is this- this, this is the clue. No, that's the clue. Right. Clue for Rockbusters number one. Well, you just leave the entrance to my garden alone, will you? Right, that doesn't count because I know what it is. And what was- sorry, what were the initials? What were the initials? GG. Correct. Yeah, right, but you've got to pronounce the artist correctly. I'll pronounce the artist. Because I know what it is. Don't ruin it. No, no, when, when the answer comes, I'll pronounce the artist. Right, can we just focus, please, on the quiz? Go. What was the clue again? Give it again. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Not messing with it, right? GG. G -G. Okay. Right? <clears throat> Next. Doesn't count. Next. Incorrect. Uh, don't phone, but you can send a message on my mobile if you want, right? That's yeah. T. It's another little, little easy one. And, uh, the last one. We were sharing out the mail sheet. Right, that doesn't count either. Can we just fuck I know, I know what that is. I know what that is. I don't care, we'll come to that later. Yeah. And number three. <laughs> we were sharing out the mail sheet, and I think I got the best one. Right? DG. DG. Yeah. So quickly again. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Yeah. Stop messing about with it. Yeah. Right? GG. Yeah. Don't phone, but you can send us a message on my mobile if you want. Right? That was T. And the last one. We're sharing out the male sheep, and I got the best one, so that's good. Right? <laughs> DG. <laughs> All right, Ricky Gervais at XFM dot uk. Have we got any prizes? Uh, do you want to have a look? Well, don't worry about it. Oh, Just this is don't worry pathetic. about it. Have we got any prizes? Just the, look, the yeah, clues fine. are rubbish. The clues don't work. The show, it's. I mean, this is pathetic. Very <laughs> record. That's what it should be called, and the clues don't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, the first one. Uh, Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Right, that was the cryptic clue. The initials were GG. Yeah. That was Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates. Gareth. Gareth. I, well, well, we Gareth. Just... Gareth Gates. No, 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 right? no, but it's Gareth Gates, isn't it? So, <laughs> why would you say to someone Gareth? Is that like a. What's that, a Manchester well, thing when you say Gareth? Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates. Gareth, 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 yeah, Gareth Gates. Yeah, Gareth, Gareth Gates. Gates. The, bloke, yeah. the bloke who came second in Popeye, but yeah, Gareth Gates. So that's the first what one. What was that about getting off the thing, though? Get, leave my. Leave my entrance alone. Though. I don't understand what it's got to do with leaving my entrance alone. The, ga the gate Gareth, to the garden. Well, no, no, gate's a bit. But what's Gareth got to the do with it? You was ignoramus. Don't don't phone. But you can send me a message on yeah. uh, on my mobile if you want. Yeah. The initial was T. Yeah. Texas, right? Just no. It's text. The word's text. Yeah, te so you have to say text uh, me. Texas. Text. What do you mean? No, text me. What's that? The third one was uh, we were sharing out the uh, the male sheep and that. Right? Yeah. Uh, I got I got the best one. DG, right? We're sharing out the male sheep. Get to it! It does not work anyway. Get to DG. it. What is it? Delta Good Ram. <laughs> Delta <laughs> Good Ram. You were Delta Good Ram. Blur. Out of time on XFM. Well, we're not out of time. We've still got an hour left, boys. <laughs> hey! Luckily. Brilliant. A lot of uh, emails, obviously, about the Chinese. People f as fascinated as we are. I don't want to discuss it, you know, interminably, Rick, because there's so much to say and we've said most of it in the past. Yeah. Get a couple of emails. In fact, I think, Carl, you told us this information. Remind me of it again. If all the Chinese people in the world were- We're in a line on that, because there's loads of them, you'd never get to the end of it. Right. No, it's not that. It is it's, not. No, if all the Chinese people formed a line and started walking out of China, you'd never get to the end of it. That's what I just said. No, it's because though, um, the, yeah, but the, that, that, they'd, that's be, they'd be having babies, um, you know what I mean? Still, it'd be adding to it all the time, wouldn't you? But would they be would they be walking and shagging <laughs> and <laughs> having babies as they're walking out? Yeah, that's that is yeah. That's I'd love to see someone organise that. Maybe the record breakers team. <laughs> I tell you what, I'd love to see Ross McWhorter or Norris, whoever's who is it? Who's the one that's alive? I forget Norris, I think. Norris, right? I'd love to see him uh, to coordinate that. Yeah, uh, one point two billion. Little Chinese fellas, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Yeah. And where are they walking out of China? Which exit are they taking? They're taking the through Tibet. Uh, or? I think it's the, uh, I think it's the, uh, Gate Nine Slip Road, the M43, <laughs> right. to St Petersburg, right. right? And they go and walking <laughs> and shagging. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because some presumably are dying as they're leaving. No, but they live to 120. That's true. So, so they clean. So, yeah, well. 
we know Carl's theory on that. Do you yeah. want to just tell new listeners your theory about uh, when these th when all these Chinese people get the records for oldest people in the world? Come on, what's your theory, Carl? Carl, just, what? Just that they're probably lying. Why? That's all, because a lot of them don't age that well. Some of them do. A lot of them don't, and yeah. they always look older than they are. <laughs> I read the other day, right? Do you know the one who was the oldest woman in the world, mm -hmm. right? Chinese woman, right? Yeah. Um, the way she did it, <laughs> it was. <laughs> She didn't die. That was a, that was her secret. Yeah. What she did, she got up every day and didn't die. No, no, she, uh, she was, like, <coughs> awake and that, and then she'd have two days just sleeping. Right. So she wasn't really that old. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, she'd only sort of lived half of her life in a way. Well, so we all live two off. thirds of our life, don't we? No, but we'll... she, she was, like, awake and that, and then she'd go, oh, I'm out of bed. And then that'd be it for two days. Travel. People are fascinated about your approach to time travel, and I know we've talked about this in the past, but um, this is a very specific time travel question. If you had a time machine, Carl, to what event in your childhood would you travel back to and why? What's the point in going back to oh, things that you thought? Yeah. No, it's just that it's never as good as it. It's like a place you go on holiday, and you go back thinking it'll be as good as the first time. It never is. So I don't, I don't believe in going back to places what do you, what what do you understand the question as uh, do do you, do you think they're asking would you go back like a ghost and spy would you go back and you've got um your childhood back you are that child again you're in the body you are the child or you've got your adult um head and experiences well, on, you know, you, you Rick, I really don't think Carl was thinking there was any of those variations. <laughs> no, Let's be did. honest. But now that you've flagged I them up, I think he was thinking of him as he is now in school with a cap on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But Too big for the chairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. No, I, I don't think I'd, I would go back. It's all happened now, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a, an email for our own amusement. Well, okay. Well, let's choose an event. Okay, forget the time travel thing. Well, no, hang on. I think let's clarify one of Ricky's points. What if you could go back and you could live that moment again? How would you do it differently? There's there's been times where I've gone, oh, that was a bit out of order or whatever. But then you learn from your mistakes, don't you? So I don't want to go back and change stuff because it's it's like that thing that they go on about, isn't it, where they blame the butterfly on an earthquake. You know, it's going to happen. If it wasn't that butterfly, it's another one. So why why pass the book? Is what yeah. I'm saying. So you've got no regrets. There's so nothing in your past you'd want to change or what, do differently. What What about if you went back and you spied like a ghost on something? You couldn't change anything, but you could you could have a look at someone and just sort of look like uh, you like know, what? like Ebenezer Scrooge does, the ghost of Christmas past. He goes back and he's sort of like looking at himself dancing and stuff. What would you do? What would you go back and have a look at? Yeah, but uh, you're asking me to change. I don't want to change. Yes, you're not, not changing. You're just observing. It's impossible. All right, I tell this you question. What. This is. Yeah. It's not going to happen. You're not going to have to. Do this. It's impossible. Right. Yeah, I nearly died once in a, on a uh, on an ice pop. Right. Right. Now maybe if I would have died, I'd say, well, let's go back to that, and I won't have an ice pop. You wouldn't be doing the podcast if you'd have died. You wouldn't be uh, having this email put to you. What are you? That's talking absurd. About? You're now saying you're rewriting history and then going back to change it. Yeah. There's no need. You, you didn't, didn't die. die. <laughs> and we've changed it. You can't change anything. You're just gonna go back and watch something. Would you like to go back and watch yourself choking on a Mr. Freeze? No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wouldn't go back now, because I'm alright. I haven't had one since. I've learned a lesson. I'm not missing them ice pops. So... <laughs> I know that you're making the most of this opportunity to fantasize. I don't see the point in going back in anything. I mean, do you mean go back in time to the oh. point of you can see, like, Rome in its working day? What, in your childhood? Was Rome about when in your childhood? Were there gladiators well, in your childhood? Well, that's what I'm saying. Everything I've, I've been through, I've been through, so why see it again? Forget it. It was just a nice little question. I mean, that shows the, the lack of imagination right. in Carl right. Pilkington. Can, can your I... mind can't All fathom right, something well, unless it's like, you know, got two heads. But I don't see the point in doing something twice. Because the thing is, safety is one good moment when I was about six that I loved. Mm. I'd then have to go through all the other 20 years. Again. Well, why? Why have you imposed that? It's a <laughs> fantasy. Make up. You could go back and come back again. Yeah, whiz back and fast forward 35 years. Nah. Brilliant. No. Like it was on offer. <laughs> like this was really on offer. Move on. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down! Yeah. <laughs> Was that the jingle, or were you just well, yeah, just sure. annoyed about sure. something? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Went and did the podcast. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings, as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after 25 minutes he was trying to wrestle me. <laughs> 
I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. And Ricky just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep. Ricky got bored and released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? A homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he probably had a better day than me. Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. And that if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. I didn't want to say that I... Well, you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket... I'm in the supermarket. All right, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard her properly, because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. <laughs> 25 minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally, her haircuts are followed by an argument between us, as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a style, rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this, as she's got a square head, and a close-cut hairdo makes it look squarer. She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked alright, as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club just so I had something different to write. You've not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? Gave that a go. Um, for about 45 minutes. And, uh, yeah, a mate, a mate sort of said, oh, you know, you're into your dancing, your robotics and that, you're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping, right, body popping and that. He said, uh, you ought to come to Twiggy's. And, um, I went there, um, but I didn't go in, it was shut. It was, <laughs> it was, they, they were just having, like, loads of toilet rolls delivered. I think, like, <laughs> they, they were, like, using it as a storage place. The toilet rolls and that, so I said, oh, I've come to have a dance, and like, oh, not tonight, come back tomorrow. <laughs> I, I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh, what, a way, what a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Just mean, like, say, say, if, you know, they run out of ideas for TV programmes and that, right? They get someone who isn't well. They go, look, do you mind if we make a programme on you? And what they do, they sit them in the bed, and they go, right, what we're going to do now is take out the heart, but replace it with a pacemaker. Right, no, go no, on. No, 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 Sorry, people with pacemakers don't have their heart taken out and a pacemaker popped in. All right, then. Um, some sort of machine. What, what I'm getting to is... Have you been playing Operation? What I mean is... <laughs> what I mean is the big finale would just be a head chatting with loads of wires going into it, and it's like, look what we can do with science. <laughs> That's what the program's called. It's the same every week. The volunteer is just ahead with loads of wires going out. Look what we can do with science. And he's going, oh. goodbye. <laughs> Got some post delivered to me today. It was. <laughs> oh, this is. This great. makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I got some post delivered to me today, it was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I opened it and the first sentence read, Dear Mr. K. Dilkington, You're one of our most valuable customers. I put it in the bin. Like Descartes. Watched a program on him the other day. He is the one who said something like, I know I'm about because I dream. Doesn't work for everything because ants don't sleep. <laughs> Question from uh, Jade. Carl, what would you change if you were in charge of what kids are taught in school? Right, you know, because I mean your school experience was a bit If You got very bored, didn't you? You got very disillusioned by school. Yeah. What I'd do, right, is, uh, instead of keep sort of teaching kids about two and two and that, which is four, right? <laughs> well done. Um, Show off. <laughs> um, I think you should be asked more questions that make them think rather than something that has just got an answer. I totally agree. I totally agree. Right? 
So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, to teach them the, 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 the quest for knowledge, uh, inflaming their imagination. But just freaking them out of it as well, just going like... <laughs> See, I knew that's where it was going. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as you started talking, Rick, I was thinking, you're thinking some of the big existential or philosophical questions. You yeah. Know, what it, does it mean to be human? What does it mean to interact with other exactly. humans? Exactly. To be a human. Or, or, or teaching them sort of like philosophy on a basic level that, you know, teaching them the love for learning. So, yeah. you know, get them up to a roots level so they want to learn and then they will learn as opposed to just teaching them facts. Whereas... He, he was thinking, <laughs> freak them out of it. <laughs> yeah. No, just like, you know, like I read the other day, um, and someone sent it in on email, like, how there's a, a, a dishwasher that's been found on Mars. Rubbish. Whoa, what? Right? That's not true. So, so tell them that. But it's not true. Go home and write about it. How did that happen? But it didn't happen. The, well, it did happen. It was in a science magazine. No, it didn't happen. There's not in, a dishwasher on Mars. Why not? Because... Does mean why not? Why did it... How did it get there? But we're always sending, like, rubbish out there and that. It's like... Not dishwashers. What, you think the, the council take it away and they go, where can we put it? Well, the, uh, the tip's full. We, well, where's the nearest thing we can dump this? Mars, I imagine. No, but the same way that fella who, I don't know, was it two Christmases ago when he was messing about saying I can get stuff to Mars and all that, um, he did it wrong because he did it on, like, Boxing Day and I just think nobody's concentrating. No one wants to work on that day. It's kind of like, do you know what I mean? They're going to do stuff sort of half assed aren't they, sure. on Boxing yeah. Day. So... It didn't really get there, I don't think, but it crash-landed. What right? are you talking about? What was he trying to do? He was sending something up to Mars. Yeah, that little, that little fella that wanted to get something on Mars and it, it, it got... Probe, you mean? And it didn't open properly. Yeah. It got there, didn't it? But, but the thing is, it got there, it didn't open properly. No one's been back to pick it up. And what I'm saying yeah. is, we're saying about going to Mars as our next planet, it's a tip. There's loads of stuff that's been no. flirted up there. No, it's not. <laughs> it <laughs> has, it's, about... old, it's just all, like, that probe thing is still there, rotting away. Yeah. So... Ipso facto, there is a dishwasher on Mars. We've yeah. settled that. Why would they have a dishwasher on Mars? Would they take the dishwasher up in the space shuttle in case they had dinner parties? What are you talking about? I just think they would have a little dishwasher in there. There's a lot of them. Tight space. You know what? But who's going to do that? You know, that means. Do you know how much fuel it takes to move a kilogram? Yeah. Th out of the Earth's atmosphere. So they're going to take up a dishwasher, are they? Sorry, but what are they cooking up there, Carl? How many people does it take to fly a rocket? I... <laughs> how many people? Tell me how many people. Uh, well, it's either one monkey with a banana shoe that feeds it, or probably two or three humans. Right. Say it's three humans. Yeah. Now, there's three humans because they need one to steer it... So one, to, one... one to stop at the petrol station no, to get what, more... Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you're going to start having a sink, then whoever's they washing up... They have got a sink. I know, because they've got a dishwasher. <laughs> He's got you there. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that, but all I'm saying is teach kids things about... Say to them, right, when you go home tonight, there was dinosaurs knocking out ages ago. How would you have lived with them? Get on with it. See you later. Well, they didn't. I've told you this before. You, you got a lot of your information from the Flintstones and One Million Years BC with Racco Welsh. There weren't dinosaurs knocking around where there were little fellas knocking around in fairy pants. No. Um, I'd like Carl to read this out. Okay. Yeah, do you, do you mind? Read it out. Just read it out loud. Which, Which one? one? Yeah, the, the gods are here. Right, right, okay. Just read that. That's just a, a good bit. the gods yeah. of wealth into your home. Yeah. The Chinese have several gods of wealth, yep. which they display in their homes to attract, what? Prosperity. Prosperity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My personal favourite is Chi Yi. Yeah. Who sits on a tiger. He sits on a tiger? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wait. It's pretty difficult to find this, this fella. Yeah. If you could use Kang Kung or the three star gods, oh, no. Wait. Read him out! Read out the names of the star gods. F U K. <laughs> read it out. Well, read that. It's, a, it's a, a Chinese god. god. You're allowed Chinese to say god. Chinese god no, on the radio. No. You are allowed to say. What you allowed to say? You say it then. Well, it, it, you look. It's look, you're so immature. Read the three of them out. Really. Okay. Um, if he is difficult to find, you should use Quan or the three star gods, Fuck Luck and Sal, all of whom bring wealth and prosperity. Now, what were the names of the gods again? Because I just, I'm, if I'm making it? a note at home, really, well, it's, it's just, it's a Chinese god. Yeah, it's this Quan Kun, or you can use Luck Sal. <coughs> You can't. What? But it's a god. F U K. It's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, I assume. I don't know if we're, if we're pronouncing it wrong. I really apologise. Apologies, apologies if, if we're offending anyone who's uh, of an oriental persuasion. But that's Quan Kung or Luck Sao or Fuck. And any of those gods are available at a Chinese supermarket. <laughs> Near you? Yeah. <laughs> that's Feng Shui. It's an ancient art. You can't. Give me that look. Clinic. Walking with thee. Um, so there, that's, uh, Feng Shui. That's we've, Feng Shui sorting. We've given away donuts. we've talked a little bit about, um, band names today, with uh, more insight into Carl's psyche. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you, you, uh, during that record, you said, uh, are we knock everything? 
You saw something about the Bermuda Triangle, didn't you? That yeah, when I talked about ghosts, you sort of just, because uh, you don't believe in it. Mm. You, I think it's because you're scared of it, to be honest, and you can't admit to, to understanding it and sure. actually believing in it. Sure. Thing on last night, Steve. Yes. Bermuda Triangle. Oh, yeah. Do you know much about that? Um, mainly the, uh, song yeah. by, what was his name? What's his name? Bermuda, um, Bermuda Triangle, Triangle, where people no, disappear. No, Bermuda the Triangle, what's his name? name? No, Barry Manilow. Barry, Barry Manilow. Yeah. Are you familiar with the lyrics? Bermuda Triangle, where people disappear. Bermuda Triangle, don't go near. Yeah. I shouldn't really make a joke out of it. No, you're right, go on. But, um, what it is, right, there's a programme saying what it, what it's about. Do you, I mean, what do you know about it? Uh, as I say, mainly from what Barry's told me, but uh, certainly planes and various boats have gone missing within the Bermuda Triangle. Planes? Mm. Yeah, but obviously that documentary didn't explore it. He, he, he learned a lot about that. For that. I, I learned a lot about American history through We Didn't Start the Fire by Billy Joel. Again, most so. of my knowledge of um, the uh, sort of you know, Tsarist Russia comes from uh, Rus Rus Rasputin Russia. by um, yeah. Boney M. Well, yeah. He was the lover of the Russian queen. They put you know, poison into his wife. Yeah, yeah. They shot him till he was dead. Yeah. Which is, you know, go on. Right. Well, there's, oh, those right. Russians. Sort of a uh, bit of, a, bit of an earthquake in the sea. Sure. Less out methane gas. Okay. Yeah. And apparently, if methane gas, if you were swimming out in the sea, yeah. and there was like a, an earthquake and some methane came out, yeah. you can't swim in it, you just sink. Okay. Even if you're a good swimmer. What, what, what happens if you're, you're, you're two lads from your school, yeah. and they were- Heads. Yeah, they, that, that's, that's, a, that's like a buoy, so work. you can see they're a mile off, no, no, and no. their webbed hands would get them into shore. Because they did actually say, even if you're wearing a life jacket, if, if the water's full of methane, right? You, you just can, sink. You just sink. So what he's saying is, boats have gone across the sea, mm. got a load of methane in the sea, and the boat just sinks. Right. What about the planes? Is it then sort of planes with little sort of floaty things Could on? Could be. That'll start that with the sort they've landed in the sea. Right. And <laughs> methane's coming. Well, out. sorry Carl, what did the documentary say? Not, not I imagine. Yeah, your hypothesis might be working. Yeah. What no, did they, they say in the documentary? They didn't cover did they? that bit, they didn't, didn't cover the planes. They didn't do the planes. Something else they said about it though. Go on. Loch Ness, mm -hmm. the monster. Yep, sure. Probably doesn't exist. Okay. What oh. it is? Interesting. Hold on. Interesting. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yes, uh, what they thought it d not this probably didn't exist. Curious viewpoint. Hold on. What, what proof have they got for that, Carl? How can they go around saying stupid things like that? It's methane. Right. In, in Loch Ness. And people have seen. Um, what's the what's the lake? It's in Loch Ness. Loch Ness. Yeah. Um, it being the Loch Ness monster. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it lives. That's how it finds its that's way home. That's certainly the clue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you get again, Carl, yeah. that's the clue. Yeah, if you go. And, it's, and if it's out uh, wondering, it goes, excuse me, uh, would you know where uh, I'm being the Loch Ness monster? Where, where would I be going? <laughs> oh, you'd be going to the Loch Ness if that's your home. It's way over there, you so big anyway, monster, you. So the bubbles from the sure. methane mm. bubble up out of the water. Yeah. People yeah. think, oh, God, it's a monster's head. But it's not, it's just water sort of shooting up because of the bubbles. Well, that's two of the great mysteries of the universe solved by mm -hmm. Carl P on a, on a Saturday afternoon. That is right. fantastic. Yeah. So, that makes me, that makes me think a lot of things. So, you know when mediums are sort of like going, oh, I've got something coming through. Mm. Do you think they are uh, exhaling a lot of methane gas? And thus, thus making them not think straight? Do you think everything's down to methane gas? Do you think that all the mysteries of the universe are down to methane gas, Carl? What did it say in the documentary you saw? About what? What was the budgie happy? We know that budgie was sad. Was it, was it in a room? Because they used to take canaries down the mines, didn't they? They used to take canaries down the mines, they'd smell the methane, and then the budgie would be happy. I'm not gonna teach you anymore. Play record. Our Freaks Electric, Richard X and the Sugar Bames mm -hmm. on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly through, we've had a few laughs again, yep. a few tears. Absolutely, as always. Few, uh, uh, oh, excuse me, and don't, don't be alarmed, I, I look quite frightening, but uh, I'm merely a, a nice monster. I seem to have lost my way home. Uh, could you direct me in the right direction? Ah, nice to meet you, yeah, Carpe Hi. Um, what's your name? W why do you need to know my name? Well, you might help me to find out where you come from. Oh, my name's the Loch Ness Monster. Okay, alright, give me a second. Um, what was your name again? Loch Ness Monster. See, this is what I mean. <laughs> when you came in, you are all over me. <laughs> like a rash. Being nice to you. Yeah. <laughs> Gets towards the end. Nasty. It's the phone. Answer it. See who it is. Can you give us a second, uh, listeners? Just amuse yourselves for a moment. Who is it? We're just speaking to, uh, Carl's just on the phone there speaking to someone. Um, we'll just, uh, keep you abreast of who that is. Uh, who is it? Time. It's, uh, it's 10 to 3. Uh, wants to know if you're doing a live show somewhere tonight. 
So just a private call now, um, asking Ricky. Uh, uh, I am, yeah. Later. But, Ricky, I, but I don't want to say it now. I'll, 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 well, I'll, well, uh, I'll, well uh, I've got in mind one person. I've got to get out of there. Office, <laughs> and uh, often performs live <laughs> at uh, different <laughs> venues <laughs> around <laughs> yeah. the country. Um, uh, okay. So while those two take care of business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys, have you finished that private call? Yes. <laughs> Jeez, that was outrageous. Um, you know you're a fan of Feng Shui, Carl, and you believe it's all true. <laughs> Um, I just, I did just run this one past you just on the off chance. Yeah, yeah. Because maybe you will change your opinion slightly. Yeah. Feng Shui teaches you to use your environment wisely. Sure. If your land and the surrounding area is undulating, it's said to house auspicious dragons. <laughs> when land is flat and featureless, the dragon is missing and the land is said to be less auspicious. Excuse me, they call me the, uh, uh Brixton Dragon. Sure, sure. Uh, I seem to have lost my way. I, I know it's South London somewhere, but, uh, uh could you help me? Find my home. What's, it, what, 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 what's your name? Well, they call me the Brixton Dragon. Uh, right, where are you from? Uh, oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> oh, I yeah. see what you mean, aye. Oh, the came So is that, does, that, does that make you query at all, the dragon? I'm not into it that much. Right, I'm sure. I'm just saying that if you have your head at one end of the bed rather than the other, it might make a difference to your night's yeah. sleep. It's not so much yeah. Feng Shui, though, is it, as sort of good advice, hmm. generally. When you went home, then don't, don't sleep on the end of a spike near a cliff. Good advice. I mean, that, that's good advice, isn't it? You know what I mean? No. When you went home and uh, the house was full of women, <laughs> why, why did you why did you sleep on the sofa? Why did you not pop upstairs and sort of into a warm bed? Yeah, with a, with a, with a woman. <laughs> 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 Were they dressed or? Is your brother still sort of have those kind of parties or? I haven't seen him for years. Sure, sure, sure. Where's oh, really? he living there? I don't know. Okay. What's his name? Mark. <laughs> it's not. He's not. He's not known as like Moss Side Mark. Because I could be clue. <laughs> ten <laughs> Dawlish Road Mark. He's never out of prison long enough to get a nickname. Hey, really? Steady on. It's getting a bit heavy, isn't it? Oh, God. What? Is this? Is this what's motivated a lot of your anxiety? Yeah. Oh, the hair wheels. loss, that sort of thing. We always go a little bit too far, don't we? A little bit dark at the end of the show. I know. Well, it's, um. Oh. Wow. Well, Sorry about that. for Pete. Oh, Pete wanted a little bit of Muse. Yeah, if Pete wants it. I mean, I don't. I'm not a big fan. I don't mind Muse. I d I've still not got over them them doing that um, summertime song. What was it called? Nina Simone cover, wasn't it? Yeah. Anyway, listen. Let's not bring the show down. Uh, no. Let's play Muse, and then we'll be in South finished. Kensington. Yeah. Plug in, baby. Let's enjoy it. Oh yeah, the smooth indie sound of Richard Ashcroft. The science of silence on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Joined me is Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. It was an excellent link, that Rick. Did you say nine at one point? 104.9. <laughs> Did <laughs> I? Other than that, it was again. Textbook. I, I, yeah, a desperate attempt to be an articulate. Sure, but let myself down. With your. So this is the good thing about the boxing thing because uh, uh, there's no chance of me, you know. Uh, slurring the words. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I already slurred my words. Yeah, yeah, so no yeah. one, uh, any damage will yeah. be totally fine. Yeah. Oh, the doctor's dear. rushing in. I think there yeah. might be some kind of concussion. <laughs> <laughs> James just going, no, that's just the way he talks. Yeah. <laughs> but um, oh. but because uh, I'm thinking maybe did you start the show with with that particular kind of uh, manner just because obviously a lot of new listeners I imagine thanks to the massive poster campaign and you obviously want to impress them that's and the, charm. That, there's there, there's a few examples today of irony coming back and biting you yeah that that seemed like a funny idea at the time me posing that out. but um, Jonathan Ross phoned me up when they first went up and he said I've just seen a big poster of a predatory gay <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah you do look a little bit uh, yeah hello <laughs> What's your name? Yeah. Do I usually <laughs> like to sit down here? <laughs> <laughs> and then you're in the background. And also, uh, it, the, the, I think the funny thing about having you as a partner, I mean, the only good thing is that, y y you know, you look you look weird and tall, like too freakishly tall and lanky. Oh, yeah, yeah, but in that one, no, because you're background and you're smiling, you don't look as weird as you do in real life or as as freakishly tall. So it sort of ruins it a little bit for me. Look at, look is at that the look, 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 look. Pilkington, what are you he's doing? He's not listening, he's just opening a, a packet, what are they? McVitties? Mc, see, uh, see, we should mention them, we get some free ones, if anyone at McVitties are listening. Because we're not getting the perks of this. Nothing. I, I tell you, I'm not getting anything. I really got in this game for uh, the ladies, for the money. For the voiceover work, certainly yeah. I'm seeing hiding the hair of that. But um, you're not getting the voiceover work because Jethro, the Jethro's <laughs> getting all these parts right, that you yeah, might get. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, okay, Rick. Yeah, you were the voice of what? The drink driving campaign. <laughs> <laughs> You sound like you sound like a man who was run over in a drink drive accident. <laughs> oh I mean, dear. it's like you don't. Drive. You didn't get any money for that, you did I? Oh, did I? I can't remember. 
Yeah. It's like, I mean, talk I about don't drive, yeah. Well, that's good. I don't drive. Pot black no, it said don't drink and drive, so I've chosen but just to drink. But at least I can formulate sentences using the English language, and I'm not getting the voice over work. What's the, what, but yeah, what's the, English, the English language of the 14th century. Well, it's oh. better, better at any English language, <laughs> and English language. <laughs> Rather than whatever kind of Middle England language you speak, the language of the hobbits. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Carl. Alright. See, so you're eating a biscuit. biscuit. I can't believe it. Are you bored with this already? Do you know what? MTV called me last week. They called me again yesterday and said, when can they come down to do a- Oh, they're coming down next Saturday, by the way, to do a little screen test for you. They're gonna sort of just film you with a little camcorder. You said this. They're gonna film you. Are you right? Do you want to, I mean, are you hungry? Do you want to go out and have a meal? I can't believe you're eating while I'm on air. No one can hear that. Do you know who I am? No one can hear Explain that. Explain who I am. Well, that's Ricky Gervais, right? He's made his name on TV. Yeah. Okay, he's done <laughs> and any number of corporate gigs, <laughs> which, and they pay silly money. So, yeah. I mean, this guy's earning, you know, and really, uh, earning beyond his talent. <laughs> yeah. All right? So, so I, I mean, think I deserve you know, a little bit more than a little mank eating a biscuit while Rick, I'm talking. Rick, Rick Gervais? Yeah. Have you won a BAFTA? Yeah, too. All right, so, yeah, yeah. just a little bit of respect. Yeah. Yeah. Carl, well, what uh, have you won? What have you won? I, I got a, uh, I got a, got a bronze certificate for doing a full week at school. <laughs> That's great. It was it? only a bronze. <laughs> What's that then? Three out of five days? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I got me a little Crusaders badge, if you, if you remember. What's the little what? Crusaders badge? A Crusaders badge for the religious club. So... Oh, is that the fellow that you went and played? You actually got a pong ball, so they wanted to talk to you about God. Yeah. Yeah. You got a Crusader's badge, did you? Yeah, that's oh, why I went, that's why I joined, that's why I joined. For the I like, I like the little badge, did yeah. four weeks and then packed it in. Uh -huh. But, uh, we're talking about MTV, right, and I was feeling a bit nervous, wasn't I? About, <laughs> about like, you know, the way I look. Right. And what have you. And then I watched a bit of Celebrity Big Brother, and all the fuss that Mark Owen's getting, and he's not, he's not that good looking, is he? He's, he's very- I, I like- I want to be Mark Owen's mate. If anyone who knows Mark Owen or Mark Owen's listening, I want to be his mate. Yeah, I yeah. think he's brilliant. I think he's a nice lad, but what I'm saying is, right, all the girls go mad over him. Yeah. And he's not- he's not that good looking, is he? Well, uh, he's got a- he is in a certain way, isn't he? That sort of, uh, non-threatening sort yeah, of- Yeah, but he's not- he's not stunning, is he? Do you well, know what I mean? No, but uh, no. Well, what's your definition of a star? Yeah. Who well, do you like? Someone who you look at and you go, God, they're, they're good. Which bloke do you fancy? Who, 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 no, who, what bloke do you think's attractive so, then? So if I was into men. Yeah, yeah. In fact, you can you can still say a bloke's a good looker without yeah, 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 like yeah, fancying yeah, them. Who, who do you think you is know attractive? Know I mean? uh, Probably, uh. Oh. I mean, it depends what you're looking for. No, well, no, just, 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 just looks. Just, just looks. Just, 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 just looks as well. Of course, well, yeah. Who would you say was attractive? Would you say it was like stunning in your definition? A good looking lad. Yeah. Good looking lad. Oh, look at him over there. He's. Uh. Ooh. Do you find, you know, Robbie Williams, do you find him a friend? No, the boy next door, look. No, no. Who do you. Carl, hurry up, because it's, you know, we've only got two hours. Probably. Uh, do you know, I, I, I can't think of one I found. Mark Owen is, is pretty good looking then, <laughs> really. Uh, well, there's not, just name one bloke that you think's an attractive guy. There must be one bloke that you've either met or that you've, you know, seen in a pub Who's or on a poster. Attractive? Tell you what. Go on. Tell you what. Um, works here. Um, young Alex Zane. <laughs> Brilliant. I love that. That's, that's like, um, a ride song or something. That, that's my favourite one. Ride-ish. Ride-ish. So, Feeder. Yeah. Just the way I'm feeling. On XFM 104.9. Rick, quick question for you. Go I'm on. thinking, um, a lot of people may maybe are tuning in for the first time because of the advertising campaign. Sure. Should we reintroduce Carl again? I, w I know we've done this a few times in the past, but just worry that people are going to not, you know, not really kind of get the measure of him. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, well, uh, I'm Ricky Gervais. Uh, I'm the one off the office. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Merchant. He's not the one in the office. He's not. He's not Gareth. Some people think he is. He's got a funny, weird West Country accent oh. that actually Mackenzie was affecting uh -huh. for the role. Steve uh, wrote it with me. He's a tall, um, lanky fella. Uh, Carl is our. I'm um, sort of, I say producer, but he's the one that pressed the buttons because well, I was too- body. Yeah, but I mean, it was just because I was too big to run the desk. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I, I, I used to have to do. <laughs> Literally too big, you couldn't get it. <laughs> yeah, and then we discovered that, you know, he looked a bit like a boring, sort of, all right, yeah, uh, but then when we sort of, you know, poked him with a stick, mm. he came up with, um, 
uh, he doesn't realise, but some of the, the I think, some what of the funniest things. Extraordinary things, things I've yeah. ever heard. Um, say hello, Carl. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, classics, I think, so far, as that have gone straight to the list include, have you ever used a Y front correctly? Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, you never see an old person- Eating a Twix. Eating a Twix. No. These are sort of things. Uh, it, he's, he's things. back on his campaign to get rid of jellyfish. Why really? is that, Carl? Oh, did you see the paper yesterday? Go on. There's a jellyfish. Uh -huh. Right. It's about 15 foot long, about uh -huh. five foot wide, uh -huh. and uh, there's a fella swimming next to it, and the paper's going, oh, look at this we've found, there's loads of them in Japan. Yeah. Um, and it's because the, the, uh, the water's getting hot, so it's making jellyfish really big. <laughs> oh dear. How's the campaign going to get jellyfish rid, you know, get rid of them? What was your point about jellyfish? There's no, they don't do anything. There's no point. They get in the way. Fish, yeah. It ruined me holiday. Uh huh. Because I got stung by one. Yeah. Um, and I, I But you think the same thing about Liverpudlians, and we can't just go around, you know, wiping out things that ruin well, your holiday. Well, let's get the jellyfish first. <laughs> And then, uh, then yeah. we'll move on to the scousers. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know what they do, and I'm still, I, I mean, I'm trying to look on the internet, I've been busy this week. You're uh, jellyfish now, not scousers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't um, know what, I don't the know what they do either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Try and work out what would happen with the sea if it didn't work, because they say like it's what? no- What? Whoa, 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 see there, this, this is what we're talking about, this do it. people who listen for the first time, they've got to listen to every word you say. You want to find out what would happen with the sea if it didn't work? If, if, if jellyfish weren't in there, do you know what I mean? Cause right. stuff like coral, apparently the sea would be in a right state if you didn't have any coral yeah, right. in it. Um, f if fish, yeah. do you know what I mean? I always worry about how many fish were, were sort of eating. Cause you go past- <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> no, you, do you know like, you go in Marks and Spencers or Selfridges- There's loads of fish in there. And there's, there's really fancy stuff that you think, they've killed that, and yeah. it looks good on the counter, pretty impressive. Yeah. But is anyone gonna buy it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's a big, like, a shark sat in ice. Yeah. And you go, yeah, they've got, they've got like a lot of fish. For you sure. you go around the, the Tate Gallery? What, no, what, do you know what I mean? In, uh, well, in I've, I've never and, seen a big shark sat yeah. in ice in Selfridges. They do. They do it. And it's like, you go in the morning, and you can go back at night, and the same shark sat there, yeah. and it's, it's- So you know it's the same shark, do you? It's the same one. So, 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 what, same face? Are you sure wow. he just hasn't lost his mum? And he's just like, he Look. went shopping with her Christmas shopping and he's just like, he's around, he doesn't know where he's just waiting. You, you know I'm right. I've never seen a shark in Selfridges. Well, alright then, say maybe that's one day a week, but on other days they'll have like... <laughs> shark okay. Monday. I think, yeah, Monday, yeah, Selfridges. Today at Selfridges is Shark Monday. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just that... So your point is that there's all these fish not being eaten. Yeah. So and they're, they're being take, killed. They've taken them out of the sea, no one's eating them. And you're worried, what, that the sea's gonna rise because the more things you take out? Well, we're just gonna run out. Because they, because they, because fish drink it, don't they, and that keeps the water level down. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. well, you know, you know what I mean, uh, there's stuff, there's was stuff that worries said, me. You're worried that, was it you who said that you were worried that, cause, you know, there's sponge in the sea. Yeah. But if they took it all away. No. Like, was it, is that that's, that's a Stephen Wright joke. Is that Stephen Wright, what yeah. was the joke? And the sponges grow in the sea. That kills me. How deep would it be if they did not <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he confused you yeah. with Stephen Wright. Ooh. Who, who for a living purposely says ridiculous things. <laughs> yeah. Does that worry you, Carl? Uh, <laughs> well, think about that and play a record. What oh, do you want? What do you want? I'd love to a classic, a beautiful song by Simon and Garfunkel, April Come She Will. To be honest, I had a late night last night because I stayed up to watch a programme about monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> it's already good! <laughs> of course it is. It's already good! Now, before I read on, I mean, is this not some kind of monkey news? Is this not a late return to monkey news? Uh, well, it's not. It's not that good. Is it not? Whereas the other monkey news is... Oh, chimpanzee, that is some more shit! This is what he says. He, this is what he gleaned from the programme about monkeys. It sat on a bridge and wanted stuff off people to walk over the bridge. What? So it was acting as some kind of toll booth. This is it? ridiculous. No, it was a bridge in, in, like, the jungle. Oh, shut the fuck up! And it's a monkey that sat on a bridge and, um, a lot of tourists go through the area no, it's to, a monkey who realised that, that if he sits there, he'll get stuff because it looked like it's a cute little chimp begging. No, but every time. Yeah, because you give a monkey, you give a oh, I'm as bad as him now. If you give a chimpanzee uh, a banana, uh, uh, and he starts realising that humans have things to give. Yeah, but it's all Squirrels learn stuff. that. If you don't go, oh, you wouldn't say, oh, went to the park, there's squirrels waiting at the gate, you have to give them a toll to go in, they don't do anything you move in, they come up to you every time. You, you fucking idiot. Went to bed after watching it and fell asleep thinking about it on the bridge right now. It's a bit bad, really, because the monkey should work harder for its food. It made me remember the slug I saw yesterday that was eating bird poo. <laughs> 
Nobody would ever help a slug with food like they do with ducks and monkeys. A slug's life is pretty bad. The only time they come out of their den is when it's raining. Den. So, so even their days out are depressing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No. It is like, it's a horrible thing to be, in it? <laughs> a slug. <laughs> talking about what is it like to be a slug no just because like the monkey even though it's been quite aggressive everyone was like oh give it some water and it was it was well like kitted out it had like you know chocolate bars bottled water some like you know fizzy stuff and all that an ipod it was listening to monkey news it could have had one if it wanted one it was getting away with murder on that bridge and that's just because it was furry yeah if that was like a blob like a slug there's no way people would be that friendly towards it and it just annoys me how you get this pecking order for like, no matter what creature you are, favouritism. And that slug was only eating that bird poo because it wasn't being offered stuff. If it was offered toffees or whatever. <laughs> well, it's just sad, isn't it? It's, it's come to that. That's where its life has come to. <laughs> yeah, but it's not! As it mollusk like that's down on its fucking yeah, lap. It didn't live in a big country house no, and its wife it left it the kids when it started hitting the bottle. It, and I kind of <sighs> thought, and look, they do only come out in the rain and it's depressing and it'll probably get killed in a bit. And that was its last meal. I just... That's <laughs> real! But it wouldn't care. prefer steak and chips, Carl. It no, doesn't have... It must like a leaf or a... a you know, at the end of the day, it's an insect. They love it's it. not an insect! Well, it's part of that gang. It's part of that... <laughs> no, it's part it's of that... They hang out together. They it's hang out not. together. Why do you think it's part of that because gang? Because it, it knocks about in the woods in the same place as a spider does. But all I'm, uh, what I'm saying is, they, they're eating boring stuff because that is what's... It's not boring area. stuff to them. They're not. I have no opinion of it at all. They take in sustenance. No, but where you are is what you eat. When I'm in London, I'll have beans on toast for lunch. On holiday, what? Tapas? Go on, I'll have a bit. <laughs> so it's whatever you eat, what's in that area. Suzanne went off to work and I went to the shop to buy some envelopes. The shop was empty, but the fellow behind the counter was on the phone and just kept talking, even though he could see I was waiting. I started to count backwards from twenty. <laughs> When I got to six, he hung up and served me. I won't use the shop again. Question, why count backwards from 20? So he's thinking, what's gonna happen at one? If I start counting from one, he's going well. Let him carry on. What, out loud? So, not, not really loud, but like, uh, more of a mouth action, so he could see who was doing it. Do you know like Sorry, that? you, you just started miming counting backwards to a man in a shop. He's on the phone. The yes. shop is empty. Yes. I thought he'd like me custom. He could have served me and stay on the phone. Even though I don't like that, at least he's still doing what, what you know, he needs to do. I just said, sorry, can I just get these, please? Yeah. Well, I stood there and I thought, it's annoying me now, my kidneys ache, aching and I started to get a bit of a sweat on. So I thought, right, I'm gonna give him 20 seconds and if he hasn't got off the phone, I'm leaving. Get, you are one yourself... of the strangest people. It's just giving yourself a, a thing. I could have been stood there free. for ages. He's one of the strangest people who's free to walk yeah. it's the about, streets. No, I set myself a little target and I thought I don't want to waste another 30 seconds in here, I'll give him 20. It worked. He served me at 6. But it didn't work. Yeah, but did he do it because you were doing that or did he finish his phone call? I don't know, I was busy counting. <laughs> <laughs> one prediction for the future. Carl is from uh, an academic study, what, what the world will be like in about 75 years from mm -hmm. now. And uh, a, a big prediction they're sort of sure of is that androgyny will rule. But soon you won't even need a female or a man in your life, you'll just need the egg or sperm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll be able to have any coupling you want or, or not. Thoughts, Carl? Uh, that isn't what I've heard. What were you heard? I well, heard that. So you got you you read a, an academic study, Rick. But yeah. well, let's find out what Carl's well, been reading. I heard we're, uh, you know, we're all gonna go ugly. <laughs> different point, though, isn't it? That's a completely different, different point. point, though. Not listening to a word no. Ricky said. No, it's on. just it's just uh, if we all sort of go ugly, uh, that will sort the population. He gets an out. extra syllable in the word ugly. Mm. Ugly. <coughs> ugly. Ugly. Yeah. So that, that just sorts the population out because people aren't sort of having it away. Left well, right well, well, no, well then that, that doesn't sort of. What do you mean? Sorry, Rick, I don't understand what the hell he said there. Is he, are you so saying? Many... Are you saying because everyone's ugly, everyone won't want to have it away more with the ugly person? Yeah. Okay, I still don't. You seem to understand what he's talking about, Rick. I'm still confused. But what, what, he, what he thinks is that if we all if we're all ugly, then we still have this strange paradigm of beauty that won't exist, so we won't fancy anyone as no, much. No, no, they'll still sort of. Fancy, because at the end of the day, we're animals, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll still have it away, but yeah. not as much as they'd like to do now, because it's all based on looks. 
sorry, so, but what's this got to do what's with what this world like? Describe, you, because describe Ricky's, a typical town or, or country it's setting. exactly, me. right, imagine London, you've still got the gherkin, you've still got the big wheel. That's right. it's just everyone's ugly. Right, and they're, and they're doing all the same jobs, are they? they everyone's just, still, yeah, the so world's what, got to carry what on. What do they look like? What's ugly? Just imagine, like, I, have you ever seen anyone when you've just gone, look at that? Yeah. Right, well, like, like that. Yeah, but hold on. Because it's not no, like because a we strict... have got better looking, haven't we? If I look back now yeah. at a school photo, yeah. you look at my class and you go, what, what was going on then? <laughs> you can't tell the difference <laughs> between some all... of the girls and the blokes. When he said, we've got better looking, I thought he was going to talk about cavemen. <laughs> not yeah, his school not. photo. I mean, what happened there? there? There's been no evolution in that time. <laughs> what are you talking about, Carl? We've got better looking now. Aren't we? But we will change. Yeah, we'll change these little five things. Years. I mentioned before about uh, your little finger. There'll come a time when that'll go. I've said, I've watched it. I've kept an eye on what my little finger's doing. <laughs> Sometimes it does nothing. It never helps out. All the others are grabbing all the stuff. That one just sort of sits there watching. So you could get rid of that, and I think that that will go in evolution. <laughs> think of the books he could have read when he was doing that, when he was monitoring his little finger. <laughs> I've been watching my little finger. I think what's more interesting about the future, Carl, is the fact that technology integrated with humans will be fascinating. So, for instance, they're talking you know, about the fact that in the future we may even be able to have chips in our head that allow us to access the internet or an equivalent of it, directly, mentally. Not, not, so not imagine that. to say, not, not french fries. Hang on that. though, well, at what point are we us then? Yeah, this is good. Go on, go on. Go on. No, because if I, if I can go on the internet at any time, then that's gonna know more than me. What does that mean? Okay. When I don't know an answer to something now, mm. which is a lot of stuff. Really? Go on. You yeah. watch University Challenge, and the stuff them, them kids on that now. I just think, where have they stored that? For me, if something doesn't get used within a time period, that's it. But you're getting, it's forgotten again, about. basically, mm. you're, you, you've got about the same hardware I haven't, as those honest people. Honest to God, I haven't. I know I haven't. So, what I'm saying is, if I want to know the answer to something, I go on the internet. Yeah, right. Now, if I've got a chip in my head with Google on it, yeah. I'm never going to use my head. I'll just be forever on Google. <laughs> Well, I'm not, but because what do you what's think the point? Head is, though? Because well, I'm going to get it wrong. The chances are I'll get it wrong, so divert that. It's like saying. No, no, you can't bypass the brain straight to Google. When so you're having a chat socially, it's not like they're going, all right, Carl, how are you? And um, you're not there. You're asleep, and Google's talking. I think you'll find the dude. No, no, only. Do you want to see naked ladies? Come this way. No. I don't watch a university challenge and go. I want to be like them, I'm going to start reading books, I've accepted I I'm never going to be like them, I can't play along, all I tend to do is, 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 uh, I say to Suzanne, right, so every question now, I'm going to have egg as the answer, and I'm hoping that one day- <laughs> What an amazing game! <laughs> what an amazing intellectual oh, pursuit God. that is! What a lucky lady! <laughs> what does Suzanne say to that? Well, she just sees if it works. She just plays along, and then I'm saying, "Oh, it might be this one, or whatever." I but remember. I love that because I remember once it was about um, five years ago. Uh, Carl and Suzanne were around near Christmas, and me and Jane were there. We were playing different parlor games um, like charades and that. And then one game, you have to do a thing where you have to beat, and you have to do animals, and you have to go. Uh, First one is A, then B. So you say Ardvark. Next one goes Beaver. Next one goes Cat. It came to Carly panicked, and he went Egg. <laughs> <laughs> and he was on F. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're sat there watching University Challenge, and on a good night, it's you know well-known jeweler of Fabergé is well known for his jewel encrusted war. <laughs> egg. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Humpty Dumpty is commonly pictured as a living egg. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If you keep saying the same thing, eventually, it's yeah. like a broken watch. Carp is always right. Looks isn't it? like he. <laughs> yeah. REM with Orange Crush on XFM 104.9. Well, then it's only 20 minutes to go. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve and Carl. Carl, what did you point? What did you point to me then? Just then reminded me. Go on. Orange Crush. Do you know we were talking the other night about contraceptives? Uh, no, you said to me. Uh, I've got to do lots of homework. You look up how they used, in the olden days, how they used to use elephant dung 
as a contraceptive. <laughs> and I went, what? And he went, no, look at how you make me give me those things. I said, I don't know, was it they put, when you're running around with dung on the end of your knob, no woman really wants to go near it. Is that how it worked? And he went, come on, you give me things to do. If you've just written a PhD on how to use elephant dung as a contraceptive, please get in touch. And I'll, I'll give the number in a minute. It's not elephant, it was crocodile. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Why? But, um, yeah, orange Sorry, no, you can't, no, no, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Back. <coughs> what do you mean, it was crocodile dung? What, how did they use crocodile dung as a contraceptive? I don't know. Right, go on, Orange Crush, yeah. So Orange Crush, um, what it was, I, t I was trying to look up that, that thing about, um, crocodile stuff, mm. using it, and, um, I came up with another one saying that they used to use a lemon, sort of shaped, right? And the, um, put it, put it on, and the citric, is it the, um, citric acid, citric acid in it kill the would kill the sperm. Right. So they would, sorry, they would wear the lemon on the end of the knob. Was that erotic? <laughs> it worked. At least not try anything, Carl, mate. That works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If the ladies like that. I mean, does it could it be anything? Could it be like, uh, you know, a melon? Kumquat? Yeah, maybe. In my, in my case. What's those hairy ones? Yeah. Anyway, that uh, just reminded me when it, orin orange crush. Well, thanks very much for that, Carl. It's uh, and that, I didn't even ask him to. No, 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 that. no. Just... So orange crush reminded you of the lemon contraceptive. Mm. Okay, jolly good. Jolly you could good. use it as a little lemon squeezer, couldn't you? It could be like a novelty lemon squeezer. You just stand in the kitchen, <laughs> and then when someone wants to just come along and go yeah. <laughs> on the end of your. Did yeah. you make this uh, lemonade yourself? Uh, yes, I, I did. did. It tastes funny. <laughs> it tastes funny. Uh, okay, um, yeah. Anyway. Do, do you, would you, Carl, this is a quick question to you, would you ever sort of find yourself in a situation where you might confuse a woman's breasts with mountains? <laughs> is that a concern for you, do you think? No. Not, not a problem for you? Well, not if they're, not if they're small and humble, I would. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. That's what, fingers crossed. If they were small <laughs> and humble, then I'd, I'd pretty much not confuse them with mountains. Thank God, but I mean, if they were large and, and sort of pendulous. And with, like, like, quite rocky with snow on top. <laughs> exactly. Then I'd go, hold on, love. Wait a minute. Hold on, love. I was into this, but now exactly. it, I feel like I'm alone. Carl, do you know what we're talking about? Who's, who has, who has done that? I have a clue. One more time. See, my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. <laughs> Shakira. It's a it's lyric that taking the nation by with. storm. It's quite a nice song. It's got another. Uh, it's very much like it sounds a bit like uh, Men at Work down under. Yeah, it's got the pan pipes. Is this uh, what's its kid? Who? Um, Julio Iglesias. <laughs> no, it's Shakira. Consequently, uh, the word Shakira there <laughs> being mentioned. I haven't heard of him. Okay, she's a big Latin star apparently, big Latin American star. Uh. And uh, anyway, just sing it again for us. See, si, my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. <laughs> Which is a concern, it was always a concern. Definitely. She, I see the number of times she's woken up and there's been a fat bloke with a beard and a little, a little Sherpa. She goes, what are you doing? And they go, we're just trying oh. to climb this map. Look again! Oh, sorry love. Oh, it's your tits, I didn't realise. Oh, your tits, we thought we were in... I can't believe it. I can't, well can we camp here? You can't camp on my tits for the night, no! Well why are you climbing them? Well I just Because they confused. were there. Well, they're small and humble. What are you, mental? <laughs> <laughs> Carl, I love that look of Carl. Carl is looking back and forth. You know when, it, when you sort of uh, uh, you go t t to a cat and it looks back and forth between two people. That's very much like Carl's looking at us now. Or when like a child sees a midget or something. In the <laughs> they're just transfixed, aren't they? And the parents oh, get those stare. When we were pushing um, Ash, just the, our producers uh, in a wheelchair, and we were pushing he's through the midget. We should make no, he's not a little midget. He's not tall. But, um, we were pushing him through the VC, and this little kid just came up and just stood in front of him and looked at him. Yeah. <laughs> I just laughed. It was funny. <laughs> do you do that? I imagine that you get caught staring at him. Yeah, oh. Do you go out to people? Do you go out to people with problems and go, Mummy, is that a monster? Well, I was telling you one about when I used to go with my dad in the taxi. Oh, yeah. Well, what's this story? Well, um... Your dad, father was a taxi driver? My dad, used, he had loads of jobs. Mm. Which he did back then, and they don't do that anymore, do they, people? Don't. <laughs> They don't have a of jobs? stuff. Sure. But um, it, one, at one point, he had a black cab, and I, I used to uh, used to go with him. He used to get a, like a, a beer crate and put it in the front of the black cab. Yeah. Sort of sit just next to the meter. Yeah. And um, <laughs> anyway, we got this call, and uh, like the guy on the end of the radio said, "Oh, you've, you've got uh, you've got your son with you, haven't you?" So he said, "Yeah." He so it's just like you know, we've got a pickup at uh, number eleven Village Lane or whatever. And he said, oh, "All right." And it was this woman, it was like a woman version of the Elephant Man. 
Wow. The elephant woman. Yeah, it looked like... <laughs> it, it, uh, it, it, it was really uh, strange, because I was in the front of the cab, and, um, when you're a kid, you, if you, if something locks on, you, you're a bit scared of it, aren't you? Yeah. And my dad was like, look, be all right. And we're, we're driving towards just get, the... Look, oh, don't worry, son, I've got loads of buns. And just to I think I'll just throw one down the street if it's it, you run after You're it. being mean, right? How I old am a little bit, yeah. How old were you, 18? No, I was, I was about 12 or sure. something like that. 11, 12. Hmm. And as we got closer to her, it looked like she, she, she was holding, like, a bag of spuds on her shoulder. For a snack. <laughs> right. <laughs> And her head was all a bit mangled and messy and that. And uh, my dad says, my dad said, whatever you do, don't stare at her face. Yeah. And she got in the back. Because you turn into stone. Well, <laughs> she got in the back, and I, I had like the mirror, the, dri the driver's mirror thing, yeah. and sort of I'm having, having a look trying to work out. And I really, I mean, he said, don't stare at her face. I couldn't work out where her face was. <laughs> it was that. It was that weird. <laughs> oh God. So I'm not sure you're from. Manchester. I think you're from like Narnia or something. <laughs> yeah, you or, got frog or, boys walking yeah, around the Lord of the Rings. They, they got like the claws of a lobster and the and the head of a toad. Yeah, and you got women getting in with spuds for heads. I mean, what what this is sort not what is this, this is not place? The place you grew up. This yeah. is mad. Oh, you can't believe it in London, can you? You come down and go look symmetry. It must be amazing. It must be a, a thing to do with upbringing, though, mustn't it? And because again, do you know I've said to you before? Years ago, when I was a kid and didn't have any worries, good looking lad, mm. you go through it a bit, have a few more worries, and you look knackered. <laughs> now, back there, there's a lot more worries and stuff, so you get a lot more freaks. Whereas in London, everyone's like happy, aren't they? Got I love the fact it. that stress can cause your <laughs> fingers to fuse and your heads yeah. to grow. No, but if, if she like... must have been really stressed to have a head like <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was, was pretty, stuff. yeah, was she an accountant or something? Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean. But what, but what does she do? What does she say? Where was she, she going, in? by the she, way? She couldn't speak. London <laughs> Zoo, please. I think <laughs> she, was, she was going to like to a To the fair. <laughs> Seriously, honest to God. On my mum's life, she was. Because at the end of the day, that's a good thing with animals. They don't judge you, do they? She's not she an animal. animal. She's a human being. She's not actually an elephant. No, but she You know the elephant man was not actually an elephant. <laughs> you understand that? He's got no elephant genes in him at all. No. That was just a cruel name people gave him. Yeah. No, it's the name of the disease, isn't it? Elephantitis. <laughs> no, so listen, so this woman, why was she going to a pet shop? <laughs> she was going to a pet shop? Who wants to find true? her husband? <laughs> is, <laughs> is, this, is this true? No, it is true, yeah. Oh, I'm, God. I'm not, I'm not taking the mickey, because it must be so, really uh, bad for you. Of course it is. Yeah, oh, 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 I'm, I'm going on to you today about cutting myself shaving. Yeah. What's going on about that? To think that she, I mean, she's probably not alive now, but to <laughs> think... But what you're saying, you're going to say this is a worse problem than a little cut shaving, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I the think you're right. Like, you there's, there's a couple of key questions I need to ask. One, if she couldn't talk, yeah. how did she tell your dr father where to drive it? Did she have a bit of a note? Did she point with her nose? <laughs> yeah. Right, this has got silly. Pick your song. But oh, and also, <laughs> finally, where did you say she lived again? It was like in a village. A little small village. Right. Um, just and hipping <laughs> out of the way. All I'm saying is we could maybe get like some sort of coach, book some coaches, get a coach party out there to have a look at her. <laughs> and, uh, and now, the, you can make some lemonade. The offspring of a woman and some spuds. Yeah. <laughs> Please <laughs> enter at your peril, shit, and give me a shiny shilling. Wow. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I'm going to play um, a little bit of Teenage Fan Club song for uh, the lovers here. We left it very late, which we've been just, uh, you know, rapping with uh, Carl P here, and this is I Need Direction. Carl's look, just looks, look at him, it, it, Carl looks at you like a cat. Yeah. Whenever we leave him behind, if we don't talk, like, straight at him and let him see our lips moving, mm. and it's, you know, monosyllabic and very, very sad. Look, he's lost, he's lost in that conversation there, he just drifted off, didn't you, Carl? No, I just was also thinking on animals and that, something else I was gonna use. Go on. Was, um... Is this it... isn't a radio show, is it? I just suddenly caught us on this I is not this that. is nothing. I told you that before, it's, it's been bad today. No, but I mean, it's the way, the, this casual way that, it's like we, we almost have no regard for our listener. And I'm not proud of that, I just don't know what to do about it. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know how to do this properly. I, I mean, we're just chatting here. I mean, it's only Anderson who's seen through us, and yeah. that surprises me, that more people haven't... I mean, what are the figures like? Do people listen to this show? I'll find out for you. You keep saying that. But, um, yeah, there's this parrot, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've 
apparently. It I mean, in... really, it's unique, <laughs> if nothing else. I mean, when you wake up with Woken tomorrow, you're not even going to yeah. hear him start a live if there was this parrot. Go on, there was this parrot, yeah, go on. And it can talk and that. Someone's obviously, t you know, taught it out how to speak and that. And, um, it flew away. Oh. And it's living in this church. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, people are at the church doing oh. hymns and that. And then Trouble's brewing. In, bet in between if the hymns. If that parrot we, uh, was owned by an old, uh, miner who used to swear a lot, yeah. well, then the vicar is going to be, is going to be really annoyed. That vicar. Yeah. That vicar's going to, go on. I just hope he stays quiet <laughs> during the vicar's sermons. <laughs> yeah, go on. Have you read it? No, go on. <laughs> Have you read it? No, go no, because that's, that's what happens, go right? Go on, tell us, join, join the hymns, it's sort of effing and jeffing and stuff. Effing and jeffing? Yeah. And everyone's like going, oh, you know, it's quite funny, really, you know, it doesn't know what it's doing. Everyone's yeah. having a laugh. Yeah. But it's causing a havoc at funerals. <laughs> <laughs> Where did this happen? Uh, uh not, not, not years ago. John <laughs> was a much loved man. He was a wanker! Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, so that was another what story. What can you I... say about Uncle John? Bollocks! <laughs> Oh God, I love, I love the fact that when you look at things you go, that's interesting, the power that swears at funerals. That would be amazing. And it stays with you. You see, for a simple man, you retain an awful lot of knowledge. It's just all rubbish. It's all Do you know what I mean? If you just replaced all this rubbish with good stuff, yeah. you'd be an intellectual. Yeah. Really. Because, I mean, your, your retention is fantastic. Yeah. So, did I lose you again there, did I? So, so Was it the word retention? <laughs> We've still got, uh, Wash Up With You. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should we play a record and do Wash yeah, Up With You? Yeah, yeah. We'll play a bit of Aqualunga. <laughs> Aqualunga! <laughs> Alright, that's Aqualung. Uh, good times gonna call in it. Right, Carl, come on in, educating Ricky. So, don't let the cat out of the bag, that's where that uh, comes from. Mm -hmm. Comes from a crafty butcher. <laughs> right, come on in. So, the next, uh, little headline is, uh, Wash up with you. Wash up with you. Go on. You want to know about that? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> it's a survey that they did. <laughs> survey that they did this week. They. Yeah. Some some university did some survey. Brilliant. Did a world test on yeah. washing up. Yeah. And uh, each country were given 140 pots to clean. <laughs> um, Brits were the quickest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Turkey were the slowest. Can't <sighs> washing up. The Turks. Uh, it's not because the little fellas that work in the kitchens were no, is it? <laughs> they can't reach. Spain. <laughs> Spain were the cleanest and the uh, Germans were pretty good as well, so. <laughs> I don't know where to start with this. <laughs> uh, honestly, Steve, I don't know where to start with that. Look at his face. It was really light, right? We've had the parrot, right? These are the things that I found. Found the parrot, right? I've told you about the dog in the car wash. Right, you didn't tell me about that. You said there's a car wash for a dog. That's all you told me. Yeah, but the parrot. You said there's a parrot. What? It's a problem at funerals. Yeah. That's nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. And, Do you understand? And, uh, uh, and they used to eat cats. What else have we got? There's an elephant in India with sore feet. Why? There's an elephant in India with sore feet. No, I'm interested. Why? Um, stop <laughs> dancing. <laughs> Why? See, I, I didn't write He's trying to about break it. Roy Castle's record. <laughs> <laughs> He's still going. Come on, come on, what is it? What is it? Think. It's an uh, elephant and it was really old. It was about 76. Right. And it had sore feet because it's old and, and they the, don't make stairs. And the roads, big, are, do they? roads are bad and that. Yeah, go so, on. Um, they said, what are we gonna do? And the <laughs> town was like, oh, you know, we're used to seeing it around, it's part of the thing, you know, we don't want it to have sore feet. Yeah. So they got some slippers made for it. <laughs> and it had like a picture of the elephant looking happy wearing some slippers. <laughs> I love him! I love Carl, his world! Think of it, where did you see this picture? That was on the internet. <laughs> right. That's a lesson though for any elephants listening. You know, don't wear stilettos to work every no. day. Because it can do your feet in. <laughs> so that it's- But don't, so have don't elephants have really bad memories? No, they're really good memories. Oh, do they? Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good then. <laughs> no, I just, I, I just thought they'd figure out where they put them. I thought there was something about, about elephants having bad, <laughs> bad memories and that. Get, it goes on, where's my slippers? Yeah. I'm sure I left them by the test. So, oh. so, sorry, there's a, the elephant walking around wearing slippers? Yeah, yeah, there's, th that's in, uh, what in India. What slippers? Those sort of old man ones with the sort of chef. Well, round design. ones, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big yeah. round ones. 
There was that going on. And is it happening? Is it happier? I mean, does it feel no, more satisfying? No, it looked it. Looked it. Did it look- <laughs> 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 please. Uh, uh, what else is there? Uh, there was a woman who's had a- had a breast insure for 150 grand. Right. Okay. Any okay, more information there? What? Third party fire and theft? I don't know, it just had- it had a picture of her with them, like, you know, out. <laughs> 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 and I just thought, yeah, you should get them covered. Oh. <laughs> he's got another real joke! Brilliant, that's a proper joke. He's got uh, look at his little face, he smiles! I'd like to see you on one of the sort of TV panel games. If they could bring back sort of celebrity squares, yeah. it'd be amazing as the centre square. Oh, that would be Wouldn't incredible. Be or um, on the countdown in Dictionary Corner. Diction- I imagine him in Dictionary well, Corner. I'd come up with cat. Yeah. 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 Mem- memdlant. <laughs> yeah, what does what? that mean, Carl? It's just anything you wanted to mean. <laughs> Oh, what I've got, there, there's a dog that's got a cough in <laughs> Singapore because it smokes 20 a day. <laughs> right, okay, another one. Another no, one. no, 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 it, this is the last one in it, so yeah. I'll save it. The last one we've got is why I don't Sorry, what was that? Wash up with you, that was it. <laughs> but they, 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 was that it? That they, what, the <laughs> survey of washing pots and pans. I didn't understand, you said, who, you said Italy were the cleanest. No, it's Spain. No, Brits were the quickest. Yeah. We were the quickest, but Italy was the, the Spain cleanest. was the cleanest. Turkey were the slowest. Yeah. yeah. Spain were the cleanest. But why weren't we cleaner? Because we were washing up, why were we not paying attention to the we it rubbish. We did it quick. We did it quickly, but, but I don't, I don't know, know what it was being rated on. Who was doing it? Was it Annette Newman or Ainsley Howard? She's quick. Both of them are quick. Yeah. Well, they've yeah. got like kind of loose slaves that do it for them. Did we, did we use, did we use fairy liquid? No, it didn't. It didn't have Did we use that. a whole bunch of boys' cakes? Didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> just like said. He <laughs> <laughs> just said, uh, you know, that, that, that. Who, who, had, the softest hands? That? who had the softest hands? <laughs> so I didn't, didn't say. I didn't. Why is it we don't get notified that this is taking place? I don't know. When I was a kid, no one ever said, you know, we need recruits because we're we're doing a survey on who can wash yeah. up the quickest. Are you disappointed in yourself with that one, Carl? It, it is pretty dull. <laughs> to be fair, and that is why we've got to bring in either con merchant okay. or a uh, wine merchant or set up a device. Yeah. Would you be able to, if I asked you, if I put you on the spot in the next, sort of, after the next record, would you be able to give an example of how Con Merchant would work? I mean, is there something you could do, just sort of, s- experiment with? Should we play a record? Should we play a record? <laughs> no, no, I've I've a I can do better than that. Yeah. What? Ads? Go on. Oh. <laughs> Travis on XFM 104.9 on Wicked Joys with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pukatum. We're doing Educating Ricky. Right, final one. Come on, Carl. Right, what was it? <laughs> it was, uh. <laughs> Why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something to write on? Yeah. Yeah. Cause Snappy. I couldn't, well, I couldn't think of a heading for it. It's basically, uh, Go on. people who have tattoos, I've never understood it, right? Um, that they have something put on their arm. Well, sorry, have we started the educate? Is this part of it? Are you educating me? This is something that, I, I, that will be useful in my life that I didn't know about. Yeah. Go on then. <laughs> no, it's just like, they've got, they've got a machine now, <laughs> right. right, that, um, does tattoos. Um, you, you, uh, you come up with a design you want and you sort of, it, this machine scans it and, uh, you put your arm in this thing and you press print or whatever and then it, it does the tattoo on your hand or on your what, arm. like loads of little needles that follow a pattern? Yeah. The computer, basically, is it? yeah. Is it a real tattoo? It's a proper, proper It's a proper tattoo. one. The fella said, um... Well, as long as it goes out, it pierces the skin with a, with a... I just wondered if it's one of those kind of, you know, those kind of... No, it, it must be lots of, lots of little needles or a moving needle that can <laughs> go Sorry, along Sorry, how is this cleaned, like, in between each person? Dunno, probably, I dunno. Well, no, as long as it's only that if it's one needle, it's just the head, isn't it? If it's one needle that moves, right. does it like a like loads of little... Um, what are we gaining from a, a machine doing it? Just because you know they're not gonna sort of mess it up. But hold on, how do you keep your arm still? Because your skin moves like it's, it's the machine sort of strapped to your arm. Right, so fella, it I mean, the fella said that the tricky thing was in all this, it was the fact that, um, you know, nobody would let him test it out on anyone else, so he had to do it himself. But did it work? Because the thing is with the tattoo yeah, eyes, they yeah. can see when your skin's moved and they can see what they've done and they keep wiping it and looking, whereas the machine's just got to trust itself. Yeah. So, I think one needle, would- could go wrong. If it was a lot of needles, that it, it just came down, like, you know, a thousand needles that was an imprint. Yeah. But, no, but yeah. obviously I'm asking someone who's- uh, hasn't delved any further than there's a machine that can give you a tattoo. That's all you've got at the moment, isn't it? Well, I'm- uh, yeah, basically- That's all you've got. Alright, alright, alright. So, tell me a typical bit of dialogue. Um, well, we've done the breakfast scene. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that okay, was yeah. Dynamite. yeah. That's fucking Oscar winning. Yeah, can we do lunch? Um, there may be like at the funeral, because even though the brain's still alive, they still have the funeral, and you can have like a funny bit where they stood around the grave 
and like there's some relation there who he doesn't like and she can start laughing and the family are looking at her going why is she laughing yeah and she's sort of laughing and he's saying something a bit rude going look at her head do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's like stuff on the orange. family. Yeah. <laughs> a little cameo for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, mm. so you have all that, and people are sort of liking the film, thinking, oh, it's quite funny, this. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. then you hit them hard. <laughs> it's, the most, oh, it's the most ludicrous idea for a film I've ever heard. Oh, right, it's, right, the, but... it's the maddest. It's the, honestly, it really is the ramblings of a I mental case. Say, though, right. I have to say, though, I am hooked now. I want to know what's going to happen next in the story. Then what happens is. <laughs> she. Here's the voice go, Leslie, where are you? Something. Right. Her name's not Leslie. No. No. So she's thinking, who's Leslie? Yeah. So in her mind, she's going, who's Leslie? <laughs> he's going, oh. So he's, he's thought, hang on, I've let something slip I've here. let something slip, so she's going, answer me. Oh. He goes quiet on her. Oh. Yeah. So. He's, he was having an affair. This is, this is the thing, so she's trying to hunt down. Leslie. Leslie. And he's got to stop her thinking it. Then what happens is, I mean, you know- Where are your backs? So he's got to hunt down Leslie. So he's got- she's got to hunt down mm. Leslie. It's a woman, is it? Another Leslie or it's is it a It's another woman. Right. But what happens is, I mean, without ruining the end for everyone, what have happened sort is. of happened is. Oh yeah, because we don't, don't want to ruin it for because <laughs> this, yeah. will be, this will be filling the multiplexes in no yeah. time. No, it's the greatest love story ever told, set in the head. But listen, let's I just get to Hang the on end. a sec though, Carl. I don't- yeah, you've got to tell us the end. I don't think you can let people no, come listening on. Come on, hanging what's the on end? waiting for the film. Just let your mouth talk. Right, so what I said was, maybe, what happens is, his brain mm. is more powerful than hers. Right, how it, is now? What? How is there power? I don't, why is there no power involved? What I mean is, her brain was running the rest of her body. Mm. Now he's taking over. That gets more powerful mm. and overrules her body. Okay. Yeah. She then fancies Leslie. So, so it's a lesbian hold on, film. this is building up to a lesbian <laughs> love. So what the? Well, it's what? trendy, isn't it? That. So just have a bit of that at the end. And so hold on. So he overpowers her. So she is now. A lesbian. What's Leslie getting out of this? Why does Leslie think, hold on, why is my because dead lover's wife coming on to me? Because this is what I'm saying to you. It's r relationships. It's the love of two brains. Right, okay. Again, can That's anyone out there, line. can we make that into it? That's a quote. The relationships is a love of two brains. <laughs> well, it's now, he's got something there. He's got something yeah. there. But my point is this. Why is Leslie suddenly turned lesbian? Because she loves the brain. But does she know this is Clive Warren? Rebecca will say something now and again, like, oh, I like me minge. <laughs> I like me food done like this or whatever, and it's all about Cooked. if you like I love food cut. <laughs> 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 oh, wait, wait a minute, Clive Warren on this bacon. Yeah, I'm, I'm in two minds about this bacon. Yeah. What, what I'm I mean turn is, into a lesbian. people shredded wheat. People like what they like, and it's oh. the same way. Like I've said to you before, with someone who's been going out with a woman, and then is found out that she's got a twin sister, and they divorce that first twin and go out with the other twin. It's all the same. You're after the same thing, aren't you? Yes, but that when a cat dies, you buy another one. It's the same thing, you want that same Yeah, but you don't necessarily something. switch your sexual orientation. In the case of your twin scenario, they both look the same. Yeah. Has there, there ever been one where, um, it's a uh, twin boy and girl? Yeah, well, I was going out with her, but I mean, he looks a bit like her. Yeah. I loved boobs, now I like cock. This is your problem. You don't know anything. And this theory about if your mouth talks enough, the brain will kick in soon. It hasn't. <laughs> I've only been camping a few times, and each time I was glad when it was over. The last time was last year in Lyme Regis. Yeah. When did you go camping in Lyme Regis? Last year. It's all right, Lyme Regis. But it was all a bit of a nightmare because I was going with my mate, and uh, he said he knew someone who knew knew someone who had a bit of land in the garden. Mm. Um, we had a bit of land in the garden. What's the point, though, in it? You know, what's the point of camping in someone's garden where there's a sort of like a spa down the road and like a pub? no, because you're by the sea, aren't you? It's getting away from it all, seeing the world. It's not if you're in someone's front garden. No, back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, so, there's even less to see except three fences. No, but it's private, isn't it? So the thing is, he, he said, oh, it's a great garden, uh, the, the owners are away, mm. and there's a toilet, an outside toilet that they have getting for like, when they have parties it, yeah. and stuff. Mm. So we get there, and this lad who knew about this bit of land. Someone's back garden. Well, yeah. Uh, said, oh, you can't use it, they haven't gone on holiday. <laughs> so now you're stuck in the middle of a big civilised conurbation called Lyme Regis. Well, how are you going to survive? <laughs> well, we ended up just sort of clipping on the beach. But, uh, Did you pitch your tent on the beach? Put the tent on the beach. We found somewhere where there was a load of rubbish. 
So we oh, thought, nice. that's the place to go, no, yeah. No, 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 well, that, what was it? Was it, was it? was it chemical waste or just like, you know, no, just, um, coke just syringes stuff. and oh, uh, But listen, though, you've got to think about that. Rusty, if, what's with Rusty? If there's rubbish there, it means it was a good place to camp. Why? Why? Because other people have camped there. Right. So that's how you've got to look at it. It's like, it's a way, that's like a little tip of... So you um, could have slept in a public lavatory. Yeah, yeah. This one's nice. What is covered in shit? <laughs> means other people have had a shit here. <laughs> Welcome to our five-star hotel. You'll notice vomit over all the fucking walls. So that means people have had a good time here. They got right pissed up and threw their lungs up. <laughs> so that's, that's where we put down the tent. We, uh, put down the tent there. And then so what was annoying the is he puts down the tent. We really. uh, we what's her name? We uh, it was already up. It, it was carried already it all the way, all the way there. They weren't let's pack it down. Yeah. Uh, the weird thing was, as soon as we set up, some other people turned up. Oh, that's all the rubbish tip. Holiday <laughs> 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 makers, they uh, uh, they started setting up their tents. Yeah. Like, oh. No, near. Look, there's some nappies over there. Yeah, near the nappies. And um, they offered us some sausages. Oh, right. My mates said, "Oh, ignore them. That's like code." For uh, swingers, what? No! What? So there were some people cooking some sausages, yeah. saying, "Would you like a sausages? We've made too much." And you it's said, just "No, that's code for swingers." Don't talk swinging. to strangers. It's like we want to get away from it all. Yeah. We don't want someone. You know, it starts off with sausages, doesn't it? And so, uh, so, you know but, but what do these people look like? Uh, they were about forty-five. Who were they? That a man and a woman. A man and a woman. So, what was in it for the bloke? Uh, some people like that, don't they? No, I mean, no. you, you say, right, I want the bold one, love. <laughs> if it's like wife swapping, should, well, should one of you be a wife? No, but I don't, I don't know all the rules and that, but, uh He's just got a real thing for fucking oranges. And we didn't want any sausages anyway, so we just sort of I said, don't believe sausages is a code, is a code for swingers. Because <laughs> eventually, how many times do they give someone sausages and they go, well, get your pants off, and they go, wait a minute, we just have some sausages. They go, oh, this isn't working, this code. But why would, they be, code. why would we be being offered sausages? Because they're nice people and they're making sausages. Yeah. Makes you wonder. We don't, let's not trust these people, let's move our tent nearer to the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that was the camping. Oh. September 30th, going away with Suzanne's mum and dad. We're meeting them at Madeira Airport as they're flying in from Manchester. The plane was full and I had a headache. There was a baby sat behind us that was crying its eyes out for the whole flight. Oh. The mother of it said it was upset because its ears were hurting. So were mine. We went to try and find a supermarket. Suzanne's man was having a go at her dad because he didn't have a shirt on. She said he looks a mess and is embarrassed to be seen with him. It's their ruby anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we went away. Oh yeah. Now Carl, I know you're fascinated by the concept of the doppelganger, of seeing someone who looks exactly like you. Yeah. Jake has emailed in, he says, Carl, if you could spend a day with an exact replica of you, Okay, so somehow they've cloned you, Carl, and they've got you've got him for one day. What would you do with this? What would you What would you make him do? What would you uh, What conversation would you have with him? What would you do? Is there anything you could, you know, how would you utilise him for one day? Well, they'd both say I'm not bothered, and that'd be the end of conversation. <laughs> yeah. What would do me head in is, does he does he think the same way? Look the same way? Exactly dresses? the same. Yeah. How would I know which one I was? <laughs> Because you'd be you. That's amazing. No, no, no. How would I know which That's one I was? incredible. <laughs> no, because that is the most stupid thing ever said by a human being. Can we get the Guinness Book of Records on this? It, has anyone anywhere in the world said anything more stupid than "How would I know which one was me"? But think about it. This other person's going. All right, thanks for uh, meeting up and that. And I go, hang on a minute. No, you you came to me. And then Suzanne would come home and she wouldn't know the difference. And then suddenly you start doubting yourself, and you go, "Should I be leaving?" Or, so how do I know if I am that real one? If he knows what I know, but you know who you are because you're yeah, experiencing it. But he'd it. be saying that because he'd say, "Yeah, it's a bit weird." But isn't you it? know the it, you truth, know? you idiot. Because how would I know which one I was? So anyway, but bear in mind, you what could would pass, you do? You could pass him off as yourself. What would you do? Would you play trick street? Would you, uh, you know? You could what? be in two places at once. Would you do stings? Would you do scams? No, because it would only end up getting me into trouble, wouldn't it? Because people won't believe that there's another one like me. Mm. Otherwise, everyone would be saying that when they get caught robbing. They go, oh, it wasn't me, it was me doppelganger. 
Yeah. It can only. I wouldn't want it to be honest. It's a it, again. It's a bit of a headache, isn't it? Because he could be going off, going mental, causing all sorts of trouble. And you go, well, you pack it in. <laughs> and he's going, what? What are you on about? But then that wouldn't happen, would it? Because he's being me, so he'd be sat wherever I am anyway. Because hmm. he'd want to do what I want to do. So pointless. But I still wouldn't want it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That was a conversation with himself. That yeah. was amazing. That was we... like that was like experiencing what it would be like if there was two cars. <laughs> yeah, he was we, a discussion with himself. We could have left in yeah. that time and come back, and he'd be arguing still. What does this mean? <laughs> does this mean? <laughs> Does this mean, though, that I could just sit at home and not do anything and just send me out on... Yes. And any, any, when, he, when he's seen something happen, I'm seeing it. No. No, no, no. no, no. You're separate people. You're separate people. But then yeah. he's not a doppelganger then, Well, you're identical twins then. You found out identical twins and he's got the, exactly the same input as you. I mean, it's not a real question, is it? It's just a little... Again... Um, because an owl... Do you know why an owl turns its head round? Sort of like 180 degrees. No, because it, can. it can't move its eyes. Because the eyes take up the whole. It's the biggest eye in the animal kingdom. The eyes take up the whole of its skull. Really? That, yeah, yeah, and it has to move its. Yeah. Has it got a brain in there as well? It's got a brain in there yeah, above the eye. Yeah. When I say the whole of the skull. Quite. I'm, yeah. There's yeah. also some space for the brain. What I meant is the 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 two diameters of the eye is the is the diameter of the. You've lost the me there with diameters. And you didn't like maths, did you? No, don't like maths. Never understood it. Couldn't yeah. get to grips with maths. I don't know about you, Carl. Did you do maths, maths. Carl? <laughs> now, how did you do in your exam with the maths? <sighs> did you do that? Well, yeah. I bet yours was rather like my theory, which is why you need to figure it all out when you've got a calculator. Exactly. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. You're right. And I agree. Well, let's play a record, and afterwards, I'm going to be testing you on your homework this week, Carl. Mm. Um, could we do uh, White Van Man first? We could do. Oh, just to. You no, know, they've got no, to know what, to what they're dealing with, yeah. Um, Carl's homework was to read all about. Um, as you know, Shay Guevara. Absolutely. Uh, uh, last week, he did well on Rasputin, didn't he? Did very well on Rasputin. Yeah, uh, and with flying marks there. Uh, so, uh, um, let's, let's have a bit of Wu-Tang, shall we? Then let's have White yeah. Van oh. Van. Yeah. White Van Carl. Nice. Yeah. Wu-Tang Clan, Leslie. XFM 104.9, Richard Vase, with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now, I just, uh, remind him to tell else, um, Carl's in the week. I know it's forbidden to talk to him, but... I'll tell you this. He was talking, he was very excited about the Friends Reunited. He was a bit nervous at first, wasn't he, last week? But he was really getting into it. Um, and uh, in the pub he was talking to him about people and he said, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd never go on a reunion, though. He said, I'd never, never do that. What, a school thought, reunion? Yeah, and he, said, he wouldn't want to see anyone. And I went, well, I, I said, I said, wouldn't you want to see those two lads with the big heads and the webbed hands? Oh, yeah, these were people you went to school with, weren't they? Yeah. Well, I didn't knock about with them. They were in the class. What were they called? Ah, uh, freaks. Right. <laughs> Right, okay. and uh, he said, "No, I wouldn't want to see them." He said, "Because what could you say? Oh, you haven't changed much, right?" <laughs> and he went, "He said and they wouldn't go anyway, would they?" I said, "Why?" He went, "Well, they didn't have any friends." Right. And I said, "Well, weren't they friends with each other?" And he went, "No, that would have been too obvious." <laughs> <laughs> like they passed each other and went, "No." I know it's tempting, but let's not. Everyone would think that's just what we were going to do. <laughs> yeah, <not> do it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. they didn't even hang around with each other. No. See, I must say, in my in my head, I've got something like it's like a some sort of extra thing from Blake Seven that they're like some sort of you know lagoon monster. But they just had slightly oversized heads, did they? See, does your head grow? Your <laughs> eyes don't. Does your head? Because maybe they've got to a point now that it's all sort of caught up with each other. <laughs> Well, at the time, the, the eyes were very small and the head was huge. <laughs> uh, just a very big head. And yeah. the, I mean, the fingers aren't going to change, you know, that's not... They had not webbed funny. fingers? It was like the penguin in Batman. <laughs> really? Are you sure? No, honestly. Are you sure they weren't wearing mittens? No, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yeah, they were, it wasn't home economics. They weren't getting some out of the oven, a very hot dish, were they? Every time you saw them. <laughs> But why were there two, but they weren't related and they weren't friends? I don't know, I suppose it's like asthma and that, innit? Some kids have it. <laughs> and, and it just was a coincidence. Yeah, but asthma's quite a common thing. Webbed hands, Carl! Yeah. I don't know, you don't think of it, do you, when you're a kid? You just sort of... Oh, when, yeah, you, the... when you first see them... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there goes the frog, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Carl, look, let's have, uh, <laughs> let's have a little quick session of White Van Man. <laughs> For those that don't listen to the show regularly, uh, The Sun, <laughs> as you may know, has a, a section called White Van Man where uh, a member of the public gets asked their opinions on the uh, week's big uh, political and social hot potatoes. Carl, we just thought uh, it would be funny if you answered some of the uh, questions. It's not so much questions, it's just your views, really, on these big, these big news stories. Uh, what do you make of Olympic ski hero Alan Baxter testing positive for drugs? 
What did he do? Well, he won a gold medal in the Olympics, and For he what? he was a ski, he was a skier. Right. And he won gold medal, and uh, they've just tested him positive for uh, some kind of illegal drug. But what, I mean, if he did, why take drugs to ski? <laughs> why? Because all you yeah. do is balance. But imagine, it'd be amazing if you were stoned, like, going down a hill. Yeah, it's not like you have to... It's not, it's not going to help you, is No, it? it's, it's not just like... gravity that's doing all the work, isn't it, with skiing? Yeah, but it's often to do with your uh, athleticism, isn't it? It's not even like saying, and we've just found out the people on the toboggan were on crack. It's not, it's not going <laughs> to help them. You, yeah, sh you sit there and you go with the flow yeah. and, you try, I, and you hold Can I say, can I say, the, 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 the drugs he was taking... Apparently that's his defence, probably the, it, pro it, wasn't, it probably wasn't jacking up H or, you know, dropping a few E's or getting stoned. He was probably taking more sort of uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs as opposed to him just like scoring some shit around the corner but, from someone, getting off his tits and jumping in a toboggan. <laughs> Doesn't mean that, yeah. does it? He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't <laughs> off his nut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have, you have, uh, you tested you, you're pissed out of your head. But why doesn't he just say, don't be stupid, why would I do that? It's just not gonna help me out. But it is, isn't it? Cos, uh, performance enhancing drugs do. Wait a minute, Steve, wait a minute, Carl. Right, look at this way. Okay, look at me, yeah? I've got, have I got his attention? Yeah, the, 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 the light's glinting off your ring there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. attracted Okay, right, no, keep concentrating. Right. Some athletes, you're aware they take drugs, that's to build up swimmers muscle. Swimmers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, swimmers. Runners. Runners, yeah. No, not only do they help build muscle, right, but they, they can actually, you know, give them a boost performance while yeah. sort of like steroids and all, all this sort of stuff, right? So that's the sort of thing we're talking about, okay? Right, so again, he, was, he wasn't why on a bomb would that help before... you? What? Why would that help you when you... All you've got to do is balance on skis. <laughs> not uh, when you're at the Olympic level. Yeah. There's a <laughs> lot to do with, you know, your body and no, your legs. No, it's practice, isn't it? It's like, if, you, if, if you've skied for years, then you've got good balance after a bit. Oh, okay. do you know what, Carl? Do you know what? You've made a mockery of drug taking. Well done. Yeah. Right, next one, Steve. I Very hate enough. this bit. I hate this. Um, I don't know if you saw it. What did you make of Posh Spice's Warts and All documentary? <laughs> yeah, I saw a bit of it. What did you make of it? Um, uh, I mean, people are slagging him off, aren't they, saying, you know, she's daft and that, but... <laughs> don't make you! She's, uh, <laughs> I, I think they're alright, honestly. Yeah, You know, right. she's alright. I mean, I think David's really a decent bloke. Sure. Um... Would you yeah. agree that he's quite a simple man? Yeah, but he's a footballer, he doesn't need to be, do you know what I mean? It's like me. Yeah. Like, you know, alright, I only got an E in history. <laughs> but knowing about the Tudors doesn't help me press these buttons and put the next CD on. No, sure. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, good luck to him, and he's done well out of it, and it's just yeah. jealousy. Yeah. I remember, though, um, when, I when I was back in Manchester, I was in Piccadilly train station, and he was there, right? Not as big a star as he is now, yeah. back then, but he was stood there, and I, I was so close to going over to him and saying, did you go to my school? Because I recognised his face, oh, but I no. didn't know who he was. Do you know when they <laughs> sort of go, sure I went to school, it's not the one with the big head. Yeah. But I do recognise him, then my girlfriend got off the train, and I said, I'm sure I know him. She said, yeah, it's David Beckham. And I was oh, so close to Oh, thank God for your girlfriend. Does she, does she get you get an awful lot of scrapes, does she? <laughs> she does, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what more. about the fact that uh, the pension crisis sure. is going to force Britons to work into their 70s, Carl? You might have to carry on working into your 70s before you can claim a pension. I think it's a good thing. Um, because you see a lot of old people who look bored. Okay. <laughs> and I honestly think if you, you keep, do. if you keep your brain busy, yeah. you'll live longer. Yeah. It's only when you actually shut down, right, that that's when your body sort of dies because it doesn't feel it has a purpose. Yeah. It's like if you've got flu, mm. keep going to work. If you have a day off, you just feel worse, you'll mope about at home, doesn't do you any good What about, wh where do you draw the line then? What if you, say, lose a finger? Pop into work? Um, depends. If, if you can't concentrate because it's painful. But right. what if you're a typist? D <laughs> you're pianist. not going to type as many words, but you, you'll do more at <laughs> work than you would having a day off at home. Sure. Okay. Um, Tony Blair turning trendy with his uh, Paul Smith designed naked lady shirt. I don't know if you've seen this, it's the one mm. with the uh, pictures of naked ladies on the cuffs. And... You know, I mean... Okay. Um, and finally... Uh, that, you see, this is what annoys me about this feature. It's just, what's that? So what? Yeah, but it's the, pres it's the Prime Minister of this country wearing a trendy shirt with naked ladies on the cuffs. <sighs> Alright. <laughs> okay. And uh, finally, what do you make of the fact that Top of the Pops have banned uh, Will Young singing both tracks uh, on the number one slot, and uh, consequently he wasn't on there at all, they had to show the video? The first time anyone's ever made this demand. He wants to sing both the A and uh, B side. Well, he can't. It's, it's double A, yeah. Double A side. That's well, what he wanted to. That is how it works, is it? Yeah, I agree, yeah. And the thing is, which one 
I mean, at the end of the day, loads of people have bought it, haven't they? And it's yes, like one of yes. the best. So it doesn't really matter what it is, because people have got it, they can listen to what song they want at home. Doesn't matter about what Top of the Pops do. Yes. And it, it's just annoyed me now. I it's... Who's annoyed you? Th this... Th just what goes on in the world. I'll tell you, you're better off not knowing. <laughs> I, I, it's better being in my little world. If that's what people are talking about on the streets, and asking the white van man, do you know what I mean? You I think that? you're right, Carl. I think you're Jeez. right. Should I, should I play a lovely song for you? Because you're getting all stressed now, aren't you? I've not had a good day. No, I know. We tell you about it. Like, it's not a good day. Well, I'm going to play um, uh, a, a Neil Young track here of Harvest. It's uh, Alabama. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And this is for Carl. Beck, Lost Cause on XFM 104.9. Wow. Carl. We haven't had a lot of emails. They're tough. I'm struggling. Yeah. I've Anybody got, I've got you one, got and I, 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 I'm struggling with two, but I know one of the words, but I can't think of the band that fits it unless the clue's wrong, and I've got no idea with the first one, E. Give us again. Just, just quickly again. recap. Number one, the fella has only got one badge left. That's E. Uh, second one, the unmarried uh, lady's a friend that you're out with. That's MD. And uh, the last one, I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. That's M. <laughs> Well, so, uh, Ricky, what is it, Ricky? Ricky dot Gervais at XFM dot co dot UK. So keep those coming in. If there's no winner, we don't know whether to give it to the person who gets the most right first, or have a massive rollover. And uh, what a Christmas booty that would be, as Carl said. Hmm. All those. Imagine what you could have. Uh, oh, uh, indecent proposal, maybe. <laughs> who knows? It, who you know knows? what I mean? I've got some real junk, so I can bring that in. Yeah. It was the mean machine. Imagine someone Billy this Jones. Christmas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For this Christmas. I can't believe it. Oh, I, thank you so much for the Pelican brief. I noticed yeah. you left the price on. And I, uh, it's on VHS as well. <laughs> oh, great. Brilliant. Uh, um, it's, it's, so. It's perfect Christmas gifts, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Okay. Right. Now, um. Some so that's going. That's going. That's Christmas going gifts. on. That's a big, big, <laughs> big prize. It's a big weekend prize on yeah. XFM. Educating Ricky, part two. Right. What's the What's the clues right. left? Well, we've uh, we've we've got left uh, the headlines. I'll be no buying one of them. <laughs> yeah. And we've also got uh, chicken. You believe it? <laughs> chicken. You believe it? <laughs> so they're the two that are left. Which one's right. you for? Chicken, you believe it? It's not that picture, is it? In that that we saw. Which picture? The bloke with the. No, 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 no. Right, no, no. okay. God, um, that was bad. Right, okay. Um, um, so I just better explain we that. We can't really discuss this on it, can we? Well, we can. Um, uh, Steve brought in Carl the best book ever, which is what is it? I, I found it when I was moving house. It's an FHM publication. It's kind of like lots of grotesque pictures and stories, and like the book of the uh, a book of freaks and weirdos and. And grotesque. Carl opened it, and the first one was like. At the back. At the back. On the back. Well, you couldn't believe your luck, could you? What was it? What was what was number fifty? A bloke with two heads. And he said, "What's number one?" Yeah. And then number six, there's a bloke who's a squid or something. Uh, octopus. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's loving it. Yeah. And number one, he said, well, that's just a fella under a rock. And I went, oh no, read on, I think I know about this. And it's the fella that was found, he caused a landslide while having sex with a chicken. And they pulled him <laughs> up and there he is, the chicken owner. Right. So Carl so, could not believe his luck. So it's not that. Chicken, you believe it? I love that one. You going for that one? Yeah. Right. Well, we've talked uh, a lot on the show about. Um, we talked a lot on the show. Yeah. 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 Um, about <laughs> animals without heads. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't. Uh, <laughs> we haven't. We haven't. No, we talked about cockroaches could live without a head for well, seven days. Yeah. We have talked about that, and then of course there was the. Um, <laughs> The well-known one about the uh, the fellow who had his head cut off, and he he, he blinked. And he said to his mate, "Count how many times I blink when my head comes off." Yeah, we, as you, when, when you told it to me, you said his head came off, and he said, as he said, <laughs> in the basket, quick count how many times I blink. <laughs> and it was Nick Frost that had to go, "No, Carl, no, he he said it before." I went, and that uh, that was that was lovely. So uh, yeah, we've talked quite a lot about things heads coming off. Go on then. Well, this one. Yeah. Right. Um, mm -hmm. back in 1945. Oh, he looked up the date. He's got a specific date, uh, wow. Mate Jonathan sent this one, you know him as well, it's lad at the BBC, right? He emailed this one in. Mm. So thanks for that. Um, chicken. It's called Mike. There's a chicken uh, called, sorry, I, I missed a bit there. There's yeah, a chicken, chicken called a Mike. A chicken called Mike. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, 
what happened was, it was living on a farm, mm -hmm. right, loads of chickens knocking about, and, uh, the owner of the farm is, like, you know, getting ready for tea, and his wife says, uh, go out and get a fresh chicken, mm. cos me, uh, my mum's coming round. Mm. So he thinks, well, <laughs> I, I, I want to get a good one in, cos, uh, I want to impress her, cos yeah. back then, even then, they wanted to impress the mother-in-law on that. Uh -huh. So they said, alright, I'll just nip out and get one. So he sees, uh, he sees Mike, chicken, running around. Is this during the war or after the war? 1945, I'd, I'd say that was after. <laughs> No, it ended, well, it ended no. in 1945, yeah, okay. September, go on. Yeah. So, um, chicken's running about, he thinks that one look, that, you know, that looks alright, I'll yeah. have that one. Mikey. So he picks it up, um, and he cuts his head off, oh. puts it on the block, cuts his head off, runs about a bit, like they do, um, he thinks he'll stop in a minute, he keeps running about, hmm. and what's going on here? Right? He's, he's, he's now, like, chasing the chicken without an head. Yeah. He's saying he should die in a minute. Anyway, doesn't die. Chicken's walking around with no head. Um, lives for 18 months. Yeah. Chicken with no head. Yeah. What do you, you think know, of that? Well, I'll tell you, I've heard this story before, Rick, and, uh, my, the explanation as I understand it was that, um, certain vital cords, spinal cords, weren't severed when the head came off. So yeah. that was why it continued to to yeah. live. Yep. I don't know if that sounds plausible. It's mm. fine. Absolutely fine. Um, how did it take on, uh, protein and energy? The fella who yeah. owned it, he said, well, hang on a minute, he said, I could, I could kill it now. But I've got a wonder chicken here. But he's thinking, he must really want to live. Sure. Right? <laughs> if it survives that, they sort of got something here. Yeah. So we, uh, what he does, he gets a little, um, eye droplet thing that he used to use on it. Obviously not, not anymore. Right? And he filled it with grain and water, and it had a big hole in its neck where its head used to be. And he, uh, <laughs> Incredibly. And he dropped... You know what, there's, there's, I mean, that, that is possible then, if it, you know, without, without infection, without, 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 without infection, if he's taken on things, it is, it is possible, right? Why? <laughs> Why what? Why did he do it? How cruel is that? I mean, that was not cruel, because the, the chicken obviously, you know. He said, he said if he thought it was a bit fed up, he would have killed it. He said, but right. it was running around quite happy. Well, it wasn't <laughs> fed up at all, because it had no brain. Well. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean, well? I'm just saying what- It what was I nothing. Mean? It was just, it was just sinew and nerves and electrical impulses breaking down energies, right? That's all it was. It, it didn't have a brain. So it was, but I, I'm worried about the psychology of keeping a pet without a head. <laughs> I'm worried more about what the farmer was thinking than the I chicken. I tell you this, what I'm, uh, the question I'm asking is, was the mother-in-law impressed? <laughs> I mean, that's oh, why he's out. That's why he's out to shot this Mike's is, head This off. is lovely, but it's just the head where you don't kill a chicken like that all at once. <laughs> I thought we were having chicken for dinner. Come and look at this. <laughs> running around the yard. <laughs> yeah! Oh, dear. So, there you go. You've learned something there. Yeah, I have learned something. Yeah? Yeah. So, so one more. That farmer, I have learned that farmer was very strange indeed. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I have to say, to be fair to Carl, I have a feeling like when I read it, the reason he kept it alive was as a novelty. He sold, he, you know, he, he got charged people to come and see the incredible headless chicken right. called Mike. Right. So, <laughs> there we are. Right. That's great. So, uh, a tune, Steve? A tune, yeah. Um, I just thought so I'd like to hear a little bit more from, uh, that NERD album. We played some of this from, uh, from there when it first came out many, many moons ago. Since then it's gone on, it's won awards, all sorts. And obviously any I do now, nerd, as they're sometimes known, kind of big producers, they're producing Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, all kinds of people. But this is a track from their, uh, album. I've heard they're wicked. To, they are indeed. <laughs> and this is called Things Are Getting Better. Right. N-E-R-D, uh, from their album In Search Of, and that's Things Are Getting Better. After the break we got, uh, more Educating Ricky, and the results to this week's Rock Busters. And Richard Ashcroft. Oh, dynamite. Richard Ashcroft. Check the meaning on XFM 104.9 on Wicked Device with me, Steve Merchant. Carl just remembered a little story he was excited to tell you. Okay. Go on. Oh, are you going to tell him? Oh, okay. Um, w when we went into this cafe last week after, um, Carl had got his soil, we got two big bags of soil. I was going, get a bag. So I mean, and he, uh, he was, and I can walk home. After about ten yards, he was going, on my arms hurt. So he had to get a cab. So we stopped in this cafe, he had spaghetti bolognese. You were loving it, weren't you? It was good, it was a good little day out. And there was a woman that worked there. And she sort of, st I could see her sort of looking at me, and she goes, uh, and then she goes, I said, are you off the telly? And I went, um, uh, yeah, yeah. She went, yeah. 
Chris Moyles. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Beautiful. And I just laughed, and we both started laughing. She went, no, sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I'm not, Chris, what's your name? And I went, and I had to say it, I went, R Ricky Gervais. She went, oh, no. She went, oh, the thing in the office. I went, yeah, yeah. No, the yeah, funny so thing was, was, she said, she went and said, oh, no, I saw you on, on Jonathan Ross. Jonathan Ross, that's it, yeah. So she'd obviously watched the Jonathan Ross show thinking, Chris Miles has, you know, lost his looks a bit or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what I found funny, the fact that she must have watched it, yeah. it thinking yeah. that yeah, she went, no, I saw you like, I saw you the other day, and I was like, yeah, yeah, she went, oh. And then we were still sort of laughing, I was thinking, she went, oh, sorry, everybody. I was going, no, it's fine, it's fine. I was thinking, yeah, imagine that. Just like, oh, oh, God. great. There's not a better one to pick. That's just <laughs> appalling. Oh, that was lovely. It's the second time as well. That you've been mistaken for Chris Moore? Yeah. 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 Oh, man, you've yeah, got to go back. I've, I've had Moyles, I've had, um, uh, Vegas a few Johnny times. Johnny Vegas, yeah, I can imagine. Um, so, yeah. Do you think, like, people are going up to Moyles going, you, uh, you do that thing about working in an office? Yeah, I well, I don't know. I don't know whether I hope that or not. I don't um, know, it depends what he answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I liked- I thought you were gonna say that, uh, are you Chris Moores? No, no, what's your name, uh, Ricky Gervais? Uh, I've never heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> That'd have been brilliant. Question from Kevin, he says, Carl, other than the famous boxing match that you've often talked about, I know that took, um, up about 20 minutes of your time, have you ever been in any other kind of fight? Uh, I don't suppose a, a slanging match, I think they're talking, have you ever been in a physical fight? Um, once that I can remember. It was over a- over a woman. <laughs> well, a, a girl. <laughs> I was at school. Yeah. Um, and it was because, like, it's hassle, innit, right, relationships, when you're younger. How you're old not, were you? Um, about seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was over a woman. <laughs> <laughs> go on then, yeah, go on. And there was this girl knocking about who, you know, she was, she was quite good looking, everybody liked. And, uh, my mate, he really liked her. And, uh... I, I didn't uh, sort of ask her out on that, but she just sort of took a shine to me and stuff, right? And, uh, didn't really go out with her properly. It's at, at that age where going out with someone is just like, s sort of going, all right, in the morning, do you know what I mean? You just sort of <laughs> nod your head. Yeah. And that. Anyway, there was some sort of school disco, <laughs> and, um, they were playing Spin the Bottle or something, right? And, uh, I sort of wandered over to see what was going on, and I stood on this girl's dress and put a hole in it, and she started crying. I was like, oh, I can't be dealing with this, right? Uh, you know, what's up with you? It's old, what's up with you? And everyone's going, Carl, what are you doing? That's meant to be your girlfriend and that. You should be sort of saying, oh, I'm sorry, and giving her a hug and all that, and saying it'll be all right, we'll sort the dress out. I said, oh, I can't be dealing with this. Mm. Right? So she's crying her eyes out, I said, it's over, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's over, you saying? Right. In the morning, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No more of that. Yeah, there's no more. Right. In the morning. So I go to the toilet, right? And, uh, this lad who fancies her comes in and goes, you're out of order, you know. I'm saying, what are you on about? So you there's two seven-year-olds. Seven yeah. You're out of order. Keep out. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> Show her a bit of bloody respect. <laughs> but sorry, were you wearing trilbies? Yeah. <laughs> he put his cigarette out in the sink and he just said, leave it. Ah! Get out of my face. <laughs> So I, I just sort of said, look, why are you getting involved? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too serious, you know? yeah. why are you getting involved? <laughs> and, oh, uh, and, it, and it was obviously like, because, you know, he, he fancied her and that. We yeah. had a bit of a fight in there. Yeah. Um, I, I accidentally, you know, sort of chipped his tooth on a sink. Oh, wow, is it like a proper... Sorry, this is like someone from Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. What are you talking about? Two seven-year-olds in a toilet. <laughs> so you put, you put a hole in her dress. I don't know how that... What were you wearing? Football boots? I just boots? On it. I just... <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, how did you make a hole in her dress? I don't know. It was like that, that sort of material. You were like, wearing winkle pickers. Like <laughs> crepe. You know what I mean? It was like a crepe dress or something. Yeah. Right. And that so... got a hole in it. But so, so you're having a- and when you say you're having a fight, I mean, are you wrestling with it? You got he so arm locks and headlocks? A little bit of wrestling and sho shoving about and that, and it was an accident. I didn't sort of go, right, I'm gonna break your teeth or anything. It's just mm. that I happened to push his head down and and his tooth hit the sink. Mm. Right. And it chipped and yeah. what have you. After that, like, I, I sort of left there and stuff, and we had to go into assembly. Uh, and there was a copper in there doing some presentation saying, listen kids, you know, don't get into trouble, because we're out there and we'll get you. Right, so sort of try to teach the kids young not to get into any trouble and stuff. So I'm sat in the assembly room thinking, oh god, there's a copper here talking, and he, like, my mate's gonna come in in a minute, like, with a chipped tooth and everything. 
and, and questions are going to get asked. That's what kind of happened. I mean, the, the coppers didn't get involved. Yeah. But did you turn your back on violence after that? Then? Yeah. Uh, well, 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 he, he said you'll never take me alive, copper. <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, that, that was the sort of last fight. Brilliant. What I mean is, we've we've obviously interfered somewhere along the way, and well, we, well, we have interfered. Yeah, yeah, we shouldn't have done because it's, mm. it's the same way. Like, uh, if we, you know, if we didn't have planes and that, would we have wings now? If we'd have no. needed to get about, <laughs> no. would we have had wings? No, the answer's no. <laughs> Next. No, but but you say that, but look at the way- he's right, is it, cos he's right? No, but all I'm saying is you see that little picture of like an ape to man- Yeah. At first, they're crawling about on all fours because probably yeah. you're looking for food, so you want to be down there. So right. if, you, if you're on both legs, yeah. you're missing stuff that's on the floor. What sort of time period do you think this- cos I mean, we started, uh, you know, dabbling with a plane maybe hundred years ago. So what sort of time period do you think this little thing who's scrabbling around looking for food I stood up and I walked? don't know. I, I sort of don't worry about time, sort right. of. Behind, well, I tell you now, we wouldn't room. have wings now. If the Wright brothers had said, ah, oh, forget it, we wouldn't have wings now. Well, it's that time again. Uh, it's the feature that the world is saying could rival Monkey News one day. Ready? Oh, what's he written today? Well, Carl's diary. You didn't actually yeah. explain what it was. On the tube on the way back home, saw an advert for a book about a woman who works in a funeral home. She went into work one day, uh, she goes to work on a body, she takes the sheet off of one of the bodies, and it looks exactly like her. This is called a doppelganger. The What's thing, a doppelganger to you? It's the thing I read about ages ago where, um, someone was, uh, walking down the street. Yeah, and he sees someone who looked a bit like him. And, no, this was weirder than that. Go um, on. Um, he, he, he remembers, like, going down that street as a kid on his bike, whistling. Yeah. And then he sort of, he's walking down the street, going out to get some milk or whatever from the shop. Little bike comes whizzing past. He hears the whistling, he goes, that's weird. Looks at it, it was him when he was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a time. Oh, shit. <laughs> what do you mean, it was him as a kid? This, this is like a different form of doppelganger. It's just, uh... Um, well, it's impossible, it's rubbish. Some sort of time thing, isn't it? No, no, it's not even that's impossible, so don't it's worry about it. It's just some kind of time thing, Rick. No, no, no. Yeah, it's something you read thing. again on the internet, or it was a short story, or something someone told you. Mm. On my walk back from the tube, I saw a jogger who was pushing a pram at the same time. The kid looked terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Got me science book out. It said that the static you get on the telly when a channel isn't tuned in properly is radiation that is still knocking about from when the Big Bang happened. I thought about the Big Bang and wondered if it was really a Big Bang or did it just sound louder as there was no other noise to drown it out. <laughs> Good point, though, isn't it? Carl's diary, Rick, never ceases to amaze. We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. I mean, it's Freddie from Winchester says, uh, of course, it was recently Valentine's Day. What's the most romantic thing that you've done for Suzanne, Carl, that you can think of? Uh, I, I don't really do all that. Uh, the Valentine's Day stuff. It's just the problem is if you do it once, they expect it every year. Yeah, that's sure. that's the problem with Christmas and stuff, isn't it? It's like it's become that's what you do now every yeah. year, every day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I prefer to just sort of wait. You know what I mean? And and you know if I think of an idea or I know of something that she wants, I might get her something, but I might not do it on Valentine's Day. It's that thing. It's like how I've, I've said about Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> Make it Pancake Wednesday. Have it when you want. Why yeah. am I waiting? Why am I waiting for someone to tell me when I can have a pancake? I'll have it today if I want one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whereas Pancake Tuesday, no, I won't bother. I'll have trifle. So, <laughs> so it's the same, same with this, you know, with Suzanne. Um, luckily, right, I mean, Valentine's Day and what have you, she was, uh, she was ill. Luckily. So, we didn't, we didn't have to go out. So, I'd say, is he asking for advice? Well, I suppose, yeah, certainly the may as well give it. Treat them when they deserve it. <laughs> All right. I remember uh, once when Suzanne was ill, she had a fever, but there was no food in the house. What did you suggest to her? She was too ill. To well, cook. it was it was when we were still living in Manchester and that, and uh, you know uh, we needed to get some food in for tea and stuff. And uh, I said, "Come on, come to the supermarket." She was like, "No, I'm ill. You go." And I ate buying food. I just sort of get a bit blank when I'm looking at it. There's too much, isn't there? That's the problem. You go down all these aisles, and it's just too much. So anyway, I said, no, come on, come with me. She was like, oh, but I've got this fever, I'm hot and everything. So I said, well, come to the supermarket, you go on the frozen aisle, cool yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> and she did, and she said, you know, it made it worse, she was ill for another three days. Lawrence from New York says, I was wondering how Mr. K. Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is, if a lion could talk, we could not understand him. Even if he's English. 
Yeah, if he... <laughs> yeah, if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier, he's speaking English words and using all the correct uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world. His frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about because you'd have so little in common, even if he used real words. No, but he's talking English. Yeah, no, but his reference points would be just so far removed. You know, they're removed slightly when, uh, uh, if you saw two people talking about Kierkegaard, you'd, un you'd, you'd I hear... I wouldn't understand that. Exactly. So remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo... Yeah. He'll, he'll be saying, oh, I'm fed up with being stuck in here. I'll go, yeah. It's like that, it depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that it's a lion, does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away. Now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even... Yeah, but I'd, I'd pick something smaller yeah. or, right. or something, you know, a worm without a mouth. I'd go, definitely not. What? Definitely, Definitely not, not what? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just, I just think that a worm that's, that's underground, yeah. what's it got to offer me? <laughs> it's, it's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not going to be a good day out with it, is what I'm saying. It's not going to have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right? Yeah, even if it's English! And how can you tell if a worm is English? Does it wear a very tiny bowler hat? <sighs> the streets, let's push things forward on XFM 104.9, the home of charity. <laughs> that's true enough. Yeah. I I've got to slow down because I'm a doing a little bit too much for charity. I've got to, I've got to worry about myself sooner or later. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, come on. We were halfway through uh, White Van Man. We were indeed, those, yes. Those, um, those lads came in. Getting Carl's views on some of the big stories of the week yeah. from the news. Um, Carl, what do you make of the fact that the British Olympic curling team won a gold medal? I watched it. Uh-huh. I thought it was really good. Um, <laughs> the only thing that's getting on my nerves now it's like, what was that? Is that a trombone player <laughs> just sneaked in? <laughs> that was me moving this microphone. Right. That was incredible, that? wasn't it? Yeah. What an right. amazing um, noise. The only thing is... <laughs> that shouldn't sound like that, should it? That's incredible. What a shoddy tin pot station this is. Well, we know that. Sorry, Carl. Go on. It's like, in all the papers now, in, in like the, you know, the Star and the Sun all week, they've been like traipsing models over a bit of granite. Do you know, like how those things are made out of granite, the, um, the things they throw? Oh, yeah. And it just, that, that bit annoys me. Okay. The what, way that, the Daily Star? <laughs> no, the way that, you know, the sport, nobody had ever sort of heard of it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We win a gold medal. Yeah. And now in the papers it's like... They've gone crazy, they've gone curling mad. It. Yeah. It's a good game now. Yeah, good. Okay, next. All right, good. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Mm. Uh, what about the fact that the world's tallest man is living in a semi in Neeston? Uh... It's all right, isn't it? Um, <laughs> something that someone told me in the week is that, do you know all these tall people like this guy? Yeah. Which is a bit weird they've only just found him, considering he's the tallest man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> someone... <laughs> oh, someone genius. Someone told me that, um, uh, do you know the guy who was in James Bond, the big bloke? Yes. Jaws. Jaws. He's got the same illness as this bloke. Right. And what it is... It's called it's, tall. It's something about... You're suffering from tall. You've got a, a small tumour or something just behind this part of your head. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just, just sort of in, in the middle of your eyes. Yeah. And, and the pressure on that makes you grow really tall or something. Yeah. So he needs to get it sorted. <laughs> That's your advice to him. Yeah. Get it sorted. Okay, very finally, uh, Carl, this is important. This is, um, just projecting <laughs> into the future. It's sorted. Just projecting into the future now, K-Man. <laughs> Apparently, global warming will bring sizzling summers and weird wildlife to Great Britain in the future. Are you worried about that? Um, how soon? Soon enough for you to worry. Yeah, it's pretty worrying. Okay. Um... You don't, you wouldn't prefer it to be sunny here all the time? No, because with hot weather comes weird spiders and that. See, I always think we're quite lucky here. Yeah. If you live in Australia, you might have the sun and stuff, but you've got, like, deadly snakes. Yes. Yeah. Which are death. Did you know snakes are deaf? Snakes are deaf? They don't have ears. Okay. Um, so you're all right walking about behind them. Yep. But if they see you ahead of you, you know. you're in trouble. But yeah, with, with places like Australia, 
you know, people go, oh, it's great, it's Sonic, but they don't talk about the spiders and they keep the spiders yeah, and stuff. Quite. So I think we've got a bit of the both, the best worlds. So you're worried though about in the future, you know, like vultures flying through the sky, we've got various creepy crawly snakes, you yeah. concerned about that? Yeah, well there's a load, I saw something in the news in the week, that a load of sparrows or something was somewhere. Maybe that's the start. <laughs> that's an interesting story. <laughs> was that from Pedro? Or... <laughs> <laughs> There's a load of sparrows somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Read all about it. Sparrows somewhere. Some sparrows somewhere. Sparrows somewhere. Load of sparrows somewhere. Sparrows no. somewhere. <laughs> there you go. Anyway. Excellent. That's Thank great. You very that's, much, that, Carl. That's, uh, that's Carl um, giving his views on the news. Don't do that next week. <laughs> Why not? I just, I just don't like it. Why? Pressure. It's not pressure, you did brilliantly. Yeah. Lost Profits there, on XFM 104.9. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. It rocks. I like the guitar, atmosphere, it's good. But it's called the fake sound of progress. I know, I know. What? See, what always annoys me is when people, um, they dismiss, you know, say, Enrique Iglesias, current number one, great song. Good video. Brilliant video. And they say, oh, it's rubbish and all that, but I think that songs with titles like A Fake Sound of Progress. Yeah. Much more something to get on your hobby horse about. What has happened in that Bad video? Bad lyrics by if, good artists is always worse than a recording song. If you're listening, or if you work for the record company, or you worked on that video, because he's got the money and the girl, and then Mickey Rourke beats him up, right, he has a fight, you just see him knock him over, and then it cuts, and the next scene, it's night, it's not in the desert. There's loads of um, uh, police cars. They're not doing anything. They're, they're just standing and around. And somehow he's probably got, eating he's, donuts. He's dying of injuries. But I don't know what happened. They don't. What has happened in that video? I, I think if you heard the 12 inch mix, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of other uh, sequences to explain why. Yeah. I mean, we all think, all we think that he stole the girl off Mickey I Rourke. I think he stole the girl off Mickey Rourke, yeah. as well as some money. Some money, Mi yeah. Mickey's tracked him down. Yeah. And he's thinking, I'm going to stop running, I'm going to face Mickey this time. And he does, and then, boom, you're right, it cuts, and suddenly the police have, yeah. have shot him or something. I don't know where they him. are. Don't know what, the, the police seem to be leaving him to die in there. See, I thought, I thought that they'd called the police, because the, 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 sort of like the melee, mm. but Mickey Rourke's off. With his gang, the police are going. Well, you know, where are they? There's no evidence. They go. Well, look, he's dying. They're going. But how did he die? Yeah. How is he dying? He's, he's not. He's a bit wet for the. Knowing rain, knowing Rourke though, Rick, I imagine he's uh, stitched Enrique up. I bet he's framed him or something. Or or he's 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 no sort of like ninja stuff, and there's lots of internal injuries that yeah. aren't immediately. Anyone, visible. if you were involved with perhaps the making of that video, or indeed you are Enrique Iglesias, give yeah. us a ring if you're around. Come on, just just fill us in. I don't need. I um. I'd rather play some adverts now than I'd, I'd love to play some adverts for it, but I'll say this, I'd also like to tell the listeners that coming very soon on XFM, some huge news about Carl is. that will rock It'd the capital. It'll be like Pop Idol, it's going to be an ongoing saga. Going in, shot, shot, good track, good band, but I'll tell you what, in the second hour I just want to play classics. I'd love to hear a bloody I want to play yeah. some Cure, New Order, Smith. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Mm, some, mm, you know, we mm. played Nirvana earlier, but it's not enough for me, Steve. No? You need I your fix. I want... <laughs> I do. Well, uh, it's that point in the show now. Song for the Lovers. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favourite singers. What, probably one of the most beautiful singer-songwriters of all time. Well, you don't mean that, like, you don't mean that he's a good-looking bloke and you fancy him. <laughs> I mean, I just want to clear that up, Rick, because otherwise... <laughs> that would, yeah. What you uh, mean is that the songs he writes are beautiful. Yeah. You can take or leave him as a bloke. Can't yeah, imagine. of course, of course yeah. And I've got, I've got, and, and he's, he's written, mo he's written such brilliant classics with his lovely ass as... Oh, <laughs> what why did they say that? Why did you say, say that, 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 Rick? Because people will listen that? and misinterpret. Oh God! Um, uh, he wrote Galveston. He wrote Wichita Line Man. He wrote, um, yeah, he wrote MacArthur Park. And just to tickle him down below, what? what? I don't know what. He's saying Thieves. <laughs> and this is uh, a song, one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. It's off um, a few album, Ten Easy Pieces, which is just him doing the versions um, of other, you know, that he gave to other people on piano. And this is um, called If These Old Walls Could Speak, and it is absolutely beautiful. Listen to this. If These Old Walls Could Speak by Jimmy Webb. Might play another track off that later, if we've got time. What, today? Yeah, well, maybe, or maybe next week. We've got, no, we've got lots to pack in. We've got things like New Order, Cure. Oh, I'm just the... hoping that um, all those kind of new metal fans, Rick, can just calm down for a second, you know, yeah. and, and just enjoy that for what it was. Yeah. Well, well, they're not, know, I hope their snobbery is not going to uh, prevent them from enjoying it. I hope it. they can just leave it alone for two hours for our show. Exactly. We try and, you know, we get try and pack lots of well, stuff Well, whilst you're talking about new metal, can I just say, Ian Camfield is here tonight, he's what? moving from Fridays. Right, what the hell does he think he's doing? He's yeah. just offering up information now. No, it's just like you were talking about the new metalers, and now seems like a good time to Carl, say. listen, you're here for our amusement. Yeah. You don't, you don't sort of come in any time you want. When we decide it's time to sort of have some fun at your expense, then we'll let you know, but yeah. otherwise... 
This is, we're not here to help other DJs or, we, or or even this station. We don't give a about this. See, this is what my girlfriend said. What's that? <laughs> well, you should listen to her. She knows what she's talking about. Clearly, now put your microphone down. She said they just wheel you out when they need you. Switch your microphone off, Carl, and let us finish what we were saying. Right, just what yeah. were we saying, Rick? Um, uh, Ian Canfield has got a rock show. Oh right, yeah. Starting today, four hours of pure rock. rock. Yeah, he's probably here smoking, drinking Jack Daniels, and just like having pictures of Vance put up around him <laughs> to get in the mood. Then he go out and rock. <laughs> Carl, don't be silly. Turn your microphone on. We're joking. It was. Uh, it was. Is that right? When's he on? Eight till twelve tonight. Four hours of rock. Lovely. Listen, um, some big classics coming up. Plus, oh, huge no, no, news some ads. about oh, no, Carl. Please, let's play some more ads. Do you really want some ads? I'm tired of the music and chat. Please play some more ads, Carl. Please. Oh, Carl. Christ's sake. Cure on XFM 104.9. That's what it's all about, Steve. Absolutely classics. Yeah, we've got some more classics coming up. Looking forward to them. Now, when we were talking to Carl in the week, the things we're talking to Carl is that you come up with something that's sort of like um, quite innocent, and he goes, ah. Well, the once, right? And you realise that it's comedy dynamite. Yeah. He doesn't know it, but we want to go save it. And he let out, um, you were filling in a form, weren't you? It's, it's all like your girlfriend thinking you're a div. And it's happened before, isn't it? Because she came home and you'd filled out a form to get a job once, hadn't you? Yeah. What was that for? Granada Granada Telly. And on it... Well, uh, let Carl explain. Yeah. Um, you, you, you see, this is what annoys me with job applications, because rather than just saying, <laughs> do you want the job and what can you bring to this business? Yeah. Do you want the job? Is a good one. Because yeah. the thing is, <laughs> that, 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 that's sort of the end for the boys. No, listen, right? Because if they say no, yeah, I don't think they want the job. Yeah, but listen. Go on. I mean, I presume with what you do, you, you have to take people on and stuff. What like a fight? You mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's more important that you're willing to graft and put the hours in. Sure. Than say that you know, you you did well at school. Yes. Sure. Because if I wanted to, I could have done well at school. Of course. I just, I just didn't want to. Yeah. So where's this going? So you had the application form. So when it came to the qualifications bit and that, I couldn't fill them in because I didn't have my qualifications. And it was also asking about your languages. And I, I put down English quite good. English quite good. Ha ha ha. And his girlfriend Brilliant. came and seen the form that he'd sent off and this was a copy, copy of it. Yeah. And so she went, oh, you know what I mean? So that's what started. You know, the disappointment. So they're gonna get that and think that you're not English. I don't think I've got it, it was ages ago. <laughs> right. How long ago was it? Oh, well it was when I was still in Manchester, so five years ago. I don't think you've got enough. <laughs> um, no, the, the, yeah, no, I think you've- There yeah. could be a long list. I mean, the, the, there's probably a lot of admin problems in that organisation, but they, they probably- But what, what I meant by it is that, me Engl you know, I can speak English, but I don't know all these long words that people use all the time. Foo Fighters. All my life on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and uh, Carl Pilkington. Indeed, genius Carl Pilkington, as Heat Magazine said. Really? Is that what yeah. he's referred to now? Yeah, huh? yeah, genius. Saying about people tune in just to hear his games, yeah. such as educating Ricky. Have you got some educating Ricky for me? Got some education. I need some education, Carl. That's I like desperately that. need some education. I want to learn about Chinese kids that are born hairier than average. <laughs> I want to hear, hear about deaf girls that can hear after their mum hits their head against a wall. These are the things I need to know. I mean, I don't wish to be disrespectful. He doesn't look like a genius. He doesn't look like a genius. But then I don't know what a genius looks like. Exactly. So, Steve. you know, I don't want to be enough. Look, look at Einstein. Yeah. Yeah. His mum thought he was mental as a child. <laughs> Where'd you get that information from? That was in the Einstein book. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was in the Einstein book, then it's totally true. <laughs> Which <laughs> Einstein book is that? His theory of relativity? The, 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 the big book of Einstein stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the big bumper book of Einstein stuff. It's <laughs> yeah, uh, for yeah, a coach yeah. trip yeah. and you have to fill in, uh, yeah. e equals MC1 squared, <laughs> two, <laughs> fish, or three, hello! <laughs> and then it's multiple choice yeah. and you uh, fill it, it's great. It's Did his brilliant. mum think A, he was a genius, <laughs> and B, mental? <laughs> <laughs> so most people go for A, but it is in fact B. Ooh. She thought he was mental at the age of 28. <laughs> oh, Carl, oh. you never let me down. You never let me down. So have you got Educating Ricky for me? We've got Educating Ricky coming up. We've, we've got, got Rock uh, Busters. Uh, we've got Rock Busters. Some great as, seen, as seen and talked about in Heat. <laughs> in Heat magazine. It's got really tough this week now. We're not messing about anymore. Uh -huh. Right. Um, got some good prizes? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll talk about those later. Because, right. uh, I mean, was it last week that you had the, the classic? Was it, um, I can't remember, I, I'm paraphrasing, Carl, apologies. Something like, I'm here in Texas, I've fallen in a puddle and my knee has got wet. Yeah. 
Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston. Yeah. And also, it was last week when there was a little bit of confusion over uh, the one for Holly Valance. Of right. course. Um, I don't think it was confusion. I think it was your error. No, yeah. No, no, it wasn't. And it was Holy Valance, and you meant Palmet. Ah. Then one. Becky, who called up that time and said, yeah. "Oh, if you you get mistaken with uh, Palmet." Right, she sent me an email in a week yeah. saying I've done a bit of research. Yeah. It was my fault. I've made an error. Yeah. It is a valance. Okay. And I know about valances, as I told you last week. At the very end, my auntie loves them. Yeah. Right. She um she makes them. She started off just like putting them on top of the uh, sort of window around the curtain. Uh, and then she she thought, oh, I can do more with this. Yeah. <laughs> and she had a little coffee table that had magazines underneath. And yeah. she said, I'm sick of seeing them magazines when I'm sat down. <laughs> she, she, sounds, she, she sounds like a pilkin to me. So. <laughs> I'm sick of seeing the magazines when I sit down! So she put a valance on the table. Yeah, yeah! She just got valances on everything now. Yeah. Then, yeah. Uh, next step, uh, she, she tapes everything. She never actually watches telly, she tapes it all. Yeah. Because she gets sick of listening to the adverts and that. Yeah. So she tapes everything, so she's got loads of videotapes and that. And the video used to get on her nerves when she was watching a film. She'd see the clock changing. Oh. And it distracted her from the film, so sure. she put a valance around that. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's genius! Yeah, so. That is or really... Is it, or is it mental? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Only Mrs. Einstein can tell. I don't know. She's even made a little, um, Jack Russell look like a hovercraft. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Still, so it. everything's got a balance. If you, if you go round and you stand still for too long, the chances are... <laughs> you <laughs> you have a balance around your head. Yeah. This is the, 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 this is Auntie Who? Auntie Nora. And this is the one that farted for five minutes. <laughs> she did. Lest, lest our listeners forget. <laughs> lest farted forget. for five minutes, called his mum, sailed on farting, <laughs> two minutes into the fart. She said about uh, two and a half minutes in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She said I'm about two and a half minutes well, into well, the Well, my mum said, how long's been going on for? She said, well, uh, it was about two and a half minutes before I called you. Yeah. And then it went on for a further two, <laughs> two and a half minutes or something. And, uh, <laughs> then it stopped. And, she, could, uh, she couldn't tie her up because there was a balance over the clock. Yeah, she used to annoy her when she was on the phone and you put her off the so other time. She, it was she was guessing it was five minutes. This was one consistent fight. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't making a noise, it was just... Oh, it wasn't making a noise. Just gas. <laughs> right. Endless gas. Mm -hmm. So, uh... There That's fantastic. Well, we started off with a new one, a little bit of Foo Fighters. We like new and old on this show, don't Indeed, we? We like to mix it up. I'd like to play the Smiths from their from their uh, debut album. Um, I don't owe you anything. I don't owe you anything. The lads from uh, Carl's hometown. There. Indeed, the Smiths. Brilliant that one. Wow, I went to Manchester, didn't I, the other day? Went up to Manchester for what a little corporate. Uh, it was all right. Yeah. Um, I, the, he went. Um, wait till you get out. You see, Piccadilly. It's better than Euston. Right. right. It was. It, the, 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 you know, it was, it was nicer. I went outside and there was a ridiculous queue, uh, um, uh, and sort of one cab. Right, um, yeah. So, uh... Horse drawn. Yeah. yeah. And so I walked and it was okay. It was only down the road. It was a bit dark. It was wet and raining. Of course. course. The north. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, the hotel yeah. was very nice, but no minibar. I've never seen that before. I've travelled all over the world to see them in a hotel without a minibar. <laughs> no, so I don't know what's going on then. I don't know what's going on there. Um, and then I, uh, uh, I did this corporate gig in Old Trafford. The pitch was up. I don't know what they were doing. But, um, you know, very impressive. Big, impressive. I think they're a British football club, aren't they? Carl? Yeah. You did a yeah. gig at where? Old Trafford. It was, in a, it was in a function room. Oh, there, well, I thought it was yeah. a stadium. No, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not that big yet. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, but, I mean, oh, uh, you know, I can't really comment on Manchester. I do know that Liverpool was voted the most important music city by a poll. True enough. Um, so, uh, Carl, you're making noises while I'm talking. Yeah, but you do this all the time trying to wind me up. <sighs> and I'm not, I'm not saying Manchester's the best place in the world, but what I'm saying is, there's bits of it that I really miss. Yeah. Like last Sunday, right? When I'd, I'd met up with, uh, with Ricky, um, we had uh, a spaghetti bolognese, which was all right. Uh, and then I said to him, I said, I need some soil. Damn, I wish you'd invited me. It sounds <laughs> <right>. amazing. <laughs> I said, I need some soil. What, what do you think? You need some what? Soil? soil? Soil, yeah. I need to repot a plant, right? Yeah. So, um. You need to repot a plant? Yeah. I'm, oh, fair enough. So, um. I'm like, where, where, you, you can't see you these can't, shops yeah. in London. You can't Do you know what I mean? Them. There's nothing around. I took him straight to one in my street. Yeah, yeah. but near your street, and that's probably the only one in London. Well, you say that, Carl. No, it, do, it does annoy me. Round my way, it's like, you know. You can't move for soil shops. <laughs> 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 you can't. There's earth. You can just pick up handfuls walking down the street. Yeah, incredible. Which People is... <laughs> just lean over into someone's front garden. No, yeah. you can take the plants yeah. as well. No, but yeah. what I'm saying is, Manchester, there's loads of decent hardware shops. Yeah. Here, 
um, you know, if you're at a panini in a latte or whatever, you can't move for them. But for soil, I had to <laughs> go virtually how many miles away from me to carry that mm. soil home and stuff. Yeah. It's, like, it's not good. I mean, London's all right, mm. but if, if cities were sort of it's, it's, it's neglecting the peat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, market yeah. really. Well, isn't there's it? barely. I mean, there's barely any mulch available well, uh, well, in central I, London. I'm sick and tired of not getting a good decent compost of a Sunday. <laughs> Indeed. So you know, I'm thinking of moving to the north, <laughs> yeah. uh, where there is loads of soil <laughs> and <laughs> gravel, Indeed. and animal shite. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Yeah. So yeah, whatever. sorry, you were going to say if you're marking cities out of ten, what would you give uh, London? Well, if you were marking them on like you know on on what they have. Right. As opposed to what? <laughs> well, as opposed to how the you name. spell it. Say, like, I think the greatest city in the world is Rome. Okay. Right? It's pretty amazing. Mm, yeah. Have you been? What? Yeah. Why do you think that though? Just because, like, you turn a corner and there's something there that's really old. Right. right. <laughs> like, you're going down Normal Street. <laughs> go, go and stay in a Derby and Joan Club. Yeah. No, no, no. But but it's like you're going down the road and then you turn a corner and like, like the Colosseum's in the middle of a like a busy road. Mm. It's like what's that doing there? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Just when you think there's no more, you turn another corner. It's boiling. almost as if that was there first. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. But do you know what I mean? London. Yeah. What have we got? You, you know, Trafalgar Square is world sort of world known. And you go there, what's that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, there's a lot of space there. Get one big B&Q. In Trafalgar Square. It's a, it's a cater for the whole of people who live sort of central London-ish. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd be happy, but what I'm saying is- Well, with Nelson just popping up through the middle. Cause you can still see it, <laughs> couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's so a great B &Q, idea. Uh, 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 so B&Q could be like the whole sort of flat thing and make it sort of grey so it looked like rock and then Nelson popping up- Make it up classy is what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stone clad it. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like you've made an effort. <laughs> exactly. And then you can pop in and then you can go out and go, oh look, Nelson's column. Oh look at that! Isn't now? Oh look at that! The victory, oh, defeat. That's fantastic. One of the greatest living. Yeah. I need some nails. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Can you bridge one stone? You say. But but why don't why isn't there more than than them more than them shops? Because when I went into yours, every time I've been in there, I've been in there twice now. The first time was to get a shower head, right? <laughs> right. And I went in there, couldn't resist buying something else. I ended up getting some super glue as well. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> like Hey, right. big spender. And then, last <laughs> yeah. Sunday we went in there, got two bags of soil, not one, I bought two. Yeah. Yeah. And I bought some scissors to cut plants with. Secretaries. Well, you don't- scissors. You never know when you want, you know, you might need more soil, I suppose. Well, mm. I've got- I've got stocked out now. Where'd you keep under your Sorry, bed? Sorry, this isn't going out, is it, this conversation? It's not going out on air. I got a feeling it might be. You're joking. We'd better play a record. Okay. Play a classic. Hives. What about a jellyfish? No, I, you see, I think that's where you, you can- you can say you wouldn't be able to have a good chat with them, because- to me, the sea might as well be another world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, in a way, I, I think the fish sort of have more rights than us. What do you mean? Just because when when whoever made the world, right, yeah. say, you know, we were just bigging up God, but if yeah. I was, was to have a go at him, yeah. I'd say, you added too much water. <laughs> <laughs> Criticism one to God, right? right. So... <laughs> you, how would you have changed that? Just... Just more land. Fair enough. Now, why, why, are the, why have fish got more rights than us? That because, was what I was because, because there's loads of them, and when you look at the amount of sea on the world, right, there's, there's loads of that. You only have to like, like, you know, I was in Malaga the other week, right, and you know, you look in the sea, there's loads of different fish, uh, and that's just in like eight foot water. If you go miles out, there's like all sorts of weird fish, isn't there, with like lights on them and everything. So, and there's just millions of different types. Yeah. Yeah. Now, <laughs> but why does that mean they've got more rights than us? Just because I think, wh you know, rights come in in numbers, don't they? If you know what I mean. Like, if there's one of you shouting, people go, "Oh, he's an idiot. Shut up." Whatever. If there's loads of you shouting, they go, oh, "Best listen to him. See what they've got to say." Right. And, and that's what I mean about fish. <laughs> yeah. There's loads of fish. Right. So. But they're not really making their voices heard, though, are they? Can't. Yeah. I know because they're underwater. <laughs> but what? But what I mean is. I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do, right, if you had to go back and you were in a, um, you were, had to go and put your mind in, like, the, um, an un, uh, hatched egg of something. Like, maybe one of those, e like, uh, that a wasp was injected with a spider. So you know you're in an egg, right, which is really uncomfortable, in a spider. How would you feel about that, Carl? You're a baby wasp in the abdomen of a spider. 
And I know everything that I know now. I'm, I'm sat in there. Yeah. And now I'm now I'm in a spider as a bait as an unborn wasp. What the fuck am I doing here? What's going on? I don't know what I do there. Uh, I'll be trying to sleep. <laughs> There's nothing else to do though, is there? I just pray to God it never happens. Learned some famous quotes to see if they are as good as my sayings. Number one: Treat every day as if it's your last. Very famous saying. Now, is that something you do, Carl? Um, but you know, me, me problem with that one is that if it was your last, you wouldn't want to be doing much. That's, that's the only problem I've got with that. I wouldn't want to, you know, go to a fairground or whatever, because you're going to oh, ask me last day, what am I going to do? And I think you'd spend so much time worrying about what you're going to do that you'd end up staying in. I think you're right. Um, you've taken some of the poetry out of it. I think it means live life to the fullest, right? I like the fact that you were musing on the idea that if it was your last day, you'd go to the fair. <laughs> 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 it's getting such a 19th century way of spending your final day. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the thing is, the, the other thing is that, um, the only thing that people get depressed about in terms of sort of like, um, you know, life and death is, uh, not the knowledge that they're gonna die, but more the knowledge that they know they're gonna die when they're dying. If someone told you, um, no one ever knows when they're gonna die, no one ever gets an illness, no one ever gets hit by a truck, everyone passes away peacefully in their sleep, dreaming they're riding a big marshmallow, right? Then you wouldn't care about anything. It wouldn't matter when, it wouldn't matter if you died tomorrow or in 30 years time. You'd just live life to the full. You'd come, you'd, you'd have it, every day would be great. You'd go out, you'd come back, you'd fall asleep. That would be amazing. There'd be no stress. There'd be no, there'd be no angsty, oh, we're all gonna die stress. Cause it wouldn't matter. Cause it would just be your life. Wouldn't it be amazing if someone guaranteed you, Carl, you're gonna die in your sleep. I'm not gonna tell you when. Yeah, but you'd... some people do, don't they? Well, exactly. Yeah, but I we never know that. we're going to, cause we, we stress. What if we get a dreadful illness? What if we, you know. I but, but we're almost not letting people die naturally anymore, are we? Because we're always bodging stuff up. What do you mean? Well, someone who might naturally die in the sleep aren't allowed to naturally die in the sleep because they wake them up with those electric things and get them going again and pop in a new lung or whatever whilst they're at it. That's what I'm saying. They don't just... You never hear it anymore, do you? Frank peacefully died in his sleep. No, he died on the operating table whilst we were putting in a new lung. They never, they don't die naturally anymore. <laughs> Frank died peacefully with 40,000 volts going through them and a couple of people going, clear! <laughs> clear! <laughs> me dad and me talked about history. I said we shouldn't go on about things that happened ages ago because I bet something similar has happened more recently. Brilliant. <laughs> Read about an island in the Indian Ocean where there are tribesmen still living like they're cavemen. A helicopter tried to land and the tribesmen chucked spears at them. This is what I meant about not having to talk about things that happened ages ago. We have got new cavemen now, so why do we talk about the old ones? People could have lived before, but computers and all that blew up and books got burnt, so all they had left was what these tribesmen have got left. Ramblings <laughs> of a madman. Of a maniac. That I mean, that's it. just a few hours before you go crazy with a gun in there. No, but what, what I mean there is, right? Mm. Say if all this has happened before, something happens. Again, a lot of your information from the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> World ends, mm. right? We come back again somehow. Yeah. It's the detail <laughs> it's you leave yeah. out that makes yeah. you intriguing. Just like the watch that you can wear that uh, tells you when you're going to die. How does it work? Pop it on your wrist. That's yeah. all the detail you need. So the world happened, no. we came back, we... Um, yeah. Have you seen the pictures? <laughs> Forget it, then, if you don't get it. It's interesting that you had all those profound thoughts about this this period in the past <laughs> when they all lived, but you still you still found it uh, appropriate to include at the end of that. It says the tribesmen wave their knobs about when they've had enough of having visitors. That's what's what it said in the paper. That's what happens. They're quite happy. What paper is this that you're reading? It was it was in it was in like a paper a couple of days ago. It said um, they don't mind having visitors if they're bringing them coconuts and stuff that they can eat. Once they've got everything they need, they start waving the tackle about. And that means, like, right, leave now. Which you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah! At a dinner party. Uh, my grandfather used to do that. <laughs> I was in there the other day, and, uh, like, like I say, little bird noises and that, and a little robin was there, and I thought, that's odd, that's out early. Right, cos it's, like, sort of summertime and that. Sure. 
and then I thought, oh, that's nice, and I was watching it, and then it got, like, a little worm, right? Mm. And I was like, hey, put it down, right? <laughs> 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 Sorry, whoa! What do you mean? Because Why were you interfering? Why were you interfering? In nature. With a, with a robin taking a worm? Just because it, it, it was a nice sunny day and that, and I thought, you see, worms normally come out when it's raining, don't they? And you go, well, I bet they're happy to die, in a way, because it's chucking it down, it's miserable. They come to the top of the soil then, don't they? Yeah. When it's miserable. But it was a sunny day. That's they don't drown, I assume. No, it's not that, is it? It's just that they, they hear the water or something falling on the ground and they go up to see what's happening. <laughs> what? No, no, wait, but why do they come up when they think it's raining? You're a worm, okay? It starts raining. Tell me your thought process. Well, you just kind of, you're down there, you can't see anything, it's dark anyway. Yeah. So, the, the rain's coming down on the land, the worm goes, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> the worm goes, what's going on? He wiggles up to the top. So what does he do? So it, so it, it goes up and it, it sort of sees it's raining and then it goes back down again, doesn't it? But that's, that's what I'm saying about What do you mean? What do you, what is, sorry, what is this world where it goes, oh, it's just rain again, oh, so that's, that's the 400th time I've been caught out this year, it's rain, I'll remember next time, I won't come up. I, 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 what do you think a, a worm is capable of in terms of cognitive thought? What do you mean? Well, a worm can basically, uh, uh, tell certain chemicals and certain light patterns, that's a, that's all it is really. Yeah, and, and... It's and not thinking, it's not choosing its favourite food. You don't know that though. Is what I'm saying. You don't know what things are thinking. Everything thinks. Doesn't no, it, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, the thinking. There's something in this room that's not. All right. What about <laughs> this one then? What about um, what about flowers? Do you think they've got a a mind, a, a feeling? Because here's here's something that again they they use phototropism. They go towards the sun. They 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 close and All right, open. Well, Can you stop grow. using long words, Rick? Like sun. Listen. <laughs> but what I was saying is about the worm. This robin that I saw that was eating the worm. It had hold of it, and I thought it said sunny day in that give the worm a break sort of thing. So I went, oh, yeah, yeah, like that. And it sort of dropped it in shock. But then when it realised I wasn't that near it, it picked it up again and swallowed it. <laughs> and I just thought, oh. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean, no. I just thought it's a sunny day and everything. Normally birds are nice noises that I like. And yet there it is going about wrecking lives. <laughs> Lives. It was a no, worm. It just, no, but it just swallowed it really quickly and that. And I thought, I just thought, there's the worm. It, it came out. It was happy. It didn't know what was going on. And the, it had an extra chance. The, the robin dropped it. And then it got it again and ate it. And I just, just made me a bit fed up. Well, do you know why, don't you? You couldn't outwit a robin. The worm was going, oh, God, Carl Pilkington. So that, that's who's been sent to save me, is it, God? You've sent Carl Pilkington. Oh, I'm dead. That's it. Okay. Eat me. Oh. Yeah. God, oh, can I just tell this quickly? Um, it, in the week, um, I'm talking to you now, the listener. Um, usually I don't. Yeah. Uh, Carl said, oh, uh, about embarrassing him on air and that, and he's worried about his education, and he was worried about not knowing long words. Like, we come up with any long words. Mm. And he said, no, I, I was, I was scared, um, you were gonna ask me something about, um, someone, and he's, uh, Eastern European leader, his surname is Milosevic, and Carl said, so I learnt it this week and learnt it so you can't catch me out in case you say, I said, what? And he said, he thought about it and he went, Flobodan Milosevic. <laughs> <laughs> got a surname right though, didn't he? So what's his, right. what's his name? What's his name? That's how Bill and Ben would address this leader. <laughs> how would they have said it? Flobodan Milosevic. What's his name? Slobodan yeah. Milosevic. Yeah. Well done. well done. Anyway, Carl, look, you almost let it slip then as you were talking about your uh, filling out that application form. There's some big news that everyone needs to know, which we were stunned by in the week, although the more we sort of talk to you, the more it starts to fall into place. Yeah. But Carl, what's the story? That I haven't got me, uh, me exam results from the GCSEs. He never turned up to get his exam results. I was working. And so, how many did you take in the end? Because you weren't even sure about that, were you? You think you took maths and English, don't you? Yeah. And you... You think you've handed in the artwork for art, don't Now, you? art was, um, continual assessment, wasn't it? Yeah. Coursework. And what was the, that you had, you made? I made a man s sort of putting his arms into a car. <laughs> you made a model of a man putting his arms into a car. What was this? So that like, one's passed. Was that, this, that, that this is a homage to break-ins in Manchester? <laughs> was this? <laughs> <laughs> was this? <laughs> oh, look, he does what he sees. Yeah. Um, so, so you've what got that, that's safe. You've so, definitely got that one. So you've taken mm -hmm. art, you've taken English and maths, you think? So this is what we're going to do, listeners. We're going to try and find out his exam results for him and tell him next week. Live on air. We're going to call his school, we're going to try and track him down 
and we are going to have a little envelope, and we are going to give Carl, at the age of 29, his O-level results. Uh, GCSEs, yeah. Now, Carl, so you took maths, yeah. you think, you took English, you took, do you remember turning up to do this? Do you remember sitting in the room, filling in the forms? Yeah. Okay, and how did you feel you did? <laughs> I didn't, I don't think I did well. You don't think you did well? Did you revise? No. Why didn't you revise? Because I, I don't really believe in it. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just that if you don't know it, then you don't know it. You shouldn't have to start looking at the book. If I went to the doc, if I went to a, like the hospital, yeah, and the doctor said, "Oh, you need your appendix out," but hang on a minute, I've just got to read up on it. Yeah, that isn't good enough. Okay. He should know, and that's that's the way I feel about it. <laughs> to be it. fair, though, he did do the revision beforehand. Yeah, they don't usually pass on, uh, like maybe like when they're in practice. Yeah, information they the took in by osmosis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they bloke comes in and goes, "Can I just see what you did with that?" And I goes, "You've passed." Yeah. Phew. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good job. I watched Casualty. <laughs> I just like the way, you know, the things that interest me, I remember. Things okay. like snakes not having ears and stuff. Yes. I didn't have to read about that. No, you just learned that, yeah. You saw it on the telly, didn't you? You saw yeah. it on that Ian Wright programme. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what Carl said to me, he said, uh, only, no, it's actually, um, I, I called Carl up in the week and Reese was with him, you know, Reese used to be on XFM, yeah, and he yeah. took the phone, and he went, Carl's worried, I've seen that programme, he said, snakes don't have ears, right? He said, so you can creep up on them and pick them up. And he said, Carl's worried, he said, how would you ever put them down again? <laughs> Because then they know that you're there. I woke uh, up the other night, quite late. <laughs> worried about that. And I said to my girlfriend, I said, how do you put a snake down? And she said, what are you talking about? I said, that Ian Wright thing, this guy managed to pick up a snake. And do you know that thing where they clamp its head on a jar to get the poison out? <laughs> I do now. Right? <laughs> they did that, but they didn't show you how they got rid of it, and I thought, it could really get nasty, because it's obviously annoyed that you've had its head pressed in the jar. Yeah. yeah right? They hate that. Now, in you, especially as it's in front of their mates. When you lift it off, yeah. right, you've got hold of it. Yeah. If you go to chuck it down, <laughs> it's going to turn on you. It's going to go wild, isn't it? So, I, I just wondered. Well, what you do is you never put it down, Carl. Yeah, that's why that's, that's why that bloke has got about, you know, 11 or 12 just carrying him. Exactly. Yeah, you never put it down. You sling it. Who cares? You just throw it, don't you, really far. <laughs> that's not, that I don't think you should throw snakes. But Carl, listen, okay. don't worry, you don't, we're not asking you to get involved with snakes, we're just asking you now, you did, you, you've, you've, you've done ma maths, you think? Yeah. Did no revision for that? No. Okay. Uh, English, do you remember what it was? Did they ask no. you about Shakespeare? Did they ask you I about books? I remember, but I must have done it because I thought that was... It was the English nice. language, not English literature, wasn't it? So it was, was like, it spelling and all So was it, no, was it, was it like a comprehension, you read a passage and you had to ask questions on it, was it... Uh, did you have I to write a short essay? I don't know, I can't remember any of that. <laughs> okay. I did a, I did a science. Okay, did physics it? or chemistry? Physics. Alright, well done. And uh, this is all you think? Any you actually it? took that? You actually took physics, do you say, you think? You're obliged to do a language, I think. Did you do French? I did French for a bit. But I don't think you are. I don't think you have to do a language. I think you have a GCSE, I think you've got to. Well, it. English quite good. <laughs> I think that's his language he did. I can't, so you don't know about I language remember. history, geography? Just, just what you will find out, won't we? Okay. But you just can't remember. You, I, I, I can't believe you can't remember turning up for these things, because it's quite a big moment in people's lives. It is, that, the, it is the thing that you've been working to all of your educational life. On the day that the, the things came out, I was working at a print, as a printer. Okay. And it was a really busy day. A lot of spelling mistakes that day. It was day, a really busy day, so you're bound to forget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I, I had to use gold ink that day. Oh, And it's, and it, yeah, I mean, you're yeah, not yeah, a printer, yeah, yeah. so you don't, you don't know. No, this. no, that's the biggie, isn't it? But it's tough, you've got to really get your rollers clean. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, play a record, mate, and good luck with the exam results. Hopefully we'll have them for you by next week. PJ Harvey on XFM 104.9, the home of the classics. Absolutely. Classics. Classics. Classics, 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 classics. Oggy, oggy, oggy. Oi, oi, oi. Um, well, we were, uh, <laughs> talking earlier about this, um, uh, as this book, They Died Young, right, and there's all these theories about these people, uh, like famous people that, um, uh, aren't really dead. And I remember speaking to someone about this, okay, and they said to me, Bruce Lee is not dead. <laughs> right, they said he's not dead, right? Uh, and I was, I said, well, um, how do you know? I said, he's going, no. It was a whole big thing by the Hong Kong government, and he's actually working as an undercover cop in <laughs> Hong Kong, <laughs> I've, I've using using his his kung fu powers. Now, no, he's apparently he faked his own death, Carl, yeah. so that he could work undercover for the Hong Kong yeah. police, infiltrating gangs, the triads, that sort of thing. Now, my point is this: if you're going to use someone undercover in Hong Kong, right? You know, an undercover cop. I suggest using the most famous Chinaman of all time. <gasps> that. Yeah, that would that's be a guarantee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, you know, when he's taking away a gang, they're going, you look a bit like Bruce Lee. He's going, no, no, I don't, no. See this, this moustache? Who's a bit wonky? Well, it's, I just, just take my word for it, I'm not Bruce Lee, all right? Well, all that stuff he did when you were punching us and kicking us and chopping, yes. But, Cohen, I'm not. Yeah. It does look a bit like the stuff in my film, in, in his films. In his films, yeah. But it's, it's not. It does it's not. just coincidence. No, yeah. The thing, thing is, though, and not sounding bad here, not trying to offend anyone, but they do all look the right. same. They okay. do all look the no, same. No, no, no. No, I've gone, though. What? You know, we're having a serious chat. I'm, right. I'm not, you know, I'm not here to upset anyone. Right. And what I'm saying is, over here. I'm so sorry. No, I'm not. Yeah, but you know me. I'm not, I'm not out to upset right. anyone. Right. You're not a racialist. No. What so, do you mean? You, you, are you saying all people saying is, all look alike? Well, look, look at the people over here, right? Yeah. With like, you've got no, you've got ginger this... people. Oh, God. You've got people with black hair. You've got people who are fat. Mm. People who are thin. Mm. But they're all so sort of fit, which isn't a bad thing. They all do that sort of thing in the park. They're all fit. It's a place where black hair. I mean, when they come here, they take pi pictures of people with ginger hair, don't they? Because they don't get them over there. That's what I'm saying. So calm down. Jeez. So you're saying that Bruce Lee, the most famous Chinese movie star of all they time, they can't tell him apart. Other <laughs> other tri members would. How are they? I mean, how are they going about the business at all? I yeah. mean, what I'm saying is, how do they, they, they even realise? Yeah, 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 that was the guy. What do they have to do? Wear numbers in you know because there's 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 a billion. No, but of when, them. You, when you know them, then you know. So what? Oh, I see. They can tell each other apart, can they? Well, they got signals. <laughs> I, this is amazing, isn't it? That's how you got away with it. Simon, Simon, which one are you? Just raise your hand, Simon. <laughs> yep. Chang, which one's Chang? Chang, good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it must be murder, mustn't it? Just that can be the only people thing. going into the wrong houses all the time, <laughs> getting off with their mates' wives. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It must be a nightmare, then. It must be a nightmare. Um, this uh, Carl, he... please don't complain. He doesn't know what he's doing. So I'm really sorry to anyone. Uh, he honestly does not know what he's saying. <laughs> XFM 104.9. Yeah, but what I'm saying is. Go on. I don't think I am offending anyone. <laughs> okay, fine. That's all right then. And you know that I won't want to do that. No, I know you don't. I know. Oh, I know. I, oh, I, know. Radio, I said right. If you got kids in the car, turn your radio. <laughs> So before you make any potentially racist remarks, just point out if you are listening and you might be Oriental. Yeah. Please don't take offence. Or go. Oh, oh. You know what I mean. So yeah. Go on then. So what? What was this other dead person? Who's not? <laughs> Can't play a record. Ricky's having a heart attack. Well, the music of tomorrow is here. <laughs> That's true enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. XF, 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 been some sort of muck up with the post. <laughs> um, Rick, a lot of the times when I played uh, Hip Hop Hooray, my uh, Hip Hop track of the week, yeah. you've sort of scoffed, you've thought that maybe I don't have credibility amongst the Hip Hop fraternity. No, it's just the way you dance. Well? It's merely the way you dance that, that worries me. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. people can't see it, really. And it's sort of like... Imagine if Mr Bean thought he was in D12. You know what I mean? It's, it's that sort of... And I don't diss you, I mean, I, I know... You're 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 a hip hop appreciator, you know. I wouldn't expect man. you to diss me. <laughs> I'm a black queen. <laughs> um, but uh, the point is that I just uh, there's a little something that Carl's got on tape for you that I think might change your opinion of my uh, whole hip hop credibility. Oh no! Um, now I told you in the past. It's not you know, video I, tape, is it? Not at all. Not at all. Actually, oh. Carl, just play. Just play. Yo, one, two, one, two, we are the Dilated People. Chilling on Hip Hop Parade. That's right. With Steve Merchant, y'all, XFM 104.9. LA to London, Dilated People expanding them. All day. Now, you've got that about that. that. No, it was just when I was hanging out with my homies. No, did it. Did, did, did they come in in the week? They were in the week, I think, and somebody got them to do it for them. You know, no, that was when I was just I was just hanging in the crib with them. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. That's very, that's very nice, uh, and, the, and the guys just, put, just laid down some beats for me. Yeah. You know, just let down some vocals and, uh, and I gave him match respect for it. You know, and the place was mad deep with girls at the time. I assume you're going to play Dilated Peoples this week then. Well, maybe. Yeah. Let's play it, Carl. That's very good. Art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. We know well, Suzanne wife likes some art. Just like, uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing, otherwise she's got to talk to me <laughs> about stuff. There's no art, there's no point, just wallpaper. I'm just saying, we've got three three windows we can look out of. Right. Right? Stop looking at the walls, look out the window. <laughs> <laughs> my man phoned and said that my Auntie Nora, ah, uh, classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. 
two months ago she was asking my dad how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of What does she want to do? Start a football team? Uh, <laughs> what does she want to back garden astroturf? She likes the sort of green look but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But. Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was okay while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> Blimey, getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. Doesn't he, uh, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why? why it's why... just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment and it's a cat and it What do you mean you get me? special treatment? You, sometimes we put I, food down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, uh, on our lap, and we stroke it. You don't well, just stroke it. We're you not massage it. it. You massage its back. You go, no, you stressed out. Well, no, no, it's good. It, no, no, I'm not saying you stressed out. At no point did I say you stressed out. You <laughs> said, "What the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something?" I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe because it! Because every time I go around there, it comes straight from the coolies. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like me. the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it's just sat there, you've bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right, one, one is a salamander, right. so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box, it's a big vivarium. Yeah, but what I'm saying and is... As it for, and, and, and if you're gonna criticise someone for just sitting there, uh, having a round head and doing nothing with its life, uh, people who live in glass houses, no, we've done this one. Do you, know, do you know what gets me though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it, and I thought, is it dead? Right, because he's just sat there. Like, and the, it was thinking exactly the same <laughs> fucking thing. sat there, not moving, right? And then, on the top of the box, is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's... it. It's, it's it's food. Yeah. Right? But they were more active than the thing that it was going to feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizards. <laughs> keep them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Don't understand it. A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. That's science gone mad, innit? it? I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? <laughs> what? Why, why have we got to see something that, that young? Why? Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some, surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in such things. That's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, no but what, what I mean is, why, at what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of x-raying the fella's testicles and saying, well, there it is at a really young age? <laughs> Well, where, where, where are we gonna stop? It's big, it's just horses for courses, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show their baby. They're excited they about it. They All sit right, down yeah. and they, they show the friends the, the slideshow. There That's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. Oh, look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying. It was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was an odd looking thing. I couldn't say, oh, it looks like you, because that would be a diss. <laughs> Speaking of flies, though, and that, um, they've, they've got one, right? I was out with Ricky, and he was reading the paper. There was a story there about a fly that its eyesight was bad or something, and they've made it a pair of glasses, and it had a picture of a house fly wearing. Okay, this is this is incredible, glasses. Steve. Can I can I take over? Oh, hang on, let me just just need to finish a couple of questions for that. So he's got there's a small fly, and they've made it a pair of glasses, yeah, yeah so that it can see better. Yeah, and your concern is what? Well, again, it's just that thing of we're, we're looking after everything now. Aren't Sorry, we? I've got to come in here, Steve. All right. I showed you, you the story. Saw it, you saw it. It was a picture of a, of a house fly with a pair of glasses, glasses on. Right? Yeah. right. It was about a one-sentence thing. Mm. It was about how far technology's come. Yeah. And, and a group of scientists using um, microscopy, right, and uh, um, uh, laser tools had. As an exhibition, shown that they could make a pair of glasses small to put on a house. They've put it on there and they've taken a picture of it and it's on uh, sorry, display. At no point was it actually because the fly had bad eyesight, the fly was presumably dead. It was purely an art installation or a show of technology. I thought you were going to say, Rick, that you'd drawn the uh, glasses on there <laughs> <laughs> and he believed it like there's a bearded lady in this paper. <laughs> no. <laughs> my, God, my God, Tony Blair looks like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> no. What, what do you think of that though? But they well, did it as an experiment. Out. Yeah, but all things start as an experiment. But why would they make a pair of glasses but for a fly? How, how would they know he had short, a bad eyesight? How would they know it was the same fly? Bumping into stuff. I don't know. Bumping into stuff. It's just, it's just that thing, innit, of human nature is, 
something's wrong with something, let's fix it. And they, and they try and help people out all the time, don't they? When you, no! you know, We are, we're always doing it. We're always trying to help people out. Instead of just going, you've been dealt a duff card, cope with it. <laughs> Came up with a good idea. We'll um, be the judge of that. Mm. Uh, well, I, I do it now. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sticking my neck out here. Um, but, yeah. uh, right. I think this isn't gonna be a good idea. Okay. Thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna second that motion. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we're, let's see if we're both right. See through skin. <laughs> <laughs> High five, Rick! <laughs> Why are they hanging about round there? <laughs> Why are seals going, do you know what, it's cold. I'm sick of it here. It's windy all the time, what have you, and I'm getting a club on the head. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Cos they're, they're meant to be quite bright in terms of animals and that, aren't they? Yeah. So why are they knocking about them parts? I don't know. Say like if, if seals died out, right? Would 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 that be a problem? We've done this. We've been through this before, Carl. Everything has a knock-on effect. Even a seal? That sort of in between something already, it's between a fish and a... <laughs> And, and a, a dog, dog. innit? <laughs> I knew you were gonna say dog. <laughs> it's not between a fish and a dog. What do you think evolution does? Do you, just, fish I, to never dog. It. Maybe we what do you mean it. it's between a fish and a dog? I'm just saying it's It so was a perfectly evolved mammal that re-entered the the water, I imagine, and then got streamlined and it I I mean, it's between a fish and a dog. But why not have one and the other? Why not have like you know? You've got a dog. You've got a fish. No, it's not between a fish and a dog. It's not between a fish and a dog. I don't know what between means. Well, I don't know. What, this I... is it again about <laughs> saving everything all the time. What is it doing? <laughs> What's it doing? Everyone's feeling sorry for him all the time. Save the seal and all that. What's it doing? Why are we saving it? <laughs> Let's just ask that question. What's it doing? <laughs> It's between a fish and a dog! Problem, wouldn't it? We're changing everything all the time, aren't we? I mean, there's some fella who was looking at on the internet, um, identical twins, right? They were sort of sick of looking like each other, so they were like, what can we do, right? And one of the twins said, you have my arm, right? <laughs> And he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his, his twin, so his twin's got like three arms. No, it's not true. <laughs> it's on the website. <laughs> no, it's not what? true. What, um, for a laugh, they were born so what, they for no, what, like, what, what doctor's doing this then? Well, they're old enough to sort of say this is what we want and- No, 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 no. Doctors don't go, well, if he wants another arm and I'll take another. They don't- doctors don't do that. What sort of practice is this doctor going around and go- Dr. Jekyll. I mean, Carl, think of what you're no, saying. But we've Where would he have stopped? Can you put his head on my knee? No, it's up to you. <laughs> yeah. no, sign this. If you sign this, you give my consent. <sighs> but, but we, you know, it isn't- oh, what, what do you think these doctors are doing? Just to do as they're told. They don't do as they're told. They do if someone wants it, and, and twins, sort of, it can get you down, can't it? Being a twin, because it's like- Sorry, what would this solve, though? I thought you said he, he, he gave one of them a, a bigger nose or a beard or two front teeth that would, uh, to make them look different, right? Not- I'll tell you what we could do. Go on. Um, would you like one arm? Go on, what are you thinking? Well, me three, you one, therefore not twins. <laughs> Novelty. I mean, you are a mental man. But they can do it now, can't they? There's no sort of- there's, there's no line drawn anymore. They don't go, you're crazy, we're not gonna do that. Yeah, in Saw 2, not in the real world. No, they don't do things like all this. Alright, there's another bloke, right? I don't know the sort of full ins and outs of it. Go on, you surprise me. But <laughs> what he asked for, um, something happened to his- his- his tackle. Right? Mm -hmm. His penis. Uh, yeah, right. Um, so he was at the doctor's and they were like, oh, what can you do for me? It's a bit embarrassing, I've got nothing down there, right? <laughs> so they were like looking at it going, yeah. Um, Doctor, I don't know if he started like rubbing his chin with his finger or something. Looked down. He's thinking. <laughs> got an idea. Um, you know, you've got a lot of fingers. How many of them do you use? The patient's like, yeah, I see what you're thinking. <laughs> they cut off one of his fingers, sewn that on to where his his tackle is. He's happy. Well, that's different, though, isn't it? Well, That's where they've really taken different. tissue. <laughs> no, but they've—I assume they—they they fashioned it into more of a knob than a finger. If you were doing that, use a sausage. 
I mean, why lose a finger for- Well, <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because your finger has your- your tissue, your blood type, and therefore would graft, uh, to neotesticles. A sausage is a thing <laughs> that's made by a butcher out of offal, okay, that really can't be grafted onto any part of the human yeah, body. That's why they very rarely use any meat products yeah, in, uh, in surgery. surgery. <laughs> I know, yeah! Use- well, I mean, why not use a sausage? You're a mental case. Scorpio Rising, Death in Vegas on XFM 104.9. Steve, mm -hmm. I'm Ricky Gervais. Carl, Carl's a little bit more, less stressed now. There's a ca camera crew have gone, his dad's not listening, we think. Well, well yeah, who knows? Mm, who knows? But, uh, you're chilled. I'll tell you what though, me, uh, my mum was loving it. Do you, know, she, do you know Rockbusters? I love- do I know Rockbusters? Oh, I love Rockbusters. I think uh, I dream of it. She was taking part- I mean, she doesn't know a lot of the, the new bands and that, mm -hmm. but she, uh, she made some up for, uh, some older bands and that. Oh, she- she did some herself? She made some herself, sent them in the post. So are you gonna use those today? Um, she's not quite got the hang of it. That's okay, right. Well, I'm like- I'm like a genius son. Have you got them there? Can we hear what they well, are? You keep talking a second then. I'm quite excited. I mean, if they're if they're even approaching, say, the genius of Wet Knee Houston. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there was another one which was something to do with a trench, Carl. What was that? Oh, that was Dandy Warhols. That was a good one. Dandy Warhols. That, I think yeah. that was his- that, that was, was his finest moment. Yeah. yeah. Incidentally, I've got an email there from, uh, someone called Sam. I don't know if that's a he or a she, but let's assume it's a she, just for, uh, glam's sake. Yeah. Um, she said she saw an old man eating a Twix last week, Carl, so that blows your theory at all. I'm not having it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> If you are a bloke, he's calling you a liar. So maybe you want a little rumble later. In fact, if you are a bloke, he's calling you a girl. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, then. Um, these are ones that my mum's made up. Um, Brilliant. Right. Just in case you're a new listener, I give some initials out and a cryptic clue, mm. and and it makes up a band, doesn't it? Yeah. Or a solo artist. Yeah, or a solo not artist. so much cryptic as what what, what you're thinking. Well, Go on. Uh, my mum sent this one. Uh, this group would be good at doing your hair. <laughs> this group would be good at doing your hair. TP. Uh, is, there, is there a group called the hairdressers <laughs> from the 60s? It would be good at doing what? your hair. TP. TP, TP. Is it the something? The platters. The platters. Yeah, that's yeah, alright. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's alright. Nice. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, this group sound like dinosaurs. Group sound like dinosaurs. T-Rex. T-Rex. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. They're not so much cryptic, are they? Uh, this group. <laughs> they're, they're, low. they're good. This group likes being uh, by the sand and the and the sea. <laughs> this group likes being. Are they the Beach the Boys? Boys, Beach Boys. Boys. <laughs> 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 this band are called the Beatles. Ah, uh, the Beatles. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> we just have just uh, have a. <laughs> <laughs> What else you got? Um, <laughs> it's oh, funny because because one of them that she's done, I'm actually doing today. I thought of in the week. Right? So. Is it the same clip? Uh, it was, yeah. Wow, well, great minds think alike. Here's so the last one. Here's the last one from her. This guy sounds superb. <laughs> this guy sounds superb. The Bachelors. Glenn Campbell. <laughs> 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 that's good. I like that. I think I'll tell you this. I think you should get onto one of the big game uh, organisations, Parker Brothers or whatever, because this has got to be. T I mean, this could sweep the nation at Christmas. Don't you think this is the perfect Christmas game? Yeah. Well, I think this is what's going to make or break the MTV thing. Right. Honest. Some kind of TV version. Yeah. Uh, I'm just yeah. thinking into mm. ad breaks, you know, coming up next is this band. Be careful though, Carl, because, you know, make sure you retain the rights, because I can see this selling abroad. You yeah. Know, you and I can America. see someone coming along and taking this sort of like the, the, the rock busters and changing one word and like another na like another game out of it and just what, using the same format. What, I don't know, I know, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, I can't think of another but they could change, so sort what, of like, they change mm. the word rock to something else and have it, what could it be, brick block? Yeah, and so you'd have to, yeah. you know what I mean, so yeah, be careful. Us as will never work. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his little face. So, uh, so yeah, so we're doing that later. Got some good prizes. Okay. We'll you talk about the prizes after. Yeah, yeah. Um, educating Ricky. Yeah, we've got, got that. that. We've got the woman who's got a ghost in her house. Yep. It's a shame she's not here live, because I feel like I want to ask a few questions, Rick. I don't know about you. Don't uh, worry, I've covered it all. You've covered it all, God. Yeah. So. Yeah, play a record. Rick, um, I know probably you, like me, are just too busy, really, to keep abreast of new music, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, we're busy people, we've got, you know, important showbiz pies to go to and stuff. That's why I have friends of mine who send me compilations and stuff. That's one of my, yeah. uh, quarterly compilations from my friend Harry, and that's All Downhill From Here by Jim O'Rourke. I've got a new track coming up later, actually, that I, I think you might like. So, uh, okay, you know, okay. we're, we're, um, we're inflaming each other's desire for new <laughs> songs as well as going back to the back catalogue of some classics. Sure, sure. Alright? <laughs> I love adverts better though. <laughs> I do. I love adverts. It's weird. <laughs>
Missy Elliot on XFM 104.9, or Gervais with me, Steve and Carl. Mm. Carl, why have you got a headache? You got a headache? Just a bit stressful because the moves moves on this uh, this week. Are you having headaches? Oh, by the way, uh, the XFM listeners came round to me house and bought the uh, food on the table. Did they? Well, they're happy with it. Quite normal. They were well happy. Yeah. Couldn't believe the luck with it. What do you mean quite normal? What do you mean quite normal? Well, it's always a bit scared, isn't it, getting, getting people round. I imagine they were scared. <laughs> well. <laughs> and were they excited to see you? Could they, I mean, they were, you know, could you tell that they were pretty pleased to see you? No, I don't think so, I mean. You know, you're but, Carl Yeah, but I, uh, the, the fellas sort of, I mean, they brought the whole family round, which was a bit odd. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not often they get the chance to, to visit a living freak. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, no, uh, they, were not, they were nice. They and were you're nice. moving now, yeah. He said he'd phone me up today. You know, it was absolutely tipping it down. <laughs> he had to cycle in. Because <laughs> he said, because of the move, he doesn't want to leave his bike around there. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> He said, and uh, Suzanne, oh, I can't say this in case he's listening, can I? He won't know. Will uh, he? He, said, he said, Suzanne's hired the oldest removal man in London. You should hear him. <laughs> and the thing is, right, we booked him, we booked him because everyone else happened to be booked out, but this fella's free, right? So he called up this morning, and I've never spoke to him, but he was on the phone. He sounded about 90. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Carl thinks that he's gonna have to do all the work. And the, and the thing is, right, <laughs> We, well, he seems to be cheap. He wanted some Werther Originals. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. listen, <laughs> he seems to be cheap because it's fifty pound an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but how long is it going to take him? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so genius. When's the move on then? When's the oh, right, he's coming right, He came round today to bring some empty boxes, and he was struggling with them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, oh, it, it actually God. happens on Wednesday. Oh God. Anyway, oh. so. Um, Rick, well, I noticed that you were laughing and almost had a heart attack. <laughs> doesn't bode well for the boxing match, I've got a car for the moment, haven't I? I've had my limbs it. Anyway, what are we doing now, Carl? Well, oh. um, I teased you with it before. Mm. Um... <coughs> you gonna get it out again? I, uh... <laughs> I'm always, like, trying to get you, you know, thinking, opening, opening your mind right. up a bit to, to ghosts and stuff. Yes. So, um, this woman who I know, she, uh, she said she'd come in and I could interview her to try and sort of, you know, get the belief out there. Okay. Um, so Yeah, because there's not I'd... enough belief in the occult and rubbish out yeah. there. So, so does she, she think she has a ghost? <coughs> she has, yeah, she's, she's, got a, she's had a few. She has, no, it's fact. <laughs> yeah, no, sure. yeah, she has. So, I thought maybe it's a new feature we could try for a couple of weeks, see how it goes down. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know Parkinson? Uh-huh. What about Pilkington? <laughs> Welcome to, uh, Pilkington. Thank uh, you. My guest today is Taryn, she's a plugger. Uh, you're still a plugger, right? No, I do co-management. Right, now. she does co-management, but she was a plugger, she looks after therapy, Raging Speed on, Slash, all the big names, yeah? Um, but we're not here to talk about music today, we do a lot of that on XFM. Today we're talking ghosts. Now, Ricky and Steve, who I do the show with, they, uh, they're not having any of it. So, I said, well, I know someone who, uh, you know, gets on with ghosts, there's a lot of them. Um, so I thought I'd get you in today, have a little chat for a couple of minutes, uh, just to sum up the story so they get an idea of what happened. Um, you had a horse, yeah? You had it in some stables. Yes. He hasn't let her speak yet. Uh, you went to, like, look after it and that, play yeah. around with it, took it for a ride and that. Riding. Yeah. Um, two of your mates were in the stable where your horse is. Not my stable, in the opposite but stable. In the opposite stable. And I heard them giggling and Been messing the about and that, yeah. You heard them having a laugh. So you thought, right, what are they up to? So you go in and they're messing about with a Ouija board. Yeah. Right. So, this is where you come in. Did you get involved with the Ouija board? Unfortunately, I did. Right. And what happened then, then? I was like, oh, you don't believe in this, oh, let me have a go. Right. And, uh, ask a few questions, put our hands on, and it actually started moving. So a lot of the stuff you asked it, is that, did the things happen that yes, you asked? Yes, they did. Right? So that's scary for a start, right? We haven't even got to the ghost beat yet. So you mess about trap with that. Trap soul, yeah? I like to call right, it. Right, trap soul. So you're messing about on the Ouija board, you say, right, I've had enough of this now. Yeah. I've got all the answers I need. Yeah. 
You go home. I didn't like them. <laughs> you go in the house and it's a bit nippy. The house, the flat is absolutely fine. It's when I went into the bedroom. You've got to remember, it's a very, very warm, hot evening. Right. And walk into the bedroom and no, note it is cold, colder than usual. But I'm actually quite glad because it's so hot. Right, okay. Completely ignored the fact that the windows were all shut but the curtains were blowing. Didn't sleep well at all. Right. Next evening, same again. Freezing. Yeah, Wind. very, very noticeably cold. Curtains uh, blowing. Yeah, I'm fast asleep, get woken up, the wardrobe's opening. So at this point, this is where we clear up, you're not, you're not on crack, you're not- Oh, no, never touched drugs in my entire life. You're not a drinker. Nope. Um, I will have the old glass of red wine. Yeah. Right, that, that's that's all right. They recommend that anyway. They say it's good for your heart. What started happening was as the week progressed, I also felt the bed covers at one point at night fold over, double bed, the bed covers fold over, and it was like someone was getting in the bed next to me. But you've got to remember when you're in a deep sleep, yeah. you're not quite thinking, and you're thinking, I'm losing it. <laughs> I was getting more and more tired, more and more a little stressed, I'm really thinking I was having a breakdown. The final straw was when the clothes on the end of my bed that I just throw hit me. How come you were going back home at night? Because I was sceptical. In fact, six months ago I said, I, I don't want to go there, people will think I'm mad. But you know what? I don't care. Yeah. I know there's more out there. Oh. Brilliant. Well, cheers for that, and uh, thanks for being a guest on uh, on Pilkington. Now, everyone knows over the past sort of like few years, my big pet project hasn't been my own career. It's been get Carl famous. Yeah. I want people to recognise him in the street, come up to him and say, you bald-headed mank twat. I well, want... let me tell you now, Rick, I've been out and about and a lot of people have come up to me and said, it has Carl Pilkington got a head like a fucking orange. Well, I've and I'm been... about to instantly confirm the answer to be yes. But, he's had a call. He had a call recently from a film company asking him if he's got any ideas for movies. Now, how desperate in what dire straits must the British film industry be that they're going, we need Carl Pilkerton. We have hit rock bottom. And he went along for an interview. So what, and you went in and you... I went, I went along and, um, had a meeting. And, uh, they just said, right, you know, got any ideas? And, uh, sort of said, you know, what, what are you thinking? What sort of thing are you after? Are you after action? <laughs> Thriller? Whatever. Because you can provide any of it. I love that that he's playing it cool, yeah, like you've yeah. come to the right person. <laughs> yeah, 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 My yeah. time's precious, what do you need? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Carl Pilk, the movie doctor, what do you need, <laughs> Papa? So, thought of this idea sort of on the spot. Good. That always how I am. Um, no, but sometimes that's how good ideas come up, don't yeah. they? Just, just so randomly. a lot of yours have come up, yeah. No, but when, if you just randomly. talk, I find that your mouth comes out with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Right, there's another right, quote. Right. There is another quote. That <laughs> if you talk, that, your mouth comes out with that, that. That, that to me is, stands along with what were those things in Gremlins called? No, but what uh, I mean, you, if you sit there and try and use your brain to do it. Right. It doesn't work the same. Just, just keep talking. Just keep your, keep your mouth talking. And eventually it will come out with something pretty good. That is exactly what Plato said. Well, uh, so anyway. Aristotle, he said, sit down, I've got an idea for you. Uh, Aristotle said, Plato, I'd want you to go, right, just keep talking and eventually your brain will come out with stuff. <laughs> so what I thought, I just started off by saying like actors' names and that who I thought should be in it, because then that's giving more, it's building. Right, okay, so who's saying? Who's saying? Who's saying? So I said, right, I'm seeing, uh, Clive Warren. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Clive Warren? The one who was in Closer. Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Right, alright. Did they look at you like you're a fucking Clive. idiot? <laughs> so they all started trying to figure out, who's this Clive Warren we've not heard about? Wait, uh, he, he must be amazing. Yeah, he's on Clive Warren. Get me Clive Warren <laughs> on the phone. Who's Get Clive me Clive Warren. And I said, uh, Rebecca De Mornay. Right? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, where did that go? She from? hasn't been in a film uh, for 15 years, has she? Clive Warren and Rebecca De Mornay. <laughs> they thought he was a genius. They've never thought of putting Clive Warren with Rebecca De Mornay. <laughs> but hang on a minute, you could have. <laughs> You can have any <laughs> film star, this is your fantasy <laughs> casting, and yeah. you choose a bloke that doesn't exist, and a woman who hasn't been on TV or in a film for ten years. Oh god! Why didn't oh. you choose, you know, a... Uh, someone uh, who existed. Jane or someone who's a oh. big star. Oh god! Clive <laughs> Warren! Oh god! Oh So god. anyway, starts off, 
and the people, you know, you are seeing into their lives from yeah. like the morning. Yeah. So it's like a nice sunny day. Yeah. Radio's on. You know, they're going about the day, they're having the breakfast, they're saying, Oh, what we're we doing tonight and you're thinking, Oh, they've got a nice life. Mm. She she's like, Love you and all that, yeah. He walks out the house, gets hit by a bus. Oh. So Clive Warren's they're dead. <laughs> I don't know if Clive Warren would take that part. Because he ain't got much to do, has he? No, it? I don't. If I, if, I, if I know Clive Warren... And I think you do. I think I do. Carry on, so he, he's hit by a bus, so he's so dead. So he's hit by a bus and that. The titles come up. Oh, It's got yes. you, right? She's Starring devastated. She's, Clive she's Warren. fed up. She's devastated and that. Um, doctor says... Clive's dead. Who's playing the Doctor? Jack Nicholson Hegg's. Um, sort of, uh, what's that fella who was in Independence Day? Um, Will Smith. No, the 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 old the old black fella. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, yeah. Get him in. He's Morgan Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says, "Your husband's dead." She's like, "Oh God." What happens then is he says, "But listen, what we can do now, we can take the brain out." Right. Right. And 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 a fact that I read that day. Before the meeting, this isn't in the film now, this is me. Right, but right. lucky, yeah, okay. luckily. I read a thing about how the brain can, it can run on half of it. You've actually got a full brain, it's only on half. So, this is, this was in my mind still. Well, half your mind, yeah. So, I said, what happens is, Morgan Freeman says, been working on this, you can run, you can run your life on half a brain. Right. She's sort of a bit like, what are you telling me this for now? My husband's just died like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but if we're not gonna do this, we've got to act quick. She's like, do what? He says, whilst his brain's not fully dead, because it, it stays awake for a bit when you oh, think Oh, he's not dead then, fine. No, no, but Wait. yeah, he is, but they found out that right. it stays awake a little bit. No, 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 no. So, no, he's gone. No, no, You're no, hit no. by a bus. Yeah, he's, no, he's dead. dead. If the brain's dead, you are dead. Clive Warren's dead. And if, if, uh, if the brain's not dead, you're not dead. No, but it's like people in a coma. They're dead, aren't they? But no, the no, no, dead. no, no, they're in a coma. No, they're, they're in a coma. No, they come out of coma, he's All right, then he's in a coma. He's been hit by the bus, but the chances are he's not going to come out of that coma, but his brain is still awake. So, change that. That's easily done. Uh, hold on though. I, I like this fact that he's in a coma, so they're going, look, he's definitely gonna die in this coma. Take the brain out now. Pop the brain out. But why is that such a weird thing when that's what they do now? That's what they do now. What is? That's what they do. What? They do that. What? 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 what, what, what a brain transplant? No, but when, like, how, how I've signed that donor card, like, yeah. if anything happens to me... No, 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 there's the no lot. such thing as a brain donor. Oh, we've explained to you before. Yeah, but they're working on it. They've said something about Einstein. They, they, they messed about with his brain for ages, trying to work out if it was full of stuff. That's what they're doing. They're working on that. There's loads of things that doctors are doing that we don't know about. I've seen some weird stuff on the internet. Yeah, I know you have. Yeah. I saw a programme on Channel 5 where a monkey brain was still alive and it was stuck on a stick. <laughs> And they, they you were watching it. the magic roundabout. They poked it and it reacted. <laughs> right. So it's still alive. It's being kept alive. And it's only a matter of time. What's what's the brain linked up to? The as long as you can link it up to the eyes and somehow so it can tell the arms and legs what to do, you're laughing. I love that. As, imagine a, a team full of doctors going, well, we're going to try and do it out of Carl. Um, as long as you can link this up to the eyes and tell the arms and legs what to do, we're laughing. <laughs> Cheers, Carl. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> then what happens is they say do you want half of his brain in your head half she's his brain she in said her head. she says definitely not i'm having you struck off she starts screaming she calls the police he gets arrested yeah, but you'd have said that years ago when people can have like someone else's arm put on their body and stuff <laughs> yeah but he's only in a coma yeah no but he's not going to come out of that co coma right. so so it's like this or nothing he's right. like look you know what what we're going to do here we can either turn the switch off yeah. or we can put his head in your head but why would but, you so, why so what he does so what they do then they're going to take half his brain half of his brain take it out it, half of hers pop it in place why would she do that because she loves him but hold on well no no wait 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 what would she then be because this is what i'm trying to tell okay, you okay okay sorry what happens is he, he explains all this so i mean this would probably cover about 20 minutes in the film but i'm just rushing right, it, i just rushing switched off now. but yeah no you wasn't this this bit would have you mm. so what well what, i'd have actually left when i i wouldn't even gone in to see a film starring uh, clive warren and rebecca de mornay <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it was 1985. <laughs> so, so the thing is She's the same as you. She says the same thing. She goes, why would I do that, Doctor? Mm. And uh, he goes, well, what will happen is, he's gone, but you'll you'll have his thoughts. So in the morning when you say, oh, I don't know what to have, well, they have cornflakes. 
is bit of the brain will sort of say- Have a wheat bit. Have shredded wheat or yeah. whatever. And she's like, oh yeah, good idea. Sorry, sorry, so the point of this film is that the dead man can remind her what breakfast cereal she likes. Yeah. So the thought- What do you mean yes? So that's it, is it? No, 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 that's not the only wait, thing. Wait, oh wait a minute, this is only act that's, one. That's just the first bit, everything's going well, she so, has it done. So what is, what, who is she? Is she herself? She's Rebecca Nimone. Yeah. But, but now with and again, with, with, with him chipping in with a bit of voiceover. So the idea is it's all going well at the beginning and she's- So she can't decide what's going to wear. So she's got, he, he so she's had is. half of her brain taken out and put in a bin, yeah. okay? And, and Clive Warren's, uh, half has been put in there. So now she's walking round. Okay. So yeah. she's like a schizophrenic. No, like I say, the brain is alive, so it's all going well when she leaves hospital. Yeah. And she gets a first taste of it, and it's a bit weird to get hold of, because she's, she's sort of, uh, I think when she signs herself out, he's sort of fighting, right, in his name and stuff, so there's a few sort of technical things that, yeah. that she has to get used to. And does Clive's brain what know does he that think? he's now inside her brain? Um. Does that matter? Well, I would say it matters, because... Yes. Otherwise, yes, he, it does matter, Carl. What's 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 he thinking? Can, I mean, what's what the point of this? Why has she gone along with this? Because she really loves him. But what? But what's in it for him? What does she think? Well, say if I died, yeah. And Suzanne said, "Go on, I'll have half of Carl's." Right? She would wake up in the morning to a thought of me sort of going, "Oh, you never guess what I just thought about or whatever." I'd still be there. The rest of your body is sort of waste, isn't it? But Carl, like the rest it. of your body's sort of waste. No, it is, kind of. If when, when someone dies, it's yeah. not that person anymore, is it? You can't have a chat with them. So, if you could have someone's brain in your head when they're dead, you'd have it, wouldn't you? What are you talking about? Why would I have someone's brain in my head when they're dead? Well, what I've else? got a perfectly good brain. So you're telling me you wouldn't have it done then? <laughs> uh, uh, of course I fucking wouldn't. I, I could also categorically state I wouldn't know. Yeah, but you're saying that now, but once you're in that position that someone who, you know, you love and that dies, if the doctor said, do you want it? No! Uh, and I go, no! It's madness! I don't think you It's love. madness! Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Hello there. Carl Pilkington. Alright. <laughs> don't be nervous. Uh, we, we might see a difference in Carl. He's a little bit shy. Um, there's someone here from the BBC filming this, part of that celebrity boxing thing, the fight, I think it's called, and they're, they want to get a little clip of this, so we're gonna let them film for a minute and then they're gonna go away. Is that alright, Carl? Yeah. He doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to be on camera, do you? Do you? I think it ruins radio, doesn't it? Huh? Well, not for the people listening, it doesn't. Yeah, but it does because people are like, oh. Uh, he sounds like a bit of a looker. What you do? Yeah. <laughs> and then they'll see it on the telly, and they'll go, God, yeah, he, he, you know, his head is round. <laughs> <laughs> it is round, though, isn't it? So, <laughs> guess what? I got a call yesterday, um, you'll love this, Steve, mm. from MTV, and, uh, they're wondering if, um, they could screen test Carl. That's outrageous. I'm loving it, and I was going, yeah, and I come, I said, yeah, yeah, he's trying, I come down with him, and I was, I was saying, what about this and that, and they were loving it, I called him, and I went, oh no. I went, why not? He went, well, I'm looking at my reflection now in the mirror. He said, I, thought I shouldn't be on the telly. What would you wear for your screen test, Carl? What kind of look would you try and cultivate? Because you've got to bear in mind that the audience out there, they don't know what you look like, so would you be a snappy dresser like, say, Jonathan Ross, or would you go for your kind of street can't, cash can't, look? Can't right? wear a suit. Don't, you can't wear a suit? Don't hold it well. Uh -huh. So, I'm thinking, uh, I don't know, I'll prob probably wear my woolly hat, because that takes some years off me. <laughs> <laughs> it does, he looks about ten with a woolly hat on. Yeah. Okay. And, um, is it quite a cool woolly hat, or has it got a bubble? It's kind of cold, I'd say it's in, in colour. It, it, yeah, okay. Um, and I'll probably wear me, uh, me anorak. Right. Oh, oh, he's going for the, he's going, he's going, going for the anorak. He's right? going for quite a grand look. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, no one dressed else for a jungle sale. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but yeah. I'm not, I'm not that happy about it all, to be honest. You, are you going to do it? You're not going to do it? Well, I'm sort of stuck in the middle, because throughout my life so far, <laughs> I've always just, I've never planned for anything, right? right? It's just always happened. Yeah, yeah. The time, you know what I mean, being in plays at school, never planned it, but when I did it, I went down a storm. It was a thing. Yeah, we all remember that. So... We, I, as I remember, you did Little Donkey. Did Little Donkey, yeah. And um, then later, someone was filming at the back. Was it your dad's mate? My dad's mate, well, yeah, yeah. and on the camcorder, he listened to it back, watched him playing it, his dad says, just off camera, what does he say? I don't want to say it because I'm in charge of the show and I think it'd be irresponsible. He looks like a right twat. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so I, he gets I, I, over, he's I, watching that and then here's his dad just off camera go, he looks like a right twat. Yeah, <laughs> alright, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> what are you worried about? Your no, dad's I'm saying that on the Can word. I just interject? Because I'm really worried about this idea of Carl being on MTV. Because the problem is that, you know, let's be honest, Rick, I mean, we're, we're getting by the skin of our teeth, aren't we, really? It's yeah. only Carl that's keeping this afloat. Yeah. And if he gets on MTV and the world sort of gets a sense of him and they understand him and, and he, he won't be ours anymore. We won't be able to control him. It'll be out there. It'll be in the public well, that's, that's the thing. No, that's the thing. It, it, that's the terrible thing, though, isn't it? It's like, Carl is my pet, but mm. I realise I've got to release him into, into the, the world. world. And, you know, because I love him, I know he's got to go free. <laughs> sure. But I yeah. wanna, I it's wanna. Like Kez. <laughs> yeah, Maybe someone like... beat him to death and we don't have to worry. <laughs> I'll have uh, you on, though. I'll have you on as a guest. Uh, yeah, which, gets, which gets me on to something we've got coming up today. Oh, right. yeah, he's got a new idea. Yeah. Right. Um, do you know, like, I've talked about ghosts and we had that good discussion the other week walking to the yeah. Circus Station, yeah, yeah, and I was telling you about ghosts and you were saying, Carl, don't be an idiot and all that. I uh, spoke to a woman in the week, done mm. a little interview with <laughs> You've done a little interview? Done Brilliant. a little interview, two minutes or so. With okay. uh, with a woman who's who's got ghosts in her house, <coughs> so uh, I look forward to uh, hearing that later. That sounds brilliant. Coming up later. Well, I'm going to play a classic tune now. I've I've just gone straight for it. I've gone for the jugular. This is Ziggy Stardust by David Bowie. Ziggy Stardust by David Bowie. Next FM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkerton. Carl was also nervous. Got a bit of shock last week, didn't you? Just a little bit. His uh, his dad tuned in to the show. Yeah. Um, and Carl's never told him that he actually speaks on the show. He just said, I just pressed the buttons, right? He's kept him from it. It used to be radio before and you never told him, did you? Mm. It's because of the little donkey incident. Yeah. When he went along to it. Was that the, the twat incident? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's never told him since, but, but they've promised not to listen, haven't they? Well, my dad uh, my mum said to me, don't worry, don't be put off this week, because, um, <laughs> you know, I've, no. I've, I've told him he can't listen, but I hear my dad in the background kind of going, oh, Lex. <laughs> so, he might be listening. <laughs> so that's extra pressure. Yeah. Plus a camera crew in. <laughs> I know. You but don't you like it, do you? Now, this is good training for MTV, because then he can watch you on TV. I mean, what's he going to make of that? Oh. Yeah. Does he know you're bald? Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't keep your hat on when you're with him and say, oh no, I just press the buttons. No, it's no. just, it's just, you know, it's like when when I was in any plays, I didn't tell him. No. Um, any sort of parents' evening, I never gave him the note. Oh. Really? Yeah. So then what did the teachers think? You were just an orphan? No, just on an off chance, um, my mate's dad spoke to me dad once, I think, and sort of said, oh, you got to school to see how, you know, your kid's doing. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> So there's a parents' evening, so he went <laughs> said to, one kid. He went to one, and that's when Mrs. Matthew said I'd never be a high flyer. <laughs> <laughs> How wrong was she? Yeah. Well, I think we should call Mrs. Matthews and make her eat her words. <laughs> well, <laughs> ah, she would turn on to MTV when uh, I don't know that, like their their slamming session, yeah. and they're, they're going, that's young Pilkington. <laughs> He's bald, but it's definitely him. <laughs> I <laughs> recognise that Willie Hack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, did you see Celebrity Fit Club yesterday? I missed it. I didn't watch any TV this week. The only what TV I watched was, um, Are You Good In Bed? I already knew the answer. I was it? To... You had to have to take points? Yeah, yeah. Right. It was no! <laughs> <laughs> I was off the scale. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking off the scales, Rick Waller. Really? Is yeah. he off? What's well, happened? what he did is he lost, he lost weight and they couldn't believe it and he had a big argument with Harvey and they said go, never come back to it, right? And then he got to Wayne and he'd lost sort of like ten pounds or something. Mm. And, uh, they were really, they said you've been starving yourself, haven't you? And he admitted it. And, um, <laughs> I thought he just wasn't wearing his underpants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but he's, he was whinging all the time. He was watching it, he was doing a press, he was going, I've hurt my arm. Then he was going, I feel sick. Then he was going, um, and he was just lying all the time about whether he was doing the routine and what about what he was eating and stuff. And I thought, that's me with yeah, this celebrity like body. It is, it because like it. it's sort of like, and they go, how's it going? Do you have another drink this week? I mean, I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't had a beer this week. No. <laughs> Did you do the exercise? Day and I go, yep, yeah, yeah, I've done all that, done all that, done all that. Yeah. And I try and get out of the sparring because it hurts because there's a man hitting me in the face for fun. Right. Um, because you know that's what boxing is. So yeah, that is that? being I hit, yeah. And I like you... all the, I like all the bits except the being hit. I don't even mind hitting someone. Right, I'm so willing, I'd be willing to hit someone. Uh -huh. It's the getting hit that I don't like. Because I know you're a big fan of, um, like wearing the clothes, the sort of sporty gear. I'm I know looking you, good, you, love, you, you look good and you've, good. you've obviously just switched back there, man. They've, they've, no, 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 they gave me free, this. Free charge. That, this was free so I know training. That's a perk you love. So, uh, and I know yeah. you like, um, kind of the, uh, the sort of various sort of nutritional drinks you've got to drink. I know you're a big fan of those. I love the protein shake because mm. it tastes like chocolate. Mm. You know what? I've put on a couple of pounds since <laughs> I've been doing this training. I think it is the extra meal and, So you're adding the protein but not, 
me out enough to, to take it off again. Yeah, but I, I think I've, um, I have actually changed a bit. I've got a, a, an inch on my chest, but an inch off my waist. So uh, even though I've put on weight, uh, there must be a little bit of muscle happening uh -huh, uh -huh. somewhere. So I just, uh, just to, to, to recap there slightly, you're, you're, you're enjoying all the trappings of boxing. Yeah. But not the boxing. Not the getting hit in mm -hmm. the nose. Right. That's the one. And you are aware that that's what will, what, what will be happening during the, the actual no, fight? because that's... I've got a cunning plan. Okay. I'm gonna duck and dive. Just, yeah. Okay. I'm bob and weave. Dance. Uh -huh. I'm gonna dance. Well, I read in the paper, yes, I don't know how much truth there is, that, uh, Grant Bovey has recruited celebrity hypnotist Paul McKenna <laughs> to help him win. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't true. know if that's of any choice. I know you've got, I mean, you've got, um, you've got uh, Spit the Dog. <laughs> you've got, got a couple the... of ventriloquists <laughs> yeah. and an impressionist on your side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got Paul Foy from Desmond. Yeah, exactly. Just yeah. getting me chair in your corner. Yeah. Mentally. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. It's all a bit of fun. What do you reckon, Carl? Do, do you think he's, uh, well, what's, what's McKenna going to be doing? Is, like, Grant Bovey going to be turning to a chicken and... No, yeah, he's, gonna, he's gonna do an Elvis impression. Yeah. And take <laughs> if I say the right words. No, I think it's probably he's probably gonna just help yeah, him focus and yeah, and, and, uh, yeah I, I think there's there's lots of sports psychologists out there at the moment getting people so I'm sure it's uh I'm sure it's valid if it's true, I'm sure it's uh oh. fine. But um I've been I've been I've been getting tuned mentally learning how to hit. Yeah. Uh, that was my method. Eating and hitting. I think is. And do you work out to any of the music? I mean, do you put on the Rocky soundtrack? Because I know you've got um, no, a CD with all with music from the all five films, haven't you? <laughs> no, we don't. It's all. It's. Um, I think they have the radio on down there, but you don't hear it. It's uh -huh. all you hear is people shouting, saying things like, "That's not like a fighter," and me going, "I'm not a fighter. Yeah, I'm a comedian." Yeah. And is it quite intimidating down there? I mean, do they? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're nice people, but I'm, is it I'm like... getting used to it now. But it's it is it's, it is a different world, and I was quite scared, and I I didn't. When like... you say I mean, is it like is it like they're gangsters? I mean, is it kind of? No, I don't no, mean, I just mean, no, has no. it got that feel? You know when you see it in films, they walk into those places and, you know, they're kind of, they're hard nuts and there's that feel like... Well, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're all, you know, they're all ex-boxers and stuff, so yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but no, they're not, they're not no, 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 that's not, that's not, I mean, I... I suppose it's like they're real men. <laughs> well, yeah, and, um, they, they, they don't understand, really, that I'm, I don't like getting hit on the nose, and they say, well, no one gets hit on the nose. And it took me a long time to get over that, just, just taking a couple of punches. Yeah. I, I wanted to rule it out, yeah. and, uh, um, but, you know, it, it's okay now, and, and of course they're, I know they're mollycoddling me. They're not. Yeah. They're using about twenty-five percent power, yeah. and I'm still. And you I'm wear the headgear? Do you? Oh yeah, 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 and the gum shield. Yeah, I wanted to wear a crash helmet, <laughs> right, but they yeah. said no. And carry a baseball bat, and I said yeah. that's that's technically <laughs> illegal. <laughs> but um, I'm looking for I'm a changed man, Carl. What we got coming up? Got a bit of a uh, death in Vegas with vocals from Liam Gallagher. Final question for you, Rick. Do you what? think you'll carry on boxing after this is finished? Competitively? No, no, no. Just the training and stuff. Yeah, and I, I do, do the training. So? Yeah, no, I love the, I love the training. I love learning the, the skills, and I, I, I do enjoy the training. I don't I, I don't relish getting punched around. And, I, and I'm not worried about the fight at all. I'm really looking forward to the the fight because um, Grant's a novice like me. It's just when you get in with an ex pro, who you know could destroy you. <laughs> yeah, any, yeah, yeah. So you're scared of it. And, and, and you know they never lose their rag, and they're really cool, and they're really nice, and they've never act, they've never even hit me by mistake. But even just tapping you like that in the yeah. face hurts. I just I was walking down Finchley Road and a couple of six formers said, "Oh, you lanky goggle like freak." And I just wondered if maybe you could pop round and have a word with them. <laughs> I will. I will. I'll I'll some of your friends. Uh, yeah, uh, an enemy of yours is an enemy <laughs> of mine. <laughs> But I said to you the other week about twins and that, how it's, I, I wouldn't like to have a twin. It's, it's alright when you're a kid, but yes. unless you're a Siamese twin, even they don't even look alike, do they? They're just stuck together. You don't go, oh, don't they look like each other? They have different haircuts. They don't, they don't carry that thing on, do they, that normal twins do? Like normal <laughs> twins, the mums say, have the same haircut, wear the same shirt. Siamese twins never look the same. They've just got their arse stuck together. <laughs> Again, it's a dialogue in his own head. It's unbelievable. Okay, Carl. This is a a, a logical conundrum. Um, to a certain extent, there's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right. The pressure is when I've told you the answer to then understand it because I've still when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them. They still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so, there's two doors, Carl. Yeah. One leads to heaven, right. one leads to hell. Yeah. Okay, they're identical, you can't tell them apart, okay? 50-50. Right. Obviously you want to go to heaven, I assume. Right, yeah. there's two guards, identical guards, guarding each door, okay? Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which which is which, and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? 
I've only got one. Yeah. And what, one to, to both? No. One to either of them. You don't know which one's which, though. So what question do you ask? Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? Because it's because not the, the rules. rules are you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's this a leap of imagination here. And I've 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 definitely got to answer. I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door <laughs> to see if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> <laughs> They're identical. You stand a few yards away. You cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which. What question do you ask? I can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no <laughs> keyhole near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. So, they stood there, yeah. they both look the same, they're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's not really smiling, really. He's trying to make me make a mistake, isn't he? Well, he's just gonna lie when you ask him a question, if you ask him. So what's the point in asking a question? Do I know one of them's gonna lie? Yeah. But would they be neighbours like this? Would they be that <laughs> close? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not sure if these two guys get on. Well, I'll tell you the answer. No, 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 I want to see if he can get it. He's almost there. Uh, no, he's not almost there. What am I thinking? So, hang on, right, so you go up and you yeah. go, um... You right, go, hang on, well, look, let's, let's imagine that, <laughs> let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys, okay? Right? But we have to, um, uh, uh, we, well, me and, me and Steve will decide which doors we're guarding, okay? Right. Uh, I'm... Uh, look away, Carl. Okay, right, so we've decided, okay, one of us is guarding hell and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question are you gonna ask and who are you gonna ask it to? Right, um, I'll just say to you, Steve, I'll go, uh, uh, got some, uh, got some posts for God here. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a question. That's a statement. Right, you've got some posts for God here. Well, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe All the right. question's coming. I got- you got some posts for God here, yeah? Uh, And it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a question. Still not a question. No, let so him finish me. Is, is God in because I need him to sign for this post? Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Go on. He, he's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want to, do you want to get him? Just, uh. Well, no, you've only got one question. So you are, you're asking Steve, is God in? What's the answer? Yes. Ask me. Yes. Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. Um, <laughs> what am I going to do with this? Well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. Uh, let me tell you the answer. I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil. Steve's God, okay? So, you asked me what, what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding, and I'm going to lie. I know he'd say heaven because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say, he'd say hell. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what Dory was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you, are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know, no, that doesn't work. Because you asked me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling, though, isn't it? This is what life's- <laughs> <laughs> Well, as opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, because there's a lot of questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what? I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so- They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> <laughs> Spoke to Ricky and his friend Glenn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall, was that right? We just got this flat, and, uh, you know, it's not a big flat, so I think the people who had it before us, he, he was a gay fella, right? Which was a bit like, oh, what's he been doing with that mirror and that? But <laughs> that, that was... <laughs> what? No, just, you so, know. Just... What? What? Well, what has he been doing with the mirror? Well, what just been, why, 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 no, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental and that, aren't they? And I don't know. What do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't know anything about it, but go on. No, what do you want? What? No, I don't. Experimental what do in what way? What do you mean experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff. What? what? Of whatever they do. Chemistry. What? They have a chemistry set out. They were doing experiments. What? No, just doing what? Singing I am what I am and just checking out their dance moves. I'm not having a go at anyone, but what? I'm just saying, like, they're doing what they're doing. Uh, 
Which Carl, you're is not a homophobic, homophobic, are you? Not, no, I'm not. I'm not, well, I'm not. This is what. Why? Well, but, why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in the front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. Why I mean, are you thinking about what he's doing? Why are you fantasising what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your? I'm not. I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what. Why it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there, right? But forget the the history. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was I try. I was going to take it down, and I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous. This, mm. You know, it could crack and because it's the size it. of the whole wall, isn't it? It, it, it took up a whole wall. Right. right. So like when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But he's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought I can't set that down. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And it looks all right. You you wouldn't know what have you? But it means that I can't put any pictures up. That's that's all. That's all I'm saying. Because I've put a nail in. And it. what don't you understand about art? What about art don't you understand? The concept, specifics. No, so, I, I, that's that's like when we when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas and there was that picture of fruit for seven hundred quid. <laughs> like, we'll just get fruit. You know what I mean, you can get some real fruit for three quid. Yeah, I understand that, but don't invent cameras then. One or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's what annoys me. <laughs> Someone invents something, and then they go, "We've got to invent something else." Like the abstract thing. Why is someone gone? Oh, I can't have paintings anymore because. What is it, a Dali, going <laughs> melting clocks and stuff? No. I mean, the first one was all right when he did the first clock, but then all the time he's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. Mm. I'll do a sheep, put, put one of them on it. Put, Have you seen his lobster telephone? That annoys me. Why? Because he, I think what annoyed me more with that is when he heard about how it happened, um, he had some artist mate round, mm. right? And um, I don't know what happened. Uh, they, oh, were okay. they were eating. That's a hell of an anecdote. No, no, but they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters? And, uh, yeah, they, they were eating lobster. Oh, right. And, uh, That's handy. I don't know, the other artist, whoever it was, sort Have of a phone? started saying, oh, you and your clocks and all that, right? Brilliant. And, um, they this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing. Yeah. And he chucked some of the lobster. Bollocks. And it landed <laughs> on the phone. bounced off his mate's head, went on the phone, and they both looked at each other like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And they, they, they brought out that phone as a bit of art. <laughs> Things like that annoy me. Didn't because happen. it was then just messing about. That didn't happen. Just telling you what I know. I saw his, his work. Each to their own, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. Art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. We well, know. Suzanne wife likes some art. Just like uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing. Otherwise, she's got to talk to me <laughs> about stuff. There's no art. There's no point. Just wallpaper. I'm just saying we've got three three windows we can look out of. Right. Right. Stop looking at the walls. Look out the window. <laughs> My man phoned and said that my Auntie Nora, ah, uh, classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather would be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago she was asking my dad how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of What does she want to do? Start a football team? <laughs> what does she want to back garden astroturfed? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. Yeah, Carl, more people from your uh, past. Debbie Carr? Yeah, she was, uh, she was another nice one. <laughs> one <laughs> what does that mean? Is that a euphemism? No, she was one of them that you'd sort of go, she's nice, but you, she'd never be your girlfriend. Do you know what I mean? She was, Not really. Even though she was in the same year, she seemed a lot older. Right. And it like, wasn't a teacher, was it? There was, there was three of them who all hung together, and they seemed to hang around like the older kids, the ones who looked like men. Do you know what I mean? The other yeah. What did you look like then? Well, it's just that I, I had youthful sort of looks. Oh. Whereas, like, the older ones had, like, beards and stuff. It's <laughs> <laughs> the gang of boys in the fifth one with beards. <laughs> Were they smoking pipes? <laughs> Go, come over here, me filly. <laughs> oh, you, you, oh, you Debbie Carr, come over here, you little beauty. No, but she was like... I love that. I was like... hanging around with beards. There's the big boys. Oh, fishing. <laughs> That's lovely beards. What do you I just see a whole row of George Bernard Shaw's. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do in history, boy? <laughs> yeah. They got an E. You're an idiot. Oh. They were like, um, you know, I'd be there sort of plain punching people in the arm. 
Oh, like, yeah. oh, that's sure. a great game. Oh, I love that punch people in the arm. Is that part of the Olympics now? <laughs> it's, 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 I think it was exhibition this year. Right. But it's it's going to uh, be a pro It's going to be the Winter Olympics because you've got to do it in uh, just a cap sleeve shirt sure. in winter. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're uh, playing that. She, uh... <laughs> But, whilst but I she didn't appreciate that. that, she used to go, ow! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always think, whilst I was doing that, they were like the Charlie's Angels and they'd be sorting out a mission somewhere. Because they were really like, it was something about them that yeah. you thought, you know, well, yeah, they're special. They were they private detectives. What if it were for a man they never see? <laughs> okay, well, l l here's a name I'm interested in because, uh, well, let me just tell you the name first. Uh, Adam Clifton. Hmm. Oh. Go on, what are your thoughts on Clifton? Uh, he was one of them kids, he was alright, but... He had that thing when, um, if you didn't have enough milk. <laughs> he had, like, uh, wrinkly hands and, <laughs> and white, white, white bits in his nails. Oh! Because yeah. he didn't have enough milk. Yeah. yeah. So, therefore, you didn't like him because you didn't get enough milk. This is not to be confused with the two people with the big heads and the webbed feet, is it? Webbed hands. Well, this was <laughs> I know that they were related. They must have been somewhere along the evolutionary sort of trial, do you know what I mean? They must have come from the same sort of stock. But no, you, you wouldn't have liked him. He's just, he's just one of them people. He was all right, but... Well, I, before anything. you say any more, um, on, the, on Friends United you can leave a little message which explains what you've been doing and uh, what's, what you said, you know, your life's like now. And most people leave maybe two paragraphs. Yeah. Adam, I've printed it off. He seems to have printed... I think it's, there's about six pages here of stuff. He keeps updating it. And he, he just basically lists his memories about everyone. Okay, mm -hmm. at school and uh, what he thinks of everyone. And uh, he says, I often see Simon, da 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 da, he's doing a right for himself, self employed illustrator, Mark Cooper, Carl Pilkington. Right. And your name comes up. Now, I don't know if you've told us this story, I think you may have done, but I can't remember the facts about it. It just says, Carl Pilkington, with his pet bird, was it a magpie? I can't remember. He brought it to school to show everyone and it flew away. <laughs> Oh no, they do that, don't they? You show them the what what you, was the story? You give, them, you give them seed and they just leave. Them. What do you mean? Well, it sounds like Kez. Well, that's <laughs> it. I was a big fan of Kez, and um, <laughs> it was the time our dog had just died. Yeah. So I didn't have any pets, and the cats were always getting run over. <laughs> yeah. And um, so we didn't want any more pets. Yeah. But there was a magpie that used to fly about on the estate, and I managed to um, sort of tame it. And, um, in the end... With, it with came, a chair and a whip? What do you mean you tamed it? Well, just used to sort of hang around it and talk... But how did you get hold of it? Did you catch it? Well, eventually, yeah, it used to just come to me, and I, The annoying thing was, it got to a point when I wish I hadn't bothered, because it, <laughs> it used to pop me by tyres, it used to... It used to sit on, on, like, if I was talking to my mates and I was on my grifter. I love the way he just throws things in! <laughs> it's like an Alan, Alan Bennett play. <laughs> It, it landed on my tyre, and he used to peck at the tyre and pop it, and then oh, he, used to, no. he used to then never go away, so it was always, like, <laughs> around the house, and my dad said, never bring it in. So he used to sit on the porch, and I used to go out, and he used to fly down and land on my head, oh. and it really hurt. He used to, like, peck and stuff. <laughs> he thought it was a tyre. <laughs> so it wasn't so much tamed <laughs> as a stalker. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. So you took it to school and it flew away? Yeah. So did you take it in proudly going, look at my magpie? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but no. I, it, I think it got a bit confused in the area that it was in, because I used to just keep it sort of around our estate, but sure. the school was a bit of a distance away. How did you get it so, there? Kind it on my finger. Did you walk? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So it was happy there, and then it got to... Huh? But it used to be one of those things that people would stop me in the street and sort of go, oh, what's that? And, and did, I don't suppose you called it Maggie. You didn't get uh, Charlie's Angels to go and find out what happened to it, <laughs> investigate? Were they impressed? No, eh, not really. No. But Listen, go on, any, any... Like, Carl, let's come made. back to it, mate, let's come back to it. Let's have uh, a hip-hop hooray track. It's the big hip-hop selection from Big Steve Merchant. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about there. <laughs> Just trying to sound hip. This is Spearhead from many years back. Uh, a track again, I think, got largely overlooked at the time, but worth hearing again. People in the middle. <sighs> Spearhead, people in the middle. Michael Franti, surely one of the greatest uh, rappers, I think. He just, if you've, ever, if you've ever heard him bust it live, Rick, he's almost as good as me. I'm just going to tell the, uh, the, uh, the listeners there, Carl, this is quite a little insecure sort of chap, and he was just worried about that last bit. He was going, who would ever find that interesting? He was worried about people finding him boring. And Steve said, as I said, you know, it's, it's like an Alan Bennett thing. He went, yeah, but, you know, no one would care about Alan Bennett if he wasn't such a hit maker. They wouldn't care what he had to say. And we just looked at him for a while and he went, ah, oh, thinking of Tony Bennett. <laughs> Bless him. 
It's, a, it's almost the end of the show, Carl. Oh, yeah. And it's really been a Carl special. I this think, is a Carl special. Yeah. Well, next week we won't we be getting next, next week. We have to. We're know. not going to. Uh, he wants to retire a little bit. Just. Uh, well, those old uh, lottery numbers might come up tonight anyway. Exactly. You might. What are they again? What's the four you've got with? Put them away now. What? Come on. Well, give us all six. No. Why? Carl, while you're um, rummaging for that. Five, nine, twelve, and twenty-six. A few more names that you may recall from Friends Reunited. Go on. Lisa Shufflebotham? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember her? Yeah. She, uh... Was she one of Charlie's Angels? She, no, no, she wasn't that nice, but she wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> her, and, her and her mate Rachel, I remember, I don't know why, but it was some sort of PE lesson where it had to be a bloke and two girls, and they were fighting over me. <laughs> <laughs> Could you hear what they were saying? They, were just, just... They, they were just like, I want him, and I, I was loving it. Stuck in the middle, and they were fighting over me. And then the next week, I thought I'll sit near them. What sort of game do they play at this school? I Amazing. don't know. That's an incredible game. But I think punch me on the arm. No, punch me on the arm, they, Carl. They just, they just went through it because the following week, I thought, right, I'll sit near them again because I quite enjoyed the way they fighted over me. But then they picked somebody else, and I don't know who I was with that week. So you didn't uh, didn't get any action with the shuffle both or a friend? No. And what? unless you got older, she went a bit off. <laughs> Like a, she's probably nice now. It's just, I mean, I'll say about myself, when when you get to sort of the end of secondary school, you do sort of go a bit odd looking. Right. Do you know what I mean? When your yeah. sort of head grows funny. <laughs> I, I, I would just love to go back to his school of that era. I mean, just what happened to people where they you know, all people sprouting limbs and No, do you know what things. I mean? When, when you're like 12 and that, you, you're quite, no, not 12, when you're 10, when you're 7 to 10, you sort of look healthy. And you look at your pictures, and you go, "Yeah, hey, I was a good-looking lad." But then, when you get to late mm. secondary school, something happens, yeah. and you just look a bit odd. Okay. Well, what about Alison Thorpe? Not sure about her. I, I sort of know the name, can't put a face to it. Damien C uh, Comer. Again, know the name. Yeah. Can't remember anything. No. Yeah. It's a shame. Well, these are pretty much all the names I could find. We've had some interesting thoughts, though, and interesting anecdotes. Yeah. Anyone in particular that you'd like to uh, to say hello to that uh, maybe maybe listening now that no, you? No, I think I would have mentioned Darren Buckley if you hadn't brought him up. Oh, right. He was, he was like my buddy. Yeah. yeah. Did so. you ever see the um, uh, Magpie again when you took it to the school and confused it? No. You're joking. That was the end of it, was it? Yeah. So where did it go? Probably uh, to some other kid. Because I mean, oh. it actually, it probably got killed. Because <laughs> if if it was being that friendly with other people, some people might have took advantage of it. <laughs> in what way? <laughs> well, there was a program on the other week about what in the way that shuffle both of them were trying to take advantage of you. <laughs> well, there was a program on the other week about bear whisperers. Yeah. And uh, some blokes got really friendly with a bear, and then the, the, when they were leaving that area where the bear was, they said, "Oh, we've caused a problem here because there's some bear hunters coming in and moving into this area, yes. and it's going to get a bullet if it, if it acts like this." So they had to scare it away, and that's what I should have done with with Maggie. I should have terrified it a little bit so it <laughs> wouldn't trust humans. <laughs> Just introduced it to some of your schoolmates, I'm sure, would have <laughs> yeah. freaked it right out. Well, the ones Maybe that was why it fled. It, it, didn't yeah, see, oh, no, it didn't see those two fellas with big heads and webbed hands coming towards it, did it? That would have terrified anything. It's like a scarecrow, like a two walking <laughs> scarecrow. <laughs> Uh, listen, have we got time for a song for the ladies? What's, what's happening? Uh, we've, we've not really thought quick of then, quick, just on. do it, just do it. Thanks very much. Well, no, no, we haven't li lined anything up, have we? I was going to play uh, Mary Lawson and that for you. And then Is that... this going to be the final track? Wait, yeah, it would be, yeah. We've blown it. We've blown it on the Carl special. We have indeed. I'll play it next week. So Carl there's got an E at history in GCSE. Mm -hmm. Any history teachers, anyone who can help Carl out, I think we should try and register him and take it this June. So, uh, so what's your homework for this week? Uh, You've got to read about... Che Guevara, haven't yeah. you? The revolutionary leader. Yeah. Okay. Do you know anything about him at all? Have you got any basis? I just know that if you want to use his face on your business, it costs a lot of money. <laughs> Do you know, like, if, if McDonald's wanted to have him as, like, instead of Ronald McDonald? <laughs> <laughs> how does he do it? Steve, how does he do it, man? Oh, we, we, listen, just, just play a final record, Carl. Say goodbye, and we'll, uh, see you next week. All right. See you later. Right. Cheers, mate. Oh, yeah. Foo Fighters. All my life on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and uh, Carl Pilkington. Indeed, genius Carl Pilkington, as Heat Magazine said. Really? Is that what yeah. you refer to now? Yeah, huh? yeah, genius. Saying about people tuning in just to hear his games, yeah. such as educating Ricky. Have you got some educating Ricky for me? Got some education. I need some education, Carl. That's I like desperately that. need some education. I want to learn about 
Chinese kids that are born hairier than average. <laughs> I want to hear, hear about deaf girls that can hear after their mum hits their head against a wall. <laughs> These are the things I need to know. I mean, I don't wish to be disrespectful. He doesn't look like a genius. He doesn't look like a genius. But then I don't know what a genius looks like. Exactly. So, Steve. you know, I don't want to be well, look, look at Einstein. Yeah. Yeah. His mum thought he was mental as a child. <laughs> Where'd you get that information from? That was in the Einstein book. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the Einstein book, then it's totally true. <laughs> Which but Einstein book is that? His theory of relativity? The, 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 the big book of Einstein stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the big bumper book of Einstein stuff. It's <laughs> yeah, uh, for yeah, a coach yeah. trip yeah. and you have to fill in, uh, yeah. E equals MC1 squared, <laughs> two, <laughs> fish, or three, hello! <laughs> and then it's multiple choice yeah. and you, uh, fill it, it's great. It's Did his brilliant. mum think, A, he was a genius, and B, mental? <laughs> <laughs> so most people go for A, but it is in fact B. Ooh. She thought he was mental at the age of 28. <laughs> oh, Carl, oh. you never let me down. You never let me down. So have you got Educating Ricky for me? We've got Educating Ricky coming up. We've, we've got, got Rock uh, Busters. Uh, we've got Rock Busters. And great as, seen, as seen and talked about in Heat. <laughs> in Heat magazine. It's got really tough this week now. We're not messing about anymore. Uh -huh. Right. Um, got some good prizes? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll talk about those later. Because, uh -huh. uh, I mean, was it last week that you had the, the classic? Was it, um, I can't remember, I, I'm paraphrasing, Carl, apologies. Something like, I'm here in Texas, I've fallen in a puddle and my knee has got wet. Yeah. Wet knee Houston. Wet knee Houston. Whitney Houston. Yeah. And also, it was last week when there was a little bit of confusion over, uh, the one for Holly Valance. Right? Of course. Um... I don't think it was confusion, I think it was your error. No, yeah. No, no, it wasn't. And it was Holy Valance and you meant Pelmet. Ah. Then, one. Becky, who called up that time and said, yeah. oh, if you, you're getting mistaken with, uh, Pelmet, right, she sent me an email in a week yeah. saying, I've done a bit of research. Yeah. It was my fault. I've made an error. Yeah. It is a valance. Okay. And I know about valances. As I told you last week, at the very end, my auntie loves them. Yeah. Right? She, um, she makes them. She started off just like putting them on top of the, uh, sort of window around the curtain. Uh, and then she, she thought, oh, I can do more with this. Yes. <laughs> and she had a little coffee table that had magazines underneath. And yeah. she said, I'm sick of seeing them magazines when I'm sat down. <laughs> she, she, sounds, she, she sounds like a pilkin to me. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of seeing the magazines when I sit down! So she put a valance around the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah! She just got valances around everything now. Yeah. Then, yeah. Uh, next step, uh, she, she tapes everything. She never actually watches telly, she tapes it all. Yeah. Cause she gets sick of listening to the adverts and that. Yeah. So she tapes everything, so she's got loads of videotapes and that. And the video used to get on her nerves when she was watching a film. She'd see the clock changing. Oh. And it distracts her from the film, so sure. she put a valance around <laughs> 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 yeah. That's genius! Yeah. So, that is or, really... is it, or is it mental? <laughs> no, Only Mrs. Einstein can tell. I don't know. She's even made a little, um, Jack Russell look like a hovercraft. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Still, so it. everything's got a balance. If you, if you go round and you stand still for too long, the chances are <laughs> you <laughs> you have a balance around your head. Yeah. This is the, 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 this is Auntie Who? Auntie Nora. And this is the one that farted for five minutes. <laughs> less, less our listeners forget. <laughs> less farted forget. for five minutes, called his mum, saying I'm farting, <laughs> two minutes into the fart. She said about two and a half minutes in. Yeah. <laughs> she said I'm about two and a half minutes well, into well, the fart. Well, my mum said how long's been going on for. She said, well, uh, it was about two and a half minutes before I called you. Yeah. And then it went on for a further two, <laughs> two and a half minutes or something. And, uh, <laughs> then it stopped. And, she couldn't, uh, she couldn't tie her up because there was a balance over the clock. Yeah, she used to annoy her when she was on the phone that you put her off the so time. She, it was, she was, was guessing it was five minutes. This was one consistent fart. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't making a noise, it was just- Oh, it wasn't making a noise. Just gas. <laughs> right. Endless gas. Mm. So, uh, there you That's go. fantastic. Well, we started off with a new one, a little bit of Foo Fighters. We like new and old on this show, don't Indeed, we? Indeed, we like to mix it up. I'd like to play the Smiths from their, from their uh, debut album, um, I Don't Owe You Anything. I Don't Owe You Anything. The lads from, uh, Carl's hometown there. Indeed. The Smiths. Brilliant, that one. Wow. I went to Manchester, didn't I, the other day? Went up to Manchester for what a little corporate. Uh, it was all right. Yeah. Um, I, the, he went, um, wait till you get out. You see, Piccadilly, it's better than Euston. Right. right. It was. It, the, 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 you know, it was, it was nicer. I went outside and there was a ridiculous queue, uh, um, uh, and sort of one cab. Right, um, yeah. So, uh, 
horse drawn. Yeah. yeah, and so I walked, and it was okay. It was only down the road, a bit dark. It was wet and raining. Of oh, course, the north. I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, the hotel never... was very nice, but no minibar. I've never seen that before. I've travelled all over the world to see them. No <laughs> hotel without a minibar. <laughs> no, so I don't know what's going on there. I don't know what's going on there. Um, and then I, uh, uh, I did this corporate gig in Old Trafford. The pitch was up. I don't know what they were doing, but um, you know, very impressive, big, impressive. I think they're British football club, aren't they, Carl? Yeah. You did a yeah. gig at where? Old Trafford. It was, in a, it was in a function room. Oh, there, well, I thought it was the stadium. No, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not that big yet. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, but I mean, uh, you know, I can't really comment on Manchester. I do know that Liverpool was voted the most important music city via poll. True enough. Um, so, uh, Carl, you're making noises while I'm talking. Yeah, but you do this all the time trying to wind me up. <sighs> And I'm not, I'm not saying Manchester's the best place in the world, but what I'm saying is, there's bits of it that I really miss. Yeah. Like, last Sunday, right, when I'd, I'd met up with, uh, with Ricky, um, we had, uh, had spaghetti bolognese, which was alright, uh, and then I said to him, I said, I need some soil. Damn, I wish you'd invited me, it sounds <laughs> right, amazing. I said, I need some soil, what, what do you think? You need some what, soil? soil? Soil, yeah. I need to repot a plant, right? Yeah. So, um... You need to repot a plant? Yeah. I'd go fair enough. So, um, I'm like, where, where, you, you can't see you these can't, shops yeah. in London. You can't Do you know what I mean? Them. There's nothing around. I took him straight to one in my street. Yeah, yeah. but near your street, and that's probably the only one in London. Well, you say that, Carl. No, it, it does annoy me. Round my way, it's like, you know. You can't move for soil shops. <laughs> 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 you can't. There's earth. You can just pick up handfuls walking down the street. Yeah, incredible. Which People just, just lean over into someone's front garden. No, yeah. you can take the plants yeah. as well. Yeah. No, but yeah. what I'm saying is, go on. Manchester, there's loads of decent hardware shops. Yeah. Here. Um, you know, if you want a panini and a latte or whatever, you can't move for them. But for soil, I had to <laughs> go virtually how many miles away from me to carry that mm. soil home and stuff. Yeah. It's, like, it's not good. I mean, London's all right, mm. but if, if cities were sort of it's, it's, it's neglecting the peat. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Like, uh, market yeah. really. Well, there's it? barely. I mean, there's barely any mulch available well, for it uh, well, in I, central I, London. I'm sick and tired of not getting a good decent compost of a Sunday. <laughs> Indeed. So you know, it's I'm thinking of moving to the north, <laughs> yeah. uh, where there is loads of soil <laughs> and gravel, Indeed. and animal shite. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, sorry, whatever. you were going to say if you're marking cities out of ten, what would you give uh, London? Well, if you were marking them on like you know on on what they have. Right. It, as opposed to what? <laughs> well, as opposed to how the you name. spell it. Say, like, I think the greatest city in the world is Rome. Okay. Like, it's pretty amazing. Mm. Yeah. Have you been? What? Yeah. Why do you think that though? Just because, like, you turn a corner and there's something there that's really old. Right. right. Yeah. Like, you go down Normal Street. <laughs> go, go and stay in a Derby and Joan Club. Yeah. No, no, no. But but it's like you're going down the road and then you turn a corner and like, like the Colosseum's in the middle of a like a busy road. Mm. It's like, what's that doing there? Yeah. Yeah. And just when you think there's no more, you turn another corner. It's Boy, almost it. as if that was there first. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. But do you know what I mean? London. Yeah. What have we got? You, you know, Trafalgar Square is world sort of world known. And you go there, what's that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, there's a lot of space there. Get one big B&Q. In Trafalgar Square. It's a, it's a cater for the whole of people who live sort of central London-ish. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd be happy, but what I'm saying is... Well, with Nelson just popping up through the middle. Because you can still see it, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a great B &Q. idea. Uh, 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 so, B&Q could be like the whole sort of flat thing and make it sort of grey so it looked like rock. And then Nelson popping up... Make it up classy, is what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Stone clad it. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like you've made an effort. <laughs> exactly. And then you can pop in and then you can go out and go, oh, look at Nelson's column. Oh look at that! Isn't now? Oh look at that! The victory, oh, defeat. That's fantastic. One of the greatest living. Yeah. I need some nails. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Kevin T. Bridge one stone. You say. But but why don't? Why isn't there more than them, them? More than them shops? Because when I went into yours, every time I've been in there, I've been in there twice now. The first time was to get a shower head, right? <laughs> right. And I went in there. I couldn't resist buying something else. I ended up getting some super glue as well. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> like Hey, right. big spender. And then, last <laughs> yeah. Sunday we went in there, got two bags of soil, not one, I bought two. Yeah. Yeah. And I bought some scissors to cut plants with. Secretaries. Well, you don't, scissors. you never know when you want, you know, you might need more soil, I suppose. Well, mm. I've got, I've got stopped stuff. out now. Where'd you keep it under your Sorry, bed? this isn't going out, is it, this conversation? It's not going out on air. I got a feeling it might be. You're joking. We'd better play a record. Okay. Play a classic. Hives. That jingle, of course, signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. We went to the park and had a brew. Suzanne read the paper while I played with a ladybird. <laughs> I mean, it's like, 
a child, isn't it? It is like what a child would do. <laughs> Susanna read the paper while I played with the ladybird. <laughs> His only friend is a beetle. <laughs> it climbed up my arm. It struggled on me hairs. This is in detail, then? Yeah, 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 yeah. It kept stopping every now and then and was rubbing its head with its right arm. It did it about four times and always used its right arm. It rested for about five minutes, then flew off. Sunday. Had a bit of a to-do with Suzanne because she wanted a lion today. I ate this. Once you're awake, you should get up. I got up and put the radio on really loud. She eventually got up. I told her insects don't have lions, so we shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, insects. you must be fucking unbearable to live with. <laughs> you must be a nightmare. No, I've just started, because I've watched insects a lot, I don't want to keep going on about them because we've, we're a bit insect heavy, but at the end of the day, if we, if we copied insects, we wouldn't go far wrong. I don't know what you mean, though. One minute you're saying they're great, then the next minute you'll slag them off. Yeah, I'll slag some of them off if I don't know what they're doing, but because I've studied them a bit longer, I just think they, they do. You haven't right. studied them. He, he thinks he's like Darwin. You, but you just slagged him off and again. Don't you think people, that insects are doing stuff? They're not. It yeah, goes there, then it goes back again. The ant was. The ant was messing about. But only that one. The others were carrying stuff. That's what I'm saying. These snidey ones in everything, in every everything in the world, you get a hierarchy. <laughs> oh, long words. Ooh. Some new sea thing has been found. <laughs> There's the headlines on the news. <laughs> it wasn't found by sea experts, it was found on eBay. Someone was selling it for a fiver. I don't see the point in buying something that you don't know what it is. What do like, you mean? What do you mean? It was, it was... Someone's found some sort of shell with a thing living in it. Right. Um, they thought, oh, I've never seen one of these before, I can flog it on eBay. Someone bought it and then wanted to look after it, went to some sea expert and they said, oh, I don't know what that is. That's, that's, that's the story. It's just weird how stuff's being found on eBay. No, it wasn't found on eBay though, was it? Yeah, but that's where the specialist people sort of picked up on it. It's just weird that, I mean, I, all, all I was saying is I wouldn't want one. If you don't know how to, if it's a new creature, you don't know what, what makes it happy. When you get a kitten, you go, stroke its head, loves it, right? And you can do that knowing that it's liking it. If I had a little seashell and you go, does it sit in water? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? You could end up doing more damage. So that's why I wouldn't want it. It's nice to have rules, isn't it? It's nice to know what you're doing with something. Well, as you write in the diary, it's like if an alien landed and wanted to live oh, with you. Oh, <laughs> as much fun as it might sound, it wouldn't be long before you got annoyed with it because it wouldn't eat the food you gave it. That's what I'm saying, but I couldn't have a go at it because it might not like pasta. <laughs> it might not. <laughs> Everyone likes pasta. Wow. Woke up to some interesting news. It's good when this happens because it sets me up for the day ahead. If it's miserable news, it affects my day. It said on the news that they have found two new flies. <laughs> Fucking hell, more insects! What have you done? Is that all you've done this summer? Bong. Just... <laughs> trouble in the Middle East. Bong. Two new flies found. Ladybird climbs up arm. <laughs> they were found in the UK and they were found close to each other. Maybe this happened because they were different than the other flies and weren't expected to hang about together, so that's why they knocked about with each other. That would happen, wouldn't it? What do you mean? It's two new flies. <laughs> what do you mean? Does it mean there are two new flies that are a different species? species? Yeah, two new species, and they found them close to each other, right? Yeah, but they, they didn't mean there was one of each. No. Yeah, yeah, they did. They found two different ones. No. No, they have. Seriously, I know that. That's right. That's a fact. So you've got like, I don't know the names of them. They give them odd names, don't they? Well, so <laughs> yeah. you call it A and Fly B, right? Yeah. Fly A, I don't know. Uh, was say that's orange. <laughs> this is just B. Lively, yeah. No, this is painful. No, but this I'm just painful. making it easier. But Fly B wears okay. a little hat. He's got yeah, a little hat. Right, yeah, fine. Now, they found the orange one. I went, look at this over there. This is a bit weird. And they've gone, oh, that's a new species log it, whatever, and then the other one went, oh, 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 keep your pen handy, look at this one, it's got a hat on. So then they, they found them both within the same distance. I don't like that sentence, Keep please. going, keep going, keep going. They, no, found, let him both, and finish. they I... found them both within the same <laughs> distance. <laughs> but without <laughs> interrupting him, <laughs> let him finish this, no. this point. Let me just make one thing clear. Carl Pilkins just said, they found them both within the same distance. <laughs> Think of that! Don't know what it means, but go on, let him finish this, this point. So. So what I mean is, 
they weren't knocking about with other normal houseflies because they were probably sort of going, oh, he's a bit weird. Leave it. <laughs> yeah, because the other one was also odd. They're, not, they're hanging about with each other. Don't you understand that? Why is that such an odd concept? Because <laughs> you think you think of it as like two little um, uh, new kids in school. Yeah. They, they find out they're both new and they they've got something. Yeah, in they're, both, they're both goths. So yeah. they yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this was on the news, was it? Yeah, just on the radio. Yeah. I know. If I look into that story, it would be ninety percent wrong. Bit tired today because didn't get to sleep as early as I wanted due to a moth getting in the bedroom. Fuck <laughs> me! I got it in a glass and looked at it for a bit and then let it go because Suzanne wanted to go to sleep. Looked up some interesting news. Some people dug up an old body in Ireland. Turns out it's well old and was here when dinosaurs were here. The really weird bit is it had hair gel in its hair. Right, what is it? A fella. Well, no, it wasn't around when dinosaurs were here then. Just a bit after. Right, fine. A lot after, yeah, go on. It's not the age bit, that's amazing. It's the fact of, there's a fella, won't have even had shoes on his feet. Right. And yet he was worried about his hairstyle. Right, but well, that's definitely not true either. There was a man on the radio doing poetry, says Carl in his diary. I thought I'd have a go at doing a poem about today. <clears throat> not really. He had, Steve, I'm, I'm a little bit queasy. He hasn't really written a poem. He's written a, a small poem. No, he hasn't really. Yes. If moths had eyes... <laughs> <laughs> let, let me read the poem, okay? Oh, fuck. You wouldn't interrupt T.S. Eliot. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, okay. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? How do they know they're not dead? <laughs> Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the hair on their head. What would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. Hey, <laughs> it may be the greatest poem ever written. Is there a creative decision have, for that? Can we have Carl read that? By Sorry, means, yeah. just, uh, no, just, just you read it as you would like to. So this is, uh, imagine this, right? Okay, this is going out all over the world. And now, um, Carl Pilgrim, new poet from Manchester. Now living in uh, London, England, would like to read a poem. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? <laughs> How do they know they are not dead? Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the air on their head. What would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. I think he feels as though the final line, I'd rather be a blind moth, is going to be one of those great, you know, those, it, a summation that the, somehow the moth is a metaphor, I'd the caveman. Be a blind moth. No, but there's no I'm metaphor doing, in that. He really does mean he'd, he'd rather, rather be, be a, a blind, blind moth. moth. Yeah, well, I'm just because I've looked at the day's news. Are you getting into poetry now, properly? I really like it, yeah. Right, I did two about jellyfish. Excellent. Uh, I don't like jellyfish. They're not a fish, they're just a blob. They don't have eyes, fins or scales like a cod. They float about blind, stinging people in the seas. And no one eats jellyfish with chips and mushy peas. <laughs> Get rid of them. <laughs> and then there's just a short one of about a jellyfish. Um, it would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. <laughs> Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, so. <laughs> that's great! That's really good! Because it's jelly. He's, he's, he's done us there, yeah, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a yeah. really good poem. Can we always do that, Carl? Can we always find a day, right, and always sum it up in, in your in thoughts, a poem. a poem? Just like that. It would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. Yeah. What's been going on? What's been going on? I've been to hospital. I was rushed to hospital, right, emergency and that. Had a uh, tube put on my knob. You had a tube put up your knob? Yeah. What was the story? Uh, kidney stones. Oof. So, shouldn't really be here, to be honest, doing this. 
He said rest. No. Climbing them stairs on the way in. Is to be quite honest, it doesn't look like you're expending a lot of energy at the moment. It's it's like at Zookeeper we're going all oh, that slow move today. Calm down. Yeah, but I had to get here. It's been raining. Yeah. I had to come up the stairs. I had to carry the computer. Yeah. Well, that's not entirely true because your girlfriend was carrying it. I saw her outside. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying. And, oh. then you, and then you handed it to me and said, Steve, God carry this. So. Almighty. Yeah, I know. That's already a lie. Christ almighty. Whinging. Not whinging. I'm in show business. I know loads of people that wake up every day with a sore knob, feeling like they've had their kidneys probed, and they, they you know, they would say they're unconscious. So yeah. they don't whinge about it, they get straight back on to it. They, you know, <laughs> a lot of them on TV now. Yeah, straight back to hosting game shows. <laughs> So, you're at the hospital. So, tell the, take us through the take us through the events because it does sound quite dramatic. You started feeling a bit of pain, did you initially? I felt a bit of pain. I thought, you know, yeah, maybe I just pulled a muscle or something when I've been wrestling with Ricky and that because mm. you don't know what damage has been done. <laughs> uh, so I just think, oh, it'll go in a minute, and then it didn't. It got a bit badder. It did. It, it got badder, did it? So then a I thought I, oh, I, I, I was I was crippled. I was lying on the floor in agony. Looking on the internet, looking for uh, sort of Still solutions. looking at monkey news. Uh, <laughs> I was just, I just put in like belly ache and stuff, and they were saying me loads of different things. Um, and I, what I used to do when I was a kid, I used to always just get a cold ashtray and put that on my belly. And the coldness used to get rid of the badness. <laughs> Amazing. The coldness got rid of it. Like a witch doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, this, this is like a witch doctor who happens to work in a pub. It's like a, some sort of fifth century remedy <laughs> yeah. written in mud. <laughs> yeah. Coldness doth get away with the badness. <laughs> yeah. Princess Superstar, Bad Baby Sticker, first played on this show by Steve Merchant, by Bad Steve Merchant. That's true. By, by Steve Scratch Merchant. That's I cool. mean, I, I still like that, but the videos put me off it a little bit because it's just. It makes it into the novelty record. It always had the potential of being. Do you I know agree. What I, mean? I agree. Although I, I was never a big fan of Baby Bad Babysitter was not uh, my my favourite from the album. Sure. Um, sure. If people want my interest and in my views on hip hop, then they can always email in Rick. Of course. Or, or call you at home. Just give, <laughs> give me a ring at home. It's no problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, or I just pop out and you know, hang with them. In yeah. The hood. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So, sure. Um, yeah. Now it's time for White Van Man. White Van Man. Um, <clears throat> yes. For those, that, uh, for those yeah. that don't buy the Sun, they think it's beneath them. Um, White Van Man is a column they have, I think, every day, actually, and they just get sort of some, you know, Joe Public to kind of comment sure. on the week's news. It just seems to me, uh, you know, that it might be interesting to, uh, to get Carl's views yeah. on some of the big not, events. Not, not because we think that Carl hasn't got a valid sort of viewpoint. No. Because Carl sees the world differently to some people, that's all, and that's, that's what's interesting. You know, like an artist does, or a... Exactly, yeah. He's a... very bohemian in his outlook. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you feel that you're up to scratch on this week's news? I don't like this, but... Don't you? Don't, just relax. Why not? Really? It's pressure. No, 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 because you just have to give just, us your first opinion. Just for your honest answer, that's all we've ever asked of you, Carl, and it's all you've ever given us. Your honest, your first from the heart Go of on. you, yeah? All Don't right. worry, just relax. No, just chill in. Are you worried that people are listening and thinking you're an idiot? If my girlfriend's listening now, go and have a wash or something. Go and have a wash? <laughs> it's not very <laughs> nice, is it? <laughs> it's the opposite of Napoleon and Josephine. <laughs> yeah, go on, go on. If, if you're going to visit me again, Josephine, Say like, what? Well, I'll ease you in with something fairly easy, a, a music-based question. Um, Kylie Minogue versus Dido as Queen of the Brits. What's your view there? Mm. Um, <laughs> go and have a watch. It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, it doesn't really matter. What doesn't really matter? <laughs> with the Brits. I was watching it the other night, and um, I think Kylie will be a good-looking old woman. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh. Do you know, do you ever do that? Oh. Sort of I want to, Steve, I want to celebrate with you. Every time we open this night, it doesn't matter. I want us to open a bottle of champagne. I know what you mean. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like we did that. Yes. No, do you, you, do you, you do that though, look at people and, and another person who springs to mind, Jenny Powell. Hmm? I, I don't think she's that good looking now. Who's Jenny Powell? Is she that girl that used to be the, the assistant on Wheel of Fortune? Yeah, yeah, Leslie? yeah, I think she's a bit over the top for a young woman. But when she gets older, I think she'll look Be a bit of a stunner. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So for you, Kylie, <laughs> whereas you don't feel that about Dido, is that right? She's all right. She's normal. I prefer Kylie's sister to Kylie. She okay. Looks, you know, she, I can imagine her being a hard work to live with. And Who, Kylie? Not right. Not being washing up and that. Right, right sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what do you make of uh, taxes rising in the next budget to pay for NHS improvements? 
Well, my dad went to hospital to have an operation once. Yeah. So I feel like it's worth paying it because I've, yeah. I've got some. Because people, because people might go have to go to hospital. Yeah. Yeah. But it makes a change when it's someone in your family, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you sort of realise. Yeah, a change is as good as a rest. And the weird thing is, if it weren't for my dad. I wouldn't be here doing this show because when he was in hospital. Well, no, I'll stop you there. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, that, that's <laughs> all you need to know. You, you wouldn't be here, true. But no, but well, no, no, because this was after I was born, so I would be here. <laughs> but well, so for his more direct involvement was what? Yeah, because when when my mum was seeing my dad in yeah. the hospital, I got a bit bored. <laughs> went for a wander, found the hospital radio station. Yeah. And got a gig. Really? So in in a, in a real sense, if it wasn't for Carl's dad, Carl wouldn't be. Here. And did your dad, like, while he was listening to you, did he, like, sort of tap the nurse and go, can you get that twelve off the air? <laughs> <laughs> Who's put him in that app? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, um, what do you make of the real-life Mowgli who's surviving in a Transylvanian countryside? Apparently, I don't know much about this story. I don't you, know what- You know Mowgli, he's the guy in the Jungle Book. Yeah. The little oh. kid that grew up, um, with bears and animals and stuff. Apparently there's a real-life one in Transylvania. What, what were the things in Gremlins? <laughs> what were the what? Like in Gremlins, they were. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is an example. This is what your girlfriend said. Think. What were the things in Gremlins called? I can't remember. Just, I mean, really. It's something like that, isn't it? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Just really, really think now, Carl. Just with all, with everything you've ever, with all the brain power you've ever used, think what the things in Gremlins were called. It's not there. There's a clue here. Oh no. Yeah. They're not. What? Gremlins. Yeah. Play a record, Carl. <laughs> well, we're back, and there's a few more people here. It's <laughs> Absolutely, well done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well observed. Yeah. Do you want to say hello? Yeah, Hi, guys. Hello, guys. <laughs> and what are you doing here? Uh, we're, this is, uh, Mark and James, or Sko and Belch, and we're here. Sorry, your names are what? <laughs> Sorry, say the last <laughs> bit again. Or what? Sko, Sko and Belch. Sko and Belch? Yeah, that's right. Do you want to explain that? Um, no. <laughs> no, from the drinking <laughs> games, I imagine. Yeah. Oh. We've got worse names than that, but it's radio, so. Sure. <laughs> now, are you, you're presumably, um, students? Uh, we, we've just, we've just, gra well, we kind of graduated, when we've been in work for, like, about a year or two. And what do you do? Um, I work for a management consultancy. I work for a distribution company up in Birmingham. Well, well okay, so now, you're, what you're doing is a scavenger hunt, and you're raising for, um, uh, uh, cancer, um, Co Charity. Research. Right, yeah. and you've got to do, and this is, we're, we're just helping you out here because for 17,000 points, you have to get live on a TV or radio show. That's exactly it. So and here we are. That's why <laughs> we're here. Yeah. Do, you, have you, do you ever listen to X of uh, I know of it, yeah. I I listened to it a few times. Sure. What kind of music, what kind of sounds would you normally be into? Uh, oh, I love cheesy radio, sort of school disco, sort of, you know, 80s right. stuff. Sure. Sure. Sorry, what was your name again? Mark, or Sko. 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 Okay. <laughs> and you're... Belch. Belch. Um, and what sort of signs would you be, uh, grooving to, Belch? Oh, uh, cheesy. UK Garage? Che well, uh, well... Craig David. A, 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 bit, a bit of house, just very occasionally, sure. a bit of cheese. It depends what kind of mood I'm in, you yeah. know? Um, yeah, now, yeah. You, you don't listen much, but you, you... I mean, kiss a celeb, cos Carl... Yeah, we actually wanted to do that with you, Ricky, is that mm, right? No. Can That's not going to happen with Ricky, but so you know Carl's now got his name mentioned in Heat magazine. Is that right? Well, so that's you, if brilliant. If you want to snog Carl, we'd love to see that. I mean, we don't want to <laughs> snog Carl, but I mean, we were thinking if there was kind of a female placenta here, we might be able to do something, but um... What are you saying? A female, <laughs> a female placenta? Well, if you've got one. Have you seen some of the female placentas that work on XFA? <laughs> oh, presenter! Is that why they're on radio? I thought it said placenta. Um... <laughs> that's uh, unlikely. I don't know, um... <laughs> Well, now what's the other things you've got to do here? So what? What are some of the things you've done already? Well, See, we, some of these worry me. Like start a fire in Pudding Lane. Oh, we've for, done that already for four thousand five seven hundred points. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we have done. We've been on. We've been on Phantom of the Opera stage already. Have you? Yeah, we we just asked the stage door guy. Sure. And, that wasn't um, during the show, I see. No. And that's right. We also we actually he actually mentioned that yeah we shouldn't speak about that too. Much. <laughs> 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 that's that's right. Right. Sacked, <laughs> but, sacked. but um, yeah, he was really kind. To let us on. Um, we've jumped in Trafalgar Square Water with. Doing a sort of friends impersonation, so that was right. Yeah, How many points did you get for that? We got two thousand points for that. We got right. eight thousand points for being on the um, stage at Phantom of the Opera, yeah. and we get double that. We get like eighteen thousand points, which is almost the maximum for being here right now. Really, so that's yeah, absolutely well, great. I, honestly, I wouldn't worry about the little things. I'd go for the big. The yeah, big that's it. We're here. not. We're 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 not, we're not interested in little stuff. We want to go for the big stuff. Yeah. So what were the big ones? Are uh, get on stage with S Club Seven. That's not going to happen, is it? When, when have you got till till six today? Well, yeah. S Club Seven are on at the London Arena uh, at about two o'clock. So good luck. Okay. We, we, I think it's going to be very very difficult to get on there. But I, I, I know. think so. Yeah, get in the vaults of a bank. Yeah, you've got so some, of these, some of these are bordering on the illegal. That's twenty thousand points. <laughs> <for that. laughs> um, like that? like get in a cage at London Zoo. Don't do that. 
<laughs> I mean, it's ten thousand points, but don't do it. And this is a penguin cage. <laughs> well, that's what we're hoping. Just some kind of air, timid animal we might be alright with. You know? Yeah, sure. If anyone's got any good ideas for sort of funky things to do on air, then um. Okay. Well, if you if you leave if you leave your number and anyone calls in, they can help you then. Well, maybe maybe some of the best clubs are yeah. listening. Or well, it, 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 it will say because I mean we love if, them to bits. If they are, it is it, for charity, and the, the points get awarded into money for colon cancer research. So it'd be absolutely fantastic if we could. Yeah. So Bradley, John, Tina, if you're listening. Yeah, if you're listening. <laughs> Or any celebrity out there who's a female celebrity, we need to we need to snog them. It doesn't oh, need to be a long song. Yeah, if we can, that'd be this great. Is, this is good for seven thousand points. This looks like a good one. Um, play the organ in a church. That must be easy. Is that a metaphor? Yeah, but the, you know what? <laughs> <a> church <laughs> like. It says the bigger the better, so it might be. That's got to be euphemism. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, thanks very much. Good luck, good luck guys. Guys, yeah, thank you very standing much. Standing outside Le Miz looking Miz. That's gonna happen. That's good. <laughs> Man, a big gun type thing on the HMS Belfast. Well, we've got something. the big gun, it's just finding the boat, which is the problem. Oh, thing. calm down. <laughs> what was your name? Bo? Poe. No. Poe. Scott. 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 Thanks, Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. 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 Bye. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay, right. Educating Ricky, Educating number three. Ricky, yes. Well, we've got the emails in. We've got the emails in. Yeah, well, people are starting... finally, they're finally trickling in. I think people, okay. getting, people have but... got the full three, right? But, I mean, it's still worth emailing in because we never know who we're gonna pick as a winner. I'll tell you what, we've still got 50 minutes before we uh, give the prize out, so let's give this, give them again. Just give us a quick, uh, run there, because I think these are, these are, these are tantalizing. They yeah, really yeah, are. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the first one, the fella has only got one badge left. Yeah. That's E. The second one, the unmarried lady is a friend to eat out with. MD. Mm. And the third one, I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. That's M. Excellent. All right. Ricky so at xfm.co.uk. You can win all kinds of prizes. Educating Ricky, right, number three. Right, final one. You've had, uh, Hippopotamus. news. You had, had, you had chicken, you believe it. <laughs> and the, the last one is, um, I'll be no buying one of them. I love that one. All right. Um, interesting one, this. I, this, this, I mean, I spent, Probably three days looking for this stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> and another one that I came across, right? And um, I was going to use. I was a what bit a like, great life you've got! <laughs> I was just, you know, going on the internet and that. And I also look in magazines. Found a story <laughs> about a bloke <laughs> who um, I don't know. He was messing about with a chainsaw. And he's, he's <laughs> Oh. I don't know, he's been messing up with the chainsaw. Um, he was juggling the midget, and, uh, whilst taking his alligator for a walk, and, um, go on. And his arm, uh, come off, right? Come off? What do you mean his arm come off? The chainsaw took it off. Oh, yeah, so okay. Like, oh, again, anyway, he's going, going, oh, no. Oh. So, uh, there's a picture of him on an exercise bike, sort of, just with a, a little stump sort of balancing, but he's getting on with his life, he's happy and everything, everything's fine, he's not complaining, it's his own fault, he's got no one to blame, right? So anyway, he goes to the doctors, and the doctor says, I can do something there. So he goes, well, it's all right, you know, I'm, I'm getting by all right, don't worry about it. And he goes, no, no, we've got an arm in, right? We can, um, we can attach that, a real arm, from someone who's, I think, they've passed away or lost an arm or something. And, uh, <laughs> They lost an arm and didn't want it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Are you using that? <laughs> yeah. No, because I know someone. Because I, I know a bloke, actually. Yeah. Well, can't you just put this one back on? <laughs> wow, it's first come, first serve, really. I was just, I, listen, I was just building a bionic man. <laughs> We've replaced one arm with a robot's arm, so we've got a spare one. So, the doctor's going, let, let me put it on. He's like, well, oh, all right then. So, so I'm do, grateful, bastard. So, he does the operation. <laughs> Everything's fine. He's loving it. He's, he's happy again because he said he can brush his teeth. Right. Okay. If this is if this is going to be <laughs> so like, he's loving it again because now he can brush his teeth. Right. If this is going to be, and it was a leg, or no, 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 it no. was a chimp's arm, <laughs> or, or it was the arm it of was, a killer. It was yeah. It was two left arms. Right. <laughs> uh, I am going to s kill you. Oh, let's let's leave it then. What is it? So, What's the answer? No, it's not that. I'm just. What missing. is okay? Right. Right. So um. <laughs> So he says, uh, go on and do it. So he, he, he sews it on, and, uh, like I said, he's happy, he's brushing his teeth, he can have a pint in the pub, he's lifting a pint with it, all his mates are happy for him. Uh, he goes on for about two years, everything's fine. Then it all starts going flaky. Oh, I knew it would. Uh, uh, was it made of chocolate? <laughs> all right, so it all goes all like gammy, and then for some the reason, going gammy. it goes gammy, and it gets longer. <laughs> Of course it does. So there's a picture of him, right, stood in the magazine. <laughs> he's stood there with his arms by his side. Um, one arm's normal. The other one is like past his knees. 
<laughs> it's re- he can pull his socks up without bending over. So it's is really this going to be? They gave him, they gave him the arm of an eight-year-old child who would have been the tallest man in the world. No, he just said, "Oh, what am I going to do?" And the doctor said, "Oh, there's not much we can do," and left it. <laughs> What so, what, what, wait a minute, you can't leave it there. That's not a story. So, Carl, that's what, not you've a got story. to tell us the explanation. What, what, was what? it an incredible plastic arm? An incredible expanding arm? Did he fight crime later? No. I, well, that's the end of the story. You've got no yeah, scientific that's explanation. Why, that's, as why why I didn't, that's why I didn't pick it. But you just told it to us anyway. Yeah, but I'm just saying the sort of knowledge I come over when I'm looking for the good knowledge. <laughs> yeah? So that why did his arm grow? Do. Why did this arm grow? He must have had an adult arm. They couldn't have given him an arm. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's just why I'm. <laughs> it's rubbish again, it's isn't not, it? Well, well, I think it's an interesting story, but you should have. It's not, read, and it is rubbish. But you should have read happen. to the end. There was photos. <laughs> <laughs> Proof. Yeah. But you should have read to the end of the article, Carl. No, I did. And he said, that, you know, he's not happy and he wishes he, he wouldn't have had it done and all that. And, you know. Are you sure this wasn't entirely unexpected? No, seriously, he was saying, you know, his teeth are nice and clean again because he could brush them and that, <laughs> but his arm's getting in the way. <laughs> really. Ruining his shirt. <laughs> so leave that. Let's play, let's play a tune. Let's come back with the next one because I love the fact that that this is like Ronnie Corbett telling one of his jokes. <laughs> <onto Ronnie's. laughs> that wasn't even the story. He was going to tell us. Play a record. <laughs> oh. Swade's new one. Obsessions on XFM 104.9. Well, uh. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilgerson. Well, Carl, that's that's about it. And uh, we got sidetracked on the last Educating Ricky. You telling me about a man whose arm grew. Well, something, well, something went wrong. I'm not saying it's, it grew. Just saying. <laughs> what, 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 what? The rest went, of him shrunk? It went long. <laughs> it went long. What, is that growing? What do you mean it went long? Uh, did it grow or what? Did it come loose? That's, that's what I was thinking. Oh, so it's hanging by a thread that's made it look long? Yeah. Within the skin. It's like how you can stretch a pair of tights if something <laughs> is too heavy. Or... Arms aren't very much <laughs> like tights. They so, are very so much the like one, tights. So the one that we didn't get round to on Educating yeah. Ricky was, uh, I'll be no buying one of them. Go on. Um, are you familiar <laughs> <laughs> with, okay. the, with the same white elephant? Something is a white elephant. Yeah, I don't oh, think so. Hold on. You phoned me last night and said, what does white elephant mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I told you. Yeah, I know, but I know where it came from, but I just was wondering what it was about. So how, in what way is educating Ricky, you calling me up and asking me something? <laughs> well, do you, do you know how it came about? You've given away some of the secrets of the show there, it would appear. I didn't realise he was phoning you for information. Well, he just asked me what, what the term white elephant meant in sort of like colloquial. <laughs> did, he sa- did he say, why, why, why are you interested, Carl? No reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, go on, go on. Well, what it is, ages ago when... So what do we understand white elephant to mean? It's... Well, some of the useless that's like a bit of a, you know, a, 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 you know, something that you wouldn't want around that's just, that's just stood there doing nothing. No. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Carl. So, uh, <laughs> so years ago when, when people used to use elephants Years more, ago, go on. More, when people used to use elephants? Yeah, more, on. more than they do now. Right. Um. <laughs> more than they do now! This doesn't involve a midget, does it? No, no, no. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, they do use them in the workplace and stuff. Sure. Yeah, yeah, as factories. Sort of, yeah. 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 To move stuff Tea around ladies. and that. <laughs> yeah, security guards. <laughs> yeah. Can't trust them with the buns, though. <laughs> That's why they stopped using them. Oh right. God, go on. So there was loads of loads of elephants knocking about, about and the thing is, right? You couldn't move from. If you have a lot of something, uh-huh. you also have a lot of demic ones, don't you? A, a lot, lot of what? You know, sort of demicky ones, ones that aren't right, really. Demic, demicky. Well, you know, like it, they weren't, they weren't properly. They weren't. They weren't properly. <laughs> they weren't Sorry, but Carl, properly. what are you what, doing? Right, I'm getting to the story. So what I'm telling they you, were, is they were a bit demicky, so they weren't properly. Have you started making words up? Right. Yeah, and you, Stanley Unwin, <laughs> Listen, reincarnated. What, demicky? What, yeah. There was a lot of albino elephants knocking about. Okay. Where? Where is this? Um, old times, Africa. <laughs> Uh, should we say Africa? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If an answer's got a question mark at the end, I'm well, not sure. It's either answer. Africa or India, but I'll give you a clue. Will these elephants, do they have big ears or little ears? Um, 
I didn't sort of notice the size of the elephants. I noticed, what I noticed is they were white because they were albino elephants. Okay. Right? So <laughs> that's why they're heading, I'll be no buying one of them. Okay. Right? <laughs> no buying one of them. So <laughs> what would happen is people who didn't know what they were doing, like, you know, you get people making a mistake buying cars that are full of problems and that. Back yeah. then when people were buying elephants, they'd go up to someone say, I'm after an elephant, and the fellow would say, yeah, I've got one here for you, sure. this is a nice one. Mm -hmm. And it was all white and stuff and it had like blue eyes. You should never trust a used elephant salesman. <laughs> <laughs> it was just this elephant that's white with blue eyes. Right. So, this um, is great. So, yeah. uh, so a yeah. fellow who didn't know what he was doing would buy the elephant and he'd get it back and it'd be all sort of lazy and stuff oh, and we're doing the stuff. Yeah. Mm. And he'd say, what's, what's up with this? And his mate, who's a bit of an expert with elephants, and go, oh, where do you all that from? And he said, oh, I got it off that fella, and he goes, oh... All this <laughs> embellishing nonsense <laughs> in terms of the story. He shouldn't have all that. So he goes, why? And he says, it's only albino, isn't it? And he's like, what does that mean? And he said, oh, it, it's, it gets tired. Yeah. Um, it's not that good at doing work and that. He shouldn't it have steals it. from you. But elephants back then were like a god. You know what I mean? Right. You couldn't, you couldn't say, oh, I'm sick of this and I'm going to abandon it or anything okay. because ele elephants were seen as like pretty high up on the chain of things. So <laughs> they'd end up being stuck with an elephant, that's an albino, yeah. couldn't do much, gets tired, basically gets in the way. So they said, that's where they're saying like, you know, but a bit of a white elephant there. <laughs> what do you reckon, Rick? <laughs> I, I feel I don't. I feel like I, I haven't been educated. I feel like I've lost something. <laughs> so I, like a time in my life that I can never get back. I feel like I've sort of been soiled, and I, I don't know where to start. <laughs> I'm angry. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm angry. Sure. Yeah, I can see that. And all that rubbish around. It. Look at his little face. Well, what was that? All that <laughs> shit about a second-hand elephant salesman and his mate knew about elephant. Elephants. <laughs> what is it? What are they? <laughs> they had blue eyes. What are you? Well, you albinos go. have red eyes for a start. Uh, oh, that's it. We've run out of time. Oh, again. what? What? The I mean, so, what are you going to do about this next week? Are you going to actually do some w educating next week? And what about Rockbusters? Are you going to make the clues proper cryptic clues? Well, that's the teaser, isn't it? That's what we'll leave them with. <laughs> <laughs> Will it be any good next week? <laughs> yeah. Tune in and find <laughs> out on XMM 104.9. Question from Kevin. He says, Carl, other than the famous boxing match that you've often talked about, I know that took um, up about 20 minutes of your time, have you ever been in any other kind of fight? Uh, I don't suppose a, a slanging match. I think they're talking of ever been in a physical fight. Um... Once that I can remember, it was over a over a woman, well <laughs> a girl. I was at school. Yeah. Um, and it was because like it's hassle in it, right? Relationships when you're younger. How you're old not, were you? Um, about seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was over a woman. <laughs> <laughs> go on then. Yeah, go on. And there was this girl knocking about who you know she was she was quite good looking. Everybody liked. And uh, my mate, he really liked her. And uh, I, I didn't uh, sort of ask her out on that, but she just sort of took a shine to me and stuff. Right? And uh, didn't really go out with her properly. It's at, at that age where going out with someone is just like sort of going, all right, in the morning. Do you know what I mean? You just sort of <laughs> nod your head. Yeah. And that. Anyway, there was some sort of school disco. <laughs> and um, they were playing Spin the Bottle or something. Right? And uh, I sort of wandered over to see what was going on. And I stood on this girl's dress and put a hole in it. And she started crying. I was like, oh, I can't be doing with this. Right? Uh, you know, what's up with you? It's a hole, what's up with you? And everyone's going, Carl, what are you doing? That's meant to be your girlfriend and that. You should be sort of saying, oh, I'm sorry, and giving her a hug and all that. And saying, it'll be all right, we'll sort the dress out. I said, oh, I can't be doing with this. Right? Mm. So she's crying her eyes out. I said, it's over. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's over, you saying? All right. In the morning, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No more of that. Yeah, there's no more. Right. In the morning. So I go to the toilet, right, and uh, this lad who fancies her comes in and goes, you're out of order, you know. And I say, what are you on about? So you're, there's two seven-year-olds. Seven yeah. You're out of order. Keep out. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. Show her a bit of bloody respect. <laughs> but sorry, were you wearing trilbies? Yeah. <laughs> he put his cigarette out in the sink. And he just said, leave it. <laughs> Get out of my face. <laughs> so I, I just thought, I said, look, why are you getting involved and all that? <laughs> <Why> <laughs> are you yeah. <laughs> why are you getting involved? <laughs> and, uh, oh, and, it, and it was obviously like, because, you know, he, he fancied her and that. We yeah. had a bit of a fight in there. Yeah. Um, 
I, I accidentally, you know, sort of chipped his tooth on a sink. Oh, is it like a proper- Sorry! This is like something from Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. What are you talking about? Two seven-year-olds in a toilet. I just, uh, so I'm... you put, you put a hole in her dress. I don't know how that- What were you wearing? I football boots? On it. Just... <laughs> how, did you, how did you make a hole in her dress? I don't know, it was like, like that sort of material. You were like, wearing winkle pickers. Like <laughs> crepe. You know what I mean? It was like a crepe dress or something. Yeah. Right. And that so got a hole in it. So, so you're having a- and when you say you're having a fight, I mean, are you wrestling with it? You've got head, oh, arm locks and head A little bit of wrestling and sho shoving about and that. And it was an accident. I didn't sort of go, right, I'm gonna break your teeth or anything. It's just yeah. that I happened to push his head down and, and his tooth hit the sink. Mm. Right. And it chipped and yeah. what have you. After that, like, I, I sort of left there and stuff and we had to go into assembly. Uh, and there was a copper in there doing some presentation saying, listen kids, you know, don't get into trouble because we're out there and we'll get you. Right, so sort of trying to teach the kids young not to get into any trouble and stuff. So I'm sat in the assembly room thinking, oh god, there's a copper here talking, and it, like, my mate's gonna come in in a minute, like, with a chipped tooth and everything. And, and questions are gonna get asked. That's what kind of happened. I mean, the, the coppers didn't get involved. Yeah. But did you turn your back on violence after that then? Yeah. Um, well, well, he, he said you'll never take me alive, copper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that was the sort of last fight. Brilliant. What I mean is, we've we've obviously interfered somewhere along the way, and well, we, we have done. interfered. Yeah, yeah, we shouldn't have done because it's, mm. it's the same way. Like, uh, if we, you know, if we didn't have planes and that, would we have wings now? If we'd have no. needed to get about, <laughs> no. would we have had wings? No, the answer is no. <laughs> Next, no, but but you say that, but look at the way he's right. Is it because he's right? No, but all I'm saying is, you see that little picture of like an ape to man. Yeah. At first, they're crawling about on all fours because probably yeah. you're looking for food, so you want to be down there. So right. if, you, if you're on both legs, yeah. you're missing stuff that's on the floor. What sort of time period do you think this... Because, I mean, we started, uh, you know, dabbling with a plane maybe a hundred years ago. So what sort of time period do you think this little thing who's scrabbling around looking for food I stood up and I walked? don't know. I, I sort of don't worry about time. Sort right. Of well, I'll tell you now, we wouldn't have wings now. If the Wright brothers had said, oh, forget it, we wouldn't have wings now. Well, it's that time again. Uh, it's the feature that the world is saying could rival Monkey News one day. Ready? Oh, what's he written today? Well, Carl's diary. You didn't actually yeah. explain what it was. On the tube on the way back home, saw an advert for a book about a woman who works in a funeral home. She went into work one day, uh, she goes to work on a body, she takes the sheet off of one of the bodies, and it looks exactly like her. This is called a doppelganger. The what's a doppelganger to you? It's the thing I read about ages ago where, um, someone was, uh, Walking down the street, yeah, and he sees somebody who looked a bit like him. And no, this was weirder than that. Go um, on. Um, he, he he remembers like going down that street as a kid on his bike whistling. Yeah. And then he sort of is walking down the street, going to get some milk or whatever from the shop. Little bike comes whizzing past. He hears the whistling. He goes, "That's weird." Looks at it. It was him when he was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a time. <laughs> Shit. What do you mean? It was him as a kid. This this is like a different form of doppelganger. It's just, uh. Um, it's impossible, it's rubbish. Some sort of time thing, isn't it? No, no, it's not even that's impossible, so don't worry about it. It's just some kind of time thing, Rick. No, no, no. Yeah, it's something you read thing. again on the internet, or it was a short story, or something someone told you. Mm. On my walk back from the tube, I saw a jogger who was pushing a pram at the same time. The kid looked terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Got my science book out. It said that the static you get on the telly when a channel isn't tuned in properly is radiation that is still knocking about from when the Big Bang happened. I thought about the Big Bang and wondered if it was really a Big Bang or did it just sound louder as there was no other noise to drown it out. <laughs> Good point, though, isn't it? Carl's diary, Rick, never ceases to amaze. We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. I mean, it's Freddie from Winchester says, uh, of course, it was recently Valentine's Day. What's the most romantic thing that you've done for Suzanne, Carl, that you can think of? Uh, I, I don't really do all that. Sure. Uh, the Valentine's Day stuff. It's just the problem is if you do it once, they expect it every year. Yeah, that's sure. that's the problem with Christmas and stuff, isn't it? It's like it's become that's what you do now every yeah. year. Every day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I prefer to just sort of wait. You know what I mean? And and you know if I think of an idea or I know of something that she wants, I might get her something, but I might not do it on Valentine's Day. It's that thing. It's like how I've, I've said about Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> Make it Pancake Wednesday. Have it when you want. Why yeah. am I waiting? Why am I waiting for someone to tell me when I can have a pancake? I'll have it today if I want one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's Pancake Tuesday. No, I won't bother. I'll have trifle. 
So, <laughs> so it's the same same with this, you know, with Suzanne. Um, luckily, right? I mean, Valentine's Day and what have you. She was uh, she was ill. Luckily, so we didn't we didn't have to go out. So I'd say, is he asking for advice? Well, I suppose yeah. Certainly, he may as well give it. Treat them when they deserve it. All <laughs> <laughs> right. I remember uh, once when Suzanne was ill. She had a fever, but there was no food in the house. What did you suggest to her? She was too ill. Well, it was it was when we were still living in Manchester and that, and uh, you know uh, we needed to get some food in for tea and stuff. And uh, I said, "Come on, come to the supermarket." She was like, "No, I'm ill. You go." And I ate buying food. I just sort of get a bit blank when I'm looking at it. There's too much, isn't there? That's the problem. You go down all these aisles and there's just too much. So anyway, I said, no, come on, come with me. She was like, oh, but I've got this fever, I'm hot and everything. So I said, well, come to the supermarket, you go on the frozen aisle, cool yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> and she did, and she said, you know, it made it worse, she was ill for another three days. Lawrence from New York says, I was wondering how Mr. K. Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is, if a lion could talk, we could not understand him. Even if he's English. Yeah, if he, <laughs> yeah, if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier. He's speaking English words and using all the correct uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world. His frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about because you'd have so little in common, even if he used real words. No, but he's talking English. Yeah, no, but his reference points would be just so far removed. You know, they're removed slightly when, uh, uh, if you saw two people talking about Kierkegaard, you'd, un you'd, you'd... I hear... wouldn't understand that. Exactly. So remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo... Yeah. He'll, he'll be saying, oh, I'm fed up with being stuck in here. I'll go, yeah. It's like that. Well, it depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that it's a lion, does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away. Now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even. Yeah, but I'd, a, I'd pick something smaller yeah, or, right. or something, you know, a worm without a mouth. I'd go definitely not. What? Definitely, Definitely not. not. What? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just, I just think that a worm that's that's on the ground. Yeah. What's it got to offer me? <laughs> it's, it's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not going to be a good day out with it. Is what I'm saying. It's not going to have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right? <laughs> even if it's English. And how can you tell if a worm is English? Is it wear a very tiny bowler hat? <sighs> Star sailor, and poor misguided fool. With me, Steve Merchant, and. Carl Pilkington. K-Man, round of applause for K-Man. Yeah. Uh, but no one's uh, announced who you are. Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais. It's XFM 104.9. Friday afternoon, if you didn't know that. <laughs> I don't know why I mentioned it. That was stupid, really. You must know that by now. Well, we've got some great things coming up. We have indeed. We've got songs and chat and things. We'll also, of course, be um, running through the white van man questions from the sun again, but this time Carl will be answering them. I look forward to that. Yeah. Can we do that fairly soon? Oh. there's some good questions this week. Yeah, um, we will, but... Um, as I was coming in, there was a, like a bunch of um, posh lads, I think university students, trying to get in because they're doing one of those um, uh, scavenger hunts that they have to get points for charity and do stuff. And one of theirs is get on a live radio show. Right. So I sort of sort of felt sorry for them. So I've been, I said they could come on here just for five minutes. Who are that's they? And right. um, they're just um, are they toffs? They are sort of like toffs, but they're trendy toffs. That's uh, obviously trendy toffs. I don't yeah. know what's that. Is that like li Lady Victoria? <laughs> is she a no, toss? I don't mean that. No. They, they're both sort of like that, um, will of pop idol. Right, right, right. They're like, right, they're like right. him, sort of like trendy but posh. Okay. They seem nice enough and they're doing it, they're doing it for uh, a cancer charity and, um, uh, they just get... They they've get got, what is it, like they've got their sponsor to do very Exactly, I don't know quite how it works, but they're gonna, they're gonna come on and, um, cos we get the, for coming on this live radio show, they get 17,000 points. Right, good. If I can put that in context... Yep. If they were to say, did it help deliver a baby, they only get 7,250 points. Well, but it's much easier. <laughs> it is. There's, yeah. lo there's lots of women happily dropping sprogs all watch. over the place. You can't get on a live radio show yeah, these days for love no money. That's true enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um... When are they coming in? Uh, I'll call so they're what, gonna just... 1.30, I had a word with them. Okay, what did um, you make um, of them? They are posh. Really? But, um, they said they're gonna wander about and go and see if they can deliver a baby and that. And then come back here for 1.30. And, uh... I don't know if it can, um, um, I hope they don't like leave a baby sort of half out, you know, if they've got, they've got it, you know, they're 
Push, push, push. Sorry, we're gonna have to shoot off. We've got to yeah, go and see we've got to play an instrument in a marching band <laughs> for 8,500 points. <laughs> Well, I did say be here definitely at 1.30 because I don't want you getting in the way of the white van questions. Oh, sure. the other thing sure. is, right, they get 7,500 uh, points for delivering a baby, but they get 9,000 points if they cut Peter Stringfellow's hair. Well, he's, you know, he's, he's very precious about his hair. It's a more delicate operation, <laughs> isn't it? There's more that can go wrong. That's true enough. Take an unconventional animal for a walk in a park. What an is an unconventional, unconventional animal? I think that could be a dog that just doesn't play by the rules. Yeah, that's a dog that's into Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, that he's, that, that, that he wheeze in a urinal. Yeah, exactly. He's standing up. Exactly. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward well, to yeah, that. Well, yeah, I'm sure they're lovely guys. Good luck to them. Yeah, we'll see you later. Nirvana, man who sold the world. Carl's all confused, because it didn't tell you it was ended, did it? What is that, then? Is that a sort of glitch in the confusion? Just applause, isn't it? Okay, they it. might start swearing, you know what they're like. Yeah. Rock, star <laughs> rock stars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Their blue language. Yeah, and all their... Uh, habits oh. and all that. Yeah, like it says track ending now. It's a bit Stop talking about it. That's in, that's, that you're giving away all the secrets of radio and that. People think it's like an old piece of vinyl that we've put on a needle, you know, like those old bits of footage of Tony Blackburn. That's what they think it's like. Yeah, they don't realise there's computers doing it all. Yeah. Rick, you're, you're showing them behind the curtain. Never do that. I won't. I won't. Never do that, mate. Um, in the week, uh, I called Carl up. I said, how are you, mate? You went not too bad. Uh, now as you know, his girlfriend's been away for um, ages, hasn't she, covering yeah. the World Cup, the, uh, African, African Nations. Nations Cup, she's a sports journalist. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> I love the fact you're thinking, what's that mean, like, well, she's not much of a journalist, Rick, to be honest. Well, I've read some of her stuff. No, but she's not on air, she does stuff, you know. Yeah. Behind the scenes. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. A lot of journalists do. You, 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 you want to make clear, you're not going out with Kate Aidy, that's what you want to make clear, isn't it? Yeah. Um, now, so she, she's seen none of the, the meteoric rise of Carl. As right, she's been away for the whole time since she was become yeah. a wit, yeah. um, a cult figure, That's to be honest. And he hadn't, he hadn't told her this, so uh, <laughs> apparently he went home when she was sitting there because of it. Grumpy went, all right, so yeah. She went, should we go out then? He went, she went, I'm not sure I want to go out with an idiot. Right? Oh no! Yeah, because and she went, Loch Ness monster. Why don't you just think? Of course, the Loch Ness monster lives in Loch Ness, and she was giving a bit of a hard time. She went, That's why I don't. He said, That's why I. I didn't tell her. I, you know, I didn't tell her really. Same thing happened when I was at school and I had to play drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> I didn't tell my parents, <laughs> right? But my dad turned up anyway. And what happened? He, um... How old were you, Carl? Well, it was, it was the school that I used to go to. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. You, went, what, you used really? to go to the school you used to go to? <laughs> no, but what I mean go is, on. I didn't go to secondary, did I? So I missed a lot of that. Sure. But primary, I liked. Oh, It was okay. all colouring in and stuff. Yep. And, um, <laughs> it was a Christmas play. And I managed to get a part in it. And, uh, Did you audition? No. Um, got a part in it, and I should have been playing the drums to uh, the one about kings. The three, we three kings. Yeah. yeah. I was meant to, meant to be doing that, but Little Donkey came on, and it was one of those. What do you mean know, came on? That was like next up on on you know the the, the next song. Right, right. It, and it's one of them songs that you can't help sort of tapping along to. Yeah. Do you know like um like if I if I was to go um. Hmm. Yeah, you'd have to finish it with... Yeah. Do you know that they actually send that into space? Do they? And... What, hoping that aliens will respond with that? Yeah. They do do that, because apparently it's, it, it is one of the things that you can't help... <laughs> what, even if you're an alien life form? Yeah. They, they know that, do they? Yeah. But anyway... What, can they watch Star Trek or something? Hello. Did it, did it. Knock, knock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> Who's he doing, like, if he's saying, no, knock, knock, into yeah. space, yeah, they have to say, Zwoop, oggy, oggy, oggy! Yeah. that you is, that you is great. Seriously. <laughs> oh, it, hold on, what's something out there? Was it a little green fellow? <laughs> that is great. Yeah, so anyway, that is little, donkey, little Donkey is like one of them tunes that you can't, and I was there and I had the drumstick and I thought, oh, God. The drumstick! I could feel myself, and anyway, Just to do it, yeah. I started going along and playing Little Donkey, which I wasn't meant to do, but it went down such a storm. <laughs> <laughs> what, were there people like parents and that dozing off, and then suddenly they heard your version of Little Donkey, and they thought, wait a minute, now it's really picking up. I'm glad we paid a pound fifty for this. <laughs> what do you mean it went down such a storm? They're going, hold on, is it, was it like when people Ringo, have in the air? You know, when Ringo joined the Beatles, now going, yeah. boo, Pete Best, but he went, <laughs> yeah, they like, went, whoa. whoa, oh god. No, but the teacher just said, oh, it went down really well. You can do that again tonight, right? When you're in it again. But anyway, so my dad was there, 
And, um, and you hadn't told him about this performance, no, so he just turned up off his own back. I never told him about his home and stuff to no. yeah, show me mum and dad, because it just put me off. So, um, anyway, he turned up, don't know why, he must have heard from someone else's dad. Yeah. He turned up, and, um, he, he swore about me, which... Did I, he? I, I don't... Can you, what, could you, could you use you a, a word that's... Is allowed to be said? The word? Of course it is. Right. If you, if you've got a kid in the car or anything, you can turn it down. Now, God, right? Yeah. right? But he said... Um, there was a guy stood next to him with a camera, big video camera filming it. And he said, yeah, film it, but try and avoid getting the twat in the hat in the shot. Because I had one of those porters, you know, the little round pork pie hats on. Right. <laughs> this is so what, sad. What, was this a nativity play? It was about Jesus and stuff. Yeah, well, there was a porter there helping with his bags. Of course, I forgot. I yeah. mean, Mary and what Joseph, the they stable? got there. Yeah, yeah, because sure. it was the hope, you know, because the, the inn was full. Yes. But I think the porter doubled up with the inn and the stable. Right, that was nice. So he, yeah. He yeah. carry bags over, yeah. Yeah, no, so you, yeah, yeah. You're right, though. I don't know why I was <laughs> wearing one of them. But I was. And, um. <laughs> and your father said that. And how did you know your father said that? Did he you hear it? I was talking about it later. Oh, I was talking about it later. Yeah, I was talking about stuff I'd done at school. And he said, oh, God, remember that. Uh, and he. I spoke to him the other day about it. Right. And, uh. Yeah, oh, God. Shame. So that remember? was that was the end of your sort of drumming career, really, because it could have been. Yeah. I mean, you know, the audience loved it the night before. Yeah. <laughs> you could have like been like, who knows, a whole new world for you. Yeah. Have you done any stuff? I never drummed. I've never drummed. I wish I had. Man. I wish but I had. Uh, that is that is. That's uh, a movie story, but is that and that's why you don't and you don't tell you still your mum and dad don't know you on the no, radio, they do they? I think when they were down the other weekend, they had to come in. I just said, oh, I'll just go in and press the buttons. Because they could listen on Sky Digital, couldn't they? They could they. But you wouldn't want that, would I, you? I don't want that. No. Play a record, and I'll talk to you again a little bit about this later. Yep. Right.